Okay, let me make sure this is working first. It's been a hot minute since I've actually streamed, so I don't know if I have to update anything on YouTube or if this is just going to work. Looks like it is. Fingers crossed. <sighs> All right, well, I get set up. Something that I will go ahead and do is swap to one of my max level mages, or at least something that's close to it. I think I should have won on Melganus, I think. It's on a different server. Must be Illidan. Yeah, that's where I still have my mage. So what I'm going to try to do is, before actually getting into the run, just while people trickle in, one thing that I did not have time to do before starting is I did not have time to actually do research on talents and stuff. And I at least want to do a cursory glance at what the recommended build is from like Wowhead and stuff. Just so I'm not going in completely blind. It's no. Let's take a look here. Arcane points. And then what does Wowhead recommend? Uh, let's see. Classes, Arcane Mage. You know, Wowhead sometimes really, really, really lags my computer. So I'm going to hopefully not have this be too difficult. All right. Abilities and Talents. Actually, I should probably just go to the leveling page if it has a recommended build there. And it does. All right. Okay, a few people are starting to trickle in. Uh, looks like it's working, I hope. Assuming the audio is fine. I can't actually check that on my end, but on OBS, at least it shows perfectly fine. And I think I have all the correct settings checked off there. Okay, Arcane. So, let's see. Wowhead is recommending something... Like, going down the middle. Oh yeah, we'll have to use... Because there's talent reworks, right? So I'll have to figure something out when we actually get to the PTR. Because I will be starting on live servers. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of... Actually, you know what? In that case, because I kind of just need to... Look at the uh, like new mage changes regardless. I actually won't be able to refer to like a good talent build for it. So I'll just kind of figure things out. But I'd imagine there's some crossover between the existing mage stuff and yeah, yeah, it it should be fine. I'm actually like decently familiar with arcane at least from the past, so hopefully that won't be too hard to get back into. All right, let me hop back over to area fifty two then. And just like before, I'm going to be starting this one on live servers. I've already gotten all my stuff mailed over. I'm actually like relatively prepared this time. A lot of times in the past when I did live streams, I'd be like starting an hour late or something and scrambling at the last second to get everything set up. This time I did all of that ahead of time. I uh, have everything mailed over. There's no setup needed. So... Really, when I press enter world and jump in, we should be good to go. And I actually started only five minutes late, which I think is like one of my uh, best starting times. Uh, the Nixaw says, my man loving the bump in content recently. Glad to hear it. Um, I mean, I, I, bump in content. I, I've been doing videos a lot, right, for a little while. It just comes and goes in terms of the leveling stuff, right? So... Uh, for like the past month or two before I started doing all this leveling stuff, I had a bunch of videos for patch 10.1, but I kind of think that there's probably like two different sides of my audience, right? There's a lot of people who are still here for all the leveling content, which is why I still try to do that every now and then. Um, but there's also a decent amount of people who just watch for like the patch 10.1 guides and whatnot. Uh, so I try to go back and forth with them, but yeah, I've been doing a bunch of leveling stuff recently. I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep doing leveling stuff, at least right now, right? Like, obviously, it comes and goes. It's not like this is the last time I'll be doing speedruns. But as it usually is, 
whenever there's changes and stuff, I do a bunch of new testing runs, I update my guide, and then we stop doing runs for like a few months. And then I come back, I do some more, uh, and the cycle continues. Nizal said, good afternoon from Belgium. Good afternoon to you too. I thought the mage spec would be a runoff poll. Yes, uh, I put it in my Discord. Uh, I usually try to post that stuff a bit earlier, but I've been... I've been operating on a fairly tight schedule, right? Like, I wanted to have the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the priest run out earlier yesterday to give people more time to vote on the initial poll. Uh, so I only had it up there for, like, an hour or so. I might look at fire a little bit just to see what it's like, look at the changes. I'll probably, like, at some point during the run at least glance over the talents and see how it might impact all of the different specs for leveling. Um... But yeah, Ar Arcane won the poll in my Discord. That's usually how I do things. Uh, I've done that on previous live streams, right? Where if there's going to be a runoff poll, the main one is on YouTube, and then the runoff poll is on Discord, right? Because you don't want to put up too many, like, community posts back-to-back. -back. I usually try to give at least, like, a week of space in between each one. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't like it. Hello, Mikey G from Manchester, UK. Hello, Yuval. I am good. Hope you're doing good as well. Uh, all right. So I think... Did I, did I cover everything that I wanted to say before starting? Uh, I guess, yeah, just to reiterate, what I will be doing here is kind of something similar to what I did in the Priest run, for everyone who watched that. I'm going to be starting off doing dungeons. Let me just check. But it is going to be Horde, so it's going to be a little different. The nice thing about Horde is it's a little bit easier to kind of jump into the leveling because it's much easier to reach, for instance, Silver Pine and start slowly chugging your way through that than it is to get all the way over to Red Ridge and Lockbow Dawn. And the nice thing about Silver Pine is even if I need to change something up, like learn war mode or whatever, it's not like I'm abandoning it midway through. So uh, I think this is going to be a little bit better on Horde. The only problem is DPS queues, right? I, I had a few people say, oh, DPS queues aren't that bad. You don't need to be a healer. You don't need to be a tank. Really depends. Uh, some people said they got DPS queues of five minutes, which, mind you, a five-minute DPS queue, that is still really long. Like, it, it can be worse. Because, for instance, when I was doing the setup for pre-stuff yesterday, or two days ago, before starting the run, I was getting DPS queues of, like, eight to ten minutes, which is... Why I was like, all right, there's no chance I'm doing dungeons as Shadow. Especially in a speedrun, right? If you're waiting 8 to 10 minutes in between each dungeon, that's just way, way too long. Like, 2 minutes is kind of the, the perfect time if you're not getting instant cues. You have just enough time to do a few things in between. But 8 minutes, yeah, um, even 5 minutes starts to be a bit long. So we'll see how this works. Obviously, I only have DPS as an option here. Um, but obviously, tank is the best because you just instant Q, and healer is, like, either instant or two minutes at worst, in my experience. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing that, doing Silver Pine. And then, just like before, when I'm pretty safe to say that I'm, like, done with dungeons, or, like, level 20, 25-ish, then I will be copying this character over to the PTR, and we'll be picking things up from there. Because at the end of the day, I do want to test the 10.1.5 changes. Even if the level 61 thing isn't working. So, for anyone who hasn't finished the pre-speed run yet, not really much of a spoiler, because it's more just like something that's not working with the game. But despite the fact that Chromie Time is supposed to be going up to level 61 right now, it's actually not working. Uh, the zones scale to 61, like the mobs scale up, the maps, uh, the map displays it and says it goes up to 61, and Chromie Time doesn't even kick you out. So clearly that's still their intention. It's not like they've changed their minds. They just forgot to actually implement the scaling past 60. So right now you get to level 60 in Kirby time and things start giving you no experience and it's impossible to continue. So as much as I would love to actually test up to level 61, it's not working. Thankfully, it's like, you know, sometimes I give Blizzard shit about leaving things until the last second. That is at least a very easy thing to fix. I'm pretty sure all they need to do is, like, change one or two numbers, and then it's working properly. So, you know, it's not the end of the world if they wait until, like, the very final build to do it. But hopefully they actually do catch it before it hits live servers, because that would be a little bit sketch. I'm playing on U.S. servers, yes. Uh, 
Hello, my Cronus. Uh, good, I made the start as a mage main. I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I've said before, Arcane is good. So, uh, I can pretty much say how this is going to go. It's going to be decently efficient. The only question is whether I can pull it off, because as I've said in the past, I, I know Arcane is good. I'm just not the best at playing it. Sometimes I just get really greedy and I don't kite properly and then I die. So hopefully I can manage to pull it off, but we'll see. Uh, Barry O'Brien said, best of luck from Ireland. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, for what Nizal said, I've thought about sometimes doing like fresh runs on European servers. A few people have asked me to do that in the past. It's one of those things where that's the type of thing that I may do at some point if I really have nothing else to work on. Initially, I was considering it, like, way back when, when I first started getting into speedrun, like, mixing it up, doing some on NA, some on EU, but these days, I just don't really have enough time to really justify just doing more speedruns just on a different region, even though I know a lot of European players have said that they think it would be cool. Uh, can I show you my main character? Sure, why not? All right. Uh, still want to wait at least a few minutes for people to get here. Normally, uh, I've, in past streams, I don't start until an hour in. Um, so I think if I just jumped straight into Enter World, maybe that would be a little bit too aggressive, right? So I will at least um, try to stall for like another five minutes and respond to people in chat while more people get here. Uh, thank you, Micronus. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so this is my main character. I have a lot of main characters, right? So I I've said before, I main a tank, which means that I usually keep multiple alts ready. And generally speaking, within every single tier, I might be playing something different. So last tier, I mained my Brewmaster, which is also at level 70 in Vault of the Incarnates. This tier, I'm maining Vengeance Demon Hunter. So this is currently my main character, my Vengeance DH. I have, obviously, as you can see here, uh, 444 in bags, 442 equipped. Uh, main thing that makes up the difference between bags and equipped is this ring, right? So Onyx Annulet. I have a video about this uh, recently about like who still uses the Onyx Amulet, and it is getting nerfed in 10.1.5. However, it is still going to be good for tanks. So I've seen some people saying, oh, you know, the, the nerfs completely kill the Onyx Amulet. And what a lot of people don't realize is that this makes up a massive portion of my damage. I don't know if you can see. Can I find, yeah, like our latest Sarkareth pull? Uh, six minutes, whatever seconds. All right, so this is details from our Sarkareth poll on Thursday night. And if I look at my overall, so this is my overall damage from our final poll of Mythic Sarkareth on Thursday. And you can see here Storm Infused Stone, Deserous Bloodstone. These are the two things for the ring. This did around 10% of my damage. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot of damage. And this is also um, on a... What's it called? Like on a slightly AOE. I guess Sarkrath is like cleave, kind of. And it also has like a decent amount of downtime. But on single target, the Onyx Annulet is better than it is on AOE. So this is like kind of consistent cleave. And it still did around 10% of my overall. Even with the nerfs to the Onyx Annulet, there is no way that as a tank, you're going to just be able to get enough stats from a ring to give you... It'll probably be closer to like 5-6% to of your damage uh, post-nerf. It'll still be worth running, for tanks at least. And I believe for Windwalkers, it'll also still be running. Uh, Babylonius was talking about it. But some of the other specs like Retribution Paladin is probably going to drop it. Rogues are probably going to drop it. Though I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I'm still running it. I still will be. I have a Heroic Beacon, uh, Mythic Chromatic Essence. I am using the uh, Haste modifier. Both Haste and Crit are pretty good. I would say Haste is generally better for stat priority i go crit haste and then i have uh regular krog tusks haven't gotten one out of the vault yet and yeah pretty straightforward stuff i have tier uh neck this one i got out of vault another thing i got out of vault and then i have a few crafted pieces right for embellishments i have the uh toxified armor patch and slimy expulsion boots uh but yeah i think that covers anything uh or pretty much everything about my main uh, good luck for the sub four hours. Yeah, I hope I can get sub four. Uh, I've been obviously getting fairly consistently sub four hours with the last few runs. So I think as long as I play well, sub four should be possible. But it is mage. It's something that 
I'm not super familiar with. Honestly, I was expecting Priest to take much longer, but I found that Priest is actually much better than I thought. But it is entirely possible that I make like some colossal errors with Mage and it ends up costing me a lot of time. Always enjoying your leveling videos and talking. Feels like a podcast sometimes. Good luck. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I try to... I try to make it feel like a podcast, in a sense, because a lot of people have said that, you know, they enjoy that aspect of it. I will say the only downside is that it kind of puts a high bar, right? So if I'm ever kind of tired or feeling like, you know, I just don't have the energy to keep talking, it makes it really hard to justify doing these runs because, well, people will say, of course, many times like, oh, I'll still watch your runs even if you don't talk and it's just the gameplay. And I'm sure some people would. But I do know that a lot of people watch it for the commentary, for like, you know, the storytelling or just, you know, me talking and rambling about whatever thing happened to bother me that day. I don't know. Uh, so I, I try to keep that energy going whenever I do these runs, which does put a little bit of extra pressure. So we'll see. I, I think if I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do streaming somewhat consistently going forward, because this is actually my first stream so far in Dragonflight. I'll... I'll swap back to get ready to start the run. But technically speaking, the only time I've ever live streamed Dragonflight was during the launch. And it went so catastrophically bad that I just didn't really feel like streaming. It was kind of the same issue I just outlined. I was just really frustrated about how it went. I was not happy with uh, how my Dragonflight launch day stream went because of things out of my control, right? It was technical issues. Uh, I had no control over how bad the servers were, but it completely fucked my stream. And I literally sat there playing Hearthstone for the first three hours of Dragonflight. And it was just really demoralizing, right? When I had all these plans to do like a launch day speed run and that got completely destroyed. And I kept saying I was going to stream again and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Because so every time I was like, I, I should probably stream, just wasn't feeling it. So I'm going to try to like pace myself a little better this time. And not maybe push myself too hard for, I don't know, doing everything super fancy and whatever. Uh, I'd like to stream more consistently. I don't know. It's just, I, I tend to always want to feel like I need something important to stream. Like it needs to be a testing run or a world record attempt or whatever. And I'm probably going to try to stream things that are a bit more casual going forward. So I'll still be doing these testing runs. Uh, I can click the mage, get ready for it. Um, so I'll still be doing stuff like this, like I've always done. And uh, I've said before, one thing I discussed on my, I believe it was during the Windwalker Monk run, is I'm, I eventually want to start doing classic speedruns. And I'm going to start doing like preparation and testing for classic, classic speedruns. So I'll do a few testing runs in the future once I get all my stuff prepared. But I mean, as you'd imagine, right, a lot of knowledge goes into doing these runs. Setting one up now is much easier. Now that I know, oh, these are the best consumables, these are the best enchants, etc., etc. I already have all of that game knowledge already, so setting up a new speed run like this isn't too hard. Um, but Classic is kind of a different beast, because I'm effectively completely relearning the game. Because the best consumables, the best enchants and stuff, it's a completely different ballpark. So I'm doing a lot of research into that. I'm also looking into gear sets and stuff that I can use as I level up. And I mentioned before, I have like a document where I'm just outlining everything, everything that I need to mail over. Okay, what consumables will I need? One thing that I'm currently debating and looking into is for classic, can I justify actually leveling up engineering within the run? Because in retail World of Warcraft, professions aren't worth it at all because the amount of time it takes to level a profession, it's almost never worth it. It's just there's always something else that you can be spending your time on and the time save isn't really that impactful. But in a classic speed run where the world record is like, what, 65 hours or something from 1 to 80? It's I, I, so much longer than retail. So leveling up a profession is a drop in the bucket in terms of the time. And engineering has so many useful things that will save time over the course of the run. So right now I'm kind of debating, is this actually something that I uh, level up while leveling in classic? And if so, is there a way that I can route it in? Because there's a lot of like cutscenes or role play in retail leveling, but there's not as much in classic. So I'm trying to see if there's any points during the run where I can maybe like sneak in, you know, 10 points of engineering, like just hit an anvil as I go or something like that. That's the kind of things that I'll need to figure out. 
So it'll be a long process figuring out Classic WoW, but I'd like to do that eventually. All that to say, I'm going to start live streaming playthroughs of every single Classic Zone. So relatively chill, not like in a speedrun sense, but that way I'll be able to get practice with all of the old zones that the reality is I haven't done outside of like one or two runs on Classic in recent years. But I was five years old when Vanilla was a thing and I played, but I have like no memory of it. Uh, very, very, very vague memory. Definitely not from like a speed leveling context. I don't remember the quest progression. I don't remember what's efficient. So I would need to do a full playthrough of basically every single original uh, World of Warcraft zone before I would feel confident doing speedruns. So that's something I'll be doing live on stream. Probably not today. Um, probably not tomorrow either. And I, I will be streaming tomorrow for the record. I've, I've decided on that. So I'll be doing another stream tomorrow, Sunday, 11 a.m., same start time. But maybe next weekend, I'll start doing that. Not 100% sure, but I think that's something I'll be doing for streams going forward. Uh, let me catch up on chat, and then we can get started. Uh, how old am I? I am... How old am I? Shit. Uh, I'm either 24 or 25. I always forget. Um, let me do math. I'm 25. Right, okay. Uh, I, I keep... I always forget the exact time. Time blurs, honestly. Ever since I graduated high school, I always have to double check. It's like, yeah, how old am I? Because now I, I can't just think it's like back when I was in high school, I'm like, oh, well, I'm a senior. I'm 18, right? Nowadays, it's like, ah, oh, shit. Um, yeah. Uh, when does the run start? Run will start very shortly. I'm just catching up on chat, and then I, I will jump into it. When you were speed leveling your second arcane, you realized just how useless arcane blast is? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, barrage, fire blast, explosion of missiles. I mean, that's the thing with leveling. You just use a bunch of instant casts. And arcane is really nice because I don't know how much it's changed, but back when I did arcane runs in the past, a lot of it was uh, you would round up a bunch of mobs and then you would slow them and just kite while using arcane explosion and then arcane barrage. So you do explosion, 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 barrage, explosion, 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 barrage, and just kind of kite and chip mobs down. And that was kind of the fastest way to do it. Uh, so we'll see if anything major has changed. Cone of Cold? Oh, yeah. That is that is definitely an option now. I'll have to see, because I think, honestly, if anything, the Dragonflight changes have made things better for Arcane. Because specs like Windwalker before, which already had all the tools it needed, they got like minor benefits from Dragonflight and are still very good. But overall, nothing major changed for them. But the issue with certain specs like Arcane and just other pure DPS specs back in the day is a lot of them had to pick and choose their utility with the old talent system. But this new talent system offers way more flexibility. So yeah, if Cone of Cold is easier to pick up, that definitely would help. Circle of Frost? Yeah, I could see that as well. Uh, loving your streaming content, bro. Take it easy, though. Yeah, I know. Uh, will this be on PTR? Yes, later on. So I'm starting off on live servers purely for dungeon leveling because I can't do dungeon leveling on the PTR, but I'll only be doing that up to like level 20 or 25. And at that point, I will copy this character over to the PTR and we'll do the entire rest of the questing route on the PTR. So you will get to see all the major rework stuff, just not immediately. Just kind of a, it's a limitation of, you know, how the run is structured, right? Uh, dungeons are an important part of the questing pro or the, the leveling process, but unfortunately I cannot test them on the PTR. Uh, vanilla content compared to Wrath. Yeah, I'm decently familiar with Wrath leveling, obviously because it hasn't changed over the years. So I've, I'm not like an expert on speed leveling through Wrath, but I at least know the quests in every zone. So if I were to study like existing Wrath of the Lich King uh, classic runs or like private server runs of what the fastest route is through Wrath zones, I'd be able to pick it up pretty quick because I already know how all the quests work. I have like intimate knowledge with all of those zones. I would just need to figure out what's the best route. The issue with like actual classic zones is just that I haven't played through most of them. So before I could begin speedrunning, I would need to actually understand how it plays uh, from a casual perspective. Uh, youngling I was back then, yeah. Is it better to skip dungeons when doing solo leveling, or if you can tank heal, is it worth queuing? Uh, definitely worth it if you can tank and heal. I'll be trying dungeons, as I said. The only limitation for DPS is the queue time. So dungeons are fast from 10 to 25, regardless of your uh, spec. Obviously, if you're in a group, 
that's even better because then you get fast cues assuming somebody can tank or heal if you're solo dps it's only a little bit problematic specifically because it can take a while to get into a group otherwise yes dungeon leveling from 10 to 25 is generally the best way to go but you'll see what i do in a few minutes anyway <laughs> you're only supposed to forget how old you are when you're old yes thank you mom i know uh Let's see, you're a legend. Thank you, Kumba. I appreciate it. Uh, you're 25 too. Cool, cool. When Vanilla came out, I was already in college. I'm an old guy. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised when I say I was really young, but a lot of my friends who I play this game with were also, you know, either in their teens or already in college when they first started playing WoW and Vanilla. So, uh, let's see. Best leveling class for Druid. I assume you mean best leveling spec for Druid and generally speaking, Guardian Druid. Guardian Druid is just one of the best leveling specs in the game, period. So for Druid, you really can't go wrong with that. Didn't I say dungeon is not doable for DPS? I didn't say it's not doable for DPS. I said it's slower. So if you have the option to go healer or tank, yeah, do that. Right? So when I was leveling Priest, even though I did most of the run as Shadow, I still did the dungeon section as Holy because it's going to be easier to get into a group. But obviously, as a mage, we're limited in our options, right? We only have DPS specs, so that's really all you can do. I'm still going to try it. We'll see how fast it ends up being, but, you know, that's kind of all you can do. When are we starting? Pretty much like two minutes. I'm just trying to make sure I've read through everything in chat before I jump in, because obviously there's going to be a few minutes here where at the start of the run I need to make sure if things are set up properly. I always thought Ashara was quite good for early level Horde. Ashara isn't bad. Uh, the problem with Ashara is that it's very disconnected. So Ashara is nice in a vacuum, right? Uh, but it, it does, Ashara is good early on, and then it falls off towards the end. So it has, it, it's not the best leveling zone ever, but if you were only doing like the first half of Ashara, you could route it in. In fact, an initial early testing, one second, there's like a, I don't know, bug just swatting it away. Uh, the first half of Ashara is decent. After that, it falls off. The only reason I don't really think routing in is good is because you have to go all the way north outside of Orgrimmar. You have to do that, and then you have to find some way back. So either hearth and then go to a new zone or something like that. It's just kind of difficult. It adds travel time, right? And as you know, you have to include the travel time. Uh, one of the reasons why Silverpine and Hillsbrand are so dominant is not only are they already really, really good zones, but they are right next to each other, and they're super easy to access from Undercity. So... Even though, for instance, Duskwood and Redridge aren't bad, Duskwood and Redridge are next to each other, but they are, still require a flight path. They're not, like, within easy walking distance like Silverpine and Hillsbred are. And also, they're also not really that close to Stormwind. You still kind of do need to either take a teleport or take a flight path or something, so there's, like, a minute or two of travel time. Whereas Silverpine and Hillsbred are kind of uniquely situated and that they are just everything you could ask for in an efficient leveling zone. Easy to access, close together just really efficient overall. They have a ton of rare mobs. Uh, that's another issue with Ashara. Ashara doesn't have great rare mobs, uh, which for a casual leveling perspective, not the biggest deal. But when you're talking about speed runs, it, you know, compare, in, uh, compare like the 20 rares in Hillsbrad or 15 rares in Silverpine to the, I think there's like 10 rares in Ashara, but a lot of them are way off in like the corners of the zone in places where you wouldn't go through the leveling process. So makes it kind of hard to actually pick them up. It's it's just a little bit of a weird zone in that regard, but it's not the worst. Love the content. Thank you, pal. Uh, any reason I pick Zandalari? Uh, the only reason I pick Zandalari is because I don't play Zandalari a lot. So there's no special reason like, oh, Zandalari has this cool synergy XYZ. It's specifically because Zandalari, it's not bad, but it doesn't bring anything special to the table. So when I'm already doing a testing run like this for Mage, I figured, why not? We'll try out a race that I don't usually do for speed leveling. Uh, you were in college when it came out. You were 18. Oh, nice. Why would Guardian be faster than Feral? Uh, survivability. Feral has good damage. And it's Feral is not bad, mind you. Feral is still, like, up there. But the problem with Feral is that Guardian can basically do all of the same things that Feral can except it is unkillable. Guardian is one of the tankiest classes in the game, or tankiest specs in the game up there with Prop Pally while leveling up. So the problem with Feral is that you can do really high damage, and you can do like a gigantic pull, but then you will either need to shift into bear form, and at that point you're just a discount Guardian Druid, or you will need to start kiting, and then you lose damage. Guardian will sit there, do the exact same damage as Feral, but you just press frenzy, Frenzied Regen and uh, Iron Fur, and you just do not die. 
So Feral's not bad, it's just Guardian is, like I said, one of the best leveling specs in the entire game, if not the best leveling spec in the game, just because it does insane damage and has insane survivability and has insane mobility. It's just really good. Uh, just want to stop by and say hi. Thanks for posting these runs. They're great to listen to on my commutes. It doesn't matter how fast the speed run is. It's fun to listen to. I appreciate it. Glad to hear it. Never played WoW, but I do like watching the content. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting game. I would say now is actually a really good time to get into it if you've never played it before. I had a hard time recommending this game to people back in Shadowlands because it wasn't the best. But I have to say Dragonflight is a pretty good expansion to get into for new players. Uh, I want to, I want Stone Talon in a route, but just for the story. Yeah. Um, Stone Talon is another good one. It's kind of like Ashara, maybe a little bit better in that it's good, but just very isolated. But I agree. I love the Stone Talon story. It's one of my favorite Cataclysm questing zones. It was the only time it has ever featured in a speed run. It's my very first ever speed run when I first, first got the world record. And I used it as a backup zone, but then there were lag issues in Gorgrond, so I had to use Stone Talon. But I do wish that it was actually able to be routed in. Uh, Zandalari has a free glide. Yeah, but we have goblin gliders, right? So the glide ends up not really being very useful. It's not a very good racial. I uh, can't say I've ever gotten an advertisement for manhole covers before. <laughs> manhole covers. Interesting. Hello, Daherg the Dragon. Hell yeah, Harlden stream. Glad to see you're excited. You could pull the world as a bear. Yep. Oh, Arcane Mage, I'm excited. Awesome. What's the least effective leveling spec? I'm not sure. Uh, I used to think that the least effective leveling spec was Shadow Priest. But as I showed in my run yesterday, that's no longer the case. Shadow Priest is now a perfectly viable leveling spec. I would actually say it is above average. I think if I had to pick what is the least effective leveling spec, it would be one of the rogue specs. Not combat. Combat isn't bad, or uh, outlaw. I keep thinking combat. Uh, outlaw is not bad, but it's still on the weaker end. So I would say either sub or assassination would be the weakest leveling spec, if I had to pick. Though I haven't really tested them. I just, I know that they're bad. I just don't know exactly how bad they are. But it's one of those two. It's assassination probably. Okay, other people agree with me. Uh, still solo donated $10. Thank you so much. I uh, love the co content, Harlden. You make great videos. Keep it up. I'm glad to hear you think so. I appreciate the donation. I got any ideas on new things for this run? No. Um, I mean, I've done a bunch of runs recently. I, oh, I will actually talk about one new thing when we get in that I posted in my Discord. And I don't know if I if I talked about it. You know what? Let me just let me start the run um, just so I can show that. There is only... Um, there is only one new thing that I'll be doing, or uh, not new thing that I'll be doing, or new change that I've made to the um, the setup. And I, I will show that uh, when we get in and find a mailbox. So let me just go ahead. We can we can start the timer. It's not a world record attempt, right? So I don't need to be super picky with how I do um, how I do everything. Oh, my mom deleted a message in chat. I wonder what they said. <laughs> If you got my mom to delete a message, uh, I hope it wasn't too bad. Uh, let's see. Options. Auto loot. Action bars. And I think that, that covers most things. And then I'll just do the basic setup. Okay, got bags. Uh, let me just grab the last bag before I do this. And then I will equip this stuff. And then once I get all my stuff set up i will show you the one change that i have made recently but for the most part if you watch the priest run from yesterday it's going to be the same thing the only thing is i don't think i drew attention to this change when i did the priest run from yesterday though technically speaking i i also did this in that run uh what do i think is a reasonable 10 to 60 time as a casual that's not prepped or anything seems like you're doing sub four hours what do i think is reasonable just following the route uh I've generally been telling people, obviously it's a bit skewed right now because there is the 50% buff, so it's hard to say, uh, you know, what time you'll be able to get at this exact moment. But generally speaking, without the 50% buff, I think like six hours is a pretty normal casual leveling time. So that that is kind of what you can expect. Let me just get this set up a little bit. I'm going to just... Uh, I can, oh yeah, I don't even need to pick anything special. So we're going to throw ourselves in queue. 
actually, I want to use gun shoes. All right, so we're going to do gun shoes, dungeons, random burning crusade dungeon. And now that I'm in queue and I can start the silver pine RP, and then I should be good to uh, like respond to chat and stuff and show. Uh, actually, I can show the thing while I'm going. So the main change that I've made is this cloak. So you can see here, this cloak uh, says enchanted plus one primary stat. Why that's significant is if you've been watching my runs for a while, in the past, I recommended using not the uh, not this enchant. I recommend using, what was it? I think I used gift of like something. So one of the legion enchants that gave you like increased move speed and um, one of the secondary stats. Something with the tuning on that enchant has gotten really fucked up. I don't know what happened, but now it only gives you 2% move speed, which is like nothing. And it gives you at max level plus two to a secondary stat. And at low levels, it doesn't even work. It gives you like no secondary stat and it scales up to two. Oh shit, that actually was kind of fast. Um, oh no, I don't have anything set up. Uh, my spell critical strike damage. I'm going to assume that that's what I want to take. That was actually a very fast queue. Um, sorry, it's going to take me a little bit now to, to catch up to chat. Uh, but yeah, so this enchants... Let me change... It's social, display... Where's class colors? Uh, I don't know where class colors is. Is it under interface? Display class colors. Yes, there's display class colors. All right. And I'm pretty much just going to be spamming Arcane Explosion at low levels and just doing things that way. Uh, oh, and before I forget, I want to drink my experience potion. Make sure I don't forget that. Um, but yeah, for casual speed leveling around six hours, I've looked into getting it because of how Warlocks look. A lot of my older friends always tell me to give it a try. Yeah. Warlocks are definitely a, a fun, popular DPS caster. Uh, would Outlands Nagran be considered a good zone? No, unfortunately not. Uh, not by retail standards. Pretty much any of the Wrath and Outlands zones are just not efficient in terms of retail leveling. Just because the main issue with Wrath and, uh, and TBC is just they were... Well, two reasons, honestly. They were kind of designed for a different era, so a lot of the stuff really feels dated. Uh, you can kind of tell. But also, the zones were designed with flying in mind. So they are really, really, really spread out. And that makes it way, way, way less efficient. There's also just a lot of travel time, a lot of backtracking. I think Nagrand, from what I remember, just from playing like classic TVC, I'm pretty sure Nagrand is like one of the fastest uh, BC zones in general, but even the fastest BC zone is still leaps and miles, uh, whatchamacallit, um, slower than other stuff. Oh, my mom deleted a, a chat thing by accident. Okay. Well, uh, if your message got deleted, apologies then, it seems. It, it was not intentional. Uh, let's see. I'm enjoying this so much. Glad to hear it. Why does Resto Shaman do so much damage in dungeons at low level? Healers in general do a lot of damage in dungeons at low level. There's like weird scaling stuff for healers. So obviously you saw in my run yesterday, Holy Priest with Holy Nova spam does ridiculous damage. But... Yeah, Resto Shaman also does a lot. The main thing is Resto Shaman, I, I don't think, has like a spammable thing like Holy Nova. So it's good, but it also can't just like press one button and kill literally everything in the dungeon, which is uh, makes it a little bit weaker overall, but still quite good from what I know. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have my bars set up at all because we I did not expect to get a dungeon this fast, actually. I mean, it's good, but it means none of my stuff is set up. I... I, I'm just going to be a complete mess for this particular dungeon. I uh, found that I can copy-paste files from one main character to another to save time and set up for UI slash add-ons. Yeah, you can do some of that. So what I've started doing now is at the very least, I create a character with the same name and do like basic UI setup. The only thing is, I think you cannot, uh, without like copying over files and using a specific add-on, you can't get your 
icon setup. This, no matter what you do, doesn't get saved unless you use an add-on. Uh, from what I've heard. Because I looked into ways to doing that, and a few people gave me add-on recommendations of, like, uh, things you can do that will, like, cr or copy over the, the key bindings and stuff, like, exactly where I want each key to be. So, like, um, blink I would put at 8, this I would put at 0, uh, for instance. But that it's not the type of thing that I wanted to get set up for this run. It, I might do, like, a world record attempt in a day or two. When I do that, or before I do that, I will look into stuff like that to make it a little bit cleaner, but I'm not super concerned for this run in particular. <laughs> You're going to put yourself in timeout. It's okay, Mom. It's fine. Um, I've ran all the rogues, and they are pretty easy to level. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not about ease, right? Like, definitely something can be easy and still slow, but uh, I, I can assure you that rogue is slow, having tested it. But I did most of my testing with Outlaw, which is generally considered to be the fastest of them, and it still is not very great. It's not, like, obviously Rogue can still level up. It's not like you're just not going to be able to level as a Rogue, but you are never going to match the times of, like, a Guardian Druid or, or a Monk, or even, like, a Mage or a Priest, right, playing Rogue. You just don't have the tools. Rogue as a class right now doesn't have the tools. And I was talking about this with some people in my Discord the other day, and it's actually kind of funny because back in Mop and Wad, a lot of the main problems that Rogue has right now, they had solutions. Like old Leeching Poison back in Mop, that was amazing. And it made it so Rogue was actually really, really good at like surviving stuff. I think you didn't really get it until a higher level, right? But the way that Leeching Poison works now is it's just you get like passive Leech. And the scaling on like the Leech Tertiary stat is just not good at all. So you're just really going to get no value out of that. Whereas if they change Leeching Poison to what it was back in Mop and Wad, Rogue would be significantly better, because you'd just be able to sit there and keep hitting things and getting the healing procs, and it would be very, very, very powerful. Uh, which expansion is the best leveling dungeons? TBC. TBC by far. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say by far. TBC is the best, and Wrath is like a close second, and... There are currently um, scaling issues with classic dungeons, or at least Kata revamp classic dungeons, so like the nude version of Deadmines, for instance. But before the scaling changes, and presumably after the next patch, which I believe fixes it, uh, Kata dungeons will once again be really fast. Right now, they just have some weird issues. Uh, but Wrath dungeons are fast. The only thing is... Because you don't really want to do too many dungeons, and after 25, it starts to slow down a bit, after 25-30 specifically. The main issue is that you're only really going to have time to level through, like, one expansion worth of a few dungeons. And TBC is the best. And because everyone knows that TBC is the best, it has the fastest queues by a landslide. So... It may only be slightly better than Wrath, but because, you know, everybody knows that it's the fastest, it creates a knock-on effect where everybody only does TBC, and yeah. But you actually do have a decent population of people doing TBC leveling dungeons, because they are, they are definitely the best ones. I love your vids. Thank you, Leap Your Kurt. Glad to hear it. I think Classic NBC, because they got a lot of quests, yeah, oh, in response to the dungeons. Wrath is terrible leveling, as well as the quest interactions, yeah. By modern standards, Wrath Quests are definitely not the best. Arcane Explosion looking mid compared to Holy Nova? Yeah, it is really crazy how good Holy Nova is. Mind you, I have not, like, set up my bars and stuff, so... Arcane Explosion definitely isn't meant to be, like, a one-button, like, win thing like Holy Nova. Holy Nova is just fucking crazy scaling. It also helps that it also heals. Because uh, Holy uh, Arcane Explosion is meant to be a generator, right? It generates one arcane charge. So... What I should be doing is using Arcane Explosion and then Arcane Barrage. Unfortunately, I got like an instant queue, so I haven't had time to actually pick my talents and get Arcane Barrage on my bars. So we're getting there. Acid Rain is a massive damage buff. True, yeah. Uh, what level do you get Acid Rain online? Because I did see that that was really, really, really strong. At least even in endgame content, I saw people just abusing the crap out of Acid Rain. Uh, Monk Spinning Crane Kick is insane damage. Yep, definitely. Uh, one of your favorite leveling zones is Lock Modon. I, that's a good pick. Lock Modon is also one of my favorite leveling zones. It is just really, really, really good. Uh, what spec would I recommend for Warlock Affliction? 
Uh, Warlock in general is pretty decent. I would say Demonology for leveling is probably going to struggle the most. Not necessarily struggle in terms of like, you'll be able to level fine, but you'll just have a slow time killing things. That's just kind of how it goes, right? Um, but Affliction Warlock has a decent speed at which it kills stuff. You know, you'll be able to do things relatively cleanly. And it all of them are pretty much equal in terms of their survivability. Uh, low levels do a lot, and then you have to figure out uh, they don't want any spec to feel bad while leveling, so by nature, scaling for healers is even more. Yeah. Uh, did I stream the Shadow Priest run, or was it a regular upload? That was a regular upload. Shadow Priest run is already posted. It's a video from yesterday, so you can find that right now on my channel. Uh, why does retail feel so soulless? Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, yada, 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 it's, it's your opinion, right? But I do kind of get what you mean. Like, see, I'm willing to respond to questions like that and criticisms like that of the game, right? Uh, provided they're at least somewhat not, like, too bad. Like, when people leave comments, it reminds me, because earlier I got a comment um, basically being like, oh, retail leveling fucking sucks. This is the worst thing ever. And it's just like, man... I get that some people don't like retail leveling, but it's like, why, why do you got to leave a comment like that on my video? Like, why did you click on it? Um, but I, I kind of understand at least the feeling of, of it being soulless, especially compared to classic. I definitely, I, I understand that comparison. And I mean, I think the, the answer of why retail is quote unquote soulless is pretty obvious. Uh, it's just the game world itself is less impactful now. You know, there's more focus on instant content and doing things either solo or with like a randomly created group or random people that you find in LFG and there's less like dynamic interactions. I mean, it's it's an old argument, you know, I'm not really saying anything revolutionary here. Actually, fast queues today, surprisingly. Uh, not complaining. Oh, shit. <laughs> Didn't mean to open trade with that guy. Whoops. Uh... But yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I what I don't get is when people say, like, why would anyone play retail? Like, I get that leveling in retail definitely has a different feel than classic. And obviously people play stuff for different reasons. Uh, I should also be using my buffs, right? So use that. Apply Brilliant Wizard Oil. Oh, this guy's dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this guy made the same mistake that I made before when I was tanking Blood Furnace on my Brewmaster Monk. Uh, when I did some practice runs. Uh, this pull actually really, really, really hurts. If you run in here without a healer and you don't have a plan for defensives, you will just die. Uh, also, now I have threat on a bunch of mobs, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kite. I don't really like this. Uh, okay. Yeah, Blood Furnace is by far the hardest of the BC dungeons. There's a lot of pulls that if your tank doesn't know what they're doing, they will just die. Even at low levels, it just, it kills you. And I need to make sure I loot this, because it does have a quest reward. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but I'll always say the classic, like, retail versus classic thing is, like, I play both, right? So, I play retail, and I play classic, and I enjoy both of them, but for different reasons. Uh, so I've been playing classic and I've, you know, just last night after I finished recording the Shadow Priest thing, I spent four hours soloing Zul Grub for transmog or, well, future transmog items when they get removed in Cataclysm and just random like collector's items that I can sell in the AH. I actually got a world drop BOE. I got elemental mage's staff from just a random mob in the dungeon. I did not get Zulian Tiger or the Rizashi Raptor though. Alas. Uh. But, you know, I enjoy just doing that, whereas, like, I haven't done old raids or something in retail in such a long time, because I just, I don't really find it fun anymore. It's just kind of too face roll easy, and I already have all the transmog I really want. But I enjoy just doing stuff like that, or going and, like, hunting rare mobs for, like, cool items and whatnot. Admittedly, I'm partially also doing that because I'm trying to prepare transmog in advance for Cataclysm and collecting all the removed items. But I've just been having fun just doing random shit on Classic, whereas retail these days, outside of, like, videos and things like this, the only thing I really enjoy in retail is raiding. So I kind of log in for my guild's raid, we do Mythic Progression, and then I kind of log out. I either make videos, or I play Classic, or I play something else. Uh, 
But, you know, I still enjoy both games. Like, just because I don't play retail as much um, all the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't know how I live there. Oh, I think I... Oh, he powered shielded me at the last second. <laughs> my heart fucking stopped. I did not want to lose all my buffs. All right, we're good. Uh, but, yeah, I... uh. I play them for, for different reasons. This is also one of the issues with leveling as a DPS, right? Like, obviously, sometimes you get really good groups. And this healer, I mean, that that was a really clutch heal. So, this healer's good. He saved my ass. But there are, like, a million alternative universes where this healer is not on the ball, and I just die there, and there's nothing I can do about it. Unless I just sit here and twiddle my thumbs and don't attack the mobs. But as you can see in the dungeons that I did yesterday in Holy Priest... I was doing more damage than this, and healing everybody, and not dying, so... Uh, healers and tanks are definitely better options just overall for low dungeon leveling. Am I planning to get seasonal buffs for XP crit? Yes, if it's on the way. Uh, I'm not planning to do it for the the crit buff, because the, uh, the buff that you get from the bonfire actually counts as a battle elixir, and I already have elixirs planned out that are better. So... If you don't have... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, get away from me! Fucking, uh, this tank needs to pick up threat. Okay, there we go. I'm alive. I still have threat on a bunch of these mobs. Um, but yeah, if you don't have any of the consumables like I've prepped, then it's definitely worth getting the buff. But I'm actually not going to be getting it because it doesn't stack with uh, the flasks and stuff that I'm already using. And speaking of which, let me just remember to throw this on my bars. Put that there. Uh, what else? Brilliant Wizard Oil. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rogue is the worst class in the game. I can't imagine anything more boring. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends who really enjoy Rogue, but I, I have to... I wouldn't say I necessarily agree with you that it's the worst class in the game, period, because obviously it's our opinion, right? But I would agree at least that, to me, I also find Rogue to be the most, like, unenjoyable from my personal point of view. Action bar saver add-on? I see. Uh, if any race could be any class, what would I play for world record? Um, Dark Iron Dwarf, Guardian Druid, probably. Uh, Dark Iron Dwarf, in terms of, like, the current route, is by far the most efficient race. Just in terms of the time it's saved. Maybe Volpera? Um. Ooh. This is awkward. Uh, I'm trying to not get auto-attacked because I don't want to die. Okay. I think we're good. Um. Crap. Yeah, I would say, like, right now, the two best races for... At least leveling, actually even outside of allied races, the two best races in general are Volpera for Horde and Dark Iron Dwarf for Alliance. As for which one is better, I think in a vacuum, Volpera is better. Because it's like Volpera has way more flexibility and that like the make camp thing lets you do a lot of cool like routing stuff. But at the same time, specifically for the way the Alliance route works, the Dark Iron Dwarf racial lets you teleport straight to Ironforge, which is actually really useful for Alliance leveling. And probably will be, since Lakmodan is one of the best zones of the game. So, I don't really see that changing at all. So, like, if you were to have on Horde, Dark Iron Dwarf, it would be useless, because you wouldn't be able to do Lakmodan as Horde. But that said, if you had, like, Volpera Racial as an alliance, that actually would be useful. Whereas it, it's the reverse isn't true for, alliance, or for Horde players with Dark Iron. Oh, the monk died. Poor monk. Uh, yeah, this tank is... Uh, I'm going to try to help him out, but at the same time, the healer is not here, and if I rip Thread off him, I don't exactly want to die. Oh, okay. Uh, Caddy Sith is watching the stream, I guess? Uh, hello. <laughs> is that why you waved at me earlier in the dungeon? That makes sense. Um, the only problem, Watt is alright, because that's the primary place Twink's farm gear. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wad is definitely... So, Wad is good from, like, a you get fast queues, but Wad dungeons are not efficient. They're not terrible, but the only way that Wad is even remotely comparable with, like, TBC or Wrath dungeons is if you get a Twink to carry you, and even then, it's just you're not getting as much XP as the other ones. 
No game sound slash music. I have game sound slash music on. It's just very low. I'll turn it up a little bit. I'll bump master volume up to 15. But yeah, it's just uh, it's just very quiet. I generally don't like to have my game sound on too loud, especially while I'm recording. But yeah, it, it was actually quite low. So that's a fair point. Um, Let's see. I'm new here, and I wanted to ask, how can mages solo stuff? The major negative point for me is you don't know what a solo stuff. Deciding to play a lock or a mage. Um, it depends on what you're soloing. Like, soloing raid bosses and stuff like that, and solo questing are, like, two very different things. Raid bosses, a lot of times, mages will struggle to solo, like, old raids and whatnot. Just because a lot of times, you're really bad at face tank stuff as a mage. So mages are good if you're soloing, like, dungeons. Anything where you're able to kite mage will perform really really well in that uh but if you are trying to solo like a single target raid boss you're gonna struggle a little bit um well if i'm really fast i think i can still get credit for this quest uh let's see unfortunately oh there's okay if a tank is requeuing then i gotta take it yeah all right, and I can get that quest later. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not an expert on mages, right? This is one of my first... Or not one of my first, but one of my uh, only mage speedruns that I've done in quite a while. Mage, I'm not an expert on at all. So I cannot really give you a ton of details. All I can say is mages are good for soloing dungeons, and they're okay for soloing like open-world mobs, uh, depending on what mobs you're talking about in particular. Um, oh, Christina said, I'm the monk in your dungeon. Ah, I see now. I'm still catching up on chat, All right? Um, but yeah, mages will solo a little bit. Oh, fuck, it's slave pens. Uh, slave pens is fast. Uh, eh, slave pens is fast. Fine. Normally, I don't like to do dungeons if there are, like, I've already done the quest for them, but this is, like, one of the f most efficient ones. So, I don't really hate it too much. Uh, retail now is about speeding through the task for the reward slash goal. Vanilla had people that had some patience and you could take time to build the relationships. Yeah, I think the best way that, you know, I've seen people describe it is retail is more about the destination, sort of. Uh, classic is more about the journey. And obviously, it, there's like different destinations, right? So retail definitely is not about the journey to max level, but it definitely is also about the journey to getting geared and getting to raids. You know, the process of getting yourself into mythic raids is definitely a journey, and that is very important in retail, whereas in classic, that is actually less of a focus. So, you know, a lot of people, when they say that retail, retail's all about the destination and it's not about the journey, it's like, not really. There's still a journey, it's just the journey is no longer leveling. The journey is now endgame gearing. It's just kind of a different process, you know? Favorite part about leveling specific dungeons, maybe a questing area or specific classes? Um... Hard to say. I would say it depends on if you're saying like World of Oh, oh, what the hell just happened with uh I, I accidentally clicked something in the stream chat and it zooms all the way back up to the top, so I lost my place when I was catching up on stream chat. Um but yeah, uh, for what my favorite part about questing is, I suppose it depends on whether you're saying like specifically uh oh my god, I ripped aggro. Uh World of Warcraft in general or just, like, MMOs. My favorite part about questing in MMOs is definitely just, like, experiencing, like, new stories and, uh, like, new zones and stuff like that. So one of the things that I really like about leveling in a lot of different uh, MMOs and why I like trying a bunch of them is just because it can be fun. Like, when I was playing through Guild Wars 2 a few years ago, it was really fun getting to experience all of the new, like, storylines and whatnot, and I really enjoyed that. That's less of a case now in uh, World of Warcraft, right? Because obviously I've already played through these zones a bunch of times. But, um, oh no. Uh, I still enjoy a lot of the zones. I enjoy Lakhmodan. I enjoy Hills, Red Foothills. Uh, there's a lot of zones that I really enjoy that I don't get to use in the leveling route. So, I said before, I'm slowly working on a challenge run format that would, like, allow me to have a little bit more uh, zone diversity in my routes. And on that topic, I will give at least a quick update now, but I don't want to go... 
<laughs> Why is the the tank is pulling literally everything, man? Oh my goodness. Uh, I just kind of want to get to the end so I can get the completion XP. This is slowing it down a little bit. Um, but uh, on the topic of the challenge run format, because I know that's something I've discussed before, I am still working on it. But what I want to do is, I've said before, I want to create an add-on. Oh no, where? I I'm good. I'm gonna just solo this fucking dungeon, man. I I don't know. He's literally backtracking now. <laughs> Come on. Uh, this is like your worst nightmare when you try to do dungeons while, uh, while doing runs. At least with like world record attempts, this is why I like to tank it. Because at least I can control where we're going. Um, uh, but yeah, so for the challenge run format, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to have like an actual leveling uh, like add-on first. Where, you know, it has like the step-by-step -step instructions for each zone and stuff like that. And... Um, once I'm once I'm done with that and I have like a regular leveling add-on working, then I will finish working on the challenge run format. But that is that is currently my plan. So it might take a little while. Oh my god. Well, me and the hunter are soloing this. Uh I should probably after this dungeon. Yeah, I think after this dungeon, I'm going to uh, just do quests for a little bit. I'm actually... Ooh, you know what? I, I'm i sorry uh, to... Uh, yeah, Christina, the, the monk, but actually when you kill the first boss, if you leave, you don't get the penalty. Uh, you only get like a 15-minute cooldown. And, you know, not your fault, right? Uh, but with the way that the thing is going right now with the current tank and the fact that I don't have any quests in that dungeon, I think I'm just going to try my luck again when the 10-minute uh, timer is up in a, a little bit. But uh, I appreciate you helping out for that dungeon. Just unfortunate with uh, what we ran into. Uh, let me open this thing. And somebody started the RP here, which is nice. It's one of the other nice things about playing on live servers for Horde runs. On PTR, I always have to manually start the RP from scratch. Uh, sometimes on live servers, you get lucky and it's already midway through the RP. Uh, let me let me set up my stuff real quick uh, before I continue, because I'm not. I don't even have Arcane Blast on my bars, right? Like I'm a, a fucking mess right now. So I need to make sure that I have all of this stuff set up. Before I continue, uh, counterspell there, slow fall there, uh, there, there. Yes, this is where I'm on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of cold fire blast. Yeah, I think th those are fine places for it. What else? Uh, my racial. What is my racial? I automatically start with Embrace of Paku. Yeah, Embrace of Paku is fine. And then I have Pterodax Swoop. Pterodax Swoop is slightly better than Goblin Glider whenever I use it, but it has a 15-minute cooldown, so it ends up being really bad. Alright, I think we're fine there in terms of actual talents and stuff. Let me do Encanter's Flow. Uh, invisibility increases movement speed. We'll go. We'll just go with ice block, and yeah. Yeah, I think tempest barrier is what I'll put my points into. Arcane barrage, arcane missiles, arcane orb. Those are all very good. Arcane surge. Oh, this is new. I've never played with arcane surge before. Expend all of your current mana to annihilate your enemy target and nearby enemies. Okay, that's yeah, that's a cooldown ability. I'll definitely take that. Okay, so... Let me actually, in that case, change... I will put Cone of Cold on H. And... What's the cooldown on Arcane Orb? This is 20 second cooldown. I'll put that on T. Put Arcane Surge on R. Ice Block... On... Ice Block and Shift R... Barrage there. 
Um, yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. That looks fine. Actually, maybe this, because Arcane Blast is less important, uh, only for, like, pure single target. Okay. Um... Now I'm going to try to catch up in chat. Unfortunately, at a certain point, as usual, when it's moving a little bit too fast, I will just need to skip ahead because I don't want to stay constantly trying to keep up with chat the entire stream. I do want to, at some point, uh, get a little bit ahead of it. And I need to wait five more minutes before I can throw myself back in queue. Oh, there's a lot of people here. As is to be expected on a uh, live server. Um, Let's see. Temple of the Jade Serpent is crazy fast right now because you can skip one boss. Yeah, uh, I should have also mentioned certain Mists of Pandaria dungeons are very fast. The problem with Mists is even at a low level, it's very hit or miss. There are some dungeons that are really, really, really good. Some that are not so good. It's um, it's not super consistent. But Mists definitely has a lot of good ones. Uh, no way, welcome back. Thank you, Neo. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, should hopefully be streaming a bit more often now, but it has been a while since the last time I streamed, I know. Uh, let's see. What are some small, easy things casual players can do to speed up leveling on, on their alts? Main thing is just, um, goblin gliders, gun shoes, stuff like that, which, speaking of which, I need to put onto my bars. Okay, good thing I started talking about that. Uh, that definitely is the biggest thing you can do. Just getting you like buying leveling consumables and then getting used to using gun shoes. So whenever you're in a position where you need to go like a long distance, being ready to just press gun shoes and travel really far and stuff like that. Uh, hello, Gustavo Alexandria. You still main monk? I don't necessarily main monk, but I play it a lot. Right now I'm maining Vengeance Demon Hunter, but I still I still keep my brewmaster up to date, right? So I would still say I main monk. Like I dual main monk DH. I've dual main monk DH for a while now. And I also play Warrior a decent bit. Like, basically, most tanks I will play pretty frequently. The only tanks that I don't play a ton at endgame is, I haven't really played my Paladin a ton in endgame content, at least for retail. I main Prop Pelly and Classic. Uh, but I haven't played Prop Pelly a lot in endgame stuff. And I... Uh, whatchamacallit, I haven't played my Guardian Druid a lot in endgame ironically the classes that i use the most for speed leveling or at least the, the tank specs that i use the most outside of monk i really don't play that often um in endgame content guardian druid and prop heli are i mean they're, they're good at max level but they're just like really 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 good for leveling which is why i like playing them a lot for speed runs and stuff but personally for like endgame mythic plus and raiding i just prefer the play style of vengeance demon hunter i also in fairness, I would do a lot more Vengeance Demon Hunter speedruns if they started at the same level. Demon Hunter is kind of in this weird limbo where I can't really use it for traditional speedruns because it starts at level 8 and has its own separate starting zone. So I would play a lot more Vengeance Demon Hunter speedruns or even Havoc Demon Hunter speedruns if that was something that I could realistically do uh, within, you know, the same format. But it, it just doesn't really work. Um, but then, you know, also Monk, I guess I play Monk a lot, um, even in speedruns, but it's just, I don't usually play Brewmaster for speedruns, uh, even though that's what I play at max level a lot of the time. Um, I would say right now, the only tank that I don't play a lot is Blood DK. I've kind of said for a while, I, I really want to like Blood DK again, but I just don't. Blood DK was what I played for many, 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 many years, all throughout MOP, all throughout WAD. Uh, I tried to stick with it in Legion, but I just don't like the changes. Ever since Legion, I've just not been able to enjoy Blood DK. It was kind of fun to play it. I played it a little bit in Sepulchre when it was really broken. So obviously when something is extremely overpowered, it's a little bit fun to play. Surprise, surprise. But even then, I played it for a little bit and then I ended up going back to Brewmaster for Sepulchre. So I don't know. Blood DK is pretty much the only tank right now that I'm just not really thrilled with. I just don't think it's fun. Uh, let's see. You've been doing the same with all the things for Classic. It marks all the items that get removed with Cataclysm. Oh, uh, that's interesting. I'll actually download all the things then. I didn't realize it did that. I have been doing that uh, manually, so I'll definitely look into getting all the things then. 
Um, but yeah, I've been kind of doing the same thing. Just, I didn't realize the add-on did it. Uh, and I would, whether it's better to do it on classic or wrath classic kind of depends on your preference, right? Like if you just enjoy playing regular classic and you're just collecting it for fun, then obviously just do the one that you enjoy playing more. So if you're playing like era, then collect it on era. The reason I'm collecting it on wrath classic is one, I have, I'm not a huge fan of, um, era stuff just not really for me. I mean, I played it the original, uh, not original, but like the re-release back in, what was it? 2020. So I played classic ever since it first released. Uh, but I didn't really play a ton. I like, I got to molten core. I cleared molten core like three times. I just got bored. Um, I really did not enjoy end game classic stuff, but I have really been enjoying wrath. Like at this point, the only thing that I haven't done is uh, 25 Heroic uh, Trial of the Grand Crusader. I've done 10-man Heroic, I've done 25 Normal, but the guild that I joined, they have like pretty already set-in-stone rosters for 25 Heroic early on, because I only just joined them like the last week or so of Old War. So they're like, before they put me into 25 Heroic, they said they want to see me get more gear. So, you know, uh, hopefully I'll eventually get there. Uh, but I mean, I've already seen all the bosses. I did all the stuff in Old War, right? And that was fun. Um, but I've been enjoying that way more than I ever did like classic era. So personally, that's where I've been doing all of my collecting. But also the main reason is because as I've said many times, I'm very excited for Cataclysm Classic and obviously only the Wrath of the Lich King servers are the progressive servers. So if you're like me and you're planning ahead for like Cataclysm Classic and future expansions, then obviously do it on Wrath uh, Classic because that's the progressive stuff. Um, oh man. Yeah, I, I missed a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to speed run these comments. Uh, thank you for everybody typing in chat, but I, I'm going to try to go fast. Rogue is fun and classic. Yeah, I haven't really played Rogue and classic, but you know, I know a lot of people enjoy it. Uh, just level the warlock from 10 to 60 in four hours, not being optimal, just doing basic stuff like silver pine forest and watt intro as I've seen you doing your videos. Yeah, that's a solid time. Four hours right now. Definitely very good. Uh, how did I get a group together on the PTR? Oh, uh, this isn't like a pre-made group. The one I was in before that was just a random dungeon finder. And also, this isn't the PTR. Uh, this is live servers. So we're on live servers, and I'm just doing random dungeons. Uh, if I couldn't pick an allied race, what race would I pick? Um, hmm, that is a tough question. I don't know. Uh, Worgen? Worgen's fine. I mean, I personally, I just enjoy playing Blood Elves most of the time. But Blood Elves definitely don't have the best racials. Uh, the thing is, like, a lot of the allied race racials have, like, really high impact on, like, speedrunning and stuff. There aren't many racials in the, of the original races that have, like, a major impact on the way you do routing. So none of them are really interesting to play with, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. At, Worgen has a speed boost, so that's nice. You get, like, a nice little movement speed increase, but... Uh, I don't know, personal preference, I'd probably play Blood Elf. Whenever I've done a 1-60 to 60 speed run, I almost always do it as a Blood Elf, just because I like Blood Elves, right? It's really that simple. Uh, none of them are super impactful from the base game races. I'm sure, like, there might be one or two that give you a minor time save, or some that are, like, marginal DPS increases, but none of them are even remotely on the level of Dark Iron Dwarf or Volpera in terms of, like, allowing you to do fancy things with the actual routing. They're just all pretty bog standard. Maybe I'm forgetting something, though, but I can't think of anything. Uh, like, Goblin lets you access your bank. I don't really think that has any, like, practical use, but that's at least something. Goblin has a few niche ones, but, like, Rocket Boots, you don't really need because of Goblin Glider. So, yeah. Um, would I be able to do 60 to 70 speedruns? Um, I'll talk more on that later. Remind me, uh, Yezeb, remind me later if you have still have a question about the 60 to 70 speedruns and I forget to talk about it. It's, uh, I've talked about it a little bit in some of my previous runs, but they're a little bit tricky right now for a variety of reasons, which that is like a whole side tangent that I planned on talking about at some point. So I want to make sure I catch up on chat before I get into that. Uh, Locke is very good to solo. Yeah, Locke is definitely very good for soloing. Have I tested Warriors? Kind of. I've done a lot of Protection Warrior testing, and Protection Warrior is very good. Uh, I've also played Prot Warrior a lot. So, Prot Warrior is good. Um, 
I haven't, per well, I I've tested Arms and Fury a little bit. I've never done them in an official speedrun, but I have leveled casually as Arms and Fury a few times. And, I mean, they're all good. Warrior is kind of in a weird spot where, like, all three of its specs are kind of equal. It's one of the only classes, I think, where you really can't go wrong with any of them. Like, if I was doing a tier list, right, and I had to rank, like, all of the different leveling specs, I would probably put, like, all three warrior specs in A tier. You know, none of them are amazing. They don't really do anything super special. But all three of them have good single target damage. They all have good AoE damage. And even the DPS specs are reasonably tanky. And they all have the same mobility. They have charge. They have heroic leap. Uh, yeah, you really can't go wrong with any of them. I think maybe Fury might do, like, marginally more damage, but it is so minuscule as to really not make a difference. And the thing with Prot, right, is Prot will do slightly less damage than Arms and Fury, but Prot is way tankier, so you can do way larger pulls with Prot and survive it and just cleave it down. So, yeah, they're all, like, very, very, very comparable. And they're all solid, um, but none of them are top-tier amazing options. Uh, let's see. You've grown. I remember when you had like a few hundred subs doing retail speedrun streams with like five viewers. Well, uh, I don't know about that because I've actually, uh, I, I, one thing that at least is kind of weird, right? Is I've never actually had a retail stream with five viewers, right? Uh, I've never had a small retail stream because mind you, the first ever stream I did was still my largest stream ever. I think, and it might have, Shadowlands launch might have been uh, bigger. Um, the, my first ever live stream had a uh, thousand viewers because when I started my channel, right, I had the um, the world record speed run was the first video I ever posted, which I did on my Volpera Hunter. Then I posted my leveling guide, and then like a few weeks later, when those videos got popular on Reddit and they got the Wowhead article written about them, a lot of people were asking me to stream. So I did a stream, and I did a Dark Iron Dwarf uh, Shaman speedrun. And it was an Enhancement Shaman, or Elemental Shaman speedrun, in fact. And that one uh, hit a thousand views. And I think my, my lowest numbers when I first came back to YouTube back in um, Dungeon Fire, Search is Taking a While. Yeah, I'll expand the search to other dungeons. My lowest numbers back in... What was it? I want to say like mid 2021, I was getting like 20 to 30 viewers on my worst streams. So at the very least, I, I, I can say I've never done streams to, to five people. I think my New World streams had pretty shit numbers, but obviously that's different, right? That's That was New World. And the only reason I stream New World is because my dad pressured me into, well, I wouldn't say pressuring, um, but my dad like pushed me to try New World because he works for Amazon. And he was like, ah, you know, it, it's an Amazon game. You got to try it because, you know, uh, the company that I work for makes it. And he tried to get me into the beta because he actually got access. And I never got into, I never took him up on his offer. And then he literally bought the game for me when it came out. And he was like, I want you to play this. So I was like, fuck it, fine. Uh, but my New World streams did really bad. That was probably the only time I've ever streamed to like five viewers. Um, but yes, I, I mean, obviously, yeah, my channel has definitely grown since 2020 or um 2021 uh let's see uh don't i have arcane blast yeah my stuff was really scuffed because i didn't really have time to get set up uh unfortunately the tank dc'd which is really bad because we kind of need a tank uh, that's actually really 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 unfortunate and it's not like we can just insta requeue and get one uh so i'm just gonna try to kite and we'll see how that goes Oh no, I'm stunned. All right, I guess I guess I'm the tank now as a mage. Unfortunately, if I'm tanking as a mage, this means I actually need to focus, which means I can't really read chat. So, uh, yeah, don't love that. Okay, what does arcane surge do? I've never used this before. Uh, they probably weren't close enough to get hit by the cleave, unfortunately. All right. Uh, can't believe I finally get to see you live leveling. Your guides helped me extremely since I'm an altaholic with four WoW accounts and a total of 197 characters. Jeez. Uh, well, glad to have you here. I'm glad you enjoy the guides. Uh, okay. Uh, this is... Oh, this is so fucking difficult. 
I don't really want to die. I don't want to lose my buffs. Uh, let's see. Arcane Blast is useless while leveling. You want to spam Arcane Missiles? Yeah. Yeah, I... I, I honestly, I'm just going to take it off my bars. I know that it's not good. I just wasn't sure if I should use it at all. But I... Like, the old version of Arcane that I remember, yeah, you never used Arcane Blast, but it has been about, like, two years since I've done an actual Arcane speedrun, so I wasn't sure if something was different now. Uh, imagine a speedrun in terms of five people. Yeah, I've thought about it. Uh, ever since I first started doing um, speedruns, like, people have asked, why don't you do a group speedrun? And it's a difficult thing. It's something that, like, I maybe I have some friends now who I might be able to, like, ask to do that but it's also just you have to remember that it's a time commitment right and sure i have time to set aside like four hours to do this kind of thing but i have enough trouble uh i think is the game lagging slightly yeah. looks like it's ever so slightly lagging but it doesn't seem to be affecting my stream there's probably something on the game's end i don't know uh but yeah, like, I have enough difficulty getting, like, enough friends together to help me test things in the PTR, which is usually, like, you know, one hour in and out, you get it done. And getting people to set aside time to not only do, like, four hours or so worth of, like, group leveling, but also on top of that to, like, do it efficiently. And then, you know, they, if it were to be good, right, they would need to know the strat. So that's the thing. Like, I, I could definitely get some of my friends together to just do random shit. Oh, shit, 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 shit. I'm almost dead. I can definitely get friends together to do, like, random shit, like, group leveling, just fucking around. But that, that would kind of defeat the purpose, right? You know, the entire idea of, like, a group speedrun, you would need, like, five people who are all on the same page, who are all doing things really effectively, who all have, like, coordinated schedules. That's just difficult, right? Uh, speed leveling isn't exactly the most popular thing in the world, so it's not like I can very easily get together people to do that. Uh, it's a cool idea. It's maybe something that I'll do in the future. But it's um definitely not something that uh is like high in my priori priority list. Also, just because it's not very easy to set up. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Surge is cool. It uses all of your mana. It's a oh, it uses all of my mana. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah. Uh, definitely not something I want to be using frequently then. Um. This tank can't keep aggro for anything. Oh, I'm finally catching up to the, the dungeon run from before. Yeah, that tank was uh, not the best. I feel bad. He clearly didn't really know where he was going. And that's one of the other issues I have with dungeon leveling, right? Like, I'm not going to flame the tank, but he was hard inting that dungeon. So I'm, I'm just going to leave and find a new one. I just feel bad. Um, You can skip Omor and Ramparts. Uh, yes. Well, kind of, right? Like, you can skip him and still complete the dungeon, but for the purposes of speed leveling, you do need to kill him because he drops a quest reward. So, like, I guess if you get Ramparts a second time, but then also the problem is if you're doing it in a, uh, whatchamacallit, if you're doing it in a group, like a random dungeon group, most people will need the quest, or at least one person will, so then it's kind of, like, rude to, to skip. So that's the only problem with that particular skip. I've seen people saying that, oh, that does a lot of damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, you weren't kidding. And actually, mana regen seems really good. So that... I Like, I regen pretty fast after that. That's kind of nuts. Uh, teleport to org. All right. Uh, where's... That's the tank. Wait. Oh, no, the tank's already up ahead. Finished the dungeon, but it was rough. Uh, I'm glad you guys at least finished it. Yeah, I, I'd imagine it would probably take a little bit of hand-holding for that tank. Uh, when I play Panda Race, I am unable to hit the Worgen for the quest. Untargetable, what should I do? I, unfortunately, Kyler World, I'm not sure what you're talking about. When I play Panda Race, unable to hit the Worgen. Yeah, if you're talking about the Panda starting zone, the reality is I... I, I haven't done the Panda starting zone in a long time, and I've probably done it, like, I don't know, five times total over the years, and, like, most of that was back in Mump. I don't really run it a lot. So, I unfortunately don't remember the quests, and I certainly, uh, whatever bug you're referring to, I probably never experienced it, because it's probably a recent thing that I never experienced myself, unfortunately. 
Um, oh, okay, I have to scroll up. Okay, I found where I was. Been using your guide to level up a bunch of Arcane Mages. Nice to see you doing a run of it. Glad to hear it. Yeah, so far it's pretty good. Has Blizzard actually confirmed Cata Classic? Wasn't the reason for Classic to avoid the changes that happen in Cata? I mean, kind of. Um, I'm not really going to get into the whole, like, whether Cata Classic is a good idea. Personally, I think it is. Some people think that it's antithetical to Classic. I disagree. Um, I will TLDR my opinion that I always give when people talk about, like, whether Cata deserves to exist as a Classic expansion. Uh, there are two types of people that play Classic. People who liked the older version of the game, like Vanilla and Wrath and stuff like that, and people like me who just like to experience older versions of MMOs for, like, I don't know, I wouldn't say necessarily say nostalgia, I just kind of think it's fun to get to go back and do all the old content when it was current. It's the same reason that I really liked Season 4 of Shadowlands, even though a lot of people in my guild hated it. Ha getting to do, like, three different raids scaled up to the same level at the same time was really fun to me. And it's also why I wish Blizzard did more with time walking and retail. I just enjoy that aspect of it. So I still think that it's going to be fun to play through Cataclysm when it was current, just like I've been having fun playing through Wrath when it was current. I am not like a classic purist. I don't think like, oh, the, you know, the game was just so much better back then. I think it did a lot of things better. Um, but honestly, if I had to say when I think the game peaked, I don't think it was classic. I think it was Mop. Um, I would probably play Mop classic a shit ton, right? Mop Legion probably are my two favorite expansions when I think the game was just the most fun to play in general. Um, so I'm definitely not a classic purist. Some people are, right? But, you know, I enjoy classic for an entirely different reason, and I would enjoy Cataclassic for the same reason. In fact, I would enjoy Cataclassic even more than Wrath, because one of the things that I like about uh, like classic is being able to experience all of the old raids, because I was really young when uh classic first or when all those expansions first came out so i played every single version of world of warcraft including vanilla but i never got to raid because i was really young i had no clue what i was doing and well uh there's something that you have when you're like seven years old called a bedtime and when i had a bedtime of like 8 p.m or whatever it's not like i could ever realistically follow a raid environment even if i was able to hit max level and join a guild when i was seven years old so I wasn't able to really play any of the endgame stuff, but as a kid, obviously, I would see all these people in their endgame raiding gear, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to do that too, and now, years later, I finally get to. So that is the appeal of Classic for me. I get to experience all the endgame stuff of the versions of the game that I played as a kid, but never really got to fully complete. And Cataclysm, same thing. I would love to play through those raids. I really always wanted to raid Firelands, never got a chance to, because once again, was still in, like, middle school or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think it would be really fun. And also, the the other reason why I hate when, like, I know that you're not saying this, right? But an argument I have seen a lot is people, like, saying they actively don't want Cataclysm Classic to come out because it would ruin the game for them. And it's like, motherfucker, you have era. And presumably, right, like, if Blizzard does this, they would release, uh, like, a Wrath Era servers or something. If Blizzard doesn't release Wrath Era servers, then I am with classic players on that is kind of a slap in the face to the community but assuming blizzard is smart and releases wrath era servers then literally nobody has any reason to be upset about cata classic it's like you have classic era you have wrath era just play those if you don't want cata you don't need to play cata so it always annoys me when people like argue like they they are against it just because they hate the expansion and they think it ruined WoW and it's like fuck you don't play it then. People like me actually are excited for it. I for the record I know once again that's not what you were saying in particular, but I have seen people saying that and it just really pisses me off whenever I see that argument. Um, but yeah, no, personally I'm very 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 excited for uh, Cata Classic. Uh, let me just clear out my bags a little bit. Yeah, I don't need another Sanguine Hibiscus. I'll queue for another dungeon. Wait, come to think of it, didn't I... Before I entered that dungeon, it said, would you like to expand your search to other categories? And then I still got TBC. Won't really complain, that's actually good RNG then. Uh, let's see. A classic is very boring. It's just there for nostalgia and not longevity. There's a reason Wrath Classic is really struggling in player count. <laughs> I mean, it is definitely not for everyone, right? Like, I'm not going to actively recommend to, like, my friends to, you know, play Cata Classic. I, I'm one of the few people I know in my friend group who plays Classic, right? I have a single friend who uh, actually plays uh, Wrath Classic right now. 
So I would agree with you in that for the average person, yes, people find classic boring. I don't personally agree because obviously I enjoy playing it. It is just a very different game. Uh, I play classic in a different way than I play retail, right? I kind of talked about that earlier. But even like classic leveling, classic leveling is different than this, but there's a reason why I'm considering doing classic speedruns because there's actually a lot of really cool, fun stuff that you can do for classic leveling to speed it up. It's not as like flashy and fast as retail leveling, sure, uh, but you know, there's still interesting stuff to it and I still think it's fun. Uh, it's a lot longer. Uh, cl like classic leveling is a marathon, whereas retail leveling is a sprint. And there's fun stuff that you can do in retail to like shave little bits off your time. Classic is more about like long-term optimization and just generally efficient play, which, you know, I, I still find that fun, right? To each their own. Uh, do I think Blizzard will allow cataclysm or classic characters to take items to retail? Almost certainly not. No. It would come, allow a lot of the removed BOEs to come back. Um, I, I know a lot of people have brought that up as a possibility. For the record, just to be clear, Blizzard has outright said they are not doing that. So the argument is not necessarily will or will Blizzard ever consider that? They have already said they have considered it and they are not doing that like expressly. It was even before Classic came out, I think there was an interview where they said, no, we're never going to do that. So the question then would become, will Blizzard ever change their minds and go back on what they said? And even though they did say before that they were not going to uh, allow that, would they enable it. And I, really, I don't think so. Especially when, if you look right now at what they're doing, they're already adding ways to get older appearances back. Like, they added ways to get all the Zul'Gurub items back. They are uh, in 10.1.5 adding ways to get, like, uh, Naxxramas Tier 3 and all of the removed Nax items back. They're just doing it in their own, you know, unique retail way of reacquiring the old appearances. So, I really don't see any universe in which Blizzard lets you get all of those items back. It would, obviously, from an economic perspective, um, in terms of, like, how it would impact the in-game economy, it would be a fucking catastrophe. There is no way to do that cleanly. And also, I think, as much as I personally would find that fun, because I do play both versions of the game, imagine if you are someone who, like we've already said, a lot of people don't like Classic. Imagine if you are one of those people who does not find Classic fun, but you really like retail and you're a big transmog collector and then Blizzard tells you, oh, well, you can get these rare appearances back, but only if you play classic. And while it could be like a fun little crossover event, kind of, I, I don't know. I just don't really see that ever being a good idea. Uh, I think it would cause, like, it would be cool. It would be something that personally, do I think that that would be fun? Yes. Do I think it would be a good PR move for Blizzard? Probably not. I think there would be more people giving Blizzard shit than there would be people actually happy about the changes. Uh, so I don't know. I, I just don't think they will ever do that, unfortunately. Could I upload more often the progression POVs of my guild in retail? I usually use them as reference uh, in my guild for progress. Um... So one thing that I, I might do because I, I know some people like watching those videos, but those uh, what you need to understand is that in 99% of cases, kill videos are some of the worst performing content anyone can make, right? Like kill videos do not perform well. You can look at like some of the best players in the world uploading their kill videos, and it, it does not perform well. So it it is, there is like, obviously, I, I, I've had to explain this to people before, right? Uh, I cannot just upload whatever I want. It does impact, you know, the algorithm and stuff like that as much as I hate that it exists, right? If I want to actually do YouTube, I need to care about shit like that. Um, and if I upload videos that are like too far off what I normally do or absolutely bomb in performance, it does impact the performance of my other stuff. So what I can do, provided I have the time, is I can upload those videos as an unlisted video and up and post the unlisted video link in my Discord, which I do sometimes, right? I've been doing that, like, decently often. I haven't done that recently. I didn't post our Mythic Neltharian, but I did actually post a POV from one of the uh, Evoker DPS in my guild, in my Discord. So usually if I don't post my own POV, I'll at least post the POV of somebody in my guild. Uh, but generally speaking, other than, like, a few niche situations... If I post a POV of one of our mythic kills, 
it'll be in an unlisted video. It won't be in a public video. So, you know, if you join my discord, right, you immediately get access to that. It's not like behind a paywall. It's not anything. I just have a channel where I post all the video stuff. So as long as you're in the discord, you'll be able to see those videos. Um, but I just, I can't post them publicly because it impacts other stuff. Fuck. All right. Well, uh, honestly, good timing. We already, I've gotten, this is probably like the most disastrous dungeon RNG I've ever experienced, right? But, uh, what I'm doing now is swapping over to the PTR just because that, that's kind of the death knell for the dungeon section of the run. Um, so swapping to the PTR, we're going to continue this in patch 10.1.5 on that version of the PTR, and I will be able to test out the new mage abilities now. Uh, while questing. So copy character. Uh, let me just change OBS. So uh, wow test. And then let me make sure this um, this is working properly. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's working. Copy account data. Copy character. And where is it? It'd be mage. There we go. Police. There we go. All right. So continuing this on the 10.1.5 PTR, that way we can test the new changes. Unfortunate that I just got really disastrous dungeon RNG. Like one repeat dungeon right into Old Hills, Bread Foothills. Uh, it's just unlucky. It is what it is, though. You know, shit happens. Um, Prot Warrior is so fun, insanely mobile. Yeah. Uh, have I tested Outlaw Rogue? I have tested Outlaw Rogue, actually. Yes. Uh, I uploaded... Uh, about a month or two ago, a, it was on my Fresh Account leveling video. But I on the Fresh Account leveling video, I did test out Law Rogue. You like Fury for the Barbarian PvP talent, Double Leap? Yeah, that's that's quite nice, true. Uh, hey, owner, good to see you. I'm still catching up on chat, right? I've done full streams to zero viewers, so you're fine? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I know some people may be a little bit sensitive to that. I, I, I more so meant that I was confused why that person was saying back when I was streaming to, in retail to uh, five viewers, which I was like, hmm, I don't know if that has happened. Uh, specs, let's see. Arcane Missiles damage. Clear casting makes my Arcane Missiles go faster. I guess reverberate for more Arcane Charges. Oh, I have a lot of things. Okay, yeah, definitely Arcane Explosion damage is what I want to take. Shifting power. I'll probably want to take. I think shifting power is really good. Oh wait, yeah, these are new. New. These are the new talents, right? Because this was Encanter's flow before. So now Encanter's flow is over there. Um, is invisibility baseline now? Let's see. Here. Invisibility increases movement speed by eighty percent for six seconds. That's actually quite good. Okay, let me. Yeah, let me check out all the new stuff. Right, so. Shifting power, I will put over on E. Mirror images, uh, Q. All right, so we have a lot of cooldowns. So what new baseline stuff? Yeah, invisibility is baseline. Huh. That's actually quite a good um, mobility thing. If invisibility gives me 80% move speed when I get the second talent, that's very, very strong. Not having to put any points into it. Oh, what else? I think that's all for now of the new stuff. Yeah, getting shifting power earlier is definitely going to really help. I think that's it in terms of the changes. Um, let's see. What potions is he using? Uh, I can show you the potions. I give more detailed explanations when I'm not streaming, so I've used the same potions in general. Right now I'm using Elixir of Greater Intellect, a Lemon Herb Filet, and Brilliant Wizard Oil. And then obviously I have Draft of Ten Lands, which is the experience potion over here, 10% extra experience. Uh, that one is unchanged, but the other ones are like caster-specific stuff, a little bit different than what I've done in the past. Uh, all right. Nice, we got a chest. Yeah, now that I'm on the PTR, I should see things a lot more frequently. Uh, my nameplates are disabled. There we go. Uh, today I finished the Dragonrath questline after five weeks. Very nice. Yeah, that thing, that's a, a big time investment. I've never really gone after a lot of those legendary questlines, but that is, that is really cool. 
I appreciate all of your posts. Have you considered posting smaller clips from your runs? You share a lot of important tidbits that I think are valuable too. Yes and no. I mean, I kind of do that, right? Um, but I don't just post clips. I used to, like, way back in the day when I first started doing my channel, I would post, like, little snippets. And I can tell you right now, they don't perform well. Uh, just because, think of it this way, right? If um, if all I'm doing... Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> I did Arcane Surge, and it, it didn't hit the Sil or Skitter Web Matriarch, even though it's targeted. Right? Yeah, it's targeted. That is weird. Uh, I think that's a bug. I assume. Well, it is a bug. It's a spider, but I, I think it's like an actual in-game bug. Um, but yeah, the, the problem with like little clips like that is I sometimes post small clips as shorts. Um, I've been doing kind of like a mix of like informative shorts and like funny guild moment shorts uh, on YouTube over the past few weeks and or rather over the past few months, right? And I've done a few for like leveling or important tips. Like I did one for uh, when Winds of Wisdom, I think was, was that the name of that particular buff when Winds of Wisdom was active? I did a short discussing the way to optimize like uh, leveling efficiency where you did like part of it in Winds of Wisdom and then finished when the Dragonflight pre-patch dropped. I made a short about that. So I've made like little clips about important things, but generally speaking, I don't, I don't take like clips of existing runs. Everything from my runs, at least these days, stays in there. What I might do is take the information from it and, like, repackage it into a different video. So, for instance, right, like, my last world record with uh, for 10 to 70 on the Dark Iron Dwarf, that was when I first started experimenting with dungeon leveling. So then, while I didn't take clips of that speedrun and directly make them into, like, a separate thing, I made an entirely separate video called Dungeon Leveling versus Questing, which discussed what I did in that route and used footage from it, but it was a completely separate, like, I scripted a completely different video, uh, wrote it, edited it, used, like, other footage that I got specifically for that video to demonstrate a few other points, right? So, I, there's obviously, like, I can't cover everything, so occasionally there's going to be, like, little tidbits of information that slips through the cracks, right? Uh, which is why I'll always say, if you really want to learn how to, like, speed level and all the little tiny things, watching these runs are going to be your best option, because it's just impossible for me to cover every single minute detail. It's not even that I'm intentionally not including it, it's just sometimes, you know, there, there may be, like, a tiny little optimization that either I forget to mention, or it, like, doesn't really apply unless you're really min-maxing, so I don't consider it important enough to include in the guides, but, uh... If it's some really important information, I will usually either include it within my full leveling guide whenever I next make an update, or I will make a smaller update video like the Dungeon Leveling versus Questing, which basically goes over some of my recent findings and the changes that I've made to the route and stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of how I've handled things of that nature. That's been happening a lot. Tanks join just to quit. Um... Well, in that particular case, the tank didn't quit the dungeon. He just uh, DC'd, right? So unless he was like intentionally inting or something like that, I I don't really think he was. I assume he just disconnected or something. Unless maybe somebody knows that there's like a weird thing going on where tanks are specifically doing that for some nefarious purpose. I, I don't fucking know. But as far as I could tell, it was just fairly innocuous. He probably disconnected, which, you know. It happens, right? Uh, it's hard to get people to always stick to a schedule. Think about how hard it was to get people to log in for a challenge run or challenge mode run every day. Yeah. I mean, for stuff like that, right? Like for challenge modes, we had literally a scheduled team for it. So we had a challenge a challenge mode team where we had, we didn't even uh, have like a set five people. It was like me, my friends, and like then we had like six other people that, would kind of rotate in whenever they could make it. And we would like, literally within our own friend group, we would post schedules for when we were doing challenge modes. Because yeah, for something like that, you absolutely did need like a preset team of people. So, you know, we would schedule that. We also, it was a little bit different because we did carries, right? So when you're doing carries, it's a little bit more serious in terms of like, you need to make sure that you're actually at a set time because the buyer needs to know when to show up, right? But... Uh, actually, I don't. I don't even need to use drums on Mage because I have Time Warp, or at least I, at some point, will get Time Warp. I think. Um, for now, I can put it on my bars because I don't think I actually have Time Warp yet. 
Uh, and then when I hit level 30, I will be able to uh, use new consumables. For now, I think I've gotten everything set up that I need to use. I can refresh my food buff, refresh this flask, and yeah, that's everything that I can do for now. Uh, if you're an old man, you can't play for four hours straight. Yep, same with um, same with a lot of people, right? That's why that's why it's hard to get stuff like that set up. Uh, let's see. As an arcane mage, you do have evocation. What level do I learn that? Uh, it doesn't show here. Is it not baseline or is evocation uh, a time warp? Isn't until forty nine. Wow. Uh, you kind of learn that pretty late. Which is weird, because you're able to use drums while leveling, so it seems strange to restrict Time Warp to level 49 when Drums of Fury work all the way from level 10, right? So, that is an odd restriction on Blizzard's part. Um, see, I'm going to use Arcane Surge here. Uh, so far at low levels, this definitely feels a little bit slower than... Uh, priest, but I think it's probably going to be a similar situation to Warlock, where at low levels it may not do like the insane damage that something like um, uh, which we call that something like Holy can do. But as I get to higher levels, this is probably going to start scaling a lot better when I have like all of my synergies and things like that. Oh, <laughs> the mobs despawned as I used Arcane Orb. All right. Uh, oh, what I can do is. I could take the invisibility thing. What is this? Consuming clear casting increases the damage of my next two arcane blasts. Well, I don't want that because I'm not using arcane blast. Uh, consuming arcane charges increases my haste. That seems quite good. Uh, and then whenever... Oh, I keep forgetting to turn on war mode. Uh, I'll turn on war mode in a little bit whenever I get to the sepulcher because I'm almost there anyway. Blink and shimmer apply slow. Oh, that's actually quite good. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually pretty nice utility. But now, because there's all these elite mobs, I can just use invisibility and skip right past them, and I get an 80% speed boost. Unfortunately, the, the speed boost only lasts for a few seconds into invisibility, but that's actually still good. That's, like, decent utility. I like that. Uh, okay, nice. We got a cutscene so I can catch up on chat. Uh, finished reading, Surge. Your mana regen is juiced after using... Oh, okay. I see. That explains it. Arcane. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of people. Oh. Yeah. Um, why didn't I grab the Fire Festival XP buff? The Fire Festival XP buff is not as good as people think it is. It is a 10% mob kill experience thing. And it takes, like, an entire minute to fully stack it up. So it's really not good. Um... I, I don't honestly think I'm even going to bother with it in this run unless there's one. I might, like, grab it right before I leave the Sepulcher, and then I can kill a bunch of rare mobs with the 10% buff, and I'll probably only stack it up to, like, 12 minutes or something just to make sure I get all the rare mobs covered. Um, but consistently keeping it up to 60 minutes is just a waste of time. Like, obviously, if you're leveling casually, right, click on the thing, AFK make coffee, you know, Whatever. Stacks up to a minute. But in a speedrun, sitting there for an entire minute channeling this thing just to get 10% extra mob kill XP is really not much. The bigger advantage of the Midsummer stuff is the bonfires, which are just one click and you get a full quest worth of experience. Arcane Surge cleave damage is also badass. That's good to know. Um, You love mop PvP so damn much? Yeah, I actually PvP'd a bit in mop. I think that was probably when WoW PvP peaked. But generally, I've never been a huge fan of WoW PvP, but it was it was decent back then. Uh, you like that mop raids weren't out at release, so World First wasn't necessarily about speed leveling? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Was that the first time they did that, actually? Because I know Wrath was out at release, I think. Or at least Wrath Classic, they put like a, a one-week cooldown. But I think historically, mop was the first time they did implement that delay. And then obviously, since then, that has consistently been a thing they've done. Um, but yeah, I, I do think, yeah, that probably was the first time they did that. Um, all right, here I'm going to go, before I turn in this quest, I'm going to turn on, or actually, you know what, here's something I can do. All right, here's what I can do, uh, because I'm about to turn on war mode, right? So I can go ahead and set my hearthstone here, make this in your home, all right, 
And I have, yeah, I have Teleport Orgrimmar. Perfect. It's one of the advantages of being a mage. You don't need to get the dollar on Hearthstone because you have uh, Teleports. Uh, so I'm going to set my Hearthstone there. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab, like I said, like five minutes uh, of this pull buff, which, you know, I only need to click on it for a second. Yeah, unfortunately, is that working? Oh, see, you know, I always thought that in order to get this buff, you needed to have the little thing channeling into the pole. Apparently, as long as you've right-clicked on it and you start moving, that's what gets the buff. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. I was really confused as to why this wasn't working properly when I tried it before. All right, so we're going to try to... Uh, grab all the rares as fast as possible. So I'm going to do gun shoes, and we're going to head up here. Uh, let's see. Carl Mom impeded my growth as a player. Raids are more important than bedtimes in school. <laughs> yeah, you hear that, Mom? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. You really loved Mop? Yeah, same. Uh, which one is the best expansion for you leveling, and which class and spec do I most prefer? Um, I mean, that one's pretty straightforward, right? Best expansion, or my favorite expansion is just the Cataclysm Revamp Zones. If I had to pick a specific expansion that isn't Cata Revamp Zones, then Wad. Not necessarily which is my favorite, right? If we're talking about leveling, which I assume is what it is. Um, yeah, it's it, which for leveling. Uh, which class and spec do I most prefer? Guardian Druid or Windwalker Monk. The ones that I use for the world record are the ones that I most prefer, honestly. Um, I would say if I could pick a leveling spec that I enjoy playing that isn't necessarily a world record contender, it would be Protection Paladin. Protection Paladin is very good. It is very, very fast. It's not necessarily world record material, but it is still a very fast leveling spec, and it's one that I personally really enjoy playing while leveling. Uh, if you want to play PvP, play Wrath Classic. Retail PvP is in deep shit. I mean, Wrath Classic PvP is also kind of dog shit, if we're being real. Um, I'm not going to try and argue that retail PvP is better. I also think retail PvP sucks. I have some friends who like it, and, you know, more power to them, but I personally think it's terrible. Uh, but I also don't really think Wrath PvP is great. I think Wrath PvP is pretty rock, paper, scissors, and not very enjoyable. That's personally not my opinion, right? Am I planning on making a guide for the 50% XP buff? No, because there's really nothing special. Um, I mean, if you want to level with the 50% XP buff, as I've showed in the recent runs that I did, it's literally just you follow my same route, but you just cut out the stuff that's less efficient. So there's no need for a guide for it. Uh, it's literally just the exact same route that I already have a guide for, but um, you do the fastest bits of it, right? That, that's all there is to it. So if you want to like follow along with one of these runs and see which parts of it I cut out, that's like the closest you'll get to a guide. It's there's also like no reason for me to make a guide for something that's going away in one week, right? Like if this was here for a really long time, like for instance, when when Winds of Wisdom came out, I made a mini guide for Winds of Wisdom specifically because there was an interesting interaction where if you leveled parts of the, the route in Winds of Wisdom ahead of time and then saved the rest for Dragonflight pre-patch, that was faster. Ooh, nice. Uh, Lost Son of Aragal, right on cue. Uh, so I made a guide for that, A, because Winds of Wisdom was around for like multiple months, so it was a much more long-term thing than the uh, buff we have right now, but also because there was actually a very interesting unique interaction in regards to how winds of wisdom impacted leveling at the time right now there's nothing really different it's literally just 50 percent faster leveling with the exact same route so no need to make a guide for that i remember when i switched to wow from everquest in 2005 as bad as classic leveling might feel compared to leveling these days it was a million times better than everquest leveling yeah obviously i never played everquest but i've heard about it and I've definitely heard that leveling in games like EverQuest and a lot of those really old school MMOs was a bit of a grind. I think even WoW Classic, from what I've heard, was like a huge step up or considered to be a huge step up at the time from MMOs back then. So, yeah, uh, definitely heard a lot of people echo that sentiment. Uh, I like the slow pace of TBC Classic. Yeah, it, it definitely appeals to a lot of people. I thought the concept was cool, but I was a bit sad when I finally came back to WoW and how the world had really changed. For my POV, I left during Wrath and came back during Shadowlands. Yeah. Uh, it, I can definitely understand why people didn't like Cataclysm as an expansion, like, at the time. So, I'm not saying I don't understand the criticism of Cataclysm, like, when it existed. I honestly think Cataclysm 
it was it's interesting like going back and looking because i've done a lot of reading into it it is an incredibly ambitious expansion like if you compare cataclysm to anything else that blizzard has ever done and you just look at exactly how much they changed it is crazy how much cataclysm changed the game like we would be lucky to get a fraction of the amount of new content that Cataclysm added to the game in any other WoW expansion, even like the good ones. Like I loved Legion, I loved Mop, but holy hell, Cataclysm was on a different level in terms of the amount it changed. And it's unfortunate that it was so poorly received because they really did add a lot. They went all out with that expansion. It's crazy looking for all the new features and like, I'll be looking into stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, that was added in Kata. And then I'm looking into something else. Oh, yep. That was also added in Kata. It added so many new things. Uh, the thing that I think they, it was a little bit ill-conceived is how much they kind of like changed without like giving players a way to get it back. So if they had added all of that content and they had like thought ahead and added ways to keep the existing game intact, I think everybody would have loved Cataclysm. It's because Cataclysm came with all of those changes to the things that people already loved. So it wasn't just people seeing it as, oh, we're getting all of this new content. It's like, we're getting all this new content, but then we're also losing all of this stuff in exchange. So I think a lot of people view it negatively. But the thing about that is, None of those downsides exist with Cataclysm Classic, because now we have Classic, we have Wrath, so there is nothing being lost here. If you make Cataclysm Classic, it is just a massive amount of new content with zero downside, because if you miss the old stuff, well, now Classic exists. But it, it is really crazy how much it got, it, how much got added, and I don't know. I it's a shame that it wasn't implemented better, um, but I really think for the time, and I mean, I remember as a kid. Right When I was looking at all the new stuff for Cataclysm when it first came out, I remember being in awe and I was like, oh, this looks so cool. And personally, as somebody who was really young when I first played Cataclysm, I was never like extremely attached to it. So uh, sure, I might have missed the old zones a little bit, but it wasn't something that I had played so much that I was really upset and sad to see it go. So for me, Cataclysm was fun when I played it as a kid. But I definitely understand why a lot of people really didn't like it a lot. Uh, it also did change the game, right? It changed the game a lot from how the feeling of like, uh... oh, nice. This is what I was hoping for. I was worried that I would waste my time uh, taking a detour here. But I was like, maybe there's a chest in this area. And there was. And so my detour was worth it. Okay, now I teleport to Orgrimmar. Um, but yeah, like a lot of people didn't like the gameplay changes. And I get that. Uh, but personally, I love the the way World of Warcraft plays now. So the closer that classic gets to retail, the happier I am. Because quite honestly, I prefer the retail gameplay. Um, my dad said, I see we're streaming again. I'm getting brunch. No coffee water for a bit. That's okay. Thank you. Have fun at brunch. Uh, let's see. Clear casting allows oh, arcane missiles to be cast while moving. Definitely pick that then. And yeah, I preset my hearthstone, so we're good to go. I can just head back to Silver Pine. Shifting power so early? Yeah. Getting shifting power this early is definitely huge. If it's not world first, no one really seems to care. Yep. Uh some all right AoE, but the big thing is the CDR. Oh, that's a fair point, yeah. Uh what race will I be prioritizing? Uh I'm not sure what you mean about what race I'll be prioritizing. Uh sorry. Uh, Senor Spicy Boy, I, I I don't know what the context of the uh, the question was, if you can repeat that when I catch up. I can't wait for you to get, to get Arcanosphere. It's the best PvP talent. Very fun. What exactly is the point of switching to the PTR? The point of switching to the PTR is that there are multiple leveling changes happening in 10.1.5 on the PTR. So you'll notice that I haven't, trading, I haven't trained riding at all yet, and yet if I mount up... I already have fast riding. Now, normally this was a thing that only happened for Death Knights and Druids, but now everybody automatically learns riding training. And also, the same thing applies for uh, flying and fast flying. You automatically learn that, and you also don't need to spend any gold on it. So that is a pretty significant change. It uh, makes The main thing is it makes it much cheaper, right? You no longer need to spend 5,000 gold to get riding training. But it also changes up the routing ever so slightly because now you're not having to constantly go back and forth to 
uh, like learn writing training, and it also kind of devalues the dollar on Hearthstone. Dollar on Hearthstone will still be worth getting because you'll still need to make like one or two pit stops, especially for war mode and for um, what's it called for war mode and uh, heading to lock mode on, right? So on alliance, you'll have to go there. And oh yeah, and when you enable Warlords of Draenor, you'll have to head back. So having Dollar on Hearthstone there still saves time. Still not necessary, obviously, if you're playing like Mage or Monk or something like that. But it does make Dollar on Hearthstone less impactful. Uh, where Intellect buff? Oh shit, you're right. <laughs> uh, I should be doing that. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting about that. Isn't questing faster than just queuing random Dungeon Finder? No, not necessarily. Questing is faster later on. Random Dungeon Finder is faster early on uh, if you get lucky. It, Random Dungeon Finder is like a little bit RNG based. And as you can see here, I got like the worst RNG possible in this run. But if you watch like my priest speed run from yesterday, I would actually say my recent priest speed run is a great example of what happens when you get good RNG with your dungeons. I got fantastic dungeon RNG in my run from yesterday, and it ended up saving me a ton of time. So it's a little bit RNG, could be bad, could be good. Um, but I would say on average, it's going to be a bit faster from 10 to 25 compared to questing. And it lets you cut out a lot of the really inefficient questing bits, which is one of the best parts of it. Uh, ooh, we got a chest in there. That's nice. Cataclysm trailer was awesome. Expansion was mediocre at best. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think there was definitely a lot of hype in Cataclysm and it didn't live up to all of it. But I think... It was still a fun expansion. I had fun in Cataclysm, right? It was the first expansion I really got into the game. And then Mists of Pandaria later on was the first expansion I really got into raiding. Have I tried adding the guild banner on big pulls? Uh, yes, in world records I do. But keep in mind that because I'm on the PTR, I won't have access to the guild stuff. So if I wanted to, I could have gotten an invite to my retail guild for the first 20 levels, but it would have been kind of irrelevant. Uh... So I just didn't bother with it. But yeah, for world records, I actually will be doing that. I've started doing that in some of the other runs. Uh, also, I, when I used to do runs exclusively on the PTR, that wasn't possible. So it needs to be a live server run, which nowadays I do a lot of my world record attempts on live servers because dungeon spamming is kind of required. So yeah, uh, I'll be integrating the guild banners in. Uh, let me scroll up a little bit because I think I missed some messages. YouTube skipped down to the bottom. Um, have I ever tried Resto Shaman for leveling? It actually has a lot better damage than Elemental. I have, yes. Uh, I haven't done a full run with Resto Shaman, but I have messed around with it a little bit in my own free time. And you're, you're definitely correct that it is actually good. Resto Shaman, along with like Holy Priest, is I think one of the best healers for leveling. Preservation Evoker is actually not bad either, but obviously Evoker is weird because it starts at 60, right? Uh, but yeah, I've tried Resto Shaman. It's definitely solid. Um... I just started playing WoW yesterday. Do I have any advice for a complete noob? Only advice I can give for a brand new player is just take your time. Honestly, if you're outside of my leveling guides, right, which I would say you can use my leveling guides as a new player if you want. They, uh, right now, as of this exact moment, if you're a brand new player, my like main leveling guide won't work for you just because of the way that the um, Chromie time stuff works. But within this next patch, one of the other leveling changes coming in 10.1.5 is that all new players will be able to use Chromie Time. So my route will work for everybody, including new players the moment this patch comes out. But also at the same time, I would say in many cases, brand new players probably shouldn't really be using my leveling route. Because my leveling route is for speed leveling, right? It's for, you've already played World of Warcraft a little bit, and you're not interested in experiencing the zones and taking your time and doing the story, all you want to know is how do I level up as fast as possible? But one of the best things about playing World of Warcraft for the first time is that you get to experience all these cool stories, all these cool zones like that have existed in this game for many, many, many years. So really the best advice I can give to a new player is like, don't follow my guides and just kind of learn on your own for a little bit. Just enjoy the game, take your time, figure things out. And then once you've like really settled into WoW, then you can start looking at guides. Or at least then you should, right? Because then you'll be able to really soak in that information, get better as a player, and stuff like that. But early on, just have fun. Don't worry about min-maxing. Don't worry about any of that crap. Just just enjoy the game. Uh, it's also the reality of World of Warcraft, right? Is It's just 
too large of a game to really give like any specific tips on there's just way too much to learn there's no single thing i could tell you that would be like aha that is like a really useful bit of information it is just kind of a, the type of game that you need to really like understand the basics first by figuring out yourself and then you just want to find information bit by bit it's like you want to learn more about this subject okay find a guide on that subject you want to learn more about that find a guide for that a uh, lot a lot a lot of different aspects to this game a lot of different ways to play this game, right? You know, uh, no two players or most two players probably won't be playing World of Warcraft the same way. You can do dungeons, you can do PvP, you can do raids, lots of stuff. Or you can just be like a transmog collector and just try to do old raids and fun world content and stuff like that. Lots of different things to do. Uh, are hardcore official servers up yet? Kind of. Uh, the PTR is up and it goes up to level 30 and... I haven't played hardcore hardcore at all, but from what I've heard, most people don't make it to level 30. So like, I mean, for, I would say the average player, the entire hardcore experience is probably already active because, you know, most people probably won't get further than that. But, you know, uh, it, it's also, I should say, if you are interested in trying classic hardcore, from what I've heard, uh, the PTR doesn't require an active WoW sub. So you can literally go play classic hardcore up to level 30 right now completely for free. Which is actually pretty cool. Uh, kind of surprised Blizzard did that. You would think they would make it so people actually have to pay money. You know, usually Blizzard goes with the greediest option, but nice change of pace, I suppose. Um, hello. Uh, someone said, hi, man. Greetings from Bulgaria. Unfortunately, I cannot read that name. I'm not, I have no idea how to pronounce that, but thank you. Uh, hello to you, too. It's so strange to see with shifting power already. Yeah. Um... I need retail for the APM, yeah. You've loved PvP this X-Pack more than you have in a while. Maybe it's because of the simplicity of just buy your gear and you're good to go. Yeah, no, I can say for sure the gearing methods in retail right now, especially for PvP, uh, are much, much, much better. That one is, I've universally heard from all my friends who PvP that getting their PvP sets has been so much easier. The only thing that some of them have complained about is... Because a lot of the best PvP stuff is tied behind, like, crafting. So, I remember one of my friends was telling me that in order to get his best-in-slot PvP embellishments, he needs to use his sparks. But, you know, he's on our Mythic Raid team. So, for his main character, he already needs to use his sparks on completely separate items that are mandatory for aid, like Spore Cloak or whatever. So, he was kind of annoyed at that. He had to literally create a completely separate character to... Uh, use P or to PvP on because he would not be able to get a lot of the really good PvP embellishments if he actually wanted to push his rating. And I wasn't aware of that until he brought that up. But I was like, oh yeah, that is actually kind of a not so great oversight because it kind of punishes people for wanting to do everything in the same character. So I think in some ways it could be argued that entry level PvP is better now. But from what I've heard, end game like min maxi pushing rating stuff which, mind you, I only have secondhand knowledge of from my friends, but I have been told that it is much worse now because of the fact that crafted gear is required and obviously sparks are time-gated, which makes that a little bit problematic. So, you know, a little bit give and take there. Um, oh, shit. Uh, cancel gun shoes and... Oh, no, I don't want to do... I want to do this one. This is Honor the Flame. Right, yeah, it's a free experience. Cool. Uh, what else? I think I'm... Good. I just need to spend talents, but actually I can spend talents the moment I hand in all these quests. So I'll just, I'll wait now. Um, didn't Kata add trial accounts, the non-time gated ones? Uh, did it? It may have. I, I don't think that was Kata though. Actually, I, I don't think it was. I want to say, oh yeah, you can see here, automatically learns uh, flying at level 30. So that's actually really, really nice. Uh, successfully interrupting an enemy reduces the counter spell's cooldown. Your barriers heal you for the damage absorbed. What gives me the most damage? Hmm. Uh, I guess reduplication, probably. Ring of Frost. Hmm... Last wave is good. Uh, when your barrier receives melee attacks, you have a 10% chance to get clear casting. That seems quite good. 
Uh, increases haste. I mean, only 2%, but that's still fine. Frost Nova can withstand more damage before breaking. Eh. What was it that I, I know that I want to, I think, pick based on what the end talents that I want are. Increases my movement speed after using Blink. That's nice. I think a lot of these talents aren't amazing for leveling. There's like a lot of utility stuff. I don't really think any of these are going to be super critical. I mean, this gives me a second lust, but I'm not really going to get there until right at the end of the leveling process. Yeah, I don't really think any of these are super impactful. A lot of the mage... Like, there's a lot of nice utility in here, but I don't really think any of these mage talents are like, wow, this is amazing. Like, compared to like some of the, the priest class talents that we looked at yesterday, some of those were really, really fucking broken. A lot of these are solid. You know, they're nice utility abilities for leveling specifically. I'm sure a lot of these are better at max level, but I'm specifically talking about its viability for leveling. Uh, let's see. Arcane Blast. So we don't press that. Improved clear casting seems fine. Um, oh, Amplification is locked behind an Arcane Blast talent. That's unfortunate. Uh, Resonance. Oh, definitely take Resonance. Yeah, I know that one is good. Okay, so I want neither one of these. I'm just not going to take a PvP talent. Neither one of those are useful. Uh, Alter Time, I will put on Shift H. Alright. Yeah, I'm not terribly impressed with the Mage class talent tree, at least for leveling, but from what I heard, a lot of my Mage friends say that the changes to the uh, class talents are really good for like endgame stuff. Like it offers a lot of good Mythic Plus utility. So, you know, even if it's not amazing for leveling, that doesn't mean it's not a good change, right? I've heard pretty good feedback from my mage friends about the changes. They were talking about it a lot. Uh, let's see. Just want to see if I need to refresh my buffs. I do. And, oh yeah, I have a few more things that I can use now because I hit level 30. So let me, let me quickly add that to my bars before I forget. I can use this now. I can use Ghost Elixir now. And Volcanic Potion. And that's it. Okay, we're good. Uh, let me catch up on chat. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure when the trial accounts got added. I don't remember. Uh, there would always be, oh, let me scroll up. There will always be hardcore classic regular eras for nostalgic lovers, current cat, current classic catamop, et cetera, in retail. It's a perfect ecosystem for everyone. Yeah, I agree. I think that is like the best way to do it. I don't really see how mop or wrath classic existing impacts like wrath classic enjoyers at all. You know, they have their game. I have mine. Uh, can I, I guess I'll just blink and then use my speed thing. I think I really just spam Arcane Barrage at this point. That seems to be the best thing. Spam Arcane Barrage. When there's multiple mobs, I spam Arcane Explosion. And what does more damage? Fire Blast is 265. Barrage is 325. Yeah. And okay, so there's like literally no reason to use Fire Blast. I can just take that off of my bars. Even with zero Arcane Charges. What the fuck? Oh, did I get hit by that? thing from Korok the Colossus? Oh, that is such a weird hitbox. I don't think I've ever been hit by that rock before. I didn't even know that did damage. I thought that was purely like a cosmetic thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let me just heal up then. That was that was surprising. I mean, or... Uh, for mage leveling, is arcane better? Generally speaking, yes. Historically, Arcane is better, right? So, obviously, what I'm doing right now is I'm testing Arcane. I haven't played Arcane in a little while. And also, a lot of the people who I knew, like, a few years ago who did Arcane Mage speed leveling, they don't do speed leveling anymore. So, I haven't really seen results for Arcane. As far as I know, nobody's really running it, like, seriously at the moment. Oh, yeah, I have flying. I'm sitting here running on the ground, and meanwhile, I could literally be flying because I'm level 30. Um, so I don't know for sure if Arcane is, uh, still the fastest, 
But from what I can tell, all of the things that made Arcane Mage a good leveling spec back in the day, they're still here. That stuff hasn't really changed. So I would imagine it is. Right? I don't think that has changed at all. It seems to be still pretty good. Uh, the main issue with Fire and Frost is they're just way more turdy compared to Arcane. Arcane has like a lot of stuff that you can use while moving, which is the main advantage to it. Because, you know, as a caster, if you're not able to reliably kite as a caster while leveling, it's going to seriously impact your efficiency. And Arcane can do that. Uh, as we saw, Shadow Priest can do that fairly consistently now. Hasn't always been the case, but a lot of the new Shadow stuff makes them much better at kiting. So Shadow is actually quite nice now. Oh shit, I, I've never seen them run that far off the path. That is not normal. Uh, didn't get in combat though, so that's good. Uh, what was the point of going back to Orgrimmar just there? Did I wait until level 27 to turn on war mode? Um, kind of. So I waited until I got to the Sepulcher to turn on war mode. Uh, I'm kind of, like, I could have turned it on earlier, but because of the dungeon leveling, it got skewed a little bit. And I also didn't want to go turn it on until I swapped the PTR. So it's kind of a combination of, I waited until I was around level 25 to swap to the PTR, and I didn't want to turn on war mode until then, just because it's a little bit different uh, compared to live servers, because I would also have to learn writing training if it was, uh, if I did it on live servers, and I don't want to do that because I'm trying to simulate what it's going to be like after. And also, once I was already at level 25 at that point, and I swapped to the PTR, I was like right at the end of the quest line before heading to the Sepulcher. So then I finished up what I was doing, I headed to the Sepulchre, I set my Hearthstone there, and then because War Mode puts you in a separate phase, I went ahead and I got all of the nearby rare mobs. That way I got like a nice chunk of bonus experience. And then after I had killed all of the rare mobs outside of War Mode, I teleported to Orgrimmar, enabled War Mode, and then Hearth back to the Sepulchre. So that's like my reasoning. Could I have done that a bit more efficiently? Yes, but the fact that I'm swapping between live servers and the PTR makes it a little bit weird. And also... um. Uh, whatchamacallit, uh, words, words, I, I also, yeah, I, I probably could have done that a little bit better regardless, but I'm just trying to focus on chat, so, um, maybe I should have gone a little bit earlier, tough to say for sure, uh, but I, I did have at least some reasoning for delaying it a little past level 20. It's also, mind you, skewed because of the 50% buff. Normally, without the 50% buff, I would have swapped at the Sepulchre anyways, uh, generally speaking, that's when you're going to be hitting level 20. At worst, you'll be hitting level 21 by the time you get to the Sepulchre without the 50% buff. So the Sepulchre is generally speaking when I swap in traditional runs just because the timing tends to work out like that. Um, but because of the 50% buff, a little bit different. Uh, finally get to catch a live stream. Hope all is good, brother. It is, Dominic. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you here. Have I done an Evoker speed run? Ah... Uh... Yes and no. Uh, Evoker speedrun. Um, so if anyone watched the Evoker speedrun that I did, you probably know why I'm a little bit like, ugh. I tried speedrunning Devastation Evoker during the Dragonflight beta once. So Evoker speedruns are inherently a little bit weird, right? Because they start at level 60. So it's only 60 to 70. And 60 to 70 speedruns are like already a bit hard so it's kind of hard to like compare evoker to other classes just because of their unique starting position and you might say oh we'll just compare the time of evoker from 60 to 70 to another class's 60 to 70 but if i'm comparing like my times coming out of 10 to 60 leveling to an evoker starting at level 60 it's a little bit different like evoker starts with different gear and stuff like that uh, and especially before heirlooms were working for level 60 characters or before they got updated to work uh it was just kind of oh arcane cleave is very good actually uh let's see i'm gonna take diverted energy yeah i, I want to get energized barriers i think that's one of the best things that i can pick out of the talents at the moment so evokers are a little bit weird as a result of that and evokers with starting gear in the Dragonflight beta, Devastation, when undergeared, is one of the most miserable leveling experiences I've ever played. Devastation is very bursty, right? So, uh, having played it since then, because I, I have an Evoker at 70 and I've played it a little bit, Devastation is very much, while leveling, you either, like, kill everything in your burst window just really quickly, or you don't have enough gear to kill things quickly, so it turns into a grind fest, and then you're just kiting for your life and just existence is pain. 
So it's uh it, it's give or take. I think like when I tried doing evoker speedruns at the start of Dragonflight, because you didn't have access to all the same stuff like the crafted gear, the upgraded heirlooms, and you know, especially on the, the beta servers, you weren't able to buy like BOE items or things like that. It was honestly a pretty miserable experience. But nowadays I might at least try an evoker speedrun just to see. But to give you an idea of how bad Devastation was at leveling without, like, you know, pre-made gear stuff, I actually had a faster time in the Dragonflight beta leveling as Preservation than Devastation. Because a lot of Evoker leveling when under gear turned into, like, a long slog grindfest regardless. So Preservation allowed you to just stay alive. Like, Preservation actually has really good survivability. And it's also not terrible uh, in terms of, like, damage and stuff, while leveling at least. So I actually started playing Preservation more often than Devastation. But Devastation definitely would be a good leveling spec, provided it had, like, all of the tools. But it's really hard to get a good estimate of that. I think what'll be more interesting to see with Evoker is... Also, yeah, my NPCs aren't coming to help me, so that's making things take a while. Uh, what'll be more interesting to see with Evoker is how it turns out as a leveling spec once Blizzard inevitably lowers it to the same threshold as other specs. The problem is it may end up in a similar category with Demon Hunter, where it'll have like its own unique starting experience, and then it, I can't really compare it to like other runs, but it, it'll still be, I guess, more comparable at that point than it is right now. Um, but yeah, I haven't really done like any fast evoker speed runs. It's just, it's a difficult thing to do. I also just, I don't really enjoy doing 60 to 70 speed runs I've done a few of them. It's honestly kind of grindy, kind of boring. Uh, I might do a few more uh, 60 to 70 speedruns with the changes in 10.1.5, because I actually quite like the dungeon changes they're making. It'll kind of make the process a little bit smoother, uh, but we'll see. It, it's also just not something I'm terribly interested in. Definitely the main issue for me, I can talk about this now. I know somebody brought this up earlier, and I said I would talk about it later on. Uh, so regarding 60 to 70 leveling runs, uh, the main issue that I have with it right now is, uh, there's two important things actually for starters, the memory leak. So if you were not around for my streams back in, uh, Dragonflight beta, uh, or if you, uh, you would also know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the, I think my view, yeah, the fact that I can see Dunmoreau all the way over there. Um, I think my view distance is up, like, way too high. That might be what's causing me to lose some frames here. Yeah, let me, let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, hopefully my FPS goes up, because I've been dropping a bit of frames, which has been kind of annoying. Uh, but then when I saw Dunmoreau all the way from Gilneas, I'm like, I think I have max view distance on, and that's probably causing some performance problems. Uh, so that'll help, hopefully. Uh, there we go. And I respawned. Okay, I can continue once I've started this RP, right? Yeah, so uh, the memory leak issues, I have not been able to find a fix for them. At this point, I'm pretty sure there is no reliable fix for the memory leak problems. It, they just are what they are. And they consistently happen in Dragonflight content, especially in the open world. Valdraken causes a memory leak 100% of the time. And now it's happening to some of my friends too. Ever since 10.1, my friends have also been getting the memory leak. So it's not just me. Uh, a lot of like zones or like inst or phased areas within the Dragonflight quest line causes a memory leak. It is a really bad problem. It has not been fixed yet. It is my biggest problem with Dragonflight so far is the performance is terrible. It has some of the worst performance issues I've ever encountered in World of Warcraft in my entire time playing it ever since 2005. Uh, it's very, very, very poorly optimized. So that is unfortunate because it means that every single time I've tried to record or stream uh, 60 to 70 leveling without fail, I will get at least one memory leak, and that causes my OBS to stutter really badly for a few minutes until I get the problem resolved. I can fix it momentarily, right? Like, I can restart WoW, and it settles down, and then I reopen it, and it fixes the problem, but the memory leak will completely destroy my stream performance for, like, three minutes. And here's the problem, right? If I'm doing a video... And I'm recording like offline a 60 to 70 run and I get a memory leak. 
sure, the actual video performance itself will tank, right? The quality of the stuff. And my audio will get fucked. But what I can go is then I can take that footage, I can go into Adobe Premiere, and I can like edit me talking over it or something like that. Or as I did in my 10 to 70 speed run where it was plagued with memory leaks, I can even add in bonus footage. Like I took some clips of me playing Hearthstone and stuff like that and threw it into the speed run. When it's a video, I can do that. I can fix it in editing. When it's a stream, I can't do that. And also the problem with streaming, right, is if the entire stream turns into a laggy mess and I start chopping it in and out, a lot of people are just going to click off the stream. It is what it is, right? Um, so I, and while that may not necessarily be the worst thing in the world from like, you know, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I'll still keep watching, right? And a lot of people will come back. But when I'm doing a video, right, if I encounter a memory leak, I at least know, okay, I can fix this later. When I am streaming and I encounter a memory leak, I, I just get super anxious. I, the main reason that I stopped streaming back in Dragonflight, uh, because of the memory leaks, memory leaks and a few other issues, but largely the memory leaks, was just honestly for mental health reasons. It, you have no idea how just soul-crushing it feels when you're, like, you have all this stuff set up for a stream, and you're, like, you, you've done all this preparation, and then you finally start doing the stream, and you spend half of the time trying to fix technical issues. And it, I just felt miserable. Like, I was just so depressed after every single stream that went poorly because of the memory leak stuff. And I would just, I, every single time I started streaming, I would just dread it. It, it. I had this, like, pit in my stomach where I'm just like, I don't want to stream. Because I know that I'm going to run into some issues. And I know that I'm going to have to sit here and spend all this time trying to figure out what's wrong. And solve all these problems right in the middle. And then, you know, viewers will be dropping off and I have to watch the counter and watch that happen. And it, it's just a terrible, terrible, terrible feeling. So that is the main reason why I don't really want to do uh, 10 or 60 to 70 speed runs. Uh, the other problem is, at least for right now, at this exact moment, the like 60 to 70 hasn't really changed a lot on live servers since the last time I did a run of it. It is changing in 10.1.5. However, almost all of the changes for 60 to 70 in 10.1.5 are dungeon related. It's like the dungeon quests are easier to pick up and stuff like that. So I'll be integrating dungeons into the 60 to 70 route a lot more. Here's the problem. It's only available on 10.1.5 PTR and you can't do dungeons on the PTR because there's nobody testing it. So either I get friends to help me test it. What, what, what is happening? Why did the RP stop? The quest just stopped working. Okay, great. Um, I, maybe I got too far away. I guess if you talk to that vendor, it despawns. I don't know what happened. Uh, hopefully it doesn't bug out again. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, unless I get like a group of friends to help me test, you know, I can't really test the changes at all but also that's not really realistic because i'm always trying to test things from a solo player perspective and even if i test it right now with a group of friends it's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison of what it's going to be like when the new stuff comes out because you know the new stuff kind of relies on you you're you're doing quests as you level and then you're queuing and you have to like integrate the dungeons like weave them into the queue so if I were to really try to recreate like an accurate simulation of what it's going to be like after 10.1.5 comes out, I would need to basically have my friends sit there, do nothing, and just wait for me to level up. And then once I hit a certain level, when I would normally queue for a random dungeon as part of the route, then they would help me out. And it's just, it's too scuffed, right? So I'm not going to do that. Um, which means that a lot of my 10.1.5 60 to 70 testing will have to be after the patch has gone live. because for practical reasons, that's the only thing I, I can do. So I'm doing my, I'm primarily doing 10 to 60 testing right now for all of the 10.1.5 changes. And to be honest, I don't really think that any of the 10 to 60 changes are impactful enough to make a full video for. So like I made a video for the dungeon leveling stuff, right? But that was because that was a significant change to the 10 to 60 route. This stuff is pretty minor. What I'll probably do is I will put a pinned comment on my video guide discussing, you know, the changes to writing training and stuff like that. And then obviously my written guide will receive an update because, you know, I can do that. But I don't really think, at least for now, that I'm going to make a full video guide specifically for 
uh, 10 to 60. Just because the only thing that changes is now you dollar on Hearthstone, you still want to get. It's just less important. You don't need to use it as much. And you don't need to spend as much gold on riding. And then the only other change is that you go up to level 61. And the fact that you can go up to level 61 means that you stay in Chromie Time one level longer, which doesn't change the route at all. Because, and a lot of people seem to be confused by this, at least. I, what I'm probably going to do whenever I remake my guide for the Void Lord expansion, whenever that comes out, uh, I'll probably uh, include like an emphasis at the very end of the guide, basically saying, there is extra stuff here, okay? So just because you've reached Gorgrond and finished Gorgrond does not mean you're done. So, or, uh, Spires of Rack is at the end of the route for a reason. Because a lot of people will level without experience boosts, they'll finish Gorgrond, and then they'll tell me, your guide is incomplete. You're missing a lot at the end. And it's like, no. Talador and Spires is part of the guide. Like, I included that at the end, and I basically said, I'm like, do, just quest in Talador and Spires until you're done. Because it's impossible for me to say how long it's going to take somebody to level up, because there's so many XP modifiers. Um, so in my speed runs, I don't end up doing Talador and Spires because I have, you know, the 10% potion, I have war mode, a lot of times I'm leveling with other buffs on top of that. So generally speaking, my speed runs are done, um, uh, what you call it, from a perspective of you have like 20% bonus XP, 10% from war mode, 10% from the potion, sometimes more if you're playing Alliance, but I generally don't factor that in. But if you're not using that, there's still extra stuff included in the end. For people, but a lot of people just won't listen to that part. They will try to compare themselves directly to my speed run, and then they'll be like, I'm missing experience. It's like, well, yeah, but there's still other parts of the guide. So I'm probably going to have to like emphasize that much more clearly next time because a lot of people still seem to be getting confused about that. Um, I don't know why I got on that tangent. All, all that to say, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because level 61, right? Even though there's one additional level, it doesn't change the route. You know, there's still a bunch of extra stuff at the end. Um, for my speed runs, right, I'm just doing more stuff in Gorgrond because half the time I don't even finish Gorgrond by the time I hit max level. So that's not really going to change much. Oh, shit. Uh, that mob stunned me very quickly. Normally it takes a few seconds for it to get the stun off. That was like literally within the first three seconds. Um... But yeah, for even casual players, you just do a bit more Inspires. So it's not going to change much at all. Uh, not really worth making a new video on. What I will do, though, is I will do a updated 60 to 70 guide, because that has also changed quite significantly since I made my launch guide. And I've said before that I've... I, I wouldn't say I've been meaning to make an updated guide for it. I've always planned to make an updated guide for it, because it's just impossible to perfectly test adventure mode in the beta. I simply didn't have enough time, and even then, there have been changes since launch outside of 10.1.5, right? The route is always always changing for new stuff like that. So I've always intended to make a new 60 to 70 guide, but what I kind of said at the start of Dragonflight is that I will wait until a significant shakeup has happened with leveling to make my actual updated 60 to 70 guide. And this is a big enough shakeup. The changes to dungeon quests, the addition of heirlooms, stuff like that. 60 to 70 leveling has changed enough that I think now is probably a really good time to make a full, complete guide for it. I did the same thing in Shadowlands. I had a campaign guide at launch, and then during patch 9.1, or it was, yeah, patch 9.1.5, I believe, which actually ends up being the same as in Dragonflight. 10.1.5 is when they're doing these changes. Um, so that's generally when they do it. Uh, I made an updated guide in Shadowlands, and that kind of served as a replacement for my launch Shadowlands guide. So that is what I plan on doing. The only unfortunate thing is I can't do that before the patch goes live, just due to the fact that a lot of it is dungeon-related changes. But right now, I'm focusing on 10 to 60 stuff, because that's what I can test on the PTR. Then when the patch goes live and I'm able to fully test the dungeon changes, I will you know, do more testing runs specifically for 60 to 70, and then I will uh, update my written guide for 60 to 70, and I will post a new video guide for 60 to 70. What I'll also probably do, just because, is within that new 60 to 70 video guide, at the very end, as like a footnote, I will include the 10 to 60 changes, basically saying, oh, and by the way, while it's not enough to make a full guide for, uh, this new patch has also brought with it some changes to the existing uh, 10 to 60 route, so... 
if you still plan on leveling up more characters through there, uh, here are some things that you need to know. And I'll spend like 30 seconds going over the basic things that we've already talked about. So that is probably how I will handle that. All of that to say, though, I want to at least do one. Uh, hmm. I want to do one 60 to 70 testing run uh, before the patch goes live. And what I'll probably do is when I do my new world record run, I've been kind of debating it. I think I will do a full uh, 10 to 70 run again. Not entirely sure, still thinking about it. Um, but I think the main problem is if I were to do 10 to 60 now, it would kind of not be accurate because of the change to or the thing with level 61 not working. So I think what I would want to do, actually, yeah, that, that does make it really awkward. The fact that Chromie Time 61 isn't working because that actually does change Dragonflight a lot. The, the change to level 61 in Chromie Time has more of an impact on the 60 to 70 process than it does on 10 to 60. Because what that means is that you're staying in Chromie Time longer, which means that when you're leveling through Dragonflight, you can delay crafting experience until later. So that is that is actually a bit... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how I would handle that. I'll have to think about that. Um, I'll probably do a 10 to 70 world record attempt, though, with the... I'll do it with the 50% buff and stuff because, you know, that's what people have been wanting to see, like a super duper fast run with all of this stuff. So I'll do 10 to 70, right? And you'll at least get to see it there in the latter half of the 10 to 70 run. But what I will also do is tomorrow's stream will be a 60 to 70 speed run. Specifically tomorrow. That is the only one that I will do uh, before the patch goes live. So most of these runs will be. 10 to 60. Tomorrow's run will be just a 60 to 70 run, and then uh, I'm going to be doing... It's going to be kind of like a, a split stream, right? Where the first half of the, the stream will be the 60 to 70 run, which honestly shouldn't take very long, right? 60 to 70 was already significantly faster than, um, uh, than 10 to 60, even before the changes, so now it should be even extra fast. Uh, so that'll probably only take like two hours or so, give or take. And once I'm done with that, we'll be doing something different uh, for the second half of the stream, which I won't spoil until we get there. Uh, but that is currently my plan for tomorrow's stream. Let's see, Chrono Shift. Oh yeah, Chrono Shift's very good. I like that. Uh, Touch of the Magi is good. Nether Tempest is good, I think. Right? This doesn't really seem that good, though. 169 damage, that's like less than Arcane Barrage, though. Am I missing something? What is the advantage of using Nether Tempest? 95 Arcane damage over 12 seconds to the target and nearby enemies within 10 yards. Limit one target. Does it just scale better with Arcane Charges compared to Arcane Barrage? Yeah, because this is Arcane Charge deals 33% more damage per charge. This deals 67. I still can't see this being worth using over just spamming Arcane Barrage, which already does plenty of damage. Uh, Arcane Orb gains one additional charge. That is good, though. And then I haven't gotten any new PvP talents. And what should I take here? Probably just another Diverted Energy. That looks looks good. Um, Yeah, I think that covers everything that I wanted to say about 60 to 70, though. So I hope, I hope that answered all the questions. If somebody has an additional question, let me know. And then whenever I catch up to that point in chat, I will try to answer it. Uh, okay, let me keep going. Uh, hello, Azero. Good to see you. Um, let me see what else. Where was I? There are only two stat options for PvP pieces, so most of the times you have to craft almost half your gear to get good stats since they're not available on the vendor. Yeah, that's true for optimizing your secondaries. That's a good point as well. Uh, I feel like there should be an option to run lower item level, no smart cost, embellished PvP gear that still scales up to a reasonable PvP item level, but doesn't scale in PvE and counts for the two embellishments. Yeah, stuff like that would definitely be a nice quality of life. I don't know why I'm trying to LOS this guy. I don't really don't need to. Um, I agree that anything that makes it so you don't need to waste sparks in PvP gear for people that don't really or play both content would definitely make it a lot more approachable. 
Because I know for a fact I have zero interest in trying Dragonflight PvP. I already was not super interested, but I did have, like, a momentary, like, period of insanity where I'm like, maybe I should try Solo Shuffle before I realized, wait, why am I thinking about playing PvP in this game? Um, but I did consider it, and then I realized, oh wait, I need gear, and, uh, I'm, I'm not just gonna randomly do PvP with, like, you know, my PvE gear, so I just didn't do it. But I also just don't really think I would have enjoyed it much anyway. But I've heard people talking about solo shovel sh words, uh, shuffle in a good way. But I still don't think it would really appeal to me a lot. Uh, is there a chest in this room? There is no chest in this room, but there might be a chest in one of these ruined houses. Tends to be a decent amount around here. Uh, the duel to the death mechanic is really interesting, but I imagine people will find a way to cheese it. Yeah, like, oh, man, it's so dumb. The, um... The classic hardcore community has to have, like, the most amount of smooth brain idiots I've ever seen in my entire life. There are so many people talking about, like, Oh my god, it doesn't have, like, solo Seth found options. How am I going to know that elder people playing with me are also elite gamers if I don't have a solo self found server? Like, these fucking idiots need an actual, like hard set server rule set to tell them how to have fun like motherfucker if you want to play solo self found just fucking play solo self found nobody's stopping you and then that shit and like the people are saying that the trophy of ears thing is bad because you can cheese it it's like so fucking what who cares if somebody else cheesed for their trophy of ears that's not the point it's just meant to be a fun mechanic to let you track how many players you've killed. If another person cheats, what, is the fact that somebody else has a higher trophy of ears than you going to ruin your gaming experience? Are you suddenly going to have less fun, at, you know, killing uh, people and collecting their ears because some other random idiot, like, had his friends create trial accounts to help him farm for it? Who gives a shit? Like... It's just, there's, I've seen so many just absolutely brain dead takes regarding classic hardcore. And like, I think it's interesting, but some people, it's like, I, I really don't get it. it. There are just a lot of people who need another person or, or company or whatever to tell them how to have fun. It's like, do you think that there's an official World of Warcraft speedrunning rule set? Fuck no. Blizzard didn't create this for me. I decided that I'm just going to speed level because I think it's fun. There's no official speedrunning mode. All of the shit that you see in these videos are things that either myself or another community created as our own fun rule set that we use. Nobody is telling me that I have to do like XYZ thing uh, or that I'm like not allowed to use certain items. I am, am apply my own restrictions to my own runs because that's all that fucking matters. All that matters is that it's a personal challenge that I set for myself to try and level as fast as possible. And I ex even exclude a few things that I consider are unfair. So there, there for the record, there are people, right, who have faster times than I do for speedruns. And you want to know how much of a shit I give? None. Because a lot of them either get boosted by other people, or they use, like, extreme exploits that are not replicable by any other players. So it's not a real speedrun. It's just you found a funny exploit and you used it to, like, hit max level in an hour. Good for you, buddy. Like, but that's not the entire point of this. The entire point is I'm trying to find a way to speed level solo using the actual mechanics of the game, right? in a way that other people can replicate. That is the entire point of my challenge, and it is entirely self-imposed. So the fact that all of these other hardcore classic Andes need somebody else to tell them how to have fun, it's just fucking wild to me. As somebody who has been doing basically the same thing, but in retail for years now. Like, it just fucking blows my mind. Um, but yeah, I actually think the String of Ears thing is cool. And I, I'm glad that Blizzard is like at least, you know, making some changes like they did say they're going to increase the level to like 19 or something like that before you can do it which cool right i do think that there is a certain element of like as a game designer you need to make sure that the most fun way to do something is also the most optimal that is ultimately your goal in order to make a good game so i do think obviously blizzard should look at stuff like that and say okay right you know we need to make it so um, you know, people aren't going to be cheesing this and basically ruining the experience for themselves because they're idiots and they don't know how to have fun, right? So making the system a bit better and making it so the best way to get it is also the most fun? Good. Glad Blizzard's doing that. But the fact that this is even something that people are working themselves up about is just wild to me. And the solo self-found thing, I think, is just even dumber. Like, the fact that Blizzard, or they, people want Blizzard to put restrictions on other people 
just because. Like, I can tell you right now, I'm going to try hard Hardcore Classic, and there is not a chance in hell that I am following the solo self-found or whatever other rule sets that people want to do, right? You know, I could if I want to. I've leveled characters and classic. Like, I played, um, whatchamacallit, I played Fresh Servers in Wrath when they came out. And that was basically solo self-found because like nothing was being sold in the auction house for the first few days. And the things that were, were like either extremely overpriced or garbage, right? So I basically played fresh Wrath servers as solo self-found. And you know what? It was fun as an experience once or twice, but having played both, like, you know, using the auction house while leveling in classic and, you know, actually interacting with other members of the community and stuff like that. And, uh, what we we'll call it, playing solo self found where all I need to do is grind like green mobs to get gear and upgrades and just level at a snail's pace. I can tell you which one is more fun. So sure, is one more mildly challenging? Okay, yeah, but it's infinitely more boring. So at a certain point, something may be a challenge, but you know, when when can you say that like a challenge is just not fun anymore and it's just not worth the fucking ball ache to actually go through with it? So I'm not going to be doing that. I'm glad that the Blizzard servers are not solo self-found because I think one of the fun things about a dedicated hardcore server is that it's just the challenges obviously don't die, but then it's kind of a different economy, right? Every single item has more value because the person who farmed it had to do so carefully. They couldn't just like do a gigantic like AOE pull and drop to like 1% HP and nearly die for it. Maybe they did, right? But more likely, they had to be much more careful about how they were doing their farming, and therefore a lot of items that are maybe more difficult to farm that have a risk of dying are going to be much more valuable. That's cool. That's something uh, that you don't get in like a regular version of World of Warcraft. So that is like an entire element of hardcore non-solo self-found that I actually think is really interesting, and I don't understand why people are knocking it. it I don't It's just... Uh, I've been reading a lot of really stupid Reddit posts lately, which maybe the problem is I just shouldn't be reading Reddit because, yeah, like the brain rot on Reddit sometimes is just fucking unreal. But man, it, it has just been there are so many people coming out of the woodwork to share the dumbest fucking takes ever created regarding classic hardcore. And it, it, I've just been like so annoyed reading it. And, and what you just heard there was like the pent up frustration of reading idiots talk about that for like the past few days. Anyways. Um, I'm waiting to level- oh shit, YouTube scrolled down all the way to the bottom. I'm waiting to level my Shadow Priest until I don't have to pay for flying anymore? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I mean, also, you could level your Shadow Priest up to, like, 40, and then just stop when you hit level 40 and continue again, uh, in 10.1.5, and then you'll just log in, immediately get flying for free, and then you could just pick up where you left off, and it's basically the same speed. Or you could just stop at 30 and not buy regular flying, but regular flying is, like, really cheap. Uh, energized barrier. What do I want? I definitely don't want to stand still for 10 seconds. Sheesh. Uh, okay, that seems good. Uh, Arcanosphere and Ring of Fire are great PvP talents. I find the PvP talents do more than any mage tree. Yeah. It, it depends, because, like, honestly, some of the best PvP talents for leveling are the ones that are really subtle. Like... One of the best PvP talents in the game for leveling is the Windwalker Monk Fist of Fury one. And that is a passive effect that just gives you bonuses on your Fist of Fury. It's not flashy at all. It's just really, really fucking strong. It turns an already extremely powerful ability into something that is just extremely broken. So a lot of the really cool... How did that not hit? What the fuck? <laughs> I completely whipped that Arcade Orb. Uh... Anyways, uh, but yeah, like some of the really, really fun and cool PvP talents that like are super flashy, a lot of times they may be good for endgame PvP, but for leveling, they're just like, they just don't really work out. It's just too much effort. So yeah, I don't know. I I'm not looking into all of them. Generally, I just look, it's like, is it a nice passive benefit or is it like a really powerful spell? Like if it's something that I can just slam on cooldown, sure. But a lot of times I don't like to use rotation altering spells unless they are like very, 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 very powerful. Uh, let's see. Enhanced Shaman, what is best AoE spell? Uh, I don't know a lot about Enhanced Shaman. I know that Enhanced Shaman, generally speaking, uh, Flame Nova used to be really good, or is it Fire Nova? Whatever the thing is where you like put Flame Shock in targets and then you like cause them to blow up. Back when I played Enhanced Shaman, that was the best way to do AoE. I don't know if something has changed since then. Probably has. It's been a while. 
Um, you can't wait to try the fire rework? Yeah, I've heard really good things about it. Uh, Naomi said, okay, thanks for the answer. It came in after you were already on the PTR, so you were a little confused about the late warmo change. Yeah. Uh, is Blood Elf my favorite race? Probably. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not, like, super picky. I, I'm not... I don't have, like, one race that I only play. I play, like, a lot of different races. I would say most of my characters are probably Blood Elves. Is uh, probably a, a fair assessment. Most of my characters that can be Blood Elves are Blood Elves. But, like, I have my Warrior is a Pandaren. Um, I have a few Tarin. Uh, I have some Volpera. Right? Most of my Volpera are characters that I use for speed leveling, though. Uh, at this point, I just... I have so many Volpera characters from speedruns that you know, I, there's just leftover ones. Uh, but yeah, I, I play a bunch of different races. Lightforge Draenei is probably one of my favorite alliance races. I really like them. Can I do a leveling prep guide? Uh, good question. That is something I get asked a lot, and it's a little bit tricky because it depends on what you define as leveling prep. One of the main things is like leveling prep covers so many different categories that I would almost need to make multiple different guides for it. Uh, so there would be like a leveling consumables, leveling heirlooms. Um, and then within heirlooms, it's like, how do you get every heirloom? And I've covered some of that, right? Like I, I have a video on how to get the Dread Pirate Ring, how to win the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza. Uh, and I'll probably eventually make a video on how to get the Garrison Shipyard Rings. That's another very, very highly requested topic. A lot of people want that. Um, a few other topics, uh, like how to, I have a video on how to farm experience potions, right? So it's the problem with like leveling preparation is if I were to talk about all of the things necessary to get ready to do speed leveling from scratch, it would be like a five hour video. So what I've been trying to do instead is over the years, I've been trying to take a more like granular approach to it where I, I make smaller guides for specific topics that are meant to be like more evergreen that last for a while. Right, like my guide that I made back in the end of Shadowlands on how to farm 10% XP pots, that is still going to be relevant, probably, for many, many years. Because, you know, it was made obviously after BFA. Nothing has changed with the 10% XP pots since. So provided nothing else changes with them, you know, in three years from now, I could refer somebody back to that guide that I made at the end of Shadowlands, and it'll still tell them exactly how to get that. Uh, same thing for the Stranglethorn fishing extravaganza. I Before I made that video, a lot of people asked me for a guide on this fishing extravaganza, like how to get the Dread Pirate Ring. Now, provided no changes happen to it, which is unlikely because it has remained unchanged since Legion, I can now refer them to that video, and so on and so on. And then, you know, Garrison Shipyard is unlikely to change, so when I finally make that guide, uh, you know, there will be that. So, what I'm, I'm kind of doing, like, uh, for preparation, I, I have like a, a bunch of different videos planned for that subject. And I kind of release them over time as I, you know, when I get more free time, I'm like, all right, let's work on the next like general leveling prep video. And the idea will be that when I'm done, you'll probably have like five hours worth of all of these different videos that each discuss an individual subject in regards to leveling preparation, whenever that is, like, I don't know, a year from now. Um, one of the, the main problems with that at the moment is specifically a topic that a lot of people have asked for in regards to leveling preparation is leveling uh, heirloom guides. So what are the best heirlooms? What are the best enchants to put on them? And a lot of people seem surprised that I haven't done that. Here's some uh, backstory for that. Uh, I was initially planning on making that guide when Dragonflight came out. Problem is, enchants right now are bugged for certain heirlooms. So the best enchants that I have on my heirlooms right now uh, don't actually work. So you can't actually, or they work, right? So this enchant on my pants, plus three intellect, plus two verse. This works, but if you try to apply this to an heirloom right now, it will not work. You cannot apply that. And that is a problem, because if I were to make an heirloom guide right now, talking about the best heirloom enchants, I would get a lot of comments saying, I can't apply this enchant to my heirloom. Why isn't it working? Please help. So then I have two options, right? I either make the guide now and basically say within the video, it's bugged right now, you can't do it. And then let's say, you know, a month later, Blizzard fixes it. Now I have a whole section in my video talking about something that is now fixed. So initially, right, I was kind of hoping, all right, well, this is a pretty serious bug. Clearly Blizzard's going to fix it within like a few months of Dragonflight. Well, it has been like seven months now and the bug is still in the game and hasn't been acknowledged at all. So now it's kind of in this weird spot where I really want to make an heirloom guide. You know, it's kind of long overdue, but it's bugged and 
it's there's no fix on the horizon. So I'm kind of like debating making like a, a video directly about this problem and basically being like, hey, Blizzard, can you fix this? Because it's kind of bad that it's still going on. Just so maybe they get like attention drawn to it or something like that. What I would probably have to do is to get people to care about this, right? Because it's a bit of a weird situation where it doesn't even impact me, right? Like I already have all my heirlooms enchanted. So a lot of people who are like me who don't have, um, I'm in range of them. Yeah, I'm in range. Okay, cool. A lot of people like me who already have their heirlooms enchanted probably wouldn't really give a shit about this kind of subject. So what I would probably need to do is clickbait it and be like the most broken issue with WoW leveling right now or something like that and basically try to start outrage over it to get Blizzard to finally pay attention and fix it so people can get their heirlooms enchanted and then I can finally make an heirloom guide. Because let's be real, it is kind of ridiculous that this still hasn't been fixed. Um, so I don't even think it would be that far of a stretch for me to make something about like that. Um, but I don't know it, it, that, that is kind of one of the issues I'm at with like leveling preparation guides. It's almost like, I think that making an heirloom guide is almost like the first step. It's like the no brainer first step in terms of major prep guides, but I can't make that yet because of the issues. So I, I've kind of been in this weird limbo with it where I, I just don't really know how to cover that. And then the next thing is like leveling consumables. Well, I kind of already have a guide for that. In fact, the oldest video on my channel for leveling consumables is still mostly accurate. There's a reason why it is the only video from like 2020 that I still have like not unlisted on my channel because most of that information is actually still accurate. The only difference now is I talk about Spires of Iraq consumables, which I mean, if Spires was still in the route, they would still be what you would use, right? But now that's no longer important because you don't really do Spires of Iraq if you're speed leveling. It's kind of been like pushed all the way to the very end. And obviously it doesn't cover the consumables from Shadowlands, which aren't really that important. You barely use them for like 10 levels within the route. And for casual players, I wouldn't even recommend using them. Like the difference between, uh, like, let's take a look real quick. At um, Greater Flask of Endless Fathoms, 33 Intellect versus spectral power actually at this level the scaling is worse uh what i can tell you is that when they're scaled properly uh flask of endless fathoms gives barely less intellect than spectral power this is like five or ten more primary stat when compared to endless fathoms and endless fathoms works at 40 and spectral power works at 51 so for casual players i wouldn't even recommend using shadowland stuff this is like such a minimal increase most of the BFA consumables are just as good and you can use them 10 levels earlier. So from like a cost effectiveness perspective, it's not even worth using any of the Shadowland stuff. So then the only thing that I haven't really covered in any of my like consumable guides is the Dragonflight specific stuff, though I generally speaking have at least gone over a lot of that when I'm doing the speedruns itself. I usually do a brief overview of the consumables that I'm using and... Um, I also have a section in my written guide specifically for Dragonflight consumables for that reason, because I don't have any videos talking about it. But obviously, eventually, I will make an updated consumable guide. It's just, you know, for all of the topics that I need to cover, the one that is on the bottom of my priority list is a leveling consumable guide, because I already have a pretty good video, uh, which goes over a lot of the really important ones. So there are definitely a lot of like leveling preparation related videos that I could make. Um, but if you're looking for consumables, that still exists. It's mostly accurate. If you have any specific questions, right, feel free to ask. Uh, if there's minor changes like that, um, you know, it's usually something that I can answer with a quick explanation. Uh, and then heirlooms, like I said, it's a whole can of worms, that stuff. Uh, anyways, uh, what are the leveling changes? Uh, in case I didn't go over it, in case you didn't hear me go over it already, the TLDR is riding training is free and automatically learned, so you don't need to go back to Orgrimmar. Uh, Chromie time goes up to 61, which is minor, but does have some impacts on 60 to 70 leveling. And finally, for 60 to 70, uh, dungeon quests are now picked up automatically when you enter the dungeon, which means that you no longer need to route around dungeon quests, which means a lot of the quest lines that I did specifically because they gave a dungeon quest, which was efficient, are no longer going to be included in the route because you don't need to do them to get the dungeon quest. And you'll just do whatever gives the most experience and then weave dungeons into the questing process. 
Uh, but that is 60 to 70, specifically the dungeon stuff. Uh, those are the main changes. There's like a bunch of other very, very minor ones specifically for new players. I have a video on it, uh, which was posted like about a month ago. Basically, huge chromie, whatever huge chromie time changes in 10.1.5 is the name of the video. Uh, you can find that on my channel and it goes over all of it. How much Adderall do I take? None. Uh, I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I, I had, I did have Adderall back when I was very young, like middle school, because... Uh, you know, I, I do have ADD, right? So Adderall basically was like prescribed to me by my doctor at the time to help me focus on math tests because I would always like, I got in trouble with my teachers because I would just be looking out of the window in the middle of a test. And then I would be only halfway done by the time the class ended. So basically I got, uh, whatever it was like a 504, I think it was called, which, um, said that I could take Adderall. I think it was Adderall. It was one of those things. Um, to focus on math tests, and I also got like 15 minutes of extra time after the, the class ended to finish my tests. Uh, but I have not taken Adderall in a very, very, very long time. Uh, like six or seven years, to be exact. I, I mean, I do just talk fast, right? There, It's a combination of I drink a lot of coffee, I have ADD, Right. And I have just always talked fast. I especially, I talk fast when I'm nervous. And the reality is I'm always nervous when I'm streaming. So, you know, that, that's just how it goes. Um, I'm always like very like high, high energy, uh, in anxious nervousness whenever I'm streaming. And that causes me to talk fast. Right. That that's pretty much all it is. Um, do I think the memory leak is related to the system Blizzard uses for instancing? Uh, it would explain performance issues in Raids and Valdraken, and it got a lot worse compared to Shadowlands. I don't think so, because I haven't gotten memory leaks in Raids. If that was the case, I would be getting them in Dungeons. But actually, I get almost all of my memory leaks in... Valdraken is the worst one by far. Valdraken literally 100% of the time will cause a memory leak. And the worst part about Val Valdraken is it won't always cause it immediately. Sometimes I pass through Valdraken for literally like 15 seconds, and then like five minutes later, the memory leak just starts getting really bad. So there's like a delayed effect. Obviously, if I AFK in Valdraken for like 30 minutes, I come back and my game is just a fucking shit show. Um, but it, Valdraken is something is seriously fucked with it. And especially Valdraken, I've had a lot of friends experience memory leaks and just general performance issues in it. It is so terrible. I don't know what the fuck they did with Valdraken. Uh, but a lot of the issues I've had with memory leaks are specifically with the outdoor zones in Dragonflight, which is unfortunate because that is where you spend most of your time while leveling. So the irony of the memory leak is it doesn't really impact me a lot when I'm doing other stuff outside of leveling speedruns. I feel the impact the most when I am recording leveling speedruns, which is just the worst time, right? Another time, uh, ever since 10.1, I consistently get a memory leak whenever I enter Zerala Cavern. Uh, not as often as Valdraken, so it's not like 100% of the time. If I pass through Valdraken, I am getting getting a memory leak. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I would say most of the time when I enter Zerala Cavern, I get a memory leak. Though it doesn't happen all of the time. It's just frequently. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm not an expert with that type of stuff. I can't tell you why it's happening. I, I don't know. I just know that it happens. Um, there we go. Uh, by the way, is it a CPU threading issue? It is a CPU threading issue too. Okay, yeah. I don't really know much about what that means, to be honest. But I, I will take your word for it. Um, only performance issue I've encountered is the frame drops and trash and Aberus. Yes, yeah, see, I actually haven't had uh, frame drops and trash and Aberus. There's the classic ones where sometimes Blizzard has like a bunch of dot effects go out at once and you get like a momentary lag spike. That's the most that I've experienced. Um, like whenever a million th a particle effects are going off at once, but that happens anywhere in the game. This is like uh, that and that like fixes itself. I don't need to do anything special. It's specifically the... Um, the memory leak that happens in the open world, that is a real problem because it doesn't fix itself. I have to manually restart the game to get it to perform well again, which is why it's a serious issue for me, just because it doesn't, it doesn't address itself. Um, let's see, how, many, how much time realistically do you think Exiles Reach adds to a run? So a 1 to 60 instead of a 10 to 60. Uh, 
I haven't done a lot of Exiles Reach. I'm honestly not terribly interested in it. Um, I don't really think it's fun to run. Uh, I don't know if Azero is still watching. Azero popped in here early. He does a lot of Exiles Reach speedruns, so honestly, he'd probably be better uh, at answering that than I would, because uh, I just I don't run it a lot. Uh, but whenever I do Exiles Reach, like because I I don't really do serious one to sixty or one to seventy speedruns, so every time I've done Exiles Reach, it's been like in a very casual run where I'm just doing a, a one to sixty for fun. I don't think I've even done one in Dragonflight. The last time I think I did one... Well, I, actually, I did the Fresh Account run, which included Exile's Reach. Um, so yeah, actually, I have done one in Dragonflight. Um, but I did a few in Shadowlands, and those ended up taking me 20 to 30 minutes, give or take. But I think with speedrunning, you can get it down to like 10 minutes. So probably would only add 10 minutes. Realistically, it would probably add closer to 15, because I think... I think, like, for the speedruns that, like, Azero and other people do for Exile's Reach, I believe the timer stops when you finish it, not when, like, you complete all of the RP stuff in Orgrimmar that's required to progress. Um, so, realistically, it would probably be closer to 15 minutes when you, like, account for the travel time and all of, like, the uh, quests to bridge the gap between Exile's Reach and Chromie Time. Uh, but it's not a lot, it, which is one of the reasons why I don't really care too much about doing it, because... Exiles Reach, like, a lot of people just make new allied races. So if you're an experienced player just doing runs now, most people are just going to make an allied race. Uh, I, I don't really have many friends who still make level 1 characters. A lot of times, I have friends who level an allied race, and then they race change it later on if they decide they want to play something different. Or they just race change one of their existing characters to one of the level 1 guys. It's just... Especially because the allied races tend to have better racials, so that's the re main reason I've never been too concerned about leveling. It's also just the kind of thing where if somebody's leveling through Exile's Reach, a lot of the time they're not going to need a guide to optimize it. It's very much, it's very like linear, and a lot of the tricks that you can do within Exile's Reach are like a little bit like game breaking. And they're the kind of thing that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to a new player. Like if I could do similar tricks, um, within like a regular speed run for whatever reason i would probably do them just because i'm very much like as long as it's not a blatant exploit and as long as it's something that anyone can do without like external third party help i'm generally in support of it uh there aren't really any major like out of bounds glitches because exiles reach is weird right it's kind of self-contained so like you can't really get out of bounds in an open world um there's not really any cases where that would be applicable to like the regular questing experience um, but it's the kind of thing where I don't really think the average player would either want to do it or should do it because it would just kind of ruin their experience. Uh, most of what I do in this route is just efficient uh, questing and consumable usage. It's not like glitchy, kind of. Um, so like I said, have no problem with that. I just, not the type of thing that I would recommend in my guide, which is why I've kept my 1 to 10 portion of the guide pretty basic. Not to mention, some people don't even start in Exile's Reach, right? Some people start in their other starting zones. So uh, there's just way too much to cover. I would probably, if I ever did a leveling add-on, which I am working on, um, I'll probably make at least like a decently optimized path through every single starting zone because that's kind of important to have if you're actually making like a step-by-step -step leveling add-on. Um, but I don't think like in terms of like an official guide, uh, I don't think I'll ever include like a faster route for Exile's Reach. I think like 20 minutes just kind of holding W and following the basic quest objectives is more than sufficient for anyone choosing to start at level one, especially if they're a new player. Uh, how much time? Oh yeah, I, I just read that one. That was the Exile's Reach question. Uh, let's see if, so I, if you've ever seen the quote unquote world record one to 120 in, oh yeah, are you talking about was that the one that Soda Poppin did back then? Um, I've seen like some old speed runs from uh, back in the day. If it was 120, what, what, what was 120? Was 120 Legion? Or no, that was BFA, right? Um, yeah, I've seen a few speed runs like that. I mean, there's some right now. Uh, if you like look, you can find speed runs like that. I'm not gonna, you know, advertise them or tell you where to find it. You can look at if if you search enough, you'll find a few of them of people doing things like that, of like having their friends carry them. I mean, hell, right now, 
if you do Brackenhide Hollow Boosting, you could probably get um, 1 to 70 in like 4 hours if you have like 4 people carrying you. Uh, so like, yeah, boosting is fast, but it's like one of those things where if you make a guide and you're like, by the way, if you want to level in 4 hours, uh, pay 4 people uh, a bunch of gold to carry you through open world elites. Like, yeah. Uh, that's, that's nothing new. You know, it's, it's pretty common knowledge that that is a thing that you can do, but kind of defeats the purpose, right? Because quite frankly, if you want the fastest leveling method, uh, here's the fastest leveling method. Oh, the shop isn't, is the, yeah, the shop isn't available on the PTR. Uh, I was about to do something funny and open the shop and click on buy boost. I wasn't actually going to buy it, but I was going to show, but I can't even do that because the, um, the fucking, um, shop isn't available on the ptr but like you get the point if you want to level the fastest way possible you open the store you buy a level 60 boost and then you would pay somebody to spend like an hour uh boosting you up to 70 or whatever and i don't know what does it cost like a hundred thousand gold or something like that to for the average boosting so yeah like you could do that you know and people have done that uh there's like also i um one of the reasons why it's kind of difficult to speedrun Guild Wars 2, which is something that I consider doing, is Guild Wars 2, for instance, is designed around these items called Tomes of Knowledge, where every time you use a Tome of Knowledge, it gives you one level. And I actually think it's actually really good because the Tomes of Knowledge are really easy to get. So the way that the Tomes of Knowledge system works in Guild Wars 2 is basically you earn a bunch of them whenever you do something at max level. So you're actually encouraged to level your characters by just playing the end game. So you play the end game, you like do PvP, you do raids, you get rewards, and then you'll be given a bunch of these tomes of knowledge that you can then mail to one of your low level characters and basically just boost them up to level 80 completely for free. It's a really, really good system. I love it. I wish World of Warcraft did something similar, to be honest. Um, but the reality is, for, there's like multiple videos when I looked up Guild Wars 2 speedruns of people saying, Guild Wars 2, 1 to 80 speedrun world record in 1 minute 40 seconds, where they just start the character, click 80 tomes of knowledge as fast as possible, and then stop the timer. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, uh, I guess, yes, you did get from 1 to 80, but like, you know, it, it's the entire thing of like a speedrun is it's the spectacle, right? It's the reason why you have different categories. It's the reason why, you know, there's a lot of uh, speedruns or for games where the regular, like, any percent is five minutes or something and nobody runs it. And then there's, like, a glitchless percent that everyone runs because, you know, that's what's actually fun. And, like, sure, you could just break out of bounds and skip to the very end, but where's the fun in that, right? So I don't know. Speedrunning is always a bit weird where like I've I said before regarding like, you know, the classic hardcore stuff, it has always been kind of its own. You kind of make your own rule set and the rule set to a certain degree is arbitrary. Um, I think at the end of the day, what makes a speedrun good is it's what everybody agrees is the most fun, right? It's either what is the most fun or what is the most practical. Like, generally speaking, with my speedruns, I try to go at it from a perspective of what is the most practical type of speedrun. What is the the way of leveling that most people in this game will be doing? And how do you optimize that as much as possible? Which is why, like, one of the, the rules that I put on myself, as I've said before, is nothing that requires, like, a third party, that requires you to have help of friends, or anything that is, like, unreasonably difficult to acquire or impossible to acquire. It's the reason why I don't use the Garrosh heirlooms, for instance. Um, so whenever I do a speed run with somebody that can use a two-handed axe, even though I have the two-handed Garrosh axe, I don't use it because I don't think that's fair. And I would say borderline is like Orb of Void Sight. Technically speaking, you can no longer acquire this trinket that I'm using. The only reason that I use it is because I have it, right? And it is good. It's better than the other ones. But is Orb of Void Sight that much better than Swift Hand of Justice or some of the other ones? Not really. It's better, don't get me wrong, like, that's why I'm using it, but is somebody going to be at a significant disadvantage if they don't have Orb of Void Sight? No, they'll be fine. Uh, in fact, it could even be argued that the best thing you could do is get, like, BOE trinkets and equip those, even if it is a little bit more expensive. Um, but, like, the Garrosh heirlooms are pretty nuts. 
Uh, those things are really good. They are a pretty significant advantage. Like having sockets on top of existing stuff that you can put like really good gems into, that is kind of crazy. So I don't really like to use those. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all... Uh, it, it's all what makes the most enjoyable viewing experience, and at the end of the day, uh, what most people are going to be doing. What is the most practical? I think that's a, a good way to look at it. Um, FYI, you can press ice block again to cancel it when you're in it. Oh, okay. I did not know that. That is that is good to know. Oh, I got good RNG on the cage key this time. Uh, to add to the ice block cancel, you can also make a macro. Yeah. No, I'm aware of cancel aura macros. Like, I have cancel aura macros on my main characters. Obviously, I didn't, you know, have time to go ahead and set up a cancel aura macro for this, but uh, I definitely do know how that stuff works. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's a lot of... Um, I, I, uh, I'm starting to seriously fall behind on chat. I apologize. I just, I, I want to make sure I answer everything. Um... And I like the one problem is if I'm trying to like speed through messages, I feel like I I wouldn't give every single message like the you know response that it's due. And if a topic requires like a lot of discussion, I don't want to just kind of like gloss over it. So the end result is that I fall behind in chat, but I hope that overall it makes it so like every answer is more like well rounded and uh, really fully answers the question. Um. Uh, what do you think about using herbing mining while leveling? Um, I, I won't go super into detail on this because I've talked about it before. It's not worth it. Uh, it's, it's just too much of a detour to really be worth it. Like, you can do it. It gives you a bit of experience. But generally speaking, it's just not worth doing. Um, I, every single time that I've tried to do herbalism and mining, I've either not noticed the difference whatsoever, or it ended up like losing me a minute or two compared to if I just hadn't done herbalism and mining. I mean, even just 99% of the time, it's dubious whether or not you're even gaining experience by taking the detour to pick up the herb, because it's really low XP. Like, if every single herb was, like, a quarter of a quest or something, yeah, maybe. Uh, and the only time when I've ever thought it might be worth it to pick up herbalism and mining is Dragonflight, because the first time discovery of herbs in Dragonflight and like ore and stuff, the first time you do like a windswept ore, it gives you like a little bit of bonus experience to the point where it's like maybe worth it. But also, I just don't know. It's, I think at most you're like barely breaking even. So I think if you want to do herbalism while leveling, at the very least, it won't really lose you much time. But I really don't think it's actually... It's definitely not a massive time save. At the most, you're saving seconds. More likely, you're losing seconds. And then that is all not even taking into account the fact that you have to go out of your way to go learn it, which adds like another 30 seconds to a minute. And I think a lot of times it won't even outweigh the 30 seconds to a minute it takes to go learn it in the first place. I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, saw that you had your bags open for a while. Didn't know if there was a reason. Uh, probably just, no, not re no reason. Just didn't really think about it. If I had my bags open, it's just because, once again, ADD. And if I left my bags open and just didn't really think about it, I probably just, probably was just sitting there, um, not really consciously realizing I, I had it open, right? Um, but yeah, there's, there's no special reason. Also, holy shit, this guy hurts. Um, honestly, is, okay, RK Missiles deals about 1.5k over 1.9 seconds. Arcane Barrage is instant 600. Honestly, I think, like, spamming Arcane Barrage might be almost just as much damage as Arcane Missiles. Uh, that felt pretty fucking good, just mashing that. It's also, I mean, you can do that completely while moving. The only issue is it's not AoE, but also you have Arcane Explosion if you need to, so, yeah. Um, yeah, Arcane still has pretty solid stuff. Arcane Orb, yeah, Arcane Orb is worth using on single target, I'd say. Yeah, so if I can sit here and plant, definitely, um, using Arcane Missiles is better, but I think in a lot of cases, just kiting and mashing Barrage may genuinely be the, my best option. Uh, what can I spend points on? Uh, Presence of Mind is nice, just because it lets you... Yeah, so now that I have Presence of Mind, I can justify taking this, and Amplification, and Improved Clearcasting. 
So now I can put Arcane Blast back in my bars, and when I have Presence of Mind, I can use that and do two buffed up Arcane Blasts. So that's not bad. Uh, outwitted, sure. I think I just take Blast Wave, just so I can do... Because, I mean, none of these talents are really that good, so I'm just going to take the 2% Haste, and then I'll take Ice Nova and take 2% Crit. I could take Slow, but, like, with... um. With Chrono Shift, you basically just already have as much of a slow effect as you realistically need in most cases. Uh, Blast Wave, I can put on... I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put that there. And then Ice Nova... Uh, Ice Nova does decent damage. It's actually comparable to Arcane Orb, but it's a slow instead of, like, you know, a damage boost. So, not the worst. Um... And what else can I do? I think, yeah, I just want to put Arcane Blast back in my bars now that I have Presence of Mind. So now it's actually worth using. And I should pick PvP Talents. Maybe? No. I don't really unlock any of the uh, good PvP Talents until higher levels. None of these really do anything. Yeah. Um, unfortunate. This is going to keep blinking at me and saying, you have a PvP talent available, but I don't want to just take a talent. Uh, okay, let me keep going in chat. Uh, reading Reddit comments is usually a mistake. Yes, oh, so we're at the point where I was ranting about classic hardcore. I see. Um, uh, what do I think the best heirloom cape is? The haste first one? It depends, right? Uh, so generally speaking, if you're looking to invest your gold into an heirloom cape, it's this one, not because of the secondaries, but because you can see here it has intellect, agility, and strength. So, well, you're not really investing your gold outside of the upgrades. You have to get this through the, like, invasions and BFA. But if you want to, like, focus on getting an heirloom cloak, that is the best one, just because you can use it on all of your characters. So, it's really flexible in that way. And that's, in terms of upgrades, that's definitely the most cost-effective one, because you'll get more use out of it. And in many cases, this is the best, right? Like, I'm using it here just because it has, like, the best stats, right? But there are, like, some classes really, really want crit while leveling, so you'll probably use a crit cloak. The nice thing is versatility is, generally speaking, a pretty good stat for all classes while, like, at lower levels, just because verse is, like, weird in the way that it scales while leveling up, because you, generally speaking, don't get, like, much verse at all on regular gear, so the only versatility that you're going to get is from your heirlooms. And because you get diminishing returns, if you have too much of a stat, having versatility on at least like one or two gear pieces is pretty nice. Uh, same with mastery, because most heirlooms will have crit and haste. So unless you just don't want any versatility at all, or like if you really, really, really want crit more than anything else, then you can take like a crit haste cloak or something like that. But otherwise, I would say as long as mastery and verse aren't dead stats for your spec, try to use whatever heirlooms have some sort of mastery or verse on them because it's going to kind of outweigh all of the crit haste on the rest of your heirlooms. Uh, what else? AoE enhancement shaming thing. Using flame shock, spreading it through lava lash, primordial wave, then lightning bolt will one-shot most mobs during later leveling. That's good to know. Um, let me find... Oh yeah, there's a, a good chunk of worgen over here. So I can do this. And... Yeah, that's actually decent burst AoE, Ice Nova. On a 25 second cooldown, that's um, that's pretty solid. Still, I think Arcane Orb is better when I have it active, but assuming I don't have it active, that's still fine. Yeah, now, like, you can really see Arcane starting to come online. Like, that is some really, really, really clean burst AoE without even using cooldowns. Just Arcane Explosion into Barrage. Once you get all of the synergy talents with um, Barrage and Explosion, Arcane starts to just really do damage. That's kind of what I assumed would happen earlier when things were starting to die a bit slowly. It starts to really pick up when you really get all of like the, the really good talents for it. Um, Early on, ride the lightning PvP talent, Sundering, spend Maelstrom weapon stacks and chain lightning and utilize Hailstorm properly, use Ice Strike before Frost Strike. Crash lightning can help in longer pulls or while constantly getting multiple mobs in, but is generally not all that great during questing. Yeah, I've heard that crash lightning in particular was like kind of eh, uh, especially at lower levels. It's one of the reasons why I want to test enhancement shaman because I haven't played enhancement while leveling in such a long time. Uh, mostly because every single time I've leveled a shaman, 
I asked people to vote on the spec, and, and or, Elemental always won, right? Because people want to see me play casters. <laughs> it's the reason why fucking Mage and Priest were always so requested. Because all my world record attempts are on melee or tanks, so generally speaking, when I ask viewers to pick my spec, almost always a caster will win. Except the time when Blood Decay won, because I, I openly expressed how much I hated Blood Decay, so of course when I put it on a poll, it won by a landslide, because people like to see me suffer. Uh, that was actually a fun uh, speedrun, though, back in Shadowlands, I remember that one. But, uh, yeah, I am curious to see how Enhancement Shaman is these days. It's one of the reasons why I included it on the poll that decided this one, but uh, it came close, actually. I think Enhancement had, like, 30% of the vote, and then Mage had 36. So clearly there is definitely some demand for an Enhancement Shaman speedrun. Maybe I'll do one anyways before 10.1.5, uh, though that kind of depends on how my schedule turns out. I'm not entirely sure how much time I'll have to um, do a bunch of speedruns. I mean, I already did three of them. or Well, this is the third, right? But I've done three, and I'm already planning on doing one more, at the very least, the uh, the world record attempt one. And then I'm definitely going to do a few more after that. I just don't know how many. So we'll see. Especially because then, after all of that, right, uh, I have to do um, a bunch of the 60 to 70 testing runs. So that's going to take a lot of time as well. But I definitely want to test uh, Enhancement Shaman. So that's good to know. Uh, oh, thank you, water and coffee. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. If you did all the things in the same video, it'll be out of date in months, splitting each topic. Uh, yeah, exactly. That, that's another good point, uh, Mateus Nunes. Um, that's another reason why, because a lot of times I would make exactly like what you were saying, I would make those big guides with covering all the topics. And then once one thing change or changes, it invalidates that. So that's another really good point as to why I've liked making smaller, more like granular videos, because exactly like you said, when one topic gets changed, I can just make a new t video for that specific topic, or I can just make like a short update video specifically on that. And it doesn't like completely invalidate all my other videos. So yeah, very good point there. Um, I just put in the video at the time of recording this is bugged so these are the best in chance in the meantime if this is fixed they'll be better though yeah um I, exactly and it's something that i'm thinking about like god forbid if we go like an entire year without the heirlooms being fixed i will probably have to do that because i want to make the heirloom guide uh but i've just i've been hoping that blizzard will just fix it it's just one of those things where i keep thinking they're going to do it eventually they're going to do it eventually and it just doesn't get fixed right so i best most ideal situation is it does get fixed uh, it's just unfortunate they haven't done it yet. Um, I'm also still discovering new things, right? Like Dragonflight changed a bunch, even outside of that. Like I said earlier in the run, I changed the Cloak Enchant. Because now this Cloak Enchant, which is like lesser power, now gives plus seven primary stats, so plus seven intellect. Whereas the old one that I was using, Gift of... I would use like Gift of Versatility or Gift of Mastery. And that gave 2% move speed, and now it only gives like two secondary stats. So there's cases like that where by delaying it, I'm able to get um, better information because I, you know, I'm able to find out new stuff like that. Though that being said, with uh, my recent runs that I just did, starting with like the priest run and stuff, I have gone ahead and reviewed every single uh, potential enchant that you can apply to heirlooms. So I'm pretty safe to, or it's, I think it's pretty safe to say that outside of this one change that I made to cloaks, Nothing else will be changing in terms of the other enchants. All of the scaling is still exactly the same. So that is the only change that I found. Um, and it doesn't... Oh, wow, that one shot? Okay. What the fuck? That is um, really fucking good. God damn. Uh, but yeah, so none of the other stuff will be changing. So whenever Blizzard does fix the thing, that's the main reason why at this point I'm waiting. If Blizzard fixes that, I can make a really good heirloom guide that is, you know, exactly up to date uh, and includes all of the information and all the stuff because I have all of that like set in stone. Like it, all of my information is ready to go. If Blizzard puts out patch notes that say we fixed the scaling heirloom thing, right? Like I'll be able to start scripting and recording a video and have it done within a week. Right? All of that is all set. So I'm just kind of like sitting on my thumbs and just waiting for them to finally fix that, which I'm hoping they will do eventually. Uh, so 
I would rather do that than have to like put a disclaimer and potentially make changes later on. I wish they make enchanting heirlooms a one-time thing. It would actually increase the sales of enchants because most people don't bother enchanting one thing. Uh, by making heirloom enchants one time, do you mean like applying it within the collection? So like you could you could have like a within the heirlooms tab, you could basically apply an enchant directly to the collections panel, and then when you create shoulders, it would have the enchant on it. I actually like that idea. I've never really considered that. But I do think that would be pretty cool. And that would add like another level of like collection to it. Um, it would make people want to like go out of their way to collect like the best enchant for every single heirloom just so that their collection looks prettier. And hell, it would make my life a hell of a lot easier because right now what I have to do is I have to like have a, a I have a guardian druid on Malganus that is just my heirloom bank. And every single time I finish a speedrun, I have to mail all my shit back to that Guardian Druid, and then, like, I have to organize my bank just so that the next time I'm not spending, you know, a million hours trying to find where everything is. So, that's a pain in the ass. So, I would definitely love if I could just pop open my collection and bam, all my heirlooms are there. Um... Oh, oh, I see, Mateus. Yeah, I'm, I'm just catching up uh, with uh, old chat. I, I'm a little bit behind. There you go. Uh, hopefully you see that now, because I'm still, you know, catching up and stuff. Um, biggest problem with Valdraken is that I'll fly out and be unable to c control my flight at all. Yes, yeah, I've run into that issue before. That's not necessarily, like, well, that is a Valdraken issue, but that is because, like, whenever you're, um, phasing into, like, a new zone, it just, like, takes away your dragon riding controls. I don't know why. But you'll be, like, set on a collision course, and then sometimes if you're lagging and you you take a really long time to phase into a new zone you'll sometimes like you said hit a tree or collide with the wall and something like that and it's just a massive pain in the ass yeah uh let's see at the risk of sounding dumb what is a memory leak oh yeah that that's a a good explanation yeah i'm not like an expert on what a memory leak is i just know like the the technical term but from what i know that is a very good explanation of what memory leaks are Zandalari Troll Racial is so perfect. It's just a satisfying little buff that just stays there. Yeah. Zandalari Troll is like... There are some racials that are just really, really bad. Like, I actually... I was looking into the allied race racials, and I think Maghar Orc may have the worst racials out of any allied race. Like, they are just so, so useless. The only thing is, like, there's, like, the Call of the Ancestors buff, or whatever, which is just so unimpactful, it may as well not exist. Maybe it's good for, like, one or two specs, but it, it just seems bad. And all of the other passive effects are just absolute dog shit. But at the very least with Zandalari, like, the Pterodax swoop is nice. It's kind of invalidated because of Goblin Gliders. I don't know if this works in instances, but if it does, maybe that's, like, a nice little bonus. I don't really know if it's, like, a substitute for Goblin Racial. But, you know, the other stuff is just, it's nice, right? Like, you know, the passive buff, there's also, you can change it, right? You can get the Blonde Somdi one, which is good in certain cases. Paku is also just solid. Uh, what are the other ones uh, for Zandalari Troll? Embrace the Loa, that lets you select it, uh, right? Your buff. Regenerating is like, I mean, I actually could be using this maybe instead of food. That's not terrible. Uh, maybe for leveling, it's like, okay. Specifically for mage, just because I don't really have great healing options. Oh shit. Uh, I almost went- I actually almost fucked myself over. I almost went straight from 47. Oh, look at that. Oh, that would have been so bad. Uh, I went almost straight from 47 to 50, which meant I wouldn't have been able to refresh my draft of 10 lands. I am like a sliver of experience away from 50. Barely didn't hit it, so I can just barely refresh draft of 10 lands. I that gave me so much experience. Holy hell. I did not expect that to be as much as it was. Uh, yeah, there's there's 50. Holy hell. That was like three levels in the span of like two minutes. God damn. Um can I change anything else? I think uh I accidentally collapsed my bags. Uh all of this stuff is 51, right? Oh, I can change my augment rune. That starts scaling now. And, oh, I've... I think I've already out-leveled... Oh, no, this stuff stops scaling after 50. But I can use it right now, and I still get the effect. Okay, perfect. And then, 
I'll just go ahead and preemptively throw Spectral Power, and I'm not going to use Unbridled Fury before 51, so I'll just throw that there in the off chance I remember to use it. I'll throw Shadow Core Oil, and same thing with Drums. Uh, what can I spend? One on Arcane Missiles, uh, Baldal Detonation, and Temporal Velocity seems nice. It's just an additional... All of your snare effects reduce the target's movement speed. That's nice. Uh, do I want any of these? Time Anomaly is probably the best possible talent I could take uh, in this capstone for leveling. It's the only one that's actually like a sizable damage increase. So... I guess I go Temporal Velocity times 2, Accumulative Shielding, and then Time Anomaly? Yeah, it's probably the best option. Uh, let me catch up on chat. Uh, some people prefer to buy a race change instead of level. My friend has played Night Elf, Dwarf, Undead, Rogue, and has only leveled one Rogue? Jeez. Yeah, it's, um... I mean, a lot of times you also just don't want to chain... You don't want to lose all of the stuff that you already have on your account. Something like that. Oh, actually, here... Uh, here's the perfect time to use the Zandalari Troll Regenerating passive, so that works out. It's actually uh, a pretty good use. So there is, like, some use cases for uh, for Zandalari Troll Racials. And come on, and then I'm just going to hopefully get off Arcane Surge. Yeah, right before the silence finished. Uh, and then I guess I'll put Time Yeah, I don't even need drums. I have Time Warp now. Put that on Control 3. Uh, technically, I could use, what is it called? I could use this talent, Temporal Warp, to Drums and then Time Warp. But, like, I barely even remember to use Drums as is, because 90% of the time it's not impactful enough. So I'm just not going to bother. I think Temporal Anomaly at least will give me some benefit. Uh, let's see. I'm also just going to stop and eat, because these things do actually a lot of damage. Uh, Brackenhide from one via Recruiter Friend Summons. Yeah, uh, well, not Recruiter Friend Summons, just Warlock Summons. Um, so Brackenhide from level one, if you have a group of boosters, they usually have either Warlocks that can summon you, or they will just, um, summon you from, uh, what's the name of the town? Um, whatever the town is with all the Tuscar, right, where the Brackenhide Hollow Summoning Stone is. And then you'll just hop in a two-seater and fly there. So, yeah. That's how people do um, Brackenhide Hollow Boosting. It's more popular to do it from uh, level level 60 to 70, but you definitely can do it even at low levels. Uh, <laughs> 1 to 60 speeder and open the shop and buy a level boost. Yeah, I've, I've seen so many people leave comments like that unironically thinking they're the funniest person ever. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I can speed run too. I just spent $60. <laughs> it's like actually a comment that tons of people leave. And I think each person who leaves it, I'm willing to bet, probably thinks they're the first person to think of that genius line. It's like, oh my god. Like, yes, I get it. Boosting is a thing that exists in this game. Um, literally zero second slash played. Yeah. Uh, new fastest leveling guide 2023. Hey guys, today I'll teach you how to farm 200,000 gold to pay people to boost you through 60 to 70. For 1 to 60, buy it from the Blizzard store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, let me. I hate how whenever I start, like, if I scroll too close to the bottom of the um, the YouTube chat, it just snaps me down to, like, the most recent message. And then I have to scroll back up to find my place. Uh, reminds me of the War Effort speedrun where the guy was turning in materials. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> exactly, something like that, which is available for literally one day a year and requires hundreds of thousands of gold and stuff and people to get you there. It's like, okay... Sure, you, you that that's a speed run, right? Like, you know, at a certain point, you know, if you want to call it a speed run, call it a speed run. But I just I think the viewing experience of something like that is just I I don't understand. Um, I remember that back in the day, my friend that I recruited gave me levels fifty eight to ninety just by clicking the interface buttons. Wait, really? That used to be a thing. 
I know they've changed recruiter friends so many times over the years, so I'm sure that that probably was a feature at some point. Ah. Just, um, well, I accidentally bumped my microphone there. Sorry if that made a noise. I just had to drink water for a second. Um, what server do I play on for Wrath of the Lich King? Uh, Mancrick. I actually, my main is on Mancrick. Uh, all of my mains are on Mancrick. Um, and that's where I mostly play, but I have a lot of alts now, like level 70 on different servers because I've been farming, uh, dead servers for gear. So I have level 70 characters on Maladath, Anger Forge, and Earth Fury because those servers are completely dead in Wrath Classic. So what I've been doing is I have I have my level 70 Prot Warrior on Anger Forge and my I have another level 70 Paladin on Earth Fury and I have them sitting in that arena outside of Dire Mall to camp the um it's like the rare elites the Raza and Scar the Unbreakable. And every, like, every eight hours, I just log onto those characters, I kill the rare elite, and I loot, like, two world drop blues. And at this point, I have, like, 30 world drop blues on those characters. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on using those characters to farm rare shit. Like, I also have, I have a death knight on each one of those servers, and I have my death knights sitting by scale belly in Stranglethorn Vale. And I farm two chromatic swords so far and a bunch of the iridescent scale leggings. So I'm basically farming all of these like ultra rare items from classic. And then when I have like a character with a full bags worth uh, and bank stocked up of uh, ultra rare like transmog or just collector's items, I'm then going to transfer those characters back to Mancrick and then just like unload all of it. Some of them I'll keep for Cataclassic and just like hoard it like a dragon. But a lot of the other ones I'll probably unload. Like there's a, there's a really good like blue level 50 something druid moonfire idol which probably won't be as good with the cataclysm changes but it sells for a decent amount like 150 gold right now on wrath classic and i've gotten like five of those so i'll probably sell a bunch of those now just to make like a bit of extra gold in the meantime but all my main characters on mancrick but all that to say i've, I've been making a bunch of alts on like different servers to farm like the dead because all of them are the fresh servers like anger forge i think was the overflow server for sky fury and earth fury i believe was the overflow server for maladath and now both of them are dead sky fury is also pretty dead but it's less so than the others um but yeah so i i've been just farming so much rare shit on all of those dead servers it's kind of fun honestly like uh because basically now I have like a gigantic list of all the super rare items and I just go down the list like I wander around uh, classic Azeroth and I just walk into a zone and I'll be like, all right, control F Hillsbrad foothills on my like document with all of the rare items. And then it's like I find, find my list of all of these different rares that uh, drop special items and then I just go through each one of them and they're all up. So I just kill every single rare, and then I'm like, all right, next zone, and then control F, Hinterlands, and I find the list of all the rare items in Hinterlands, and I farm that. And it's just fun, just touring around Azeroth, collecting rare shit. It's actually a, a really fun way to play Classic, I've found. Um, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> moving on. Uh, I've been falling asleep to your speedrunning videos for the past week and speedrunning during the day. Thank you for all the content. No problem. I'm glad you enjoy watching them. Even if it is just to fall asleep, I know a lot of people... Do that? Hell, I do that. I watch, um, lately I've been, uh, I've been falling asleep watching, uh, Pangea Panga's, uh, Mario Maker playthroughs. So, you know, to each their own, right? Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna use this, and then when I start flying, I can scroll down in the, uh, the comments. Uh, it's not another chat, it's one bit earlier. Okay, good, good. I see you found. Uh, it's not only worth doing during Darkman Fair. I don't know what you mean by it's not worth doing dark during Darkman Fair. Darkman Fair is good, right? Darkman Fair does or has ten percent additional experience, but I mean, I can still get times outside of Darkman Fair. But I am waiting. I'm waiting to do like a world record attempt until uh, at least tomorrow. I'll probably do it on Monday night or something, and then we'll do uh, uh, what you call it. I'll do my world record attempt then because Darkman Fair will be active. Um. It'll be interesting if Blizzard added first craft XP for old professions. Uh, have the cap just linked to the expansion or remove the cap? Eh, I don't know. I honestly, 
I personally don't think that they should have added experience to professions at all. I genuinely think that was a mistake. Uh, I don't like that they did that. So I actually don't think they should add more stuff. I don't like that you're encouraged to spend gold on profession stuff to level it up. It kind of works in Dragonflight only because the way that the crafting system works now is to actually craft the item you only need to actually craft it at like the bare minimum quality and you get like the full experience value. But imagine if you needed to craft like rank three items to get the full experience value. And especially with like old stuff that nobody's running. So prices right now for like crafting leveling is not bad because you do it entirely with rank one materials, which are dirt cheap because nobody actually wants them. But if this existed in like any other expansion, it would be much more expensive because you'd have to use actual materials that would have much higher costs. And then especially the moment that expansion stopped being current content, materials would slowly start increasing in price until the point where it became exorbitantly exorbitantly expensive to actually do the crafting leveling. I, I don't like it. Um, I am against adding any additional, like, um, I wouldn't say pay to win, right? Because it's, it's a very minor boost, but... And it's also, at the moment, not very expensive at all. And you get something out of it, right? You're getting the profession leveled, even if you don't necessarily care about that, right? But I, I dislike adding gold incentives for leveling. Just because, you know, most people aren't going to do it because it's such a trivial advantage. It doesn't actually have any impact. But for me, it sucks. Because that's another thing that I need to buy and prepare for the speed run. Because it's one of those things where it's like, as long as it's technically accessible to all players, I have a spare no expense approach to speedrunning. So, if I can get an advantage by spending an extra 10,000 gold, I'll do that just because, you know, it's, it's cool because people like to see all the different little tricks that you can do. So, I would rather not have to do extra stuff. Classic is a different story though, right? Like, I'm specifically talking retail. Classic, that's more interesting. A... Because if I leveled engineering in classic, I would actually use it, right? Like engineering is just fun. So the main reason I'm thinking of leveling engineering in classic has nothing to do with the raw experience. I'm specifically thinking of leveling engineering because it just is so fucking good. Like the time save I would get with the profession would be helpful. And like, I'm fine with professions being useful for speed leveling. Like in the past, jewel crafting and engineering have both been useful in speed leveling at various points but generally speaking when they were usable you would just learn the profession and then you would use an item that you pre-crafted that requires only one skill point uh, in that profession and then you would do that but leveling it up all the way could be a little bit annoying so i don't know if i love that uh two blinks is for sure worth getting which one is two blinks um is this oh shimmer uh, yeah, I could replace that and I could take Shimmer and get double Blink that way. I mean, I'm not even really using Blink that much. It's nice, but you have so many other speed boost things. And like with mounting, 99% of the time, I want to be, I don't want to be like blinking around. I want to be just kiting the mobs just outside of melee range. So I don't know if it's really that good. Uh, arcane damage dealt. That seems good. Uh... Huh. I don't know if that's really that great. Clear casting is an increased proc chance. Concentration. That seems fine, but I think it would require too much investment. What is this? Uh, Orb Barrage. Arcane Barrage is a 10%. Okay, that's insane. Uh, arcane Charges further increase the... Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is this is a no-brainer pick, then. Uh, anything that buffs Arcane Barrage and, like, Stuff like that, we just go. Arcane Barrage is definitely our most powerful spell while leveling. Um, I think after that, I'll probably go down the right side of the tree. Like, this stuff seems like it would be good if I had all the points to invest in it. But especially when I'm only going to be getting a few more talent points before max level, this is the way to go. For sure. Um, I'd argue that moving while missiles has more value than two blinks. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely it has more value than two blinks. Uh, you still get moving while casting. It, wait, is there a talent that gives you permanent... Makes your nest mage spell with the cast time shorter? Oh, so you're saying ice flows. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I really don't want to manage ice flows, to be honest. Especially because I barely need to even use 
other stuff, right? Like, I, I barely even need to cast Arcane Missiles. And 99% of the time when I do, I'm just planted anyway. So, yeah, I'm fine with not taking that. Um, that is definitely something where I can see the value in Ice Flows if I was, like, an experienced mage player who was, like, used to using it and I could actually remember to use it all the time. But what's going to happen is I'm going to take Ice Flows, I'm going to forget it exists, and I'm just not going to press it. So I'm just going to avoid the hassle, and I'm going to just not take it. But I can see the value in Ice Flows, for sure. Let me... There we go. Oh, fuck, that... <laughs> yeah, it's this thing again, right? I want to do damage to them to get them below, and then... The moment they're in range, I want to mirror them. There we go. And a little bit more. Okay, that's perfect. I'm going to use the Zandalari racial here. Uh, 10 to 20 arcane in dungeons is bonkers too. Yeah, I mean, it was good earlier when I did dungeons. The problem I have with arcane in dungeons is you definitely can't solo dungeons. Like, Windwalker could probably do more, just because Windwalker has, like, more burst damage. Whereas, I don't know, I, I wasn't super impressed with Arcane in Dungeons. And also, my opinion on anything in Dungeons right now is a bit lower compared to, like... I, I mean, just go watch the Holy Priest run from yesterday if you want to see the most broken low-level dungeon spec in the entire game. Like, Holy Priest literally solos dungeons at level when you're below level 20. It's fucking wild how good holy nova is so anything compared to that is like yeah it's not even close that's just so absurdly strong i actually like initially i was just doing the holy priest thing yesterday just for fun because i just wanted to show that yeah holy priest is pretty good while leveling but i think it got buffed i'm gonna be real here like i don't remember holy nova being that strong so i genuinely think there is merit in doing like an entire speed run just on a holy priest which I don't think I'll do soon, just because I only just did that one. But Holy Priest is definitely on my list of, like, in the future, when I feel like speedrunning another class, like, maybe, like, you know, half a year from now, I might just do an entire 10 to 60 Holy Priest speedrun, because that was really fun. I actually, I enjoyed the Holy Priest part of the run way more than I did the uh, Shadow one, if I'm being completely honest. It was just so ridiculous. I literally was just holding W and I just couldn't die and everything was just melting. It, it's just a really, really, really fun spec. Uh, what do I think is the future of WoW? I mean, I, it's kind of a hard question to answer. Unless you're specific. Future of WoW, like, do I think it's dead? I think the future of WoW is the same as its present, right? They're going to keep making expansions. Some of them are going to be good. Some of them are going to be really bad. That's just how it is. Uh, I hope that we keep getting good expansions, but I, I'm not holding my breath, right? I think Dragonflight is probably the best we're going to see in a little while. I'm, I'm really, really hoping that they continue listening to the community. But to be quite honest, um, until we get two expansions in a row that are really good... Blizzard just has an incredibly bad track record with doing one good expansion, then believing they're God's gift to the planet, and then making a bunch of dog shit changes that literally nobody asked for against the wishes of the community. And that's just how it has been for like 10 years. So Dragonflight's a step in the right direction. If it keeps going like this, awesome. I would love that more than anything, but I am, I am mentally preparing myself for whatever the next expansion is to be a return to form in Shadowlands and BFA of just arrogance and fuckery. But I want to be proven wrong, so, you know, please, Blizzard, prove me wrong. Um, let's see. Uh, casters are harder to level up. Yeah, casters are definitely harder to level up. A lot of people are like, oh, casters are easy, and they have, like, a shit ton of experience playing a caster. I can tell you as somebody who has leveled all of them casters are are they're not bad right you absolutely can get mileage out of, out of a caster but it is just inherently harder whereas melee you can do your entire rotation while moving and kind of a core pinnacle of leveling is you need to be constantly moving for the most part you know as a melee dps you can just very 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 easily kite and um do all of your shit casters you have to work much harder to do that so you either just don't do that, you either plant 
and just do your damage and don't even think about it, in which case it ends up being much slower. Uh, or you, um, whatchamacallit, or you uh, have a harder time. Uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, oh, Goose Comics donated $10. Sup, Harlden. Good stuff in these guides. Looking forward to that prep guide as I plan on leveling a Night Elf Warlock. Once that becomes available, I've been prepping with Panda Crafted Gear. Um, I don't, d unless they change something, I actually would not use Panda Crafting Gear. Uh, as of Dragonflight launch, I don't know if it's changed. Oh, by the way, before I forget, thank you for the donation. I really appreciate it. But on the topic, since you mentioned Panda Crafting Gear, on Dragonflight launch, they broke a lot of the Pandaren Crafting Gear where it doesn't really scale with item level. So before it would be like, uh, when item level scaled up from like, what was it? Um... It was like around like 10 to 50 is kind of where the scaling was at uh, in terms of the item level. And Pandaren Crafted Gear at Dragonflight launch was still following that. But then as of Dragonflight, they boosted the world drop item level scaling and the heirloom item level scaling. So now like at level 54, my heirlooms are 163, for instance. And BOE greens, uh, if I look at like whatever the last one I looted, like you can see this BOE green is level 150. But they did not update the Pandaren Crafted Gear, so it is way, way, way lower than BOE Greens. In my last two world records, I just straight up bought BOE Greens off the auction house and used that because they were the highest stat allocation out of anything. It might have been fixed. I haven't looked into it, but assuming it hasn't been, then yeah, that's that's how it is right now. Uh, let's see, let me drop this here and then the pocket nuke. And let me just scroll up real quick again and catch up. Uh, I just, I see the donation because there's like a little notification, uh, special notification for it, right? Uh, but I, I'm working my way through chat, so I will get to everybody eventually, right? Uh, if only short form videos were good for the channel, you could just do a video for each thing and then change it to just unlist the video. Uh, depends on what you mean. Shorts are not good for the channel. Short form videos are. In fact, that's why I've been doing a lot of them. Like two of my recent videos that were like successful were um the uh like the trinkets that you don't know about and the uh onyx annulet and those were both short those were like four minute videos those perform well yeah uh so i'm perfectly fine to make those and i've tried making like shorter guides like that and they have performed perfectly well it's specifically it's it's not short form videos it's shorts like actual youtube shorts uh, just because those fall into like a completely different category. It, it's it's not even just like a type of video. It's just specifically how YouTube processes it. Um, so the reason I've stopped doing shorts is because the monetization on that is so fucking abysmal that it's like insulting. Like I made $2 off my 300,000 view short. So it's like, why would I bother making anything as a short video when I'm literally making nothing off it. It's like, you know, I, I I don't try to do things specifically for money, right? But when I'm making literally $3 off something that gets 300,000 views, yeah, uh, I, I will change whatever I'm doing for that. You know, there there is a limit where I have to be like, okay, I, I, I need to be making something off this. Uh, and unfortunately, that's entirely on YouTube's end. I don't know why they're not able to make it so actual advertisements work. Uh, they need to figure it out, but at the moment, the the monetization options for shorts are so abysmally bad, it is just impossible to make them. Um, but yeah, short. Oh no, that what the fuck? I got. I think I got dazed, and then it like instantly exploded. When normally there's like a much longer time. I've never had it, it like insta kill me that quickly. That is unlucky. Um, yeah, but like short videos, basically like the three minute, four minute videos, those function exactly like normal YouTube videos. Those, they're they're perfectly fine in terms of like performance and monetization and everything. So I'm more than happy to continue making those videos. In fact, they have honestly been what I've been making more of lately. I've I've been getting into making more like short, concentrated four minute guides on particular topics. And not only do I think people have been responding better to that than the much longer ones, but performance wise, you know, the views are there, right? So uh, I will definitely continue making those. Uh, if we go like an entire year without the heirlooms being fixed, then I'll do a guide. Guarantee they fixed it within a month. Yeah, just my luck. They definitely do that. Uh, and Mateus, you said, yeah, applying in the collection. Yeah, I definitely think that would be a pretty cool idea. I could definitely see that working well. Oh, fuck. 
it just occurred to me what I need to do right now. How am I going to fucking manage this one, man? Oh. Uh, okay. I... I'll get Bear Tartar. I'll buff up. Um... And then I need to re-augment rune. And then spend my talent points. I guess a cumulative shielding and then Perdicious Savant. What is this? Uh Arcanosphere. Oh, this is the thing that somebody in chat was talking about. Build a sphere of arcane energy. The sphere passes through any barriers. That deals a lot of damage. Holy. Huh. Wait, both of these seem really good. Arcanosphere and Ring of Fire. I mean, on paper, this seems really fucking strong. I'm just not sure if it's actually going to be that good in practice. Um, testing. What? What is YouTube? YouTube said that... Huh? YouTube said the audio is fucked. But on OBS, it shows normal. Okay, I think maybe I just stopped talking for too long and YouTube was like, oh no, your audio is not working. Yet. YouTube's gaslighting me. I don't need that YouTube. Not with the amount of memory leaks that I've had. It's it's scaring the shit out of me. What is my favorite heritage armor? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, Probably Void Elf. I don't really play Void Elf that often, but I think if I played Void Elf, I would almost certainly use the heritage armor all the time. Close second would definitely be the Nightborn heritage armor. I really like that. Uh, don't forget when Zandalari Trolls came out and I race changed four of my characters to it and they put out nerfs like three days in a row to the regenerating racial. Yeah, that was, I remember that. It was really strong initially, but yeah, unfortunate. Um, yeah, it wasn't interrupted by damage and did way more healing. Yep. Yeah, I remember like looking into that and I was kind of, so many people were talking about it that I was like, uh, I, I don't know if this stays. So I didn't, actually race change and obviously i'm glad i did but it was pretty crazy uh okay i was worried that i would accidentally cleave onto the wild horses um used to be every two levels you recruit leveled you could grant one level to re your recruiter ah i see that's nice tuscar rep was like that buy 200k worth of fish and go turn it in yeah the Tuscar rep is super cheesy. Thankfully, I checked. It doesn't give nearly enough experience to be worth it, even from a time perspective. The amount of time you sit there just uh, doing the um, the fish turn in ends up making it not worth it. But you are right that it was... I was worried that that was going to be a thing. EU4 is the perfect game to fall asleep to. It's interesting to watch and perfect to pass out to. Yeah, I've been meaning to try that game. I've heard good things about it. Uh, do I like the new button animations like the procs? I, I, I don't, I don't hate them, but I, I'm not a fan of them. I don't love the the things. I think they're a little, they look prettier, right? I'll give it that. But I think it's sometimes a little bit harder on like the readability from a glance. The other ones maybe looked a little less polished, but I can very quickly look at my bars and see it. It's also one of those things where I'm sure over time I'll get used to it. Like, also, I really didn't like the UI changes when they first came out. But at this point, I've kind of gotten used to the new UI design and I'm kind of fine with it. I don't really care. So I'm sure I'll get used to it. Fourth of July should be the All-Stars Day line to get some crazy 10 to 70 leveling. Time Walking, Midsummer, Winds, and Darkman Fair all overlap. Yeah, that's when I'm thinking of doing my um my really good speedrun. Uh, I'm going to try to remember to read Chori's comments. Actually, Yenimus hasn't padded yet, so I'll wait. Uh, the worst part of farming removed items in Classic are the zone BOEs, since they have like a 1% drop chance. Sometimes you snag them on the AH. Yeah, I've gotten a few so far for like really cheap because people don't realize but there definitely are a few that i still need to collect and they're going to be a pain in the ass to farm uh you can use shimmer while the channel animation of mounting up is happening oh that's actually interesting i didn't know that that's pretty cool shimmer is good i was team shimmer forever until i got used to using ice flows and realized all the value of 15 second blink versus 25 getting out of snares and being able to move and cast are all uh, yeah i agree the simplicity of shimmer is great 
Yeah, I know. I can I can absolutely believe that. In Raid, I'm sure it's a completely different story. Um, Where the fuck is Yedimus? He must be really far along. Oh, yeah, there he comes. Uh, okay, okay, I need to need to focus up, make sure I have all my shit ready. Uh, I'm going to kite him into the cave. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Shit, I'm panicking. Um, I should lust. Do I, oh, yeah, I need to refresh Arcane Intellect. Uh, oh, this is a cast time. I'm going to build up an Arcanosphere, fire it at him, and try to get him to leap into my uh, Ring of Fire. Oh, Arcanosphere double hit him. Come on, come on, come on. I, don't, I wasn't far enough into the cave. It's fine, though. Oh, I got him! Wait, what even killed him? I was, like, scared shitless. I Something procked and killed him. Because he was at, like, 15%, and I was about to, like, try to channel an arcane missiles at the last second, but suddenly he just died. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um... Arcane Mage pa passes the uh, Yeta Litmus test. That was... Whew. Yeah, that was some sick burst. Arc you weren't kidding. I who I forget who mentioned Arcanosphere earlier. That that is fucking ridiculous. Just chain bounces them, and that did so much damage to Yetimus. Look at that. I don't think um it doesn't look like Ring of Fire worked though, unfortunately, but Arcanosphere definitely did. I'm gonna try this again on these mobs. Man, if only you got this earlier. You don't get this until like level 55, but it's actually really sick. I don't know if it's worth it for like regular leveling though, because that is a really long wind up time, but that is a really sick ability. It goes through walls? What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is. That is kind of crazy. Arcane Surge. I'm going to try to use Ring of Fire on the next pull to see if that actually works. It used to be insane in BGs. Yeah, I can imagine. That seems really fucking stupid. Is it not still insane? Did they nerf it or something? Because, like, how is that not broken? Okay, let me, let me try Ring of Fire. Does that not... Does it only work on players? Oh, no, that guy is affected by it. Okay, so it worked on that mob. Uh, yeah. I think, I'm guessing they have to, like, actually pass through it. You can't just drop it on them, which, eh, makes Ring of Fire a little bit worse. Ring of Fire timed out before he jumped? Uh, yeah, because I was expecting him to immediately leap, which he did, but then Arcanosphere, like, knocked him back mid-leap, so it canceled his leap, which actually was really sick. Because that gave me, like, an extra 10 seconds to just wail on him. Which really helped. It just one-tapped it! Holy shit! <laughs> that Yeti got fucking owned! Okay. Yeah, this spell is, uh... Oh my goodness. This is something. Yeah, overall, I think... I've had so much more fun doing leveling with the Dragonflight changes... Obviously, Arcane was already in a good spot before the Dragonflight changes, but there's so much, like, new cool shit that you can do with the talent system, whereas before it was, like, fairly straightforward. Like, before Arcane, you know, it still had the basic, you know, explosion-explosion-barrage combo, but this is something different. Seems like the same as the Icy Ring, just zoning? Yeah. Definitely not bad. Like, obviously, I can see how that would be good in PvP, right? It is a PvP talent, after all. But for leveling, uh, I don't really think the use is all there. I'm going to try this again. Honestly, I just like using the spell now. This is fucking sick. Oh, yeah. And it, oh, so it just goes straight forward. It doesn't actually... That's what you mean by it goes through walls. It doesn't follow terrain whatsoever. It just goes in a straight line. Oh, that is so whack. I don't know of any other abilities that actually do that. Are there any others, or is it, like, 
the only thing that does it. Like, his arcane orb follows, like, the curvature of the ground. And most other abilities also do that. So, I don't know. That is... Ironically, they just, they destroyed it for PvP? Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, let me scroll up, though. There's a few messages in chat that I didn't get to see. Oof, oof. I almost blinked straight into Yetimus. That would have been bad. Dragonflight is game of the year compared to the last two. I like the patch's pace, the content, the I want to do this instead of I have to do this um, is the thing that's carrying WoW. Yeah, so I'm a bit of like... Uh, I actually, I think if anything, 10.1 is what solidified Dragonflight to me as like being a good expansion. I'll drink, um, just drinking some water real quick. It's probably a good thing that I didn't do a ton of speed runs during Dragonflight launch. I did like a handful of 60 to 70 ones, but the reality is I was not enjoying Dragonflight at all at launch. Uh, I really hated it. And it, I just, I really think that Vault of the Incarnates, if I'm being honest, I think was a pretty shit raid. I've seen mixed opinions on it. A lot of my friends, like, I, I don't know a single person who actually thinks Vault of the Incarnates was a good raid, but I've seen some people saying, oh, well, it was okay. I disagree. I think it was one of the worst raids they've done in a while. Um, I, I don't think, like, any of the bosses in Vault of the Incarnates were good. It was just through and through... I was about to say, oh, that's a new appearance I don't have, but then I'm on the PTR, right? So it doesn't fucking matter. Um, through and through, like, everything in Vaults of the Incarnates was just fucking trash. Like, Aranog was an okay first boss. Cramble Council sucked ass. Dathia is one of the worst bosses ever created. Uh, Taros is fine. Taros is, Taros is a boss, right? Like, I don't really think there's anything you can really say special about Taros. He's a pretty standard single-target damage check. Senarth is one of those I, things that's like... I could see how it was cool in pa on paper, and I was actually excited for Teros when I tested him on the on the PTR. And in the end, he was just a, a terrible boss. I also just think the main problem with Ter or uh, I'm saying Teros Senarth, right? The main issue with Senarth is those ice tornadoes were a huge mistake. Oh my god, they could have picked so many ways to make Senarth a harder fight on Mythic. And they decided with the absolute worst change ever, because the ice is already so hard to control. So it's a brand new mechanic. Like they've never done slippery ice like that before, especially on like a raid boss. And they decide to make it so on Mythic, your positioning is so insanely precise that if you touch a tornado, you just get yeeted off and die. It's just such a toxic fight because I can do Senarth a million times and then I'll just randomly die on like our... 10th week of reclear just because the tornado doesn't work consistently and now they're probably going to have like another what's it called like season of um i almost said season of mastery um like season four where we have to go back to vault of the incarnates and let me tell you i am not looking forward to that because oh man um yeah it, it's uh senarth is not fun I, I just, I think Senarth was a fine fight on Heroic, and if they changed anything other than making it so, like, you know, the tornadoes just fucking kill you, I think it's fine. But when the, the positioning is already janky as hell, and, you know, the movement with abilities isn't super consistent, like, there's a bug where sometimes your roll just stops working, depending on, you know, where you face. It's just absolute misery, that boss. And I, effectively, Senarth is like reprog every time you do it on an alt. So I basically stopped playing any of my alts outside of my Demon Hunter at the very end um, in Vault of the Incarnates, because every time you would do Senarth on Reclear, I would have to figure out mo mobility stuff on that fight all over again, just because it's completely different. And like how you handle that mechanic on a warrior is so different from how you do it on a monk. Um, Senarth, just all this to say, Senarth and stuff like Kurog, Kurog is... I've seen people saying that Kurog is cool in theory. I think Kurog is cool in the early drawing board stages. I think a lot of people are way too lenient about giving Blizzard credit for like fight design and stuff like that. Kurog is like only cool if you look at it on a very surface level approach and don't even consider the mechanics whatsoever. Like people are like, oh, well, the idea of having different elemental phases where you can approach the fight in any order is cool. And it's like, yeah, if that's all you consider, 
right? But the fact that it's like, you know, they're at set positions in the room and you can only really move from one to another unless you do like big moves across the room, which isn't really practical. And the entire fact that the ads get summoned and the fact that there's like specific overlaps with the ads that are really bad and just cause a wipe. I, Kurog, from a mechanical standpoint, is just ill-conceived through and through. And I don't think there is any iteration of that fight that was really good. Like, I could see, I, I remember Max was saying in, like, a tier list video that he thinks if Krog had been, like, where Dierna was in the raid, and they had, like, changed it slightly, maybe it could have been good. I think that's maybe a fair uh, assessment. Like, if it if it had just meant to, if, if they meant it for it to be a really difficult boss and tweaked some of the mechanics a little bit, I could see it being cool. But you would still need to completely change the way the ads work, because that's just fucking trash. Um, and then Dierna, I just didn't think was a fun fight. I've seen people saying they think Diurna was a good boss. I thought it was horseshit. Uh, it was miserable to tank, especially if you were the ad tank. The worst part about Diurna as a tank is you had... Um... Oh, I'm arcane locked. Okay. I'm just going to charge up an Arcanosphere while it runs over here. Oh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that's so good. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, I'm also, I'm not going to do Infernus and the others. I don't really think Arcane Mage can survive Infernus. Maybe, but I, I don't really, Infernus is a really, really, really hard fight to do. Uh, just because it, it's an unavoidable stun. I'm sure it's possible if you were really good at it, but I'm just not even going to bother. Um, but yeah, Diurna as an ad tank is so, so unfun. Because 99% of my deaths to that fight were, uh, like, one melee DPS misses the kick. I get stunned for three seconds, then I miss my kick because I'm stunned, even though I call it out and we don't have a backup. And the next thing I know, a bunch of damage comes in and I'm dead. So as a tank, tanking Deeran adds was fucking miserable. The way the tank buster in phase two worked, fucking miserable. Um, and Razageth was one of the worst bosses ever created. So uh, I, I just, yeah. Uh, oh, there's a chest. Like, I also, I don't really think Razageth was like a good fight on Heroic. Like, I've seen some people saying Razageth was like an S tier fight in Heroic. Like, Max sing the or sang the praises of heroic Razageth, and I've seen a lot of people saying Razageth heroic was a really fun fight. It was a good fight, but like I think some people are getting very carried away saying Razageth was like one of the best AOTC end bosses ever created. No, it wasn't. Like I'm sorry, but no, it was not. Uh, it was fine, and that's as much as I'm willing to give it. It it was like. I still think the whole platform and multiple phases and stuff, I don't really think it was that good. Um, like, it wasn't, and that's the thing, it wasn't bad, but I have to say this specifically because I've seen so many people saying Razageth was one of the greatest AOTC bosses ever, and I'm just like, did we play the same boss? It was a pretty standard AOTC boss that I just did not enjoy. I didn't hate Razageth, at least. I, I hated, um, oh, Wait, my Arcanosphere cast finished even though I started moving. Oh, that's nice. Um, I just realized I haven't even done the Watt intro yet. I'm just going to go do that and get the last three levels. Or the last two levels, because it ends at, at 60. Uh, but yeah, Razageth was a pretty, pretty whatever um, end boss. I really don't think it was anything special. Um... But Mythic was way worse. Like, Mythic Razageth, one of the worst Mythic bosses ever created. Definitely one of the worst Mythic end bosses ever created. Heroic Razageth was just okay. Uh, but it definitely is nowhere near as good as people seem to think it is. I, I don't understand that. I think people think Heroic Razageth is so good just because of how bad Mythic was. So I think it is by far the biggest disparity in terms of, like, Heroic and Mythic quality we've ever seen. Like, Mythic Jailer, some people had problems with. But I actually enjoyed Mythic Jailer. Uh... And I, I think Heroic Jailer was also really good. But, like, I think Heroic Jailer, if we're talking, like, which boss was more fun to do the first time, I had way more fun both on my first kill of Heroic Jailer than my first kill of Heroic Razageth. And I hated Razageth rekills. It was so boring. And yet, every single time I did a Heroic Jailer, either a sale run or just killing it with people in my guilds, I had a lot of fun. It, it's just a fun boss to do on Heroic. The only thing annoying about Jailer is, like, the mind controls, right? But, you know, that you can play around that. 
It's just, it was annoying if you had people who had no idea what was going on. But generally speaking, people did know what was going on. Okay, yeah, so as long as you have the quest, this works. There we go. By the way, I'm not going to be ending the stream. Uh, how, how much? We, yeah, I've only been streaming for four hours. So this is like pretty, pretty short. I'll be going another two hours and I'll be doing something different, which uh, you'll see after I'm done with this particular run. Um, but if you're worried that I'm not going to like answer your question or something, we still have plenty of time. I will still be streaming for plenty of time. Um, but yeah, I'd, all of that to say, right, I really hated Vault of the Incarnates. So I did not enjoy Dragonflight at all on launch. I, there was also like, I get like, so all of this spawned because I read Mateus's comment about like, there's more things that I want to do instead of I have to do. For Mythic Raiders, at least, there were a lot of I have to do this types of things in um, Dragonflight launch. And a lot of them, in my opinion, were way more tedious than any of the things we've had to do in previous expansions. Thankfully, you know, right, I'm complaining about this now. And it's one of the reasons I kind of said I really didn't like Dragonflight at the start. It has gotten so much better in 10.1 like not even just a little it it is a night and day difference the amount of farming required in dragonflight launch for mythic raiders is so much more than it is right now 10.1 is it, amazing right so i think it is a pleasant surprise that we went from dragonflight launch which was just as bad as some of the stuff in bfa and shadowlands in my opinion Maybe not as bad as, like, corruption, right? Or some of the worst things. But it, it was bad. Not corruption, not mana pearls, but it was annoying. Uh, and we went immediately from that into one of the most friendly, non-enforced, like, gearing systems ever. The new upgrade system, while I think that they could do a bit more to improve, like, how clear it is, I still don't know why you need so many upgrade tracks. It's so much better. Uh, it is. It made the gearing process just a breeze right so all of these complaints that i'm giving about dragonflight right they've already fixed it which i think is great it's the main reason why as of 10.1 i have once again started recommending this game to my friends and saying you should come back to this game uh it's actually good now but whenever my friends asked me on dragonflight launch should i play again i said no because i did not think it was a good game yet but it is so uh there we go uh, but yeah, I definitely think there's a lot of like from casual players, all of my casual friends, even from Dragonflight launch, said they enjoyed it a lot more. So I definitely know it has been an improvement in that regard. Um, but they added a lot of really toxic shit on launch for Mythic Raiders that they kind of dialed back. Uh, and like spark farming, right? Spark farming was absolutely fucking cancer. Uh, now you get half a spark every week. It's way more consistent. Basically, all of the main issues I had with Dragonflight launch have already been resolved. So, yeah, I, I really don't have any complaints. I just think they can maybe do a little bit better with the upgrade system, but they're already, like, adding another track for Mythic Raids, which I think was something that was very much needed. So, yeah. Uh, generally, 10.1 and from what I've seen so far, 10.1.5, patches full of Ws. Uh, definitely really, 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 really good changes. I also was not a fan of Forbidden Reach, I should note. Um, so I've seen people saying that was good. I think Forbidden Reach was, once again, a step in the right direction, and then they got there in this last patch. But I think Forbidden Reach, like the Onyx Annulet, I, the Onyx Annulet should never have existed. Let's be real here. Uh, the fact that they added a, this overly convoluted ring that was best in slot for like most specs for the latter half of this uh, of the first raid tier... And then still best in slot for a lot of specs, even at the start of Avarice. And even after the nerfs that they are now forced to do to it, uh, it is still going to be best in slot for tanks and Windwalker monks. The Onyx Annulet was just an abject failure. I don't understand why it needed to exist. It's the classic example of Blizzard just designing forced things to make people feel like they need to engage in the content rather than doing it because they want to. Because like Zascara Vaults, right? If... The Onyx Annulet didn't exist. People would still do Zascara Vaults because there's a lot of like cool collectible shit in it. But Blizzard was, well, as always, so afraid that nobody's going to do this new content that we're adding. We need to add an overpowered ring to it so people feel like they have to do it. And it's just, it's that type of toxic dog shit design that I just hate. And like, 
for instance, in um, in 10.1.5, they're adding a bunch of really new overpowered trinkets called paracausal fragments. Or I say overpowered because they're like good for their item level, but they're capped at item level 424. Which, hey, guess what? That means that mythic raiders aren't going to feel forced to do this. People will still do time rifts because it adds an amazing set of new transmog options, mount stuff, etc. So tons of people will still run that content. And by the way, it's actually fun, which, you know, revolutionary, right? I enjoy testing time rifts on the PTR just because they're fun to do. Not even just because I want the rewards or whatever. It's actually some of the most fun I've had testing a feature in a while. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and these new trinkets that they're adding are only 424 item level. So Mythic Raiders won't want it, but they're really good options. Like for their item level, they're very strong. So for people trying to like catch up alts and stuff, it's going to be a fantastic way to get your alts some bonus gear. So overall, it's just perfect. It's the, the perfect way to um, do gearing in a new patch. So yeah, I, I don't really know what happens Dragonflight launch and 10.0.7, they they like started creeping back to their old ways, and thankfully, whatever I don't know if they listened to feedback and realized maybe we shouldn't do this. They've completely gone back on that, and now they're actually making good changes again in 10.1. So it's uh I'm tentatively hopeful, but at the same time, I, I will always cite the classic example of Battle for Azeroth patch 8.1. 8.1 by myself and many other players when it came out, we were all like, wow, this saves Battle for Azeroth. 8.1 was a great patch. The raid was awesome. It had a bunch of really good quality of life changes. All of the really annoying systems from BFA launch were improved drastically. It was a massive step in the right direction. And then what did Blizzard do immediately after? They released Najatar. They released the Mana Pearl grind. They released um, fucking the... Azerite Essences or whatever. And it was just everybody who loved the changes in 8.1 were just sitting there like, oh no, why? And then obviously the classic Nihilotha corruptions. Corruptions, I'll at least give them credit. They at least were kind of fun, but it was still just terrible, terrible, terrible. It just should not have existed. So I don't know. I, I ever since what happened in Najatar, I will never trust Blizzard. Like, you know, they did so well in 8.1, and then they immediately went back on that. So it's it's not too late for that to happen again. Anyways, um, uh, I, I spent a lot of time just discussing that, but, you know, I think something to talk about, right? Uh, owner said, top three fastest clash slash spec, Druid 1, DH Monk, Warrior. Uh, for leveling? For leveling, I would say it's probably a pretty close, like, dead even tie between... Windwalker Monk Guardian Druid, pretty safe to say. Uh, after that, it's it's tough. Um, you could maybe argue Demon Hunter. All right, there we go, level sixty. So unfortunately, we can see here. If I uh, accept this quest, we can look at the experience it grants. Two thousand, right? So they forgot to scale the experience for um, this stuff. So even though Chromie Time, it says it scales up to sixty-one, they forgot to actually make that happen. Um, so that, that's it for this run, but like I said, stream isn't over yet. So while I get something set up to continue, let's see. Um, let me, let me just, we can get rid of live split now. Actually, I'll leave it on the screen while I talk, just so pe people who are trickling in now will see the end time. And while I catch up in chat, I'm going to, I'm going to get something set up real quick. Quick. Uh, do I not actually need to do anything special? Uh, we'll see. One second. Uh, let me just let me just then read chat for like I'll, I'll spend a few minutes catching up in chat, just speed running through this before I continue with the next thing I'll be doing on stream, which I will explain then. Um, I would say yeah, DH is probably a good contender though for the third fastest. It's just it's hard to put DH in the same category as uh as other stuff, just because you can't really compare it one-to-one. -one. But I think if I... If if Demon Hunter was available at level 10, I would probably end up doing a lot of really good speedruns with it. I should probably do Demon Hunter speedruns more often, to be honest. I think more 8-60 to 60 speedruns could be kind of fun. But it's just... It's so self-contained, right? Because if I'm testing Demon Hunter stuff, I'm not testing every other class. 
So, yeah, I don't know. If I could choose any race with any racials, for example, a Tarn, example, a Tarn with the Dark Iron Dwarf racials, and they start at level 10, what would I choose? Uh, you've asked a lot of very specific questions like that about racials. I don't know. I mean, if we're talking like, I think what you're saying is, if I could take the racial effects from any race and then just play the cosmetic one that I wanted, like what are my favorite set of racials disconnected from the actual race itself? And then what is my favorite race disconnected from the racials? Um, in that case, pro I would say Blood Elf is probably my favorite race if I really had to pick. And then I would say for racials, uh, racials, it's hard because I think there's a lot of unique racials, like independent racials that it is one of my favorites, but no specific race has like all of my favorite racials. Um, so like, for instance, Volpera's Make Camp is probably my favorite racial in the game, just because of the flexibility it offers. It's really fun. So I really like using the Volpera racial, but the other Volpera racials are fucking trash. So it makes it really hard to justify playing a Volpera in endgame content because sure, it's really good for speed leveling, but the other ones are so bad. Volpera is like one of the worst endgame races just because of how bad its racials are. So as much as I'd love to just have make camp, like if I could pick and choose racials, like if I if we were taking like a, a pick three, pick three your favorite racials, Volpera make camp, uh, Lightforge Draenei laser beam, uh, the like summon a laser beam and it explodes, love that thing. That would definitely be one of them. And then if I had to pick one other racial that I really like. If we're cheating and going back in time, OG Arcane Torrent. OG Arcane Torrent, I mean, it was broken, right? So, but like playing Wrath Classic with original Arcane Torrent again, oh, I I forgot how much I missed old Blood Elf Racial. It's so good. It's so, 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 so good. And uh, the new version is fine, but it, it just, it doesn't hold up. So, yeah, nothing compares to that. Um, I don't know. Uh, what what would it be? Obviously, there there would probably be some really good like DPS uh, combination, but I would say in terms of racials that I enjoy using the most or utilizing the most, definitely make camp, definitely light forge, granite laser beam, and then probably out of the current racials, Pandaren bouncy, maybe. Just because the amount of times where I've fucked up and fallen off a cliff when playing my Panda Warrior, and then I just, like, land at the bottom of the cliff and I'm still alive, and I'm just, like, sitting there like, wait, I'm dead. No, wait, I'm not. Panda's OP. Like, those moments of bouncy just saving my ass makes me really like that racial. So probably that, honestly, if I could pick three races, and then I would, I guess, put them on a Blood Elf. Uh, bouncy Blood Elf would be uh, <laughs> something interesting. Um... But yeah, that, those are probably my favorite racials. Speaking of Senarth, by the way, the amount of times when I was playing my Panda Warrior and I would accidentally get shot off the platform on Senarth, fall all the way back down to the start only to survive the fall, and then have to slowly work my way all the way back up the stairs only to die to random damage at the very top of the staircase. That happened like more than once and it really pissed me off. Because I was really excited to make the comeback with Bouncy, and then I just got like deprived of the amazing comeback at the last second. Um, I did get some really sick uh, Transcendence plays on Senarth, though, so it was a, a fun boss, at least in that regard. Okay, oh my god, a lot of people have messaged in the last, like, ten minutes. <laughs> oh, somebody said, no way you're gonna kill Yenimus on a mage? Ha ha ha. Goose Comics messaged about crafted panda gear. Oh, let me, let me check that. Um... Interesting. Uh, you're right, actually, Goose Comics. They did fix the panda gear. Oh, that is... Huh. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> um, I have some work to do before my next world record attempt, it seems. Uh, thank you for informing me. Yeah, that's, that's actually fixed. Oh, shit, do I... I... I removed leatherworking from a bunch of my characters because they fucked it up. Oh, I hope I still have some of my leatherworking characters. Oh, that's going to really suck. Worst case scenario, you can, uh, like, copy over characters onto the PTR and keep fishing for the recipes. But, oh no, I have to do my run on live servers. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, well, anyways, uh, that's something to figure out later, but I, I appreciate you letting me know. 
Um, and it, by the way, you don't need to worry about messaging me during Discord because usually I won't actually check my Discord unless I have free time. So obviously don't like, I, I, I'm not saying I encourage anyone to spam me on Discord, but like you messaging me here, like when it's topical, right? This is relevant to the discussion. Totally fine with that. Yeah. Uh, if I was busy, I just, I wouldn't have checked it, but that that's good to know. Um... If you get a fawn to save and it aggroes Yetimus when you corrupt it, he skill. Yeah, I, I, I know about that trick, but that is it's really risky because it's very easy to just get yourself killed by doing that, and it, it also may just not even blow up on Yetimus. Uh, but definitely is a cool trick. I, I had it happen accidentally like once, but I generally try not to do that on purpose because it, it can get really, really, really sketchy. When you were in the air and use blink, it usually teleports you to the ground. Yeah, when I, I think when I blinked during Yetimus, I blinked on the cliff. So it teleported me to the ground, but I was like higher up on the slope terrain. Um, Let's see. I'm surprised the 10.1.5 is a 0.5 patch with how many changes there are. Um, no, this is a pretty standard 0.5 patch, honestly. But historically, they've always added mega dungeons in 0.5 patches. Um... Yeah, because I was Operation Nomergon even out with Nazjatar? I don't remember if it was. I think Operation Nomergon may have released with seven point or with eight point two. I'm not sure, but Tazavesh released with a uh, nine point one point five. I think, or was it released with nine point one? I don't remember. Usually they do it on a point one patch though. Uh, I don't remember if they did this on because like. Karazhan released in 7.1, but 7.1 was only Karazhan. So it was basically like, like, think of it this way. Nighthold released on 7.1.5. So basically they're just doing the opposite, right? So Nighthold came out in the 0.5 patch and Karazhan was the main content. This is just the reverse, right? It's the raid came out in the 0.1, the mega dungeons coming out in the 0.5. And to be frank, outside of the Mega Dungeon, there really isn't that much content coming in this new patch, which isn't a bad thing, right? It is a 0.5 patch, but it is absolutely a pretty normal 0.5 patch. They're adding the Mega Dungeon, they're adding a new open world event, which like, I mean, it's cool. I like Time Rifts. Like I said, they're very fun, but it's not like it's a super intensive thing. It's a lot of reused assets, which is fine. I'm always f for reusing like old, old zones, old assets in creative ways. Like, it, it brings back a lot of, um, uh, like, old, like, periods in time, and it's, like, an alternate history and stuff like that. I really like the design. But overall, it's not like there's a ton of new content. It's really just the, uh, just the Mega Dungeon. Um, on Mythic, oh, yeah, Testifiable said, Heroic Raz is one of the best fights that's out there. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know a lot of people really liked it. I just, I personally don't agree with that. Uh, I thought Dragonflight was a steaming pile of crap. Only thing I'm interested in is classic and hardcore. Yeah. I, I mean, I obviously don't think it was a steaming pile of crap, but I definitely don't think it is as good as some people seem to think it is. But like I said, it's getting better. Kurog could have been amazing if the first altar transition was designed properly. The way you could cheat. Yeah. Um, Kurog on Mythic. Because I was before talking specifically about Kurog just in general. Because I, what I dislike is when people say Kurog was cool in theory. It was not cool in theory. It was pretty bland in theory. Like, it could have been made better, sure, but, like, it was a pretty standard boss even in theory. But like you said, in practice, Kurog was fucking horseshit with that tank transition thing. The timing on that was so garbage. It was so precise. And there were times when, like, on our fifth reclear, like, I would just be taunting Kurog and he would just stop moving. And he would just stand there on the other side. And it's like, I've done this many times. And yet, randomly today, he just decides he's going to just not move. And then we wipe. It's just so fucking dumb. To the point where, later into Reclear, we, my my guild stopped even doing the Karag like, cheese thing. We would literally just get whatever adds that happened, YOLO whatever overlap was going on, and then we would just pop all cooldowns and burn Karag before the second ad phase. Which obviously required a lot of damage. But my raid leader was more willing to do that than have to deal with potentially wiping because of the stupid Kurog like timing transition thing. Just because it was so annoying even on reclear. Hated that boss. So bad. Uh, I wonder why the Mega Dungeon is not a raid. Um, look how many important and sick bosses there are. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess 
it definitely could have fit into a raid in terms of like you know the the lore and stuff like that i don't know i i think it works as a mega dungeon also the the way that the dungeon is set up is pretty neat where it's effectively like it's the same dungeon two times so you're the first time you go through if you haven't watched my video covering it you fight four bosses and then at the end you basically go into an alternate timeline and do the dungeon again but with four different bosses so it's kind of it's kind of cool how that works you're going through the same effectively version of the dungeon but like all the rooms are different that the mobs and bosses are different and stuff like that uh it's pretty cool in concept it really fits into the whole like time aesthetic theme and it'll work really well it's very clearly set up to be like a mythic plus style thing because it it divides perfectly in half it is so able it, it's able to be so cleanly cut in half and like one is the first mythic plus one's the second mythic plus more so than any of the other dungeons they've done so far uh vault of classic bosses and what the fuck is this nonsense yeah yep the center earth ice tornadoes would be better if they made them spawn in set locations they they so the center earth tornadoes did spawn in set locations at least the ones on the stairs it's just the the main issue is they were set locations but the timing in which you moved onto it could mean that it was a little bit different so sometimes if we fell like three seconds behind then our gateway positions were completely off and instead of gating into a safe spot we would gate straight into a tornado so yeah, it was it was just really annoying. The amount of precision it required for something that annoying, I I really don't like. Uh, the way the stairs weren't designed properly, so you could get stuck in invisible walls. Yep. Yeah, the ice was also really janky. It, there were multiple weeks where they would like break something with the ice, and it was just so broken. The spinning bug in center wasted about three nights of prog. Sucks when it's on two or four healers. Yeah, absolutely. Sound like was such a bitch to prog. Senarth by far the worst boss in the raid on Mythic. Krog would have been amazing if designed properly, but good overall. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Senarth, I do think, ended up being the worst boss. I actually... It's tough. I really did not like Dathia. I think anyone... Personally, I would say I had the worst experience in Dathia, even compared to Senarth. But that is because I was a tank, and I was not a, a tank with a knockback cancel. So anyone who played Brewmaster or Prop Heli on Dathia... I think is probably with me in saying that that was the worst boss in that raid by far. The worst boss to prog on for that class combo. Absolute misery. Uh, Paladins were just fucked, right? You had, like, no ways to deal with it. Brewmaster, at least, I could use Transcendence once, but I really needed to transcend on the big knock for the ad, so I just had to constantly get shot into, into the tornadoes, and it just... It was so miserable. And... Later on in the tier, when I did every boss on my Demon Hunter, being able to just press spacebar in Demon Hunter and you negate the entire tank mechanic, how is that well designed? It's such a bad tank mechanic. When some classes can completely negate it and others have no way to deal with it and will either get insta-killed by getting shot off, in, uh, off the ledge and dying, or they have to take extra damage by getting bounced off the tornadoes. Such a bad, badly designed tank boss. Um... But I would say overall, I agree with you that Senarth was worse. I just hated Dathia because it was fucking miserable. Uh, Dierna was horrible. I am a tank main. Yeah, Dierna was a fucking bitch. Positive vibes only? No. <laughs> Definitely not here. Uh, welcome to my stream. I rant a lot. Uh, Razageth Heroic was fine, not good. I would agree with that, yeah. The last talent that lets you double lust is good for soloing. Yeah, ra double lust is fine because you have drums. Um, it's obviously good in other forms of content. I just think, generally speaking, uh, using um, using Time Anomaly was probably the better play, just because even getting clear casting in a lot of cases was fine. And getting, like, mini Lust randomly in some cases is pretty cool. Uh, good old five-phase fight. You yeah, fucking hell. Mythic Razageth. Any last boss that allows two Lusts is horrible for pugs? Yep. You hated phase 2.5 of Mythic Raz? I'm right there with you. I hated phase 1.5 of Mythic Raz more than anything. I just, I really hated the caster ads. But 2.5 is close. The, the thing about 2.5 is that was a really shitty phase, but at least it was very scripted. So phase 2.5 of Raz, it either went perfectly or you died. Phase 1.5 of Raz, there were so many times where like we would lose one or two DPS to getting like clipped by the breath or like 
they would rip aggro on the uh, ads immediately and just get insta-gibbed, or there would be a bunch of casters sitting out in Africa. There's so many like little things about that that can be really annoying. And because it happens, it's like the worst position thing. It happens just long enough into the poll where, oh, you, like especially while you're progging phase one, you don't see it a lot. And then even when you get to phase 1.5, you have to prog all the way through phase one again to get to phase 1.5 to do that. And then it, you know, there's so much stuff that can go wrong because phase 2.5, right? Like, I don't know how other people experienced it, but we got like five good pulls there and it was an annoying phase. But once people figured out the movement, we kind of got it down, but it took so long to get through 1.5. I, and it, out of all of the phases, right? Phase 1.5 is what caused us the most wipes on reclears. Just pure misery. Ah, I hated that. Dragonflight launch, falling asleep, spamming rares. Yeah, rare farming was the worst. Absolute worst. Uh, the super rare farming is what killed Dragonflight launch for me. That was terrible. I hope they never do that again. RNG, like, RNG Titan forging on rare drops off rare mobs. Please, no. So bad. So, so, so bad. And especially when it wasn't communicated, right? This was all stuff players had to figure out dynamically. Uh, since I played Windwalker, I hated the whole end of March, April patch because Fist of Fury didn't work at all. Yes. Oh, yeah. Babylonius was trying so hard to get that fixed. And, like, it would get fixed and then it would get broken, like, immediately after. It was so dumb. 10.1 is huge. You just do a heroic, maybe normal mode clear every week on alts and do Mythic Plus for the pieces you need. Yeah, the gearing is so much nicer now. What they need to tackle next is the story. Uh, man, the story is beyond saving at this point. I, I don't even want them to touch it anymore. It's just, it's so fucked. Just give up at this point for that. Onyx Annulet shouldn't exist. It being nerfed in 10.1.5 and your main needs a 450 socket ring to replace it. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, it's dumb. Annulet should be what Forbidden Reach was created for. Just a catch up, a ring that you could choose which secondary stats you wanted. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely agree. Which is kind of what they're doing in 10.1.5, right? So... Uh, definitely, I think they've learned their lesson with that. Corruptions were fine after the vendor. Yeah. It was the early grinding that was just uh, really, really, really dumb for me. And all of the nerfs and stuff that they did constantly. Um, Let's see. Not a bad run. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, Kimsey said, ooh, thanks for your guides. They're very useful. Uh, uh, Naomi said, on the racials mix, probably Night Elf with Dark Iron Dwarf or regular Dwarf racials. Yeah, Dark Iron definitely has a lot of good racials. Dark Iron Dwarf, like, if I had a top 10 racials list, I think all of Dark Iron Dwarf racials would fit in there. It's just none of them are, I think, my top three favorites. Night Elf definitely is nice. Shadow Meld and Wisp Form are both, like, Wisp Form, obviously, outside of Classic, doesn't really see much use, right? But Shadow Meld is pretty nice, it has a lot of utility. Uh, and then regular dwarf racials. I don't know if I like regular dwarf racials, but they are, they are nice. Obviously, stone form is just broken. So if I was like talking, what is the most overpowered set of racials? Stone form would be on that list. Uh, but I don't really think stone form's fun to use. It's just broken. Maybe some people enjoy it. Personally, I just think it's like it's just OP. Um, percent verse from high mountain taran plus dark iron dwarf or dwarf cleanse racial full, plus full pyramid camp. Yeah. That, that's definitely a good setup. Uh, Volpera is the best collector's race. Yeah, the make camp lets you do so much like more efficient farming stuff. Um, is it just me or Shadowlands dungeons better than Dragonflight ones? Eh. eh. Um, I think it's hit or miss for both. Like, I don't know. I mean, if I'm being honest, I don't really like any of the Dragonflight dungeons that much. Like, I, I think every single Mythic Plus, or, well, obviously, out of the two Mythic Plus seasons so far, my favorite dungeons have been non-Dragonflight ones. Uh, Dawn of the Infinite is cool, though. I will say that. So far, I like this new dungeon. But Algathar is eh. Brackenhide sucks balls. Halls is fine. Knockout is fine. Azure Vault is terrible. I hate this place. Ruby Life Pools is terrible. Neltharis is... Eh, I really don't like it. I'm kind of okay with Oldemon. I think Oldemon just has really bad tuning. But I, Oldemon mechanically, I don't hate a lot of the bosses. I think it's fine. It's just tuning and stuff like the Emberon visuals just suck. But it, I think it's a fine dungeon. Um, but I also really didn't like Shadowlands. Like, I liked Mists of Tirna Scythe. Tazavesh was great. I love Tazavesh. Uh, the other side was fine. I liked it. 
Uh, Halls was fine. I hated Plague Fall. I didn't really like Necrotic Wake a lot. Uh, Necrotic Wake I hated because of how many skips there were. There were so many skips where, like, if one person fucked it up, it just... Yeah, it was so annoying. Spires I did not like, but I didn't hate it. Sanguine Depths, I really... I loved Sanguine Depths on launch. And then the more I did Sanguine Depths in Mythic Plus, I started to hate it more and more. It's hard to say. And then Theater of Pain I kind of liked. Yeah, actually... I don't know. I was kind of, like, not a huge fan of Shadowlands Dungeons when it was current content. But I do think, like, what you said, after the changes, like, towards the end of the expansion, a lot of these got better. And maybe I'll feel that same way about Dragonflight Dungeons, but I think, looking back, overall, I probably like these more than Dragonflight. But stuff like Mist of Tirna Scythe and Tazavesh really hard carry it. The other side, too. They, they kind of hard carry it for me. Whereas, like, one thing I can say, anything beats BFA Dungeons. Some people really like BFA Dungeons. I fucking hate everything here. Operation Mechagon is the only good set of dungeons in this entire expansion. Uh, Atal Dazar sucks. Freehold, fine. King's Rest sucks. Worst dungeon ever made. Also the worst dungeon ever made. Siege of Boralus, pretty bad. Motherload, fine. But there was some really, really, really annoying trash packs. Waycrest Manor, fine. But, like, the, the closed corridors were really, really annoying with, like, Sanguine and stuff like that. Hot take, I like Toldegore. Um, I, I like Toldegore in theory, though, but I, I do agree that in practice, this dungeon was kind of cancer. Every time you ran it, people pulling stuff through walls. And Underrot is fine, I guess. Underrot is probably... Underrot and Freehold are definitely, like, the two best dungeons in this expansion, right? So I'm kind of glad they brought those back more than anything. And, well, Mechagon was the best dungeon in this expansion, but out of the two baseline ones. But, man, BFA had some real stinkers here. I really hated most BFA dungeons. There's so many really, really, really bad dungeons in here that weigh it down. I think especially the biggest thing for me is Shrine of the Storm and Temple of Setherless are just two of the worst dungeons ever created. They are so, so bad. Oh, speaking of which, my sister... Uh, hi, Ashley. Uh, my sister just popped into chat. I, I tried to get my sister into WoW, and... Obviously, they're changing this in the next patch, right? But right now, you need to go through BFA and the start. And I had to do a lot of these BFA dungeons with my sister, and it just made me remember how terrible some of these are. Like, trying to do the mother load and, like, telling my sister exactly where to stand. And, like, she would walk two steps in the wrong direction and pull half the dungeon. It's just, the dungeon sucks in terms of the trash, like, positioning. There's so many, like, little precise little movements and skips that you gotta do. And... Toldegore, another one where like it just you pull something through the wall and then a bunch of shit comes down on you. We did Shrine of the so Storm and my sister died on like almost every single boss because this dungeon sucks. It oh I hate I hate BFA dungeons. Uh, there are so many really 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 bad BFA dungeons, and that's why I've been saying for a while, right? Like it is criminal that for this long BFA has been the new player experience. Like. These are some of the worst dungeons ever made. And this was the introduction that players had to, like, leveling in dungeons? Like, dear lord, that is just terrible for new player retention. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I, I hate these things. Anyways, let me, let me catch up on chat a little bit, because I ranted about that for a while. Um, Nazjatar and Mechagon Isle was at the same time. Right, right. Uh... Operation Nomergon. Oh, no, yeah, I'm talking about Operation uh, Mechagon. Because that, that's the name of the dungeon, right? Operation Mechagon, yeah. Uh, wasn't 7.0.5 Trial of Valor as well? Yes. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, it was. I, I, was it 7.0.5? Or was that also with Karazhan and 7.1? I forget. It was a, all around the time. I, I don't remember exactly which came first. But Karazhan, Trial of Valor released at some point around the same time. And then Nighthold came out a bit later in the .5 patch. Uh, spending an hour re-clearing Kurog because he refuses to move, yeah. Sun Earth was bad because it was frustrating. Dathy was bad because the fight sucked in its entirety. Nailed it. I agree. Mythic versus Heroic KJ was a huge and frustrating difference. I liked Mythic KJ. <laughs> um, I actually think Heroic KJ was worse than Mythic KJ. Uh, because, uh, yeah, Mythic KJ was really, really hard, but, like, you're expected to struggle on a Mythic end boss. And I actually liked Mythic KJ. I thought Mythic KJ, banger boss. I will die on that hill. Fucking love that fight. Um, 
The problem with Heroic AJ is a lot of the really annoying, difficult mechanics from Mythic were still really annoying and difficult on Heroic. And some of the stuff that is expected on a final Mythic boss is just not okay on an AOTC boss. So I think a lot of people really, 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 really struggled with Heroic AJ just because it was brutally hard for an AOTC. I think it is probably one of the hardest AOTCs they've ever made. Uh, Mythic KJ was buggy at launch. So that's fair. I think that's a very fair point. Mythic KJ had a lot of bugs, but they did fix a lot of those bugs. And I think when it was working properly, I loved Mythic KJ. And don't get me wrong. I liked Heroic KJ too, but I'm saying that Heroic KJ was way too difficult for like an AOTC boss. I liked it because it was hard, but I mean, TOS in general was one of the hardest raid tiers they've ever released, right? So... Yeah, I liked, I loved Heroic KJ, I loved Heroic Avatar, I also loved Mythic Avatar and Mythic KJ. I just love TOS. I, I think I've said it before, Tuma Sargeras is my favorite raid of all time, hands down. Um, but I know a lot of people who normally get AOTC who gave up trying to get AOTC in Tuma Sargeras. Like a lot of my more casual friends, they just gave up. It, it was a very, very, very difficult AOTC boss. Um... Let's see, I have a few Volpera that I just leave camp by Shaw of Anger and keep logged out in Undasta. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Tazavesh over all of them, but in general, I think Dragonflight had better dungeons. Yeah, that's fair. Definitely Tazavesh was the highlight of Shadowlands, though. Dragonflight dungeons are all fine. You kind of like Nilfaris in the state it's in right now. Yeah, I, I will give you that. Nilfaris has had a lot of really big improvements. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine. I, I don't hate Nilfaris. The main thing I hated was the tuning. And they have changed that a lot, so yeah, that's fair. You like Azure Vault? Yeah, Azure Vault is really nice when you have a good group. And I like Azure Vault from like a the routing creativity with like the jumping down the rings is really cool. But yeah, pugs and Azure Vault. As a tank, there's so many mobs in Azure Vault where if people aren't on the ball with stun rotations, it's just miserable. And any dungeon that forces you to have like really coordinated stun rotations to not have your tank fall over dead, I'm just automatically not going to like it. What's the highest key I've done in Dragonflight? 22? I don't really push Mythic Plus a lot. I've gotten all 20s. I have all my portals. Uh, I've done a few 22s. I don't think I've done a 23, but I just also don't really care, right? Um, I'm not like a, a Mythic Plus pusher. I don't really like doing all of that stuff. I had fun getting my plus 20s, but after that, I, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of doing the exact same thing, just slightly harder, right? Uh, especially because... At the point where I'm at, right, where if I, I can reasonably pug 21s and 22s, I've pugged like one or two 22 underrots, but at this point, if I want to go further, I would need to actually get my friends to like, you know, as we were saying before, if you want to do something like that, you need to set aside time. So I need to get some friends to form a push team with, and then we need to set aside like specific times to push. And it's like, man, right now I am doing speed runs. I'm making videos. I'm raiding in retail. I'm raiding in classic. I'm trying to prepare for classic speed runs. I have so many things that I'm trying to do right now. And on top of that, I'm slowly trying to like chip away at more long-term goals, like the leveling add-on. I do not have time to like push 23. So it's just, it's not something I'm interested in, but I at least got my portals. So, you know. Also, Atonement, the dungeon that ends after the second boss, even though there's two more bosses to go. Yep, yeah, basically. It, it, I hate, the main reason I hate dungeons like Halls of Atonement is for that exact reason, where this is literally a dungeon where if your group can kill Echelon, the dungeon's free. And I hate when there's dungeons like that, where like midway through, you get the hardest boss. And, you know, it's just a check of can your group do that. There are a few dungeons in Shadowlands like that, that I did not really like. Um, and then, like, for instance, I hated Necrotic Wake specifically because of Surge and Stitch Flesh. And if your DPS did not know how to do the hook, you're fucked. It's not even a hard mechanic, but so many people managed to fuck it up. This, I would say Surge and Stitch Flesh made, uh, Necrotic Wake unpuggable, in my opinion. Like, obviously, you could pug Necrotic Wake. I would pug Necrotic Wake. My problem was you could not reliably pug it. Because I would pug into groups where people would have really high IO, really high item level, and yet for some reason they still fucked up the hook. And at no point throughout the entirety of Shadowlands did I find a consistent way to see, can somebody do the hook? Unless you're in a pre-made, it's always a crapshoot. You get to this boss, someone can either do the mechanic or they fuck it up and you wipe. And that was just a really, really frustrating experience. I really hated that boss because of it. Most BFA dungeons were incredible with an organized group. Some of the worst with pugs, though. That's, yeah, that's a very fair point. 
Uh, Toldegor, Taldazar, Freehold, and Mechagon Dun Dungeons. Yeah, I like, like I said, I like Toldegor. Uh, not a lot of people would agree with that, though. I did not really enjoy Ataldazar. I honestly don't know why people enjoy Ataldazar. Um, the only person I know who enjoys Ataldazar for a good reason is my friend Deswind, and that's because he discovered some, like, MDI tech of, like, snapping, uh, snapping a bunch of trash onto Razan, and... You know, now he he loves trying to find snapping text because that was like his big play in the MDI, and it is a cool moment, right? Uh, so I know why he loves Atal Bazaar, but I, I'll never understand why a lot of other people like Atal Bazaar. I don't really think it's that fun. Yeah, right. Follow up. Taldegor is the worst place printed in WoW. <laughs> but I think the one thing that everyone universally can agree on is that Temple of Setherless is the worst dungeon ever created. Absolutely terrible. Let me let me skim so I can get caught up because I want to move on to the next stuff. Um, I think they'll make Dragonflight the introduction for new players. Yeah, well, I mean now they're making it so Chromie Time works for all players. So I think they're just going to make it so in general Chromie Time is like the option, which is good. But I definitely think Dragonflight being available in Chromie Time will make things easier for new players for sure. Um. Mythic KJ and Argus, some of the best bosses of any raid. Yeah, unfortunately, my guild died uh, on Argus, so uh, it was one of the few uh, end bosses in Legion, or the only end boss in Legion that I didn't get to prog. Still disappointed, but well, I progged it, I didn't get to finish it. I didn't get to phase three. Still disappointed about that. I would have loved to finish Argus. If they ever do a Legion Classic, I'll be really excited, because I really, really, really want to do Argus again. Because it's like so unsatisfying. The Argus is like the only or Antorus is the only tier where I got up to the final boss and didn't finish it. There have been tiers like I, I skipped Eternal Palace, kind of. My guild basically died on Ashvane, and it was still fairly early in the tier, but I just I stopped playing retail for that tier and I played Classic instead. Uh, but every single other raid tier, I've either not played it or like joins or ab abandoned it very early, like Eternal Palace, um, or I finished it entirely, like Cutting Edge. Uh, Antorus is the only raid tier in the last few years where I got up to the last boss, I progged it all the way through, and then my guild collapsed, like, right at the last second, and I didn't get Cutting Edge, and I'm still salty about that. TOS got to your raid. Umbral Moonglaves? Yeah. Umbral Moonglaves was so cool. I fucking love that trinket. And yeah, especially on Guardian Druid with the Arcane Synergy, for sure, for sure. That was really fun. KJ was your first AOTC since Garrosh because you took a huge break. I, hey, you picked some good AOTCs to get. Garrosh, banger fight. Uh, KJ, one of the best fights of all time, in my opinion. So, yeah. Tomb of Sargeras nearly murdered our guild. That's fair. Tomb of Sargeras, from a comp perspective, brutal. Absolutely brutal. QS was the first raid you ever got into with a proper group, but it was a casual normal raid. Uh, but you were so happy when you killed normal KJ. Hey, even normal KJ was no joke. Normal KJ was probably harder than, like, a lot of some of the modern, difficult, heroic bosses. KJ in general, fucking hard fight. What do I think WoW should do to make it more accessible and appealing to a newer, potentially younger audience? Simple, make the new player experience better. Like, obviously, crummy time is a step in the right direction, but the main issue World of Warcraft has is not that getting to endgame is faster. It's that you get lost. I, I've said before, I, I think I talked about this in a previous run, but, you know, my sister, right? I got her into World of Warcraft, she played for a little bit, she got to level 60, and she kind of bounced off of it. And I'll probably try to get her to at least get to level 70 eventually, but I introduced my sister to Final Fantasy, and she is still playing it. My sister is like midway through Heavensward now. She has gotten further than like almost every single person that I've introduced to Final Fantasy XIV. Why? Because as somebody who is new to MMOs in general, Final Fantasy XIV does an amazing job of just walking you through it. Honestly, a lot of people say it does a lot of handholding, but guess what? For new players, for, you know, a younger audience, um, obviously my sister's like the same age as me, but still, for people who are new to MMOs, you need that handholding. You cannot drop somebody into World of Warcraft and tell them after 10 levels, go level whatever through any expansion you want. For MMO veterans, that's fine. For people like my sister who were new to MMOs in general, you know, 
she got lost. And without me giving her like step-by-step -step instructions every step of the way to level 60, she would never have made it. But Final Fantasy, I barely played it with her, but she's been telling me about how it's going. And like, she'll ask me questions, right? So like when she got to the end game of ARR and she hit the item level checks for some of the later stuff, I taught her about like Allegan Tomestones of Poetics and how to get gear and stuff like that. But, you know, she still has been playing through it on her own and enjoying it because it actually teaches her stuff. And she doesn't have to go out and find out all of this stuff on her own or bombard me with questions, right? The game actually does a good job teaching you. It's one of the reasons a lot of people are getting into Final Fantasy XIV. World of Warcraft needs to do better. Like, I've seen so many people saying that, like, I overly criticize the WoW new player experience, and I don't think they realize how bad it is compared to other games. It's not the worst that it has ever been. It is definitely fine. But, you know you're not really going to get those new, new players, right? So World of Warcraft has a good new player experience for people already familiar with the genre and other similar games. It is a terrible, terrible new player experience for people unfamiliar with MMOs, like little kids and stuff like that. You know, compare like Fortnite, you press one button, you drop into, I, I, don't, I don't play Fortnite, Tomato Town, right? Um, and then you just start blasting people, right? You know, it's, it's really simple to understand, but a little kid being told he has to like figure all this shit out before he can actually play WoW is he's not going to do it, right? He's, and, and also one of them is free to play. The other isn't. Final Fantasy also has a really good free trial. So, you know, talking about new players getting into the game, my sister hasn't spent a dime on Final Fantasy and she's already played it a shit ton. She spent more money on World of Warcraft for like the one month sub when she got it to get to level 60 and give up, then she spent on Final Fantasy, which she's played for hundreds of hours now. It's, I don't know, man. It, it, there's a lot of things that World of Warcraft can do, but it also annoys me because whenever I bring this up, I get like people telling me that, I'm, I, oh, the new player experience is fine. Shut up. And no, no, it's very clearly not. There's very clear things that Blizzard can do. Your sister is watching. I know my sister is watching. She said hi in chat before. And she probably objects to your remark that she... Yes, okay, yes, we all played... My family played um, Disney Toontown Online when we were kids. But still, Toontown Online is not, like, the type of MMO experience that you're going to be able to jump right into World of Warcraft and, and get used to it. So, still, my sister is new to MMOs by, like, all actual metrics. On Heroic, it was really fun, but Mythic was too riddled with raid-wide one-shots. That's fair. Uh, Neltharis also falls into that better with a good group category, definitely. Neltharis has a few cool things that you can do with an experienced group. I agree with that. Especially, like, the chains in Neltharis are pretty cool. Enjoyed pugging AV as a blood decay. Hated it with any other tank. Azer oh, for a second I thought you were, like, pugging Alterac Valley. And then, yeah, Azer Vault exists, right? Um, yeah, it's absolutely miserable as a brewmaster. Uh, the Furies didn't get stunned, yeah. Yeah, true, you, you can just fucking heal through the, the dot, right? So... Absolutely miserable as a brewmaster where I just have to pop all my defensives just to survive the fucking crystal shards. Stupid thing. Uh, thank you, Isa. I, I appreciate it. That seems more like a skill issue from Pugs. Oh, it's definitely a skill issue from Pugs. The problem is, when Pugs have skill issues on mechanics like that that kill the tank, I'm the one who suffers. The Pug gets to just sit there and tunnel DPS, but his skill issue means I die. That's why I don't like it. Do I think they'll keep launching classic expansions? Um... So I've said before, I, I think the way, I definitely think if they do Cataclysm, MOP is a no-brainer, no right? Everyone knows if Cata happens, MOP is going to happen as well. The thing where it gets weird is, what do you do about WAD? WAD is like the big elephant in the room. I have said before, I think the way they should do it is they should do like a, a special short time thing where you like speed run Warlords of Draenor. They basically, they they would need to, for, for the record, announce WAD and Legion Classic at the exact same time. So basically say we're doing legion classic but we're doing wad first and here's when wad comes out here's when legion comes out and we're here's the exact phase schedule for wad classic and it would have to be short like four months tops right you could maybe even condense it further maybe two months tops i think that might be a little bit too aggressive but i think wad has enough content to pack out like four months right you have wad launch then um like you know after a week or so first set of raids are you you have high mall come out right week one then maybe at the end of month one blackrock foundry then at the end of month two or something like that you release the next patch to non jungle uh hellfire citadel you have two months of hellfire citadel and then you move into legion i think if they did that 
a lot of people would be surprised at how good WAD actually was when it's not a three year long expansion. Because WAD had a lot of good content. It was just really fucking long and there was no content in the middle. Challenge modes, fucking amazing. Some of the most fun I've ever had in WoW is WAD challenge modes. WAD dungeons in general were amazing. Uh, I mean, I loved Grimrel Depot and all my friends hate me for that. Grimrel Depot, banger dungeon. I loved it in season four. Um, but WAD in general had some really good dungeons. Challenge modes were a fucking blast. Uh, the raids were good. High Mall was a good raid. I liked a lot of the bosses. I would say High Mall is the weakest raid ever. Or, or, or High Mall is the weakest raid out of the three, for sure. But it was still a good raid, in my opinion. Blackrock Foundry is like regarded as one of the best raids of all time, right? Blackrock Foundry, amazing raid tier. Hellfire Citadel, generally regarded as like a really good or above average raid tier. I think Hellfire Citadel had some bosses that I wasn't a huge fan of, but it also had a lot of really, really good fights. So raid-wise amazing expansion dungeon wise amazing expansion world content uh the like starting world content for uh the expansion was kind of not the best but it also wasn't the worst that we've ever seen the leveling experience obviously really good it still holds up today and tanan jungle was actually a really good patch zone so i think if you condense the entirety of wad into a four month time period with the knowledge that legion is coming out after the fact i think people would play it i think you just need to be good about how you market it because obviously, if you just say, we're releasing WAD Classic, nobody is excited. But if you say, we're releasing WAD Classic and then Legion Classic immediately after, and here's when they're coming out, I think people would be like, yeah, I want to play Legion Classic, so I'll at least try WAD because it only lasts like four months, right? You get the best of like the entire expansion in a condensed time period. I think that's how you do it, and I think it would be a success, but you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, reason... Uh, AD is enjoyable in organized groups is because of the... Oh, Atal Dazar. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I'm still of the opinion that too many Mythic Plus dungeons require routing tools. Yeah, for sure. Uh, stuff like um, MDT is definitely required for like really high pushing keys. I guess it it's better that we have add-ons to do that than like having to like do word of mouth like in Legion. Like in Legion, that wasn't as common knowledge, right? So a lot of routing was entirely done through word of mouth and that kind of made it harder to get into it. But now you have MDT, so it's better. I guess Legion Classic, absolutely. I would love that. As a heroic raider for most of my playtime, I'm glad I have the Argus Bird. Yeah. Uh, her getting to 60 is more than a lot of people that I've introduced to WoW. Yeah, no, my sister gave WoW a very fair shot. I'll give her that. Um, for casuals and, and new players, Final Fantasy is so much better of a game. For endgame raiders, uh, WoW stomps Final Fantasy by a mile. Yeah, which is why like a lot of people come to WoW and say, I had no issue with the new player experience. I like it. And it's like, well, if you're somebody who enjoys the style of game that WoW is, the endgame rating thing, yeah, it works for you. But WoW still needs to be better at appealing to people who aren't like that. And as somebody in that category who loves endgame raids, I agree. And I like WoW for that. But I still think that the game should appeal to more people than just, you know, the types of people who enjoy what I like. So, you know. Um, Final Fantasy is also a lot more linear. Exactly. Which I think is a plus, right? I think the new starting experience for any game, including WoW, should be more linear. I, I think that's how they should do it. What is my dog's breed? Golden Retriever. Uh, to me, it's not even close to find WoW has one of the worst new player experiences I've ever seen. Yeah. People care about story and WoW has a terrible way. Yeah, actually, somebody left a comment on my, my Windwalker Monk speedrun from a few days ago, basically saying that WoW should add like a special crummy time quest line where it basically takes you through all of the different expansions. And like, um, they, they weren't like super specific with it, but like the way I interpreted it, which I mentioned in the comments below, as I said, I interpret what they said as like a greatest hit style quest line where you go through every single Chromie Time expansion and, like, the best parts of every single, like, thing. You get to see, like, you know, all the cool stuff in TBC, like the Fall of the Lich King, all, like, the big hits in every single thing. Um, then you go to Cataclysm, and you get, like, the best bits of every Cata revamp zone into all of, like, the, the end game um, Cata, like, 80 to 85 stuff. Takes you through, like, the basic arc of Mop, all that stuff, right? And I don't know exactly how they could do that, but I think something like that, like a completely linear step-by-step -step Chromie Time campaign, which, I mean, they call it Chromie Time campaign. It's not. It's just like open world scaling shit. But an actual Chromie Time campaign where you're taken like in a linear path through all of the expansions, I think that would be an amazing new player experience, provided there was actually like care put into it by Blizzard to make sure it was fun to play through. But I think something like that would work wonders for getting people into this game. Especially because of the story aspect, yeah. Um, 
don't know why, but I'm good at selling WoW to people. I've made like 10 to 15 friends play it and half stayed for a while, including your girlfriend. Harder considering it's really expensive in my country. Yeah, I'm obviously I'd like to say I'm, I'm also pretty good at convincing people to play WoW when I want to. But at the same time, I also at some point it, it's difficult to convince somebody to play something when I, I don't think they would enjoy it. So if I think somebody would enjoy WoW, I can absolutely sell them on it. But most of the friends I have who I think would enjoy WoW, I've already tried to get them into it at some point over the years. And the rest of them, generally, if they ask me about like the games I'm playing and they're like, oh, should I try WoW? I'm like, eh, no, you would probably like Final Fantasy more if I'm being honest. So yeah. uh, I think we can all agree Destiny 2 is the worst new player experience. I haven't played Destiny 2, but I've heard a lot of really bad things about it. Uh, one of my friends was trying to talk me into playing Destiny 2, but I'm going to be honest, I um I saw a few videos about the Destiny 2 new player experience, and I, I don't really think I'll be trying it. It it seems like, you know, my friend told me some of the things that it has at Endgame, and I'm sure the stuff that he described, it sounds fun. But I've also heard a lot about the new player experience, and I'm going to be honest, I don't want to fucking deal with that. So I don't really think I'll be trying it much. Uh, New player is trash. I... I moved to the U.S. and I'm trying to get a new account up to 70. Yeah, it can definitely be difficult to get caught up. Four hours for Arcane Mage to 60. Yep, 10 to 60, four hours. Obviously, this is with the 50% buff, but I still think this is, like, comparable to my Priest run, only slightly slower than my um, my Windwalker Monk. Yeah, I think this was a solid run. Also, keep in mind, I had some of the worst RNG I have ever experienced for dungeon leveling. I probably lost at least 20 minutes just from how bad the dungeons went. So I think overall the end of this run was much cleaner than the priest run, probably on par with the Windwalker Monk run. The start with the dungeons went so badly. Uh, yeah, I, I lost a lot of time there and it was kind of out of my control, right? So I definitely think Arcane is good. I've said for a while, I think Arcane is good. And I think um, I struggled to play the old version of it in Shadowlands. I really like a lot of the new tools Arcane has. I think it, it definitely shores up a lot of the weaknesses. I had fun this run. I think Arcane played really well. Especially, like, once I hit level 55, I wish I got this earlier. Arcanosphere fucking owns. <laughs> That's a really fun ability. Um, oh, and, uh... <laughs> let's see. Uh, Mateus said... <laughs> asked my dad if he's the Brazilian friend. No. Uh, that, that was a different friend of mine. Um... But, oh yeah, he said. He was my, my dad, yeah. Uh, enhanced Shaman, how long would it perhaps be? I don't know, I'll have to try Enhanced Shaman at some point. I think Enhanced would probably be solid. At what point do we hit the timeline of, of Classic progressing to be WoW 2? I'd be fine with that, honestly. If Classic is just like a re-envisioning of every old expansion, but like, we learn from our mistakes and do everything better, I mean, who wouldn't like that, right? That's just like the perfect solution. You know, a lot of people say that Legion's launch was the worst part of it. So if you relaunch Legion and fix all of the issues at launch, so it had none of those problems, bam, like recipe for success, right? So I don't know. Siege of Org lasting for a year or two. At least Siege of Org was a banger raid. I fucking love Siege of Orgrimmar. I would say Siege of Org is like my second favorite raid of all time behind Tomb of Sargeras. Really, really good. And yes, Mateus, Fernando is, is my dad in chat. That's, that's my dad. Uh, and, and, but he's referring to it as comments. Uh, my dad got me to play WoW when I was like five years old. So he is the one who introduced me to this game. Uh, Watt had so much good content, but you benefited from taking massive breaks in the game mid expansion. Yeah. Like half of Warlords of Draenor, all I did was log in, do challenge modes with my friends and then log out for the rest of the week. That, that was like most of my time in Wad. Luckily for me, challenge modes were fun. So, whereas a lot of other people quit, I at least still played on and off just doing challenge modes, but yeah, not for everybody. WAD leveling content was great, yeah. The thing about WAD is, like, even the zones that aren't efficient, the only bad zone in WAD is Nagrand. Nagrand was just clearly not really finished. It's, um, I don't know, it just feels way more, like, not great compared to all the other ones. But like Talador, I generally don't do Talador in speedruns, at least the quest line, because it's a bit longer. But Talador has an amazing quest line. Uh, Frostfire Ridge, also amazing quest line, just not efficient for speed leveling. And then, you know, Shadowmoon Valley, obviously Spires and Gorgrond we do, and both of those are pretty good. Uh, so yeah, WAD questing, definitely one of its strong points. 
Recently I leveled my mage to 70. I felt like the frost mage was easier than arcane in the end. Um, yeah. I, I, I'd have to try it at some point. I'm definitely going to try frost and fire eventually. I just, I wanted to, well, I honestly, I wanted to do arcane for this run, but it did win the, the runoff poll. I kind of expected it to. Uh, and also, I think I've talked so much about how good Arcane is. I'm kind of glad it won the runoff poll because, like I said, I did kind of want to play it. Uh, we'll get time at some point to test Frost and Fire. I, I don't know when I'll show it, but I'll show it at some point. Uh, you don't have enough wrinkles in your raw chicken looking brain to play Arcane. I mean, I wasn't really playing, paying too much attention while leveling, and I still managed to, to go through it pretty well. So, at endgame, I'm sure it's more difficult. Uh, I've heard, you know, a lot of my arcane friends tell me it's like a bit more involved, but while leveling, this is pretty straightforward. Just you build arcane charges and then you press arcane barrage. It's uh, pretty simple. I uh, really like it. Um, Destiny 2 is in such a bad state right now. Your friend got you into it recently. It's kind of horrible to be brought into. It also, yeah, the main thing is when I looked at the amount of money that was required to play Destiny 2, I was like, oh my god, that's ridiculous. Another similar game, obviously different genre, but similar situation is I, I recently um, have been following like loosely the stuff with Clash Royale. I don't know if how many people uh, play Clash Royale in the chat. I, I don't also. I, I've never played Clash Royale, uh, which is kind of funny why I've learned about it through apparently all of the drama that's gone on. But the reason I think I, YouTube recommended me all of these Clash Royale videos is because I... I mentioned before, I got into the beta for Arclight Rumble, the um, the new mobile game that Blizzard is currently making, which a lot of people are saying is like a Clash of Clans, Clash Royale ripoff. Uh, what I can tell you is that it's not a ripoff of Clash Royale, and it's very, very different, and it's very good. Uh, I, I absolutely love Arclight Rumble so far. I beat in almost every single boss in the game, except the final one, which is like not really finished, so I don't really count that. I beat in every like intentional boss in the game and then they kind of left one in at the end anixia specifically that just clearly is not finished yet and is kind of broken um but it's a really fun game uh, i'm really looking forward to the official release and i'll probably do more beta testing i may even whenever the servers come back up because they're actually down right now for like a month or something uh but whenever they come back up what i don't know when it'll be but i will probably stream it at some point because it's a really 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 fun game to play and uh because of that, because I heard so many comparisons to Clash Royale, I looked into Clash Royale just to see what it was like. And, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I don't really think it looks very good. I, I had a few friends try to get me into it for a while, but I looked into it and it's like just PvP. And the PvP looks like really, really boring rock, paper, scissors stuff. And then I watched a few videos on like the monetization and like general game balance. And I just, I genuinely can't understand why people play that game. Because I've, I've, I've seen so many videos now of people talking about how terrible the balance has been across like the many years of history. And apparently now the game is just trying to squeeze players for every last drop of money that they can get. And it's like, fucking hell. Like, why do people play shit like that, which is just like, you, you're basically just pouring money into a pit just to be able to compete against players to show that you spent more money. Like, holy shit, I do not understand that. Um, and one of the reasons why I've been enjoying that uh, Warcraft mobile game is because it is very much not that. I actually, I did buy microtransactions in that game just because I wanted to test it, right? But I bought literally everything that you can possibly buy, and I think I spent like $50, right? Just so I could test all of the stuff, right? And that's it. You can't buy anything more than that. Even if I wanted to, I could not spend any more money on that game. So it is like, for a Blizzard game, mind you, extremely light on microtransactions um, most of it is like uh minor catch-up stuff like you can progress at a slightly faster pace but the thing about that game is it's pve it's there is a pvp mode which is kind of dog shit but it is all of like these special boss fights against like stylized version versions of like classic dungeon bosses and stuff like that so there's no like competitive drive to like force people to spend a bunch of money to compete with other people you're just fighting against like little dungeons and stuff like that. It's just really fucking cool. So that you don't need to spend money because the game doesn't force you to, which honestly I'm worried, right? Because it's a mobile game and it's made by Blizzard. And right now it's not really microtransaction heavy. So I'm 
kind of worried how they might do that going forward. But assuming they keep it as it is, I mean, it'll be end up being a really good game. But I just don't understand why there are games, mobile games like that, that people will play. And I'm watching these videos where people are like complaining about this new change that like the Clash Royale developers made that's stealing money from people. And then I'm like, they're saying, oh yeah, and they did this thing like two years ago where they scanned their entire community for like a shit ton of money. It's like, what? How, the developers just do this every two years and apparently the community just accepts it? Like, Jesus fucking Christ. I just, I don't know. I could not play those games. You know, for all the shit I give WoW, at the very least, I pay $15 a month for this game, and Blizzard doesn't fuck me in the ass any more than that. So, oh, it's, it's a night and day difference. Okay, let me, I ranted about that for a little bit. Preach has been playing a lot of MMOs lately and giving them a full chance. Yeah, I saw some of his videos about that. That that's That seems pretty cool. Uh, where did I read about the chromie time thing? I posted something in the WoW subreddit a while ago. I think I named the post like, WoW leveling should be horizontal progression. Um, if you're talking about like the thing I mentioned about the storyline, that was just a comment somebody left on my video from like two days ago. Uh, the new player experience without being guided is horrible. Yeah, absolutely. Just hit 70 on your eighth character is such a grind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it gets better if you're watching Netflix, but it definitely does take time. The grind was the clear peak visually, though. I agree with that. Mounted combat definitely was a cool part of that. Um, later stages of Arcane are like, it's a meme how hard the Arcane rotation is, but once it clicks, it's fun. Yeah. I've been told that by some of my friends. Uh, when you don't want to speed level, you level in zones where you don't have the transmog quest rewards. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I have most of the ones I want, so I haven't really been doing that. But I did that a lot back in like Kata and Wad and stuff like that. Uh, have people told you you can recover expired mail? Wait, really? Um, yeah, I definitely didn't see the comments in the priest, unless it's like, if you left it within the past, like, four hours, obviously I haven't seen it while I was streaming. Um, but I did not know that. Uh, yeah, if you leave a comment or just message me on Discord, YouTube is weird. I, I wonder, did you, like, include a link in your comment? Because sometimes if you include a, like, a external link in your comments, YouTube sometimes, like, their bot detector will snipe it. Because what you have to understand is there's a lot of sex bots on YouTube who will post like, you know, go to my website to get like nude pics or whatever in the comments of random videos. So YouTube's bots will see a link and they will just like erase that from existence. So if that's what happened, then that might be uh, why it got deleted. But yeah, uh, I definitely am curious about that because I'd love to be able to recover that chess piece. I kind of have just chalked it off as being gone. Clash Royale is really abusive if you want to get competitive. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for Arc Like Rumble, not gonna lie. I need something new to play on my phone. It Yeah, it's really good. You had fun playing Clash Royale, but stopped because of that. It takes so long to be good without spending money in any Supercell game. Yeah, I at least enjoyed Clash of Clans, because I did play Clash of Clans a lot. I've talked about that before. Uh, I actually played Clash of Clans with my dad. And, you know, we would do, like, clan wars and stuff. But, I don't know, I was still able to have fun in Clash of Clans, and I also just enjoyed the whole thing of it where you would, like, to attack different bases and the whole strategy aspect of trying to figure out how to attack different player bases was fun and every single like fight was kind of unique because you would approach every different base layout the same so even though i never spent like a shit ton of money i might have spent like what five dollars on clash of clans or something i think there was like a bonus builder that i bought um but i barely spent any money on it and i still had a ton of fun playing clash of clans but clash royale from what i can see the only thing to do is to just play pvp matches where it is just a rock, paper, scissors, if your minions are higher level, they win type of thing. It just doesn't seem fun to me. Hope they don't give it the Diablo Immortal touch. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, mobile gamers are wild. They'll defend games like Diablo Immortal or Immoral. Yeah, I see. Uh, because spending literal millions of dollars to get a huge advantage is fine. And then my dad said, don't get him started on the Diablo rant. Yeah. Diablo Immortal. I mean, I, I've ranted to my dad about it just because, you know, I like telling him about whatever dumb shit Blizzard's doing, but everybody knows how bad Diablo Immortal is now. It's it's no secret. It's uh it's pretty sad. Just finished your last race, got the I got at least 160 of every race. Nice. Uh that is that is pretty good. Many repeats. Yeah, I have like I have a million monks and stuff like that, so I get that. Okay, now that I I've I finally caught up in chat. So what I'm going to be doing, do I still have my, yes, I still have the background thing. So I'm going to close live split and 
we'll uh we'll launch this i don't know if the volume is gonna s suck for a second so if your ears get blasted shit yeah it is really loud okay i'm gonna click off um all right hold on disable i'll disable add-ons and uh system before i swap i'm just i'm lowering the volume i have really really high volume because it's a ptr that i haven't tested and on that note uh if you can't tell by the background music there we go all right um so i figured fuck it why not right fairly short stream leveling is pretty fun right now so uh since you know it's only been five hours and a lot of people have been asking me to try classic hardcore but i've said before that i am not going to play with the add-on because the add-on rules suck and initially i was like oh yeah whenever classic eventually adds their official servers i'll try it um but i've never done this before and it's on the ptr so i figure even with a level 30 cap it'll probably still be interesting if you can't tell by the background music wait are people unable to hear the background music at all um it should it should be working can you not hear the 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 thing um let me turn on sound and background just in case that was the problem so wait has nobody been able to hear like any sound or any music this entire time can't hear what the fuck uh Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Hold on, hold on. Uh, is there, uh, maybe there's like a stream setting where stream audio. I don't, okay, that's, that's not good. Yeah, why is it not picking up? Because it's picking up on my OBS. Been a chill talking. Yeah. I mean, like, because I had my volume fairly low before. So I knew somebody said they couldn't hear sound. And I was like, oh, I'll turn it up a little bit. And I didn't realize it just wasn't working for the stream. Um, Well, that makes sense. Uh, Fuck, what do I? Yeah, I. this definitely is a new issue. Stream settings. Uh, Well, no, because I think it hasn't been working for the the ptr run either yeah that might have been asking me about the silence but see i've never had this particular issue before whenever like my audio is cut out it has always been everything including my voice so i just assumed youtube was saying that you know or just giving me a, a false warning um and it, yeah youtube's not showing any issues uh, let me Change the title. Um, let me see. I, I'm going to look through OBS settings. Hold on. Uh, OBS game sounds not working on stream. Check the OBS audio settings. Click microphone. Yeah, I don't. I don't. No, because, like, I've been recording things, like, the past few days. Like, obviously, the background sound and the priest run I uploaded just yesterday worked. So it's clearly not an OBS issue, and the thing on, things on OBS show that it's displaying correctly. If you've had any music of your own playing... No, I, I, I don't play... I don't play music during, um, during streams. So the only thing that wouldn't be working is specifically the, uh, audio output capture. That's not working for whatever reason. Uh, what I can do is, I, I mean, I can do like a kind of ghetto solution that I think might work. Okay, can you hear the background noise now? I don't know if that fixed it. Because what I'm what I'm thinking is maybe what happened is, uh. I think so, yes. Okay, if you can hear like the do 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 do, like it's pretty clear the classic music. Because for video editing purposes, I have um, like my voice and pretty quiet. If so, well, I can I can turn it up. Uh, 
like that. Yes, you can hear. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, okay, I found the problem then. I, for whatever reason, only the stream is only picking up audio track one on OBS, which is this something? I, yeah, actually, this is a recent change. That makes perfect sense because this is a change that I only made while I started editing my Vault of Incarnates footage, which was after my latest stream. That actually makes a lot of sense. So I basically, to make it easier to edit videos, I started putting different like audio sources into different like tracks so that when I drop it into Premiere, there's like a bunch of different audio things so that if like there's a weird noise in one particular track, I can just edit that out without fucking up everything else, which has been a lifesaver for video editing. It makes that so much easier. Um, but apparently stream only picks up audio track one. So for now, I've had to include the game output stuff in audio track one, and that seems to have fixed it, but I hopefully will remember to change that before I record something else. I dig most of the changes to official hardcore outside of the transfer. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't... Oh, shit. I accidentally... My, my microphone got caught on my arm, or my uh, headphones, I mean. Uh, I think we're good. I, I thought I accidentally ripped up my headphones for a second. No, we're good. Uh... I don't really see the problem with the transfer, though. Like, it doesn't impact your experience. I guess, in a sense, it it takes out some of the danger, right? But I think it's fine because the prestige of being on the hardcore server is still there. I think the transfer, what it accomplishes, right, is it means that people who otherwise wouldn't play hardcore will now at least try it. Because for me, right, like, I've leveled a shit ton of characters. I was probably going to try this anyway, just because if I lose, like, a level 60 character, I would be pissed. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. I can level another one. But for somebody who is really like they, they value their time and they don't want to lose anything and hardcore is really not for them as a result, this means that even if they fuck up and die, they still keep their character on era servers. So, you know, uh, I think if anything, it just appeals to a different audience uh, and overall should just you know be healthy for the game mode. Uh, changing my game mode after. Uh, oh, I, I let me I didn't read the first one. Uh, personally, to me, it changes the philosophy of the character. I know, personally, you could always just delete instead of transfer, but comparing to any other hardcore, it's no different than console command changing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. I think... I think, yeah, as a personal challenge, obviously, you know, if you want to delete your character, it kind of goes back to the thing we were discussing before of, you know, if you want to add a self-imposed challenge, go ahead and do that. But I think the less punishing that hardcore is, it's good for, like, this game. Because there's a lot of hardcore single-player games, right? Where, yeah, obviously, you know, you're the only person who's competing is you. So if you die and cheat, right, you're only cheating yourself. But the thing about this is because it is a social game, it's an MMO, being able to get a larger pool of players into here for people to interact with will just make the experience better, I think. So um, th this way, Blizzard is able to get more people interested in hardcore, which I think will make it more fun for everyone. Right? Which I think is a plus. You had no idea. I, oh yeah, I, I play classic a lot. Um, this is my first hardcore run for the record. I don't really play classic era. I haven't done hardcore before. Uh, I did play like 2020 re-release, right? I got a warrior up to level 60. I raided molten core like one or two times. Um, I've made a lot of classic videos though. If you haven't seen my classic um, heroic plus plus guide, I'd recommend checking that out i put a lot of effort into it i think it's really good uh but yeah no i play a lot of wrath classic i've been playing wrath classic way more than i played retail for like the past month so yeah uh but this is the first time i played hardcore <clears throat> uh pre said i just came back i didn't link anything in my comment but just google recover expired mail and it should take you to the blizzard support page gotcha i appreciate that i will check that out after the stream uh, yeah, so do they... I assume it's only one PTR server. Yeah. Oh, there's a, a little pop-up. Hold, adventurer. The realm you're selecting is a hardcore realm. If you choose to play in this realm, character death is permanent. All right. Uh, okay, there we go. So, I'm probably going to play Horde just because I always play Horde. Uh, the one thing I'm debating on is what I play. Because I played Warrior in OG Classic... So, I already know that Warrior is, like, difficult, and I also already played it, so I'm probably not going to do that again. Um, I think, like, going into this, I was kind of debating on Tar and Druid, just because I've never played, like, 
OG classic druid? I'm definitely not playing a rogue. I don't know how to play rogue. I, I do not know how to play rogue at all. I would die, like, immediately. Um, so I would want to pick something I'm a little bit more familiar with. Uh, but... And I also probably wouldn't play a caster. So I'm thinking, like, probably either shaman? Shaman, hunter, or druid is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Because those are things that, like, I kind of at least know the basics of. Aran, shaman, druid... Um, how do I... I did say I wanted to do a shaman run. This is what I had in mind. Um... Hmm. Okay, let me let me think. Uh Salmon is great because of wolf and frost shock. Yeah, see, freeze read my mind. Um I I've never done an in-stream poll before, so I was trying to figure out how to do that, but I found the option. So what character should I pick? The default options are just yes or no. Uh, Tarin. Okay, it overrides it. Tarin Druid. Tarin Shaman. Or... Um, actually, let's let's get some racial diversity. So Tarin Druid. Then let's say Orc Shaman. Or... Uh, I don't really want to play Undead, so it would be Troll Hunter. Play Thunderaxe the Dwarf Warrior. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to play a warrior. But yes, uh, my dad is referring to my first ever World of Warcraft character was a a dwarf warrior named uh, Thunderaxe. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. Two poles, one for class, one for race. Okay, what uh, what class should I play? And we'll just do druid, shaman, hunter. Dwarf Warrior is a great combo, yeah. Uh, alright. I think this works? Oh no, it's reloading. Okay, did that work? I think it is. Oh yeah, it is working. Cool. I've never done an in-stream poll before. This is neat. You'd recommend Tarn for Shaman? Mulgore is Biss Horde Zone with as popular as this is right now? Ah. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no, like, huge preference. I like Tarin probably more than Orc, I would say, but I, I don't care too much. Yours was a dwarf pally named Chimney. <laughs> nice. Who has since race, race changed to almost every race a pally can be over the years. Yeah. See, my dwarf warrior, Thunderaxe, he got to level 24... And I have never touched him, touched him since. He is still there. Uh, I could probably... I actually could probably go on right now. Um, and, and log into him. But I, I don't want to. Because I would have to like close and reopen. But yeah, I still have him on Ravencrest, North America. My first ever server. And uh, I played a Dwarf Warrior named Thunderaxe. Who is still sitting in like a bunch of classic gear. Um, should probably decide on Wraith to not get a troll pull with unavailable... Well, yeah, what I'm going to do is, once the race has been picked, I will throw over, over uh, all of the available race things. So, obviously, if Druid won... What are the results? Can I click on it? Yeah, so, obviously, Shaman... Okay, Shaman clearly won. Like, if Druid won, then, obviously, I would pick Tarin, right? Um, but Shaman won, so now I do a different pull with all the, the options, right? Um... Curious to see how ammo functions in Classic. Yeah, it's, uh... Well, ammo is like you have to buy it off vendors and then equip it into, like, the little slot. Trolls can also be Shaman? Yeah. First character was a Nelf Hunter named Blunderblast. Oh, that's good. That sounds like it would be a Dwarf Hunter name, though. That's like... It just sounds like Blunderbuss. Uh, just perfect Dwarf name. Maybe you should go with Goblin Monk. Yeah. Just skip forward into Dragonflight and make a Goblin Monk on a uh, classic hardcore. Uh, okay, so next poll. Start a poll. What race should I 
play. Uh, yeah, so it is Orc, Tarin, Troll. Right. Orc, Tarin, Troll. Alright, there we go. And I should say, for, you know, as far as how long I will keep going, obviously the stream will keep going until I die, but if I don't fuck up and I do manage to live, I will keep going until I hit level 10, probably. Unless, I, I guess it'll be either until I die, until I hit level 10, or if it's taking forever, then I will, um, I will just stop if, like, you know, it's already been, like, two hours and I'm still level 5 or something, I don't know. Hopefully it goes a little bit faster. Um, okay, Tarin seems to be in the lead by a decent amount, so I'll wait, like, a few seconds if anybody, like, if, like, a bunch of people decide to vote for, for Troll, but it's probably going to be Tarin. Let me just check messages real quick. Um, one of my friends messaged me, abandon the speed run, come tank keys, and then ping me, like, eight times. <laughs> uh, oh, that was an hour ago. Uh, wait, does this, um... Okay, I wasn't sure. Alright, yeah, so... Oh, it actually is close. I think they're one vote apart. A bunch of people did vote for Troll at the last second. Goddamn. Uh, I actually didn't think that would happen. Uh, okay. I'll give it another 30 seconds then if anybody wants to do a last second vote. Because Tarn and Troll are fairly close. I have zero preference... I don't really care. I think, um, I haven't really played Shaman in Classic much. I played it, like, I remember I got into the, I played the beta for Classic a little bit. I didn't play it a lot, though. And I did play a Shaman during that. But that was, like, a while ago. Alright. Tarn clearly won. Ends poll. So, uh... Do another poll for spec. Um, I'm not gonna do another poll for spec. I will actually just have my spec. I want to play enhancement. If I am if I am playing shaman, I am playing enhancement. Uh, because I like classic enhanced shami with like the crazy wind furies and stuff. So that much I will I will stick. Also because if people pick resto, I'm not gonna fucking play resto shaman. <laughs> I'm not gonna allow you guys to int me that hard. Um, but. Like, I, I only put stuff in the poll that I at least wouldn't mind playing. Then we'll throw horn style. Yeah, that's fine. Then go horn color. I'll do black horns. Resto or bust, yeah. You want it enhance anyway? Okay, cool. Classic doesn't have specs, it's just the class. Yeah, I guess in, in that case, you wouldn't even see the spec until I started putting talent points into it. And that wouldn't be until level 10, which, like I said... I'm going to stop the stream today if I manage to hit level 10 or if I die. Uh, Yeah, I'm not reading all that. I think it's pretty much just a don't troll people type of disclaimer. All right. So we'll see. Once a nomadic people, Mucho texto, yeah. All right. I, I already have a Lua error, even though I'm pretty sure I disabled... All of my add-ons. Somebody's already dead over here. <laughs> the corpses not despawn? Well, I guess, well, it makes sense that the corpses don't despawn because, you know, they can't resurrect, right? Um, how did so many people die right in the town, though? Are people just, like, intentionally dying and then throwing their bodies, like, into the town or something? Like, how did somebody die right here? Can you take damage from the fire? Speedrun achieve, hit level 10 in two hours. Uh, might be doable. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> I have my retail. Oh, oh, because this is one of the retail PTR servers that they've repurposed. I'm like, why the hell do I have Xerath Mortis Puzzle Helper on fucking Hardcore Classic? This must have been one of the old PTR servers. Oh, so on release, the starting town will be filled with corpses. Yeah. Definitely. I, I have no idea how many 
uh, how there are this many dead. I mean, the PTR has been out for... I guess it's hard to say exactly how long it's been out for, because it was down, right? So, uh, It's using the Dragonflight PTR client? Ah. Duel to the death, or pull the mob and let it kill them. Can you duel at level 1? I guess, yeah. If people are, are dueling, that would also be a way. But can you, you... I don't think you can even duel. I don't... <laughs> oh, I see. There's a new drop-down option. Oh, that's sick. I actually like that. Uh, oh yeah, I have to wait for the, the quest text and stuff. Uh, even when I played Classic, I, I don't remember the last time I've seen the scrolling quest text, because I always used... I think it was Questy that uh, skipped through this. Alright. Oh, what the hell? What is happening with my camera? Uh, something just... like My camera just auto... Um, resized itself. Uh... Max camera distance, 2. Oh, okay. You can change that setting now. You can enable... Oh, wait, you can? Where is it? Uh... Sticky targeting. Maybe, did they forget to include it in the settings because it's using the retail stuff? Hmm. Can't wait for people to get trolled with the Duel to Death weak aura. No way. There's a weak aura for that? Oh, fuck. Okay, well, I am installing zero weak auras on Classic Hardcore, then. That is uh, really toxic. Uh, it's a feature even in Classic. Not sure which sub-menu. Mm. Oh, okay. Here we go. Instant quest text. I assume that's what it is. Uh, show free bag space. I guess that's not automatic. Uh, consolidate buffs. No, I don't think I'm fine with that. Hmm. Uh, what else do I want to do? Action bars. I think most of my stuff is fine. Okay. So, I'm just going to put my food. Oh, what is wrong with my keybinds? Uh, oh. Yeah, this must have been a really old PTR client because my keybinds are like pre pre Dragonflight here. Uh Okay, hold on. Let's see. Uh, options, key bindings, action bar two. Which one is this? Is this action bar two? I think. Yeah, shift one, shift two, shift three, five. Q, E, R, T. Shift Q, shift E, shift R. Shift T, and then uh, F, H, Y, G, Shift F, H, Shift Y, G, and then, uh, oh, I didn't mean to bind mouse wheel up to that. Whoops. Uh, is my mouse wheel up now unbound from like zoom in, zoom out? That would be unfortunate. Uh, let's just do, and then yeah, Control One, Control Two, Control Three. Oh, and I also need to rebind Action Bar Four. No, it would be action bar 5. Control 6. Control 7. And action bar 4, button 6. Should be action bar 5, button 6. Okay. I think that's all my keybinds the way I like them. What fits better for a goblin, rogue, or warlock? I'd say probably rogue. Yeah. In terms of lore immersion, uh, probably rogue a little more. Yeah. You'll have to rebind them, uh, zoom in and out. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, I, where do I find that then? Is it, I would assume it's camera, zoom in, mouse wheel up. So I can do this. 
and then page up. Yeah, okay, cool. Think that's everything. Uh, I'm gonna check my spellbook, make sure I'm... Yeah, okay, we have a few things. So, War Stomp. All I have right now is Lightning Bolt, Healing Wave, and then... This. So... Alright, I guess I will... I will just roll with this. So, my quests... Oh yeah, shit. I have to roll without Questy. Oh, this is gonna be something. Uh, are there any other quests that I can pick up yet? I don't think so. It's been a very long time since I've done, like, new classic stuff. So, seven Plain Strider meat, seven Plain Strider feather. Good lord, there are a lot of dead people. <laughs> that has to be intentional, right? There's no way so many people died to the level two Plain Striders. Absolutely no chance, right? Okay. Level one Plain Strider. Uh, hopefully I don't meet the same fate as literally all of those other people. Uh, can I conserve? I guess I can conserve mana a little bit. Oh yeah, I can't use mail yet. Fair amount of those could also be from Duel to the Death. Yeah, it has to be. Like, unless somebody just like, for shits and giggles... I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. It's surprisingly loud. Uh, let's go down to 10%. I think that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'd imagine some of them literally just let the plane strider kill them. Just for fun. But, you know, I, I would be amazed if somebody actually died to a plane strider, like, unironically. Oh. <laughs> All right. I forgot that risk, like casts can be resisted. That is that is a thing. I also heard that uh, enhancement shaman is one of the worst classes to level because of like RNG with procs and stuff like that. Like if you don't get wind fury, if you run out of mana and stuff, you just die at higher levels. So curious to see how that's gonna go. I did consider just starting with hunter because I've heard like hunter and rogue are some of the easiest, but. I don't know. I haven't looked into it a ton. The only little bits of, like, hardcore I know is every once in a while when, like, somebody makes, makes a post about it on Reddit. I'll sometimes glance at it just for shits and giggles, but... Let's see. Yeah, so... And I, I'm trying to remember, you get, like... Cause I'm, right now, I'm basically playing self-found because it's not like there's going to be anybody else selling stuff. And I mean, for my first run, I'll probably do, like, solo self-found on the PTR. It's just, like, long-term, if I end up ever actually playing this when it's outside the PTR, I probably would buy stuff if, you know, I have the gold. I think that would be fun. But just for testing purposes, I'll probably just only use my own stuff. Uh, what spec? Uh, once you get a... Uh, enhancement is what I was referring to. Once you get a decent slow two-hander and wind fury, it should be fine. Yeah. So... I think what I read was that if you get, like, really unlucky, you can sometimes just die, which is unfortunate, whereas, like, other specs are a bit more deterministic. So, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but that is just what I heard. What's my age? I'm 25. Uh, okay, this is also food. I'm just gonna, obviously, hold on to any food I get. I think my um, my stream thumbnail is probably still, come to think of it, the uh, the mage speedrun. Because the reality of, you know, streaming on YouTube is you have to, like, put a thumbnail, right? So, I guess, like, I could also just not put a thumbnail, but then it looks bad. But, I think people are going to see my stream with the title, First Classic Hardcore Run, and then it's going to be a thumbnail about a mage speedrun. Uh, but, you know is what it is. I can't, like, create a new thumbnail in the middle of stream. Like, pause the stream for 30 minutes to create a thumbnail about Classic Hardcore. I'm not gonna do that. I'll just go in and edit the, uh, the VOD after the fact so it's back to the name of, like, the Mage Speedrun. And then there'll be this bonus footage attached at the end for anyone who watches the whole way through. Oh, I got a cloak. Nice. Plus three armor. Huge. Night Elves are pretty different. I like the way you speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, or it is more interesting races, in my opinion. The Alliance just has four sizes of you. Oh, I see. 
I mean, yeah. Night Elf definitely is unique. That's kind of why I always like the Horde, I guess. The Horde definitely has more, like, monstrous races, which I've always found more enjoyable. That said, I do play Blood Elf more than anything else, so I am kind of a hypocrite in that. But it's like, I like having Blood Elf for, like, a lot of my characters, and then it is fun to have, like, a Tarin or a Panda or something for some of them. So they're not all like that. Uh, alright. Well, I can only use one of them. Uh, ten mountain cougars, and then, oh yeah, this is the one to speak to the shaman trainer. So, equip that. Where's the shaman trainer? It's this one, right? Do you wish to speak? Randomly dying as a warrior special, chain parries and misses get really painful. Ah, yeah. I definitely have heard that warrior is difficult, but, like, warrior is just difficult in general. That one's a no-brainer, right? So. I, uh, I... Suffered through classic warrior leveling back in the original version. I don't really need to do it again on hardcore. I might do it once later on for fun, but for the first run that I do, I don't really want to do warrior. Rockbiter weapon. Okay, is this... This is a buff. So I can just slap this on, and then it lasts five minutes. Alright, cool. Oh, there's another quest over there. Can I... I can't show quests on the minimap? Hmm. All right. If night elves are just another human, so are orcs and trolls, and our dead are undead are just dead humans. Well, undead literally are just dead humans, but yeah, uh, definitely. I think I think it's a stretch to say that night elves are just different sized humans. Uh, okay, so I need ten mountain cougar pelts and oh yeah, the water well quest. I remember this one. I th I can't remember where the cougars are. Uh, it's been a while since I've done Classic Tarn. But they're either out there or they're out here, somewhere in that range. So, somebody in chat said earlier that Mulgore is the easiest of the Horde starting zones. Like, people in chat who know about Classic Hardcore, what is, like, the tier list in terms of, like, easiest to hardest uh, races to start with for, like, the zones? Obviously, you could just go to a new starting zone, but, like, you know, if you were to start and play through that particular zone. Because I know, like, nothing about that aspect of Classic Hardcore. I just know general things about, like, you know, certain quests will kill you or things like that, which, from what I can tell, doesn't happen here. What is the best at professions for enhancement spec shaman? In Classic? I have no idea. In Retail? I mean, it's it's whatever you want, really. Professions don't really matter a ton in retail these days. In classic, I I don't know. Probably engineering, because engineering's just overpowered. For the second one, I have no idea. Uh, why no hardcore retail? I mean, I do hardcore retail, right? Like, I actually, I don't think I died at all in. Did I die at all in my priest run? Did I? I definitely didn't die in my monk run. Um, but like ninety nine percent of my speed runs are hardcore, <laughs> like. Because if you die, it's a time loss. So, uh, yeah. Is it a speedrun? If you're just joining now, it's, uh, I, I finished the speedrun, and now I'm just doing classic hardcore. I can't change the thumbnail after the fact, though. I have no idea where the mounts and cougars are. Oh, there they are. Okay. Engineering plus whatever, yeah. I'm out of break. You're on the internet, you know where the cougars are at? Oh my god. Horde WoW is the best MMORPG experience. It's always fun for the Horde. WoW is made for the Horde. They made alliances for the nice people of the side. Yeah. Uh, throwback to when I first started playing WoW when I was five years old. And my dad told me that I wasn't allowed to play Horde because Horde were the bad guys. So I had to play Alliance for my first few characters because my dad didn't want me playing the bad guys as a five-year-old. So... I actually started off as Alliance for that reason. And then, uh, like, a about a year or so later, uh, my dad got me Warcraft 3, which was, this was already after WoW was out, right? But I got Warcraft 3, and I played through all of Warcraft 3, and then I told my dad that I should be allowed to play Horde, because actually, the Alliance were the bad guys, and, you know, the 
what was his name admiral dalen proudmore like tried to kill all the horde and they were just guys trying to like live and survive on their own so they weren't actually bad guys they were just misunderstood and then my dad was like fine whatever but that was after i was like i think i started playing horde when i was seven or something it was years after congrats on realizing horde supremacy yeah i figured that out as a five-year-old all right so you know I've been playing Horde since I was very little. I chose Horde, right? I actually, like, intentionally converted to it. I didn't just randomly pick into it. Oh, I got gloves. Uh... Alright. How many do I need? Four out of ten? Okay, cool. Um... I don't think Mulgore is easier, more just that there's less people there. Oh, really? So there's more people in... Yeah, I guess it would make sense that there's more people in Duratar, because obviously it has two races. But less people there, so it's actually completable without 5,000 people. That's... yeah, that's a fair point. Retail isn't really that dangerous outside of Elite Quests. Yeah, I mean, retail leveling... like, if you're doing my speed leveling route, I wouldn't say it's not dangerous. Uh, like, doing some of the pulls that I do in speedruns, if you're not prepared for it, they absolutely can kill you. It's just that, obviously, I set up my speedruns so that I don't die, because if I die, I lose time. So, it's very important for me to not fuck up and to not die. So, I would say if you go back to, like, a lot of my fastest speedruns, they are also technically hardcore runs, because I just, I get overpowered gear sets and stuff like that, and that's kind of the whole point. Um, and obviously, if you, like... If you're really trying to not die in retail, retail hardcore would be so fucking easy. Because there's less random shit that can kill you. Like, retail hardcore speedruns? A little bit harder. That's kind of what I do in my speedruns, right? But retail hardcore casual leveling is like... I mean, you could do that literally blindfolded. Hardcore retail just play prop pally. Yeah, exactly. It is impossible to die as a prop pally on retail. It is crazy. Horde made you rebel. Hope it was okay. Yeah. Oh, it was absolutely worth it. I haven't regretted it ever since. Almost spat out my drink seeing that guy's name in chat. Muha. <laughs> Wait. Where? Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good target name. For sure. Uh what level are people? Seven? Somebody's level seven. What level is Muhammad? Muhammad is level five, and he's in a guild called Hardcore Mohawks. Retail hardcore, just play a tank? Yeah, exactly. Play Guardian Druid, play Prop Alley. You're set. Uh, your first ever character was an orc? Uh, just have, Just to have your first main be a worgen. Yeah. I mean, Worgen is definitely cool. I should play more Worgen. It's just, every single time I've played Alliance recently, it's been uh, an allied race, so I've never really had a chance to make a Worgen. But Worgen is definitely one of my favorite races for Alliance. 30 is the cap for PTR. Yeah, I was just curious if somebody's already managed to make it there. I would imagine, with how long it's been out, getting to 30 in that time is probably impossible, especially on Hardcore. But I'd imagine there are people who are fairly close. Um, so what you mean is that Dortar has even more corpses? Check it out before ending the stream. Uh, yeah, I definitely will. Remind me before the end of the stream and I'll check Dortar just to see. I don't know if I'll go here on- or go there on this character because I don't want to, like, accidentally trek across the world and die. Because the- there's no Zeppelin to Thunderbluff in Classic, right? That's like a Wrath thing? So, if I wanted to get to Dortar, I would have to corpse run across the Barrens, which- by nature of hardcore, you can't do. So, I don't really think I'd be able to do that. That's actually... That's interesting, because, like, the low-level corpse run migration is such a staple of Classic WoW, and you can't do that in hardcore, so you have to, like, naturally level out of the zones. Huh. It is a vanilla thing. Oh. Okay. I did not know that. That is... That is pretty cool. I don't know why I always thought it was a, a wrath thing. Uh, what level do you get armor buff? I believe 40. Yeah. 40 is when hunters and shaman get mail, and it's when all the plate classes get access to plate. Farewell. Okay, nomadic bracers. 
Uh, kill eight battle boar snouts. All right. Ah, I've been expecting you. Totem. Uh, I don't know. And vendor this. Uh, I'll buy some more water just in the off chance that I'm like stranded in the middle of one of the things that I need food. It's good to be prepared, right? So I'll buy that. I'll buy five more water, right? Better safe than sorry. Uh, hardcore retail will be interesting with no items, except if you need a sword or something. So I've kind of mentioned this before. Uh, in case you haven't heard about my plans for a challenge run format. To make hardcore retail more interesting, I am working on a hardcore retail format. But it would not just be hardcore retail. Because hardcore, as like a singular restriction, is just way too easy and not interesting for retail. So, I th and also, I think that the problem with retail is even if you were to play real like uh even if you play with like no heirlooms or something like that it still wouldn't be a fun challenge just because you can play super conservatively in retail and just never die like somebody said you can play prop pally and you could literally play prop pally on retail with full gray items and you would never die it is just that strong so you need additional challenges to make hardcore retail actually interesting and that's what i'm working on so in case you missed that run where I discussed it, I'm working on basically like a roguelike format for retail leveling where you get randomized talents, uh, you start off with no heirlooms, but then as you complete challenges while leveling up, you basically unlock the ability to equip heirlooms. So it's like you defeat like a boss or something and the bosses would be like world elites. Like at level 25, I would tell you to go kill the Fell Reaver or something like that. And you would go to Hellfire Peninsula, kill Fell Reaver, solo Fell Reaver, uh, specifically and then when you kill him you get like a randomized treasure and it would be either like an heirloom or you would get uh, power-ups that let you like specifically select the talents that you want instead of getting like randomized talent options or something like that basically like little roguelike power-ups that would make it easier so i think that would be like a fun way to implement hardcore because hardcore would be like a bonus on top of all of that like you would mostly be playing just for like the fun little uh roguelike modifiers and there would be like little challenges sprinkled throughout the uh, leveling process. It would also be randomized zones. Um, and uh, basically it would just be kind of a fun experience. And then there would be the additional challenge of don't die. So when I eventually finish that add-on, which is probably going to take me a little while because there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Uh, I would probably have like two game modes. I would have a hardcore mode and a regular mode. So there would be a regular mode for people who just want to play with the roguelike elements. And then there'd be like the full final hardcore mode for people who want to get like all the fancy challenges and see if they can do all the hardest stuff while leveling in retail without dying. Uh, but honestly, I think without something like that, I don't think retail hardcore is really interesting, which is why I, I think it would be a fun mode because it would add a challenge to retail leveling that just currently doesn't exist. Level 32 is Wind Fury Totem, if that's what you mean. Ah. Uh, hardcore needs all armor buffs that you can collect because threat from any mobs. Yeah. Definitely, like, I'm debating whether I should sit here and just grind mobs for experience and, like, gray items. Because even if I get, like, a gray... I don't know, what, what could I use now? Uh, yeah, I could use a chest piece still. Even a gray chest piece would still be a pretty significant upgrade. Uh, hardcore retail I've seen that's actually somewhat decent is level 1 to Keystone Hero Hardcore. Oh, fuck that. No, 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 fuck that. The entire point of my format would be at least it's entirely solo, right? So if you die, if you, like, try to solo the Fell Reaver and you get fucked, 100% on you. But hugging to Keystone Hero without dying? I mean, for starters, I think unless you had a group of five players... Right? But, I mean, there's a lot of mechanics that will just kill you. If And imagine being a tank, right? Imagine trying to do Keystone Hero as a tank, and then just one DPS fucks up a mechanic, and you just die. Like, you're doing Underrot, you know? And there's just that one random idiot who doesn't soak the mushrooms, and then bam, your hardcore run is over right at the very end. Because little Timmy doesn't know how to do Spore Color Zancha. Uh, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> that sounds like fucking misery. Uh, 
I do think the add-on had a lot of faults. The achievements are, in there are a blast. Yeah, I heard that they're, the achievements are kind of fun. I mean, you know, obviously people like collecting achievements. I think that's that's pretty neat. I think if I were to make like the hardcore add-on for retail that I'm thinking of, I would probably also think of achievements to add because obviously people enjoy pursuing bonus objectives like that. But I'm not really going to install the hardcore add-on. There's also other reasons outside of whether I like the add-on itself or not that I, I don't really want to install it, namely the the developers. Um, it's like, it's a bit of a, bit of like a touchy subject. I know there's like a, a lot of people who think that, you know, how do I put this? A lot of people think that, you know, people are overreacting about like what the add-on developers are doing. And I'm not, I don't necessarily dislike the hardcore add-on developers for what they're doing with the hardcore add-on, but rather for their other add-on, uh, which, you know, obviously has certain problems, especially problems that I have with it. Um, let's see. For this exact reason, kill King B before level X, max this profession before X level. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I could see that being fun. Just the same heads up. The same thumbnail for the stream has ten to sixty. Yes, I'm aware. This was uh, this was a ten to sixty arcane mage speed run. I did the ten to sixty speed run, and then at the end, because we finished it fast, I'm doing classic hardcore. But the way YouTube works, right, is you have to like manually put a thumbnail in there. Uh, so I uh, I have the the thumbnail on there already, and that is the the thumbnail for this stream because that was what this stream is, and I. Can't, I could change the thumbnail if I wanted to literally open up Photoshop and create a thumbnail from scratch in the middle of the stream, which I'm not going to do, right? So I just changed the title. Thumbnail is the same. I can't really change that. Uh, this is the most I can do. The alternative is I just don't do this, right? But you know that, that's limitations of YouTube streaming, I suppose. It's, um, I mean, I guess it's better to have like a, a personalized stream thumbnail than not. Uh, the only alternative is, like, I could start a separate stream. Um, but, yeah. Is what it is. Uh, why is leatherworking the profession until 40? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. What about soloing old dungeons or raids? So, I've thought of that as, like, a bonus challenge for, like, the, uh, the hardcore retail stuff. It depends, because the thing about soloing old dungeons is tanks absolutely could solo dungeons in um in retail while leveling so that is something that i could do problem is dps would not be able to do it so either i would need to make it a challenge that is specific to tank players or i would need to i don't know find a way to make the challenge more accessible to dps players so I actually did think about that, and at this point, I'm probably not going to make soloing dungeons a uh, part of um, the uh, part of like the retail hardcore experience. But I actually do think I'm probably going to do something similar to what uh, the classic rule set is, where you can only do each dungeon once, and if you do a random dungeon, you get like bonus loot, you get a bonus rewards through the add-on or something like that. That is at least the working theory that I have for it. But it would need to be something where DPS players, and tanks, and healers are all on equal footing for that. Because obviously healers could not solo dungeons. So that would be kind of unfair if you were given a challenge that was impossible based on your spec. Uh, all the things tracks your death and tracks your deaths and your DH has died so much across all expansions. Uh, does your Demon Hunter play Momentum? Because... Judging by the way that some of my demon hunters and my raid team play, it might be because you're playing Momentum. Ah, uh, fucking... Like, just the other night on Sarkareth, we get to phase three, and I aim the tank frontal away from the group, and as Sarkareth is casting Void Claws, I just see a demon hunter fell rush right next to me, immediately gets hit by Void Claws and instantly dies. That's just... Doing a, a momentum fell rush straight in front of a boss frontal is just the Havoc Demon Hunter special. Stamina buff and armor enchant until 40. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see armor kits being useful. I guess it depends on if you're doing like solo self found or not. Because obviously, if you're doing solo self found, then you would need to do that. Uh, it's kind of necessary. But 
technically speaking, if you wanted to, you could buy armor kits off the auction house on this specific hardcore server, so, you know, it's a little bit different. Tanks can solo current content dungeons too? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the other issue with, um, one thing that I considered with retail is, like, letting people solo old raids. So let's say you get to level 40, and then the game asks you to solo, or my add-on would ask you to, like, solo ICC or something like that. The problem is there's this really, really, really tight window where soloing old raids is either impossible or extremely easy. So, for instance, Wrath of the Lich King content in retail, it scales, uh, with outside of Chromie Time, it naturally scales up to level 30. So, I when I was doing testing for some of my uh, Wrath Classic dungeon guides and trying to get footage for every mechanic outside of Classic, I was trying to find a level where I could reasonably solo it and get good footage without one-shotting every single mob. And at level 30, it's basically impossible, right? The scaling is just ridiculous at level. And then at level 35, you literally one-shot everything already, even just at a five-level difference in Chromie time. The sweet spot is like 32, 33, 32 obviously being slightly harder. At that point, it's like... It's hard, but it's not impossible. But the problem with that is because three levels after the end of the scaling is the exact point at which the tuning feels kind of okay, it would be such a weird thing for me to arbitrarily say, at level 33, go and do this challenge. Because the way that I'm probably going to structure the add-on is group it into like brackets of 15 levels. So at level 25, you get a set of challenges. Oh, thank you. At level 25, you get a set of challenges. At level um, uh, 40, you get another set of challenges, etc., etc. <laughs> I mean, you could also just watch the stream. Oh, I see. Yes. I don't know if you could hear what my dad said, but he asked me if I died yet. He also brought me more water, so that is nice. Oh, these pants are an upgrade. Cool. Um, Warrior DPS can, yeah, I mean, Windwalker Monks could definitely solo dungeons, any of, like, the speed leveling specs can, Warrior DPS definitely could, something like that. Um, Geared Tanks can solo pretty much any key that's not super high, yeah. I mean, I can solo most stuff on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, hell, I've soloed plus 20 bosses before on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, it just takes forever, because they have so much health. Uh... You could when Crusader was busted, yeah. Uh, best hardcore challenge, 0 to 20k subscribers without getting demonetized. I mean, I haven't been demonetized yet, so I guess I have succeeded that hardcore challenge. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's hard to not get demonetized. Like, a lot of people will say, like, oh, demonetization crisis on YouTube. I think, obviously, there are some exceptions, right? Like, you know, covering Nintendo games, where... Um, obviously Nintendo is like real dicks with their IP usage and stuff like that, but outside of niche cases where it is clearly a problem, like, you know, Nintendo, um, demonetizing people and stuff like that, generally speaking, it's really easy to not get demonetized because like I curse all the time in my videos. Like I say some really, I wouldn't say like bad shit, but I, I am not like PG or whatever. And a lot of what I say. And I haven't been demonetized, right? Like, you have to say some really fucked up shit to get demonetized if it's not, like, a, a copyright issue, right? So it's it's really not that hard. It's not as bad as a lot of people make it out. You know, number one, one rule in life most of the time is just don't be an asshole and you'll be fine. And that also applies to YouTube. At least my experience so far. Uh, do I prefer regular Tarn or High Mountain? Um... I'm kind of, like, indifferent, really. I don't mind either. I already have frayed gloves. Uh, I would say, like, if I had to really pick, I would probably agree with you. I like the moose antlers. They're pretty fun. The Demon Hunter special is fell rushing and baiting a mechanic in Africa. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, that is another thing. Speaking of Sarkareth, right? The amount of times, because on Sarkareth, if you... I, I imagine not a ton of people in chat have gone there yet, but... 
uh, you need to have the fire breath baited in specific spots. So like the first fire breath you bait away from the ranged and the tanks and healers soak it. The second fire breath you actually want to have baited towards the ranged and then all of the other ones you want to bait out into Africa. But then sometimes on the first fire breath, if we, uh, you have it, it's baited on melee, so we have to have melee like stack to position it. But sometimes the demon hunter will fell rush through the boss right as fire breath's about to go off, and it baits fire breath all the way in the opposite direction from where we need it, and that just completely fucks the pull. Because you're basically lining up healer CDs to stack for all the people clearing off their debuffs with fire breath, and if it gets baited in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you're fucked. So, yeah, that is another thing, speaking of demon hunters baiting. Uh, we've definitely had that one happen. Quite a few times. Ooh. I, I How did I type a question mark? <laughs> yeah, that guy hit me with a question mark back. I did not mean to type a question mark. I think I accidentally hit question mark, enter, shift, or something. All in the span of, like, one accidental click on my keyboard. Uh, it, It's clearly, like, or at least it's not clear that it's a typo, because a lot of people will just type question mark and nothing else. Um... So that guy is probably very confused as to why I hit him with a random question mark and nothing else. Uh, for hardcore armor totem, buffs and kits is perhaps needed. I don't know. I, I don't know what that means. Is that like there's a shaman quest that's really difficult or something? You either one-shot bosses or you get one-shot by bosses? Yeah, basically. Uh, you mainly play tank, but pugs on high keys can be deadly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do think that you know, an interesting hardcore challenge for retail could be if you have a five man of people leveling and then level one to Keystone Hero. That could be, I would say that one is at least doable, but very hard still, of course. But with pugs, fucking no, get me out of there. That sounds like a nightmare. Absolutely do not trust pugs to not kill me. <laughs> question mark, question mark, Toxic Streamer, yeah. Last season, you soloed a 24 Tyrannical Grievous Ruby Life Pool's last boss, Blood Decay. Yeah, fucking Blood Decay especially can solo some really crazy shit. Um, Ruby Life Pool's the last boss. I had some really nice solos once the the guy is dead, the troll. Because, honestly, I think Blood Decay is the only person that can, like, reasonably solo the, um, the big hits from, what was his name, Urquhart Stormvane or whatever. But... As like a monk, as a demon hunter, if you don't kill Urquhart Stormvane and your healer dies, you're just fucked, right? Because that like storm slam thing will kill you. But actually as brewmaster or as demon hunter, I can solo Kairaka even on really, really high difficulties because you can generally speaking heal through it. And the nice thing about Kairaka is it has so many like animation locked abilities that are avoidable. So as long as you keep kiting and dodging all of like the fire puddles and the fire breath, you can usually heal through, like, the rest of the damage. And then on Brewmaster, I would, like, throw out some Vivifies. Can solo the troll as Blood DK? Yeah. I, I don't think any other tank but Blood DK would be able to solo the troll, though. That may be Prop Paladin. I don't know, though. Like, Prop Paladin is kind of overpowered, but uh, that stuff is absolutely brutal. Oh, yeah, I don't have vendor prices on Classic. Fuck. Forgot about that. Um, my videos are popular, perhaps? Uh, what is my view on hardcore, which is driven by players? You mean, like, the hardcore add-on? I'm not a fan of the hardcore add-on, which is why I waited until now. Assuming that's what you mean. Yeah, I'm... I, I don't really... I mean, I'm all for people putting their own challenges on it, right? Like, I'm not saying that I hate that people use the add-on or I hate that it exists, right? To each their own, you know? If you want to add your own rules and use the hardcore add-on on top of it, go for it. It's just not something I'm personally going to be using, not something I'm interested in. Um, I don't, and I also don't like enforcing that on people. So one thing that I dislike is when people try to enforce solo self-found on other players just because. You know, I think that's shitty. Right? I'm going to get rid of Forest Mushroom Camp. I have more than enough food. So I can take that Ruined Pelt. We'll get a, a decent vendor value. I have no idea where this mob is. Is that it? Yeah, Chief Shark Tusk Thorn Mantle. I figured it was in this tent. I wasn't sure if it was that cave or this tent where the mob is located. I couldn't remember. Uh, love that from the Demon Hunters. 
Hugs on high keys can be IRL deadly. My mind is numb by the fact that I did more than 20 keys last week and completed less than 10. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, that sounds awful. Oh, shit, I need to... I'm a mess. I just canceled my water because I was refreshing Rockbiter. The issue is clearing the stacks. Oh, you can AOS the debuff? Oh, yeah, that's OP then. I figured you'd just be able to heal through it, but yeah, especially if you can AMS off the Stormstrike debuff, that makes it a breeze. AMS is really, really, really stupid. You need to sleep, have a nice day? Thank you. Uh, sleep well, you ball. Thank you for watching the stream. Oh, shit. Um, okay, I need to be careful here. This is probably, like, the first somewhat difficult pull I've encountered, because if I walk into that tent and just pull all of them, I'm fucked, right? So I need to, uh, I need to not do that. Nice, this guy walked out so I can kill him. What? And yeah, these days I don't even bother doing Mythic Plus anymore, unless it's like with my guild. So if somebody in my guild asks me if I want to do keys, I'll usually I'll usually do that. But these days, like if I don't get anybody in my guild to run keys, I'm just like, alright, I'm not getting a vault this week. It's whatever. I mean, at this point, though, literally the only thing that I could get that would be an upgrade for me is uh, 447 Bild Sting Krog Tusks. Like, outside of that, on my Demon Hunter, I'm just taking uh, the the little tokens for Splintered Spark of Shadow Flame. Because 99% of the time, getting a crafted piece of gear is just going to be better than a random item from the vault. It's specifically Krog Tusks that I need. Otherwise, nothing. Thanks, Yuval. Glad you like the live stream. Uh, you just take the first of the face, use a defensive for the second, and AMS the third, and then repeat. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that working. Good thing I'm on vacation. I can stay up to the end of the stream. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long I'll be going. Like I said, I'll stop at level 10. Or, obviously, if I die, then it'll be a very short rest of the stream. But, you know, we're at like six and a half hours. Um... Generally speaking, I, I try to aim for, uh, I try to aim for like six to seven hours or six to eight hours, give or take, for like stream length. So because that last run was only four hours long, I figured that was a pretty short stream, especially for like my first stream since Dragonflight launch. I didn't want to just end it super fast. You're off to watch the latest Indiana Jones. Good luck not dying. All right. Let me know if it's good. I mean, I'm sure you'll probably enjoy it, because Indiana Jones, and just in general, but... I am curious to hear what you think. Uh... Tough jerky... I'll take flimsy chain boots, just for, like, vendor value. Can I pull this guy without pulling the other one? Is this an LOS spot? Okay, this is an LOS spot. Perfect. Alright. And then I'll whack him. I'm going to drink up again. And then, as long as no mobs spawn on top of my face, I should be able to easily kill this guy. Mob almost spawned right on top of my face. That would have been bad. <laughs> almost jinxed myself. All right. Right, I, I need room in my inventory to loot this. Okay, fuck. Uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. And quickly drink and eat. Hmm. How do I want to... Okay, okay, this is problematic. This is problematic. Okay, there's two. This is a disaster situation. All right, perfect timing of the level up. All right, this is getting out of hand. Come on, don't pull Chief, Chief Thorntusk. 
Uh, uh, get rid of Rune Pelt. Okay, I have a shield now. I have a shield. <laughs> uh, I'm fine. Yeah, that was a clutch thing for sure. <laughs> I think I want to say I would have been fine. What is this flimsy chain cloak? I already have one. Okay. Uh, because worst case scenario, I still had full health, right? So, I don't think I would have died there if I hadn't leveled up. But still, very spooky. Very, very, very spooky. Rats, thank you. Only thing your Death Knight can get is 447 Mark of Dark Rule. Yeah. Thankfully, none of the trinkets from Mythic Plus are really that great for me. As Demon Hunter, I'm using uh, Beacons of the Beyond and Ominous Chromatic Essence, and that's basically it. I Actually, for single target, I'm still using Drogbar Rocks, which is... yeah. You're doing 16s and 17s next patch, no point to do 20s anymore. Yeah, that's true. The changes are definitely really good. Obviously, you'll still want to do 20s early on to farm, like, Aspect Crests, but... Uh... Now it's, like, less important. Oh. Fresh Rock Biter before I forget. Uh, question for you. Would you believe my claim if I say I kill the terrorist movement single-handedly? Um... Not at face value, but, you know, maybe if you elaborated. If I had more information to back up that claim, maybe then... I would believe that you kill the terrorist movement single-handedly. Uh, for Vault 16s, but if you need the actual gear, then 17s too. Yeah, for sure. Generally, I mean, the difficulty between 16s and 17s is virtually unchanged. I would say they're just about as hard. So, yeah. Uh, I think 17s just because the, the gear jump was better. Um, well, speaking of Indiana Jones, we all remember Crystal Skull. There's such a thing as a bad Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. I mean, I didn't hate Crystal Skull, but I was also, like, younger when I watched it. So, like, I liked anything Indiana Jones, but I did, even as a kid, I recognized that it was, like, not as good as the other ones. So, who knows? I do hope it's not another repeat of the Crystal Skull, though. Because I think if Crystal Skull was better, we could have gotten even more Indiana Jones movies. But I'm glad that it didn't kill the franchise single-handedly. Uh, okay, this is a dead end, right? So I think I head out this way. You planned it? I don't know what that means. Uh, full health, yeah. New Indiana Jones movie is supposedly really good. A guildy of yours got to see an early screening with this company, and there's apparently a not-so-acceptable joke in there made by the most ironic person. Oh, all right. Interesting. That's ominous. Not-so-acceptable joke. Um, yeah, I mean, if it is good, then I'll probably see it. I haven't seen many movies in recent years, but Indiana Jones is like, for reference, like, the Indiana Jones movies, thanks to my dad, because he is like a huge fan of Indiana Jones, uh, were some of the first movies I ever saw as a kid. That and Star Wars, right? Um, but then also, one of the first games I ever played was... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, which surprisingly, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, that game fucking owns. I got it on Steam like a few years ago, because it, it came out like 2003, 2004, but apparently it was on Steam, so I got it and played through it again, and 20 years later, shit holds up. It's a really, really, really good game for something that came out in the early 2000s. And that was like one of the first games I ever played, so, you know, I'm glad that one of my first games ever was actually really, really good. Uh, but because of that, like, I've really liked Indiana Jones ever since I was a kid. Because it's, like, one of the first movies I watched, one of the first games I ever played. Um, so I would love for it to be good. It would definitely be one of the few movies I would actually, you know, spend time to go and see. How old is my dad? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, and I also don't know if he wants me to share that. Like, you know, I'll share my age, because I don't give a shit, right? But, you know... I, my dad probably wouldn't care, but I also, I don't want to share information about somebody else with, you know, out their opinion, you know. Uh, that was close, but wait until the caves. Oh, 
Uh, I Admittedly, I'm going a little bit more fast and loose here. I'm probably going to slow down a little bit and play it safe once I get out of the starting zone. Because I figure, you know, once I get out of the starting zone, that's like a little bit more serious. I've already invested like an hour into it. Then I, I don't want to be fucking around. Because I could have played that probably a little bit more carefully. I could have grinded more experience before going in. But I went in there at level and uh, didn't try to like clear out all of the mobs outside beforehand. So definitely was a little bit reckless, but it worked out. Destroyed. Oh. I don't understand a lot of that, but... Uh, thumbs up. <laughs> if you, um... I, I mean, I guess... I, I think it's probably not a hot take to say, like, terrorists bad, so, you know, destroying terrorists? Cool. Good. Good for you. But I don't I don't know a lot of that stuff. I don't like follow a lot of details of like terrorist organizations. You know, probably I, I don't think most people do, right? So yeah. <laughs> I don't know how how this topic got brought up anyways. Um Let's see. Indiana Jones Lego game. Oh yeah, yeah. I played that too. Uh Lego Star Wars, Lego Indiana Jones, definitely. Those were bangers. I played those a lot as a kid. Lego Star Wars especially. I mean, I think a lot of people around my age played, like, Lego Star Wars, the complete trilogy as a kid. Like, almost all of my friends in school played it as well. And I remember me and my cousin, every time I went up to visit my grandmother, which, like, my grandmother lives close to my cousin. So, my cousin would stop by and then we played, um, Lego Star Wars and the Wii. So, I just remember it being really fun, because every time I'd visit my grandma, I knew it was, like, me and my cousin would play Lego Star Wars. And that was just so much fun to me as a kid. That was, like, the highlight of my trips there obviously you know my grandma also you know she she's nice i liked visiting her but definitely it was it was also really fun to go and play that with my cousin my cousin is also the one who introduced me to the original star wars battlefront and star wars battlefront 2 so yeah my cousin definitely has a uh, good taste in games and i mean i introduced him to wow so i guess you know we're even I don't think terrorist bad is a hot take. Okay, good. Glad I'm not alone on that one. Uh, that's PTR. Yeah, this is this is classic era PTR. So this is classic hardcore um, on the PTR servers, which, by the way, everybody's able to play. Uh, even if you don't have a paid subscription, the PTR is available to everybody. Um... Lego Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter. Yeah, I never played Lego Harry Potter, but I did hear it was good. A lot of the Lego themed games were great. Yeah, they were really, really good. Uh, yeah, I played Pokemon. Uh, I wasn't like really big into Pokemon. Like I know a lot of my friends were like huge Pokemon fans. I played, I never played the card game. Uh, obviously, I've like in recent years, I played Pokemon Go a lot, which is probably at this point the Pokemon game I played more than any. Um, but when I was a kid, the first Pokemon game I ever played was Pokemon Emerald, and then I played Pokemon Diamond, and I didn't really play many after that, but I definitely played a decent amount of Pokemon Emerald and Pokemon Diamond. Uh, what else? Battlefront 2 is so amazing. Yeah, Star Wars Battlefront 2, I, that was another game that recently... I downloaded on Steam and I, I played through the entire campaign again. And that's another like old game from the early 2000s that absolutely does hold up. Star Wars Battlefront 2, banger game. The original, right? Not that new shit. I don't know if is like the new Battlefront actually good now? Because I've heard that they tried to make changes to improve it. But when it came out, I heard so many terrible reviews for Battlefront 2. Just like the way it was monetized and the microtransactions and stuff like that. Which was disappointing, because I remember thinking it was cool that they were finally remaking it, but it turned out to be kind of dog shit. Um, but, uh, whatchamacallit, yeah, original Battlefront 2, definitely amazing game. I played that so much as a kid. Battle Bores, what is the quest word for this? Oh, I finally get a chess piece. Are there any, like, gray dropped... Isn't there supposed to be, like, a ragged leather vest that can drop off mobs? 
Because normally I get like at least a gray item every slot at low levels, but I didn't manage to get any chess pieces off any of those mobs. You would spend hours playing it with your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah, I, every single time I would visit my cousin, we would play Battlefront 2 all the time. That, and as I mentioned, Lego Star Wars, right? But really, really fun games. Uh, PS2 was just a banger console. Yeah, I... I actually, I never played a PlayStation. I think we played it on... I think I played le the Lego stuff on Xbox, and then Wii. We had the Lego Star Wars, like, the complete whatever on Wii. And then I played Battlefront on the computer. With, like, the actual discs and stuff like that. Uh, okay, Earthshock. Uh, I guess I put that on... I'll put that on two. Move my healing spell. <laughs> you grew up injecting Pokemon into your veins. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, this stuff's cheap. I could probably... You know, 55 armor. It's a decent... Upgrade and then, uh, this is identical to my starting weapon. Why would I buy that? What can I buy here? Same armor. This is a slight upgrade. Same armor. Same. Um, so pants are a slight upgrade. Boots are a slight upgrade. And then it's the same. Okay. That there goes all of my money. But I could probably grind some mobs and get, like, a few more copper and silver. Uh, what quest am I on? Uh, travel to the guy who lives in the south. I think that quest line, there's, like, a little hut all the way out there, right? If memory serves. And then Shaman, Call of the Earth. Oh, now I have to go all the way back to the... Quillbore place? I just left. Ugh. Well, now I have Earthshock, so... Earthshock... I guess Earthshock's an interrupt, right? So... Yeah, if I'm fighting a caster, I should hold on to it. Um... Ruby was your first Pokemon game. You spent the most time playing Heart Golds, but... I, I don't I don't know all the abbreviations. Is that black and white? I know that those are two Pokemon games. Um, I'm yeah, like I said, I'm not super familiar with it. I know the basic history of Pokemon, like you know the some of the games early on, but yeah, okay, black and white. Yeah, I remember a lot of friends, a lot of my friends in high school played black and white because like whenever we would have lunch, it was like th there were like two groups of people. Uh, at my lunch table, there were the Hearthstone players, which, you know, were on, like, my side. And then there were the Pokemon players. And then later on, all my friends that played Pokemon also started playing Smash during lunch. That was, like, uh, whenever... Was that Smash? I don't think it was Smash Ultimate that came out when I was in high school. I think it was Smash... Whatever the one before Ultimate was. But I remember, um... At lunch, a lot of kids at my lunch table would, like, play Smash on, a. The, uh, like, there were, like, two tables. It was, like, the, the way that my lunch lunchroom was set up is it was, like, a bunch of, like, these big tables, like, right, like, and we, they would, like, smush two of them together. So, like, my entire friend group was at one of, like, the two sets of two tables. But then, like, I sat on one side and, like, me and some of the other kids would play Hearthstone. And then uh, the other side of the table was, like, all my friends that had, like, their Switches. And uh, before the Switch, the their 3DSs and stuff. And they would play Pokemon and Smash all the time. So sometimes I would watch them play black and white or uh, Smash, right? That was that was always fun at lunch. Uh, what quest do I have? Right of Strength. Oh, okay, now I need to go kill more Bristleback, which I guess works out since I have to do Call of the Earth anyway. Mm. Um, you remember re we released so well? It was like such a big deal. Yeah. It was kind of funny how I remember, because my parents were trying to get it for us. It was around like Christmas, and I remember my my mom was basically saying that she was having trouble finding it. And later on, like when I was older, she told me about the story. And she said like she had to go to like so many different stores, and I think she got the last Wii at this one store right before they were all sold out, or it was like somebody had reserved it. 
and then they never came to pick it up. So, like, they were technically out of stock, but because somebody put it on hold and then didn't get it, my mom was able to get it, like, at the last second. But, uh, yeah, I remember the Wii was, like, crazy at the time. Everybody was trying to get one. And, I mean, it, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Ended up, it ended up being pretty, like, not spectacular in terms of, you know, the games that it had later on. I think the whole idea of motion controls, right, where you could, like, move your hands and uh, the stuff would move with you, like Wii Sports, obviously, I think is technically speaking one of the best-selling games of all time because it came with the Wii, right? But I think most people, a lot of people have played Wii Sports by this point. And it was pretty cool at the time, you know? Like, I loved playing the, the Wii Sports Boxing. And I played that shit all the time. And just, it was really cool being able to, like, punch out. And, you know, it would actually, like, respond to your hand movements. Like, at the time, I guess that was pretty revolutionary. And now, of course, there's, like, a shit ton of games that have stuff like that. But it is interesting looking back on how that all played out. Uh... I don't I have no idea what that other conversation in chat is about. I don't don't know what any of that is. Um Take nearest flight path and hearth. There is no flight path uh here. I I yeah, I don't know what you mean about that. Uh hello Elex, good to see you. Been a long time, yeah. Well, in fairness, it's also been a long time since I've streamed, so I honestly think it's possible that you were probably here for, like, one of the last times I streamed. Because uh, I think... Last time I streamed was Dragonflight launch, and I definitely remember you popping in during one of the Dragonflight beta streams. So, technically speaking, in the grand scheme of things, it hasn't been that long. It's just been a while since I've actually done these. Uh, yeah, somewhere around Christmas, pretty much. Yeah, that was, like, the last time I streamed before today. Uh, around, like, the Dragonflight testing. But yeah, good to see you. You're reminding me that Hearthstone is old as fuck. Yeah, Hearthstone is really old. Hearthstone came out when I was in my... Soft... Or Hearthstone was in beta when I was in my sophomore year of high school. Because I started playing Hearthstone within the final, like, four months of beta before it, like, officially released and they did like the soft release um and then i played hearthstone like all throughout high school like i've said before but i was like i was the hearthstone player at my school i i was at least i was definitely the first person in my school to hit legend i i think the oh yeah i think um one of my friends got legend on um in like the final months before we graduated so that was cool, but it, I, I've told this story before, but I loved, I loved like lunch during my junior and senior years because like early on in high school, they had like a lot of restrictions on like phone usage. And then like during my junior year, they were just, my high school was like, fuck it, whatever, we don't care. So then everybody started just playing shit at lunch. So a bunch of kids would like bring me their, um, their phones like at, uh, both at lunch and then also in the morning. So I remember every single time before class, uh, we, we would get there at like 7 a.m. And then there was like a 15 minute period before our first class started where you, I, you go to your lockers or something like that. But they also had like the lunch hall open. So I didn't use my locker. Like I carried all my stuff around in my backpack. So I would go to the lunchroom and just hang out there for 15 minutes. And there were a few kids, uh, especially a lot of them were like in the year below me. And whenever I got there, they would, like, bring me their phones, and they'd be like, help me out, because they would start, like, a Hearthstone game on the bus ride, and then they would be trying to finish it, so I would, like, give them pointers and stuff like that. And that was really fun for me. So that's, like, some of my best memories of high school, just playing Hearthstone with all my friends. Magic the Gathering? Yeah, I... I one of these days, I, I should play Magic the Gathering. I just never have. It's one of those things where I've always meant to try it at some point, because obviously having played Hearthstone for many years, I've heard a lot of comparisons to Magic the Gathering. Like, I know a decent bit about it just from, like, secondhand knowledge, but I've yet to ever play it. Uh, you did not miss playing OG WoW at all. It's like installing Windows 3.1 workgroup. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's... I definitely, like, the thing about, um... You know, oh, I'll help this guy out. He pulled two things, so I want to make sure he doesn't die. 
dirt stained map. What is this? I can like we all open this, or does it share a a thing? Oh, I guess it shares a respawn time. Ah, uh, well, that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, like when Classic first came out, you know, I played it all the way to 60 just because I wanted to see what it was like. You know, I played it when I was five years old, right? But I never, I never seriously played it. But as I said before, I did Molten Core like three times and then I just stopped. I just did not find it very interesting. It was, it was fun for the experience and I played it like a little bit on and off just kind of for fun. But I think the main thing for me is I didn't love the raids. And I think the whole experience, like the whole gearing process and stuff was way too slow for me. So I did like Blackrock Depths a few times. I actually really liked doing arena runs in Blackrock Depths. That was pretty fun. And actually, Prot Warrior tanking uh, was better than I expected. Like I expected tanking and classic to be super bad, super clunky, because so many of my friends told me, oh, you're going to hate tanking in classic WoW. It's like it feels so outdated. It really wasn't that bad. Like, if you're just sitting there and you're just sitting in defensive stance, yeah, sure, it's going to suck. But I would, like, stance dance. I would go into, like, berserker stance, cast whirlwind. I had engineering, so I would, like, throw my bombs to generate threat. And it felt fun. Like, it was actually engaging. Like, it was a mini game where I have to, like, do more damage than the DPS to hold threat, which was kind of fun because then people would get pissed off, right? Uh, but it also meant I was doing my job as a tank. So I actually really enjoyed that aspect of it. But long term, it just didn't have enough to, like, grip me. Uh, and TBC I thought was interesting, but I honestly didn't come back until Sunwell. And then when I came back for Sunwell, I at least like tried to do all the raids just to see what it was like. And um, uh, whatchamacallit, like I tried Black Temple. I think it was fun getting like a fire resist set for Illidan and stuff like that. But even then, wasn't thrilled with it. The first expansion so far in Classic that has actually really, like that I've really enjoyed is Wrath. Like, I'm genuinely enjoying playing Wrath stuff. I know a lot of people have said they find it boring, and, like, I get it, right? We've all played this game for years. Obviously, it's going to feel boring when you go back. But compared to the other uh, classic stuff, I've been enjoying Wrath infinitely more. Like, unironically, just for fun. Wrath Paladin tanking just fucking owns, and it helps that um, the new Titan Rune Dungeons, while technically not, you know, classic content, are really, really, really fun. I love running Titan Rune Dungeons. They're really good. Uh, let me let me scroll up. Best games in the Wii U didn't even use the motion controls. Yeah, that's true. Uh, do you automatically learn new spells? Or do you need to find and pay an arm and a leg at the trainer? No, this is still OG Classic, so you gotta use the trainer. This is like OG, OG, Wrath, or a, a Classic era. You remember getting your beta key email? OG Hearthstone was sauce, yeah. I don't know, like, I still... I play Hearthstone on and off these days, but I only play the PvE modes. Like, I play Dalaran Heist and basically nothing else. Dalaran Heist, still really fun, though. But I... I don't know, back in Castle Nathria, I tried to play standard Hearthstone again, and I, I just can't, man. It's, it's just not the same... I feel like a boomer whenever I talk about, like, Hearthstone, but I just don't enjoy it at all. And I tried Battlegrounds. I don't enjoy Battlegrounds at all. It's just not for me. So, at this point, I'm only playing Hearthstone for the PvE modes, and I haven't spent a dime on it in a long time. But yeah, original Hearthstone, back then, oh, it was so good. I love, I, I love, like, building decks with all the new cards and stuff like that. Just deck building in general was always super fun for me. 2014 release, like, five months before WAD. Yep, that sounds about right. I, I remember it being right before WAD. Uh, you played Yu-Gi-Oh! for the first time and you were seven years old. It's literally the first card game you've ever played, and your friends never cared what the cards did because all of you cheated. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually played Yu-Gi-Oh! But I, I did play Yu-Gi-Oh! Heavy air quotes with my sister back when I was like, I don't know, seven or something. But it was exactly like you said. Like, me and my sister would just make up whatever the fuck the cards did. Like, you know, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards did whatever me and my sister wanted them to do. We didn't actually play the game the way it was meant to be played. So I, I totally relate to that one. But I've never actually played like Yu-Gi-Oh for real. 
Uh, bro, I remember when Binding of Isaac released. I have a friend that lived right next to the high school, and we would all eat at his house playing Isaac. Uh, yeah. Uh, I still have to play Binding of Isaac. I've heard really good things about it over the years, but it's just, it's one of those games, like, I've heard a lot about, just never gotten around to it. Uh... <laughs> He pulled two things. I want to make sure he doesn't die. Harlden reminded me why WoW Classic is not a good game in one sentence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this level, it's really just a case of, you know, low level WoW Classic is pure. It's a numbers game, right? You know, you either are able to do enough damage before the mobs kill you or you aren't. At higher levels, you at least have some tools at your disposal. But right now, it's just... Did you overpull? No? Then you're probably alive. Did you overpull? Yes? Well, then you're dead. So, yeah. How many do I still need? I need to kill Bristleback Shamans for this salve. And then I just need to kill any Bristlebacks for Rite of Strength. Uh, what was my favorite character in Warcraft 3? Uh, it's been a while since I played Warcraft 3, but I think Rexar, probably. Yeah, I think when I was, like, a kid and I played Warcraft 3 the first time, Rexar was, like, my favorite character. And I also played a hunter back when I was really young in WoW. So I was already playing WoW by the time I played Warcraft 3, and I had already been playing a hunter, so Rexar was just kind of, like, you know, the cool hunter guy, so he was always my favorite. I was in pep band as well, so we only played during halftime of basketball. And the entire duration of the rest of the game, we jammed Magic the Gathering. Nice. Uh, don't get me wrong, it was a great game when it released uh, back in 2004, Vanilla Reese, not when WoW Classic came out. Yeah, I mean, obviously everything, you know, as time goes on, things that can feel really good. Like, it's, it's really rare for something to, I think, completely age perfectly. I do think to a certain degree, WoW Classic has aged better than a lot of other games. Like, uh, WoW Classic released in 2004, right? And I played Warhammer Online uh, in, like, a, a video that I uploaded to YouTube, like, back in 2021 or something like that, checking out, like, the Warhammer private server. And that game came out in, what, 2008? So four years after Classic WoW. But if you told me that, like, Warhammer released in, like, 1998, I'd believe you. WoW Classic, even with its problems, feels like a way more modern game compared to some other MMOs from the time. Like, it, it definitely, obviously, all stuff around that time shows its age, but this game is aged infinitely better than, like, Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning or other MMOs from that time period. Mana up when you check quests. Well, at this point, I don't even need to drink, though. Like, my mana regen is just so fast passively. Like, I haven't even drank anything in a while, and it's just like, yeah. I'd rather save my water for when, you know, if I'm in a situation like I was before, where nobody else is killing the mobs and I have to kind of finagle my way out, that way I can get, like, one quick sip of water in between a pull. Right now, it's like, by the time I pull another mob, I, I fully regen mana. You were never really a fan of Classic. Burning Crusade was the expansion that really hooked you into WoW. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a shame that they don't have TBC era servers. No, I... I didn't really get a chance to play, like, TBC when it... Um, I really TBC at all. Because, like, TBC's kind of in this weird limbo where... Um, when it came out, I was still playing, like, OG vanilla. Because I was too young to actually level up consistently. So... I played a lot of vanilla content as a kid, so even though I, I didn't really do any of the endgame stuff, I still have nostalgia for it. And then Wrath was the first time when I actually hit max level, so I did play Wrath content when it was current, but throughout the entirety of TBC I was still really young and I never actually got through it, I just was leveling up my characters. So TBC is like kind of a weird case where I have like no actual nostalgia for it, but I do have nostalgia for both vanilla and Wrath. And then TBC Classic, outside of, like, me playing a druid at the end and trying out Sunwell, I didn't really get a chance to play it, because I joined in, like, the last two months or so. You want to see a season of Mastery that cycles to Wrath? Yeah, that would actually be sick. I'd definitely play that. I think, um... 
even just some sort of season of mastery specifically for tbc classic would be cool because right now it's the most unutilized version of classic considering there's no servers that support it so i think that would be a cool way to get people to play it though i do think it is a crime that they didn't add tbc era servers it's like how much could it really cost to keep those servers up right like at least give players the option instead of just shutting it down and saying fuck you go to wrath because i'm sure there were a lot of people who were really looking forward to tbc era servers and then you know they were basically told fuck you so yeah not great i probably wouldn't have played on it but i still think you know keeping options open to players is something that blizzard should do The game has improved so many times over the years, and it just doesn't hold up compared. Just funny how pre-classic release, everyone's all like, all you retail players are going to see how hard it is. You have it so easy now. And then, yeah, raids cleared below level 60. Yeah, I mean, I do think that classic was, I don't know, overhyped. Like, obviously, some people were basically acting like, you know, oh, it's, it is just a better version of the game. And I think that is objectively not true. I think... There are some things that definitely over the years, you know, WoW has made mistakes. Oh, the map apparently just spawned and that troll hunter got it. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, but at least I get this thing, Squealer's Belt. That's a, a minor upgrade. Yeah, I don't know if this is... I assume that's like an item that starts a quest. I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to spawn. I'm just going to move on. I recommend your experience with TBC is very common because it doesn't seem very popular. Yeah, TBC definitely does seem like the redheaded stepchild of like the classic trilogy. You know, there's a lot of people who swear by Wrath and obviously a lot of people who swear by Vanilla, but TBC has like a few really diehard fans that are very vocal about it. But the general populace, from what I can tell, is either like a bigger fan of Vanilla. Uh, YouTube? Hello? What is going on? I think there may have been an issue on YouTube's end. It also... Yeah, and now it just says excellent connection. Okay. YouTube just went from like a 180 of... The buffer? No, that, that buffer was for everybody, I think. Uh, yeah, YouTube basically showed up on my screen. It said it was... The stream was buffering. And then it said... No data or no stream connection. The stream will end within a minute if there's no resume connection. And I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? And then it just goes back to excellent connection. And it's fine. And as far as I can tell, my OBS has no problem. So YouTube, I guess, just, you know, shit itself for a minute or so. That's, uh, weird. 12 armor. Okay, that's not an upgrade. I'm just gonna head out of here because I finished my quests and, uh, no, I don't really think I need to grind any additional experience. Easy mode looks like enhancement shaman spells. Uh, I I mean, are there other classes that are harder than this at low levels? Outside of warrior, I'd imagine warrior is probably the hardest just because you have to rely on like auto attacks. But I mean, aren't most classes, you know, they have some spells or abilities at this level. Like druids have wrath and stuff. Uh, you love the PvE dungeons, such a sweet game. Have I ever tried playing Monster Train? If you like PvE Hearthstone, I think you would really love it. It's like multiple times better than Slay the Spire. Um, well, I have played Slay the Spire a lot. Uh, I've seen a few streamers play, like I, some of the Slay the Spire streamers that I've watched have played Monster Train before. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's one of those where it seems fine. I, I don't think I would hate it. But I just don't... I've never, like, was interested enough in it to really want to check it out. Um, but it's, it seems cool. It's just... I, I still haven't even, like, 100% to Slay the Spire, right? Like, I've only done Ascension 20 on uh, Ironclad and Watcher. So, it's like, whenever I get the, the itch to play a game like that, you know, I, I'll either play Dollar on Heist, but I'm probably not going to be playing that as much anymore since I did finally 100% it. I've got in, I've beaten um, every single heroic dollar on heist boss with every single class, or every single heroic do dollar on heist game mode, like the bank, the um, bank, violet hold, streets, underbelly, and uh, violet citadel. So all nine classes, all five wings. I finally finished that a few days ago with mage. 
which was the last one I needed because Mage and Dollar on Heist Heroic is a fucking nightmare. Um, but now that I've done that, I mean, my kind of go-to, like, free time when I'm bored roguelike game is kind of, I don't know, I've run out of challenges for it. Uh, so I'll probably download Slay the Spire again, but that's the thing, you know, whenever I want to play something like that, I still want to get through Slay the Spire first. But if I ever finally get through Ascension 20 on, um, Defect and Silence, and I run out of stuff to do, then maybe I'll check out Monster Train. Uh, Rexar is a base choice, glad to hear it. Wow, classic... Oh my god. Yeah, it's... It, it's definitely an issue on YouTube's end. Even OBS is telling me that, like, having trouble connecting to the to the stream servers. And my connection in-game is perfectly fine. I'm getting no lag in World of Warcraft, so... Gotta love when YouTube fucks me over. Absolutely love it. At least it seems like it's only in and out, like, mildly spotty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I have to... I think one of the quests I turn in down there, so I'll probably have to go and do that. Oh no, both of them are turned in here. Okay, cool. Um, Word WoW is the best MMORPG experience? Yeah. You want to see... Oh, I, I already read that comment. We had different ranks of spell with different mana costs back then, yeah. You just want Season of Mastery in general? Yeah, like, I really feel like they dropped the ball on seasonal classic content, because Season of Mastery, they just didn't do enough changes. Like, the idea of seasonal classic is so cool. Like, think of how Diablo seasons work, right? Diablo seasons were really popular because, you know, it gives you a new way to play, like, uh, the game that, you know, you already like. So they could have done that with classic, and instead they just went, like, extremely conservative on changes. And it's like, why? Classic era exists. For people who want no changes, they have classic era. If you're going to do a season... What was it that they did for Season of Mastery? Like, minor boss changes and, like, 20% more experience. Like, la -di da I level 20% faster, so it only takes me four days instead of five days. Like, yeah. Uh, no, I'll pass. <laughs> I skipped out on Season of Mastery. I played it, like, once just because one of my friends was playing it, and he, like, talked me into it. And I got to, like, level 15, and then I was just bored. Because I was like, I mean, if I'm going to play Classic, I'm just going to play Classic Era, right? Or I'm going to, in that case, play Classic TBC, which is exactly what I did. I played TBC instead of Season of Mastery. Oh. But if there were actual yeah, substantial changes, which seems like it would be kind of the entire point of a seasonal server, then I would play that. So, I don't know. They just needed to be a bit more, like, aggressive with their changes, and they weren't. But what I'm worried now is the unfortunate thing is Season of Mastery bombed so fucking hard that I think Blizzard is kind of receive the message of people don't like classic seasonals content and i think that was their takeaway from season of mastery so now they're just not doing it again but it's like no people want seasonal classic content you just got to do more than like a 20 percent xp boost or whatever the fuck it was find kodo rock shrines the east oh yeah that's that big the big stone like over here i think so i'll go over there and do that uh Classic is a cool nostalgia trip, absolutely. Yeah, there definitely are some, like, fun little quirks to Classic. I agree with that. That was, like, the main appeal to it for me. Like, obviously, if I had to pick, do I enjoy tanking in retail more or tanking in, like, a vanilla Classic? Obviously, I enjoy tanking in retail more. But the way that, like, you managed threat and stuff was fun. It's, like, the type of thing where I can, I can enjoy that for what it is. You know, by that same metric, you know, if I had to manage threat in retail, which sometimes I do, it sucks. Every time I have to keep track of my threat in retail tanking, I'm having a miserable time. It sucks. But managing threat in classic, it's like, okay, it's, you know, it's a fun little mini game. I can tolerate it for now. It, it is very different. There's things that, you know, I like about it that are, are just different from retail. I guess there's a uh, hostile mobs blocking the way here. And like, Wrath Classic Tanking is... Wrath Classic Tanking is interesting because the funny thing is, I keep being told that holding threat in Wrath Classic is something I need to work towards. But like, I'm gonna be honest, I'm getting 99 damage parses as a prop paladin. I have never had to work for threat in my life. In fact, when I was doing, um, when I was doing 10-man heroic TOC with my new guild, I kept pulling threat off the blood DK. 
And he was like, why are you taunting? And I'm like, I'm not taunting. I'm just pressing shield of the righteous and it's critting and then ripping threat. Like, Rob Paladin just actually does ridiculous amounts of damage in Wrath Classic. So it's fun. And it's actually like the first time I have an actual damage rotation in Classic that I can like min-max as a tank. And it feels so good. Especially like, I've been... I've seen, like, so many guides saying that, like, you should still use Seal of Command for Prop Alley on multiple targets, and, like, that just seems wrong, because right now, in Wrath Classic, I have, like, so many things that synergize with Seal of Corruption that I just run Seal of Corruption on multiple targets, and it's, like, my second overall damage, and then I get, like, a 99 parse on, like, multi-target fights. It's ridiculous how hard it hits. Uh, what do I need to do? Drink this thing? Oh. All right. Uh, bring the rough quartz. Okay, so I just go back to the horde camp. Cool. Um, let's see. Vanilla, nobody knew what was going on or how to play the game. Everyone's learning. TBC, people are starting to learn a little bit more. And then Wrath, people can actually play the game and compete. Yeah. Like, I had no idea what I was doing in Vanilla and TBC. And then, um, in, uh, in Wrath, I had, I had a friend, uh, his name was Yorogur, who I think was like, you know, a 30 year old dad or something. And, you know, I was some stupid little kid. So Yorogur would always try to like, give me pointers. So he would message me and he would be like, okay, are you using this talent? And I would say no. And he was like, okay, copy my talent build. And then I would do that. And he was like, okay, you need to start using this ability or something like that. And he would tell me, like, Eurogurg was the first person that told me that as a hunter, I should not be using strength gear. And in fact, the uh, the strength one-handed sword that I was using was actually meant for tanks and not for hunters. Uh, so he gave me advice on, like, how to actually play the game. And that was when I first started to actually figure out what the fuck I was doing. Sort of. Back in Wrath. Uh, I, I was a fucking mess back in Wrath. I, like, think of every single stereotype about like hunter players in world of warcraft i was all of them back in like wrath class or wrath like the original one it was bad it was really really bad uh okay so do i need to do anything special with earth totem or does it just like sit in my bags and i just get it like shit for free from it uh so stone skin totem summon a stone skin totem that gives melee damage reduction all right uh i will put this on shift y i don't know shift y is where i have divine sacrifice on my retail paladin so i figure close enough you get the vanilla diehards who had their first experiences with the game and it was fun because of that but then wrath was where people started to have more fun after learning the game properly tbc was the middle ground where very few people actually knew how to play the game well enough to get much out of it uh do you need to deck build in dollar on heist or is it similar yeah uh dollar on heist is like cobalt and catacombs it's actually like exactly like cobalt and catacombs in that regard um just like different pools basically dollar on heist cobalt and catacombs and the monster hunt are all like basically identical um game modes the reason that i like kobolds and kataka or um dollar and heist more is dollar and heist is the first one to use the uh the tavern feature where every three bosses you defeat you get, get access to a tavern which is basically like a store so you can remove cards from your deck it's randomized like you get random options and you can spend two gold uh on different options so you can remove a card from your deck uh, you can buff a minion's stats permanently by 2-2. Two, two. You, uh, you get, like, a random selection of minions to choose from, and you can, like, add one of them to your deck. Sometimes you get the option, add all of the offered minions to your deck and give them 1-1, one, one, which may seem better, right? But obviously, if you're putting three garbage minions in your deck, even with plus 1, plus 1, a lot of times that's not good. So... The thing that I like about Dollar and Heist is specifically that tavern mechanic because it gives you way more control over your deck. Uh, a lot of times with um, with Kobolds and Catacombs or Monster Hunt, you're very like live or die based on your random card offerings, and it still is that in Dollar and Heist for sure. But at least a lot of times I know like okay, if I had to pick up like a really shitty minion as part of like one of the card packs. At least if I get the remove a minion from your deck, I can reasonably 
uh, toss that at the tavern. They also, they improved upon that feature in Tombs of Terror, which is the, uh, the next one that came after Dalaran Heist. The only reason I don't really like Tombs of Terror as much is it feels a bit more restrictive. So Tombs of Terror has a lot of deck building stuff or like hero powers that you start with. So the way that it works, right, is in Kobolds and Catacombs, you get like a preset starter deck and you just play with like the basic hero powers of um, of like those classes. Dollar Run Heist, before you start a game, you get offered... A selection of three hero powers there well, i say get offered you pick a selection it's the same every time so for instance the rogue hero captain eudora has either the regular rogue hero power they all have their regular ones like one two dagger uh she has uh two mana add a random card from your opponent's class to your hand so basically a mini burgle as a hero power and then deal two damage i think it's two damage yeah deal two damage to an undamaged minion so the undamaged one is kind of shit, and obviously the regular rogue hero power isn't great unless you have really good synergy, but the burgle hero power is really good. So every time I play a rogue deck, I pick the burgle hero power at the start, and then there is also three preset decks that you can pick from. So you can basically choose whether you want to start with like a mini archetype of like uh, weapon damage or pirates or like burgle stuff. So I always pick the burgle deck. Um, so I pick the Burgle Hero Power, the Burgle deck, and then you also have the option to get a randomized card deck. And the nice thing about the randomized cards is it pulls it pulls from any of the Hearthstone card expansions. So even like modern expansions that came out after Dollar on Heist was released, you can still get those cards in your starter deck, provided you're using the random deck option. So there's like a lot of replayability in it, way more than Kobolds and Catacombs, for instance. And because every single hero has multiple, like, starting hero power and deck options, uh, you get, like, a lot more diversity in terms of your runs. And you're not quite as reliant on getting really good stuff from the random packs, which I really like. Uh, so overall, I think it's pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, all that to say, Tombs of Terror, which was the follow-up one, it has similar mechanics where you have, like, starting hero powers and... Uh, starting decks. And then there's also, like, something called a starting treasure where you get to pick one of, like really one of these really overpowered like treasure cards to add to your deck at the start but the problem i have with that is a lot of times they end up being so strong that it kind of defines your deck before you even start the run which is both good and bad right it means that you're you get a little bit more consistency but also it means that a lot of runs tend to feel the same because unless you decide to experiment with different options the most overpowered builds tend to be the same ones whereas a lot of times with a dollar on heist the hero powers don't necessarily completely define your run, so I end up having a lot more interesting deck builds in that game mode because it's a little bit more freeform. But yeah, I, I love Dollar Run Heist. It's really, really, really good. It's the best hearth or the best content Hearthstone has ever made, in my opinion. And it's a shame that they aren't doing more stuff like it because they had a really good formula going, and then they just stopped. And now they've been doing like the Hearthstone mercenaries and stuff like that, which I don't know, I don't know not my thing. Uh, let's see. Everyone used to their daily Twitter limit, so they've come to YouTube. Daily Twitter limit? Wait, is that a thing? Is that, like, actually a thing that they've added? That sounds awful. I mean, I don't even use Twitter, but that just sounds like a terrible decision. At least it seems like it's only in and out mildly spotty and then it buffers. Eh, unfortunate. Um, what happened to TBC servers? Is it only Classic and Wrath now? Yeah, TBC servers are completely gone, unfortunately. Uh, they should be... There should be more goofy custom stuff like Classic, but every NPC is a Murloc. <laughs> that would be interesting, for sure. Actually, let me keep this. I, I can try to level cooking up. Wait for three Sunders. Oh, God. Yeah. That was always, uh, always lovely. I mean, as the tank, I was the one yelling, wait for three sunders, especially because, like, in raids, in dungeons, I usually had enough ways to generate AoE threat that it wasn't a problem. But yeah, classic raids is just, it's peak wait for three sunders, right? You just, you have to wait for the tank to build threat, and it's just a pain. 
but at least in wrath that's not the case like wrath um i like i've seen people say that sometimes you're supposed to wait for threat but i always just tell people to just full blast whenever i'm tanking because i have yet to like actually lose threat the only like it, i will sometimes momentarily lose threat and then i immediately hand of reckoning and the nice thing about that is hand of reckoning when it successfully taunts a target it deals damage so I actually gain damage if somebody rips threat off me because I can immediately like slam hand of reckoning and just hit them. So uh yeah, works out well for me. You love Pally so much in Wrath, TBC uh yeah, I didn't play Pally in TBC, but I heard it was like I heard it had a unique playstyle that a lot of people liked. Which is one of the things I would have loved to play TBC Pally, I just never got around to it. And I kind of assumed, okay, well wor worst case scenario I can play TBC era. And, well, there is no TBC era, so, eh, rip. Uh, I don't know if I read this. Classic left a sour taste in my mouth, specifically because of my experience with organized guild raiding. Yeah, I mean, guilds, as always, can be pretty hit or miss, right? Unironically leveled through BGs and enjoyed it because Rout just felt so good. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't speak to Rhett and TBC, but Rhett and Wrath, I agree. Rhett and Wrath is so strong. I mean, it, it is just... Uh, for soloing content, especially, just absolutely kick-ass. Because I soloed um, Zul'Gurev last night, and I did it as Rep Pally, and it was just so fucking powerful. Like, I just couldn't die. And admittedly, I have decent gear. Like, I'm in pretty much full hard mode Olduar stuff, but... Still, you know, you get... What, what is it? The, um, the proc that makes your next thing instant cast. And then, bam, just free flash of light. I guess refreshing spring water. What is that? Level 7. Alright. I guess I'll set my hearthstone here. Uh, sometimes there's barrels. Ah! Oh, ah! Is this... Yeah, water barrel. Perfect. See, I have some classic game knowledge. Two whole refreshing spring water. What a find. Uh, bro, I remember my awakening. I was decked out in int mail as a hunter. <laughs> yeah. See, I think intellect mail was probably still better than strength mail for hunter. Or strength, um, like leather or whatever. I don't remember what I was using. I was using really bad stuff as a hunter back then. So, yeah. You are that hunter today. There's a really cool content creator for Hearthstone that blew up the last year that revived the game mode for me with fun modes like this and quest or guests answering fun quests that made me see how influencers are important to the community and how Blizzard should invest on them for WoW to gain new players, make people come back. Um, didn't they hide mercenaries from the main menu? Yes. Yeah. Mercenaries was, I don't know, like, I think it's, it's kind of funny. Like, what is a bigger flop? Uh, classic Season of Mastery or Hearthstone Mercenaries? Like, those are two Blizzard things. Or, or, or Overwatch 2, right? <laughs> um, but like, man, Blizzard has, Blizzard has really dropped the ball in a lot of areas recently. Um, but yeah, uh, Hearthstone Mercenaries was fucking garbage. I, Diablo Immortal... Unfortunately, I don't think Diablo Immortal was Blizzard dropping the ball. I think Blizzard considers Diablo Immortal a smashing success. Uh, it's a dog shit game, but from a monetary perspective, it's making them money. Like, Overwatch 2 is a pretty abysmal failure. Um, and yeah, I, I am also very sad about Overwatch 2. Like, I know I meme on it, and it's one of those things where I talked about it in a previous run, but... I don't think people realize, like, because I, I don't play Overwatch, like, on stream or in videos or anything, how pissed I was, but I... I was looking forward to the, um... to the Overwatch 2 PvE mode so much, because I used to play that all the time, like, the Archives missions with my friends. And we had all, like, we had all agreed that we were going to play it together when it finally came out. Like, my entire challenge mode team from Warlords of Draenor, like, me, my friend Paul, uh, our friend Chris... And, uh, one of our, like, or a few of our other friends, including, like, Haruke and, um, Nier and stuff. A lot of my challenge mode buddies from WAD, we all played, uh, the Overwatch PvE together. And that was, like, just a big thing that we did as a group. 
and um, I was really excited to play it with them again. And uh, yeah, rest in peace, unfortunately. Wait, oh, near. <laughs> oh yeah, I recognize your name now. Oh shit, back. Funny coincidence that. Uh, good to see you, near. <laughs> uh. And yeah, yeah, but Hearthstone Mercenaries was an absolute fucking train wreck. Um, so satisfying seeing every cla race class sixty plus out of your outside of your few twinks. Yeah, going to wait for time walking to span level. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Diablo Immortal for money is a massive success. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it is a success by Blizzard standards. And yeah, Overwatch Two is um. Uh, it's depressing what they're trying to do with PvE now. Just fucking resurrect it. Ugh. You purely lurk on streams 99% of the time, no problem. Uh. More depressing is how much time you put into Overwatch 1. Yeah, they, they really did Overwatch 1 dirty. I also... I really dislike how they went back on their word with the whole, like, Overwatch 1 thing. I'm sure, like, they probably had no choice. It was probably, like a thing done by the people in suits of, like, you know, forcing people to buy Overwatch 2. But, yeah. Um, they did say, oh, no, everybody will continue to play Overwatch 1, and, well, you know, that that didn't turn out to be the case. So, yeah. Oh, I think somebody almost died. Was it that person? No. But I, I see somebody running really far away from those gnolls. Alright, I'm gonna- I need to play this strategically, because I'm fighting over-leveled mobs. I want that treasure chest, man. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. Oh, no! I've pulled two mobs. Okay, this is bad. I I'm not even gonna risk it. I'm just running. Fuck that. <laughs> I am taking no chances here. Okay, we're good, we're good. There's still going to be PvP in Overwatch 2, apparently, just not the whole big... Yeah, I mean... But they're they're just, like, ripping it apart and monetizing every last scrap of Overwatch 2's PvE. It's... Uh, it's not the same, man. Ah. <sighs> okay, how do I want to play this? Because I want that chest, but everyone wants that chest. <laughs> so... We're all, like... We're all trying to, like, chip away at the mobs to get there. Okay. Uh, it's crazy to think how many embarrassing moments Blizzard has had in the last decade. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild few years for Blizzard for sure. Oh, this troll's gonna go for the chest. Oh, is he gonna go for it? Oh, he's going for it. Hey, if he gets the chest, more power to him. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have pulled that mob. I lost the waiting game there. I didn't really. I I kind of figured the mobs over there would pull, but you know he got it. So, GGs. At least I got close. If somebody goes for the chest, heal them to put them in combat. Oh, that's diabolical. Okay. Well, next time I'll do that. I didn't know about that. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. Uh, Overwatch Two is not a new game. They downgraded Overwatch, which I paid for, made it free to play, and gave it skins. Yeah. I actually don't know, like, how they can justify that, because, like, I also bought Overwatch, right? And I technically, I, I'm not playing Overwatch 2, so I basically just had the game taken away from me for absolutely no fucking reason, because I have zero interest in Overwatch 2. I'm never going to play it. Um, so I effectively just lost out on a game that I used to play with my friends, which uh, really sucks. I wish they would expand a bit more with time walking and stop nerfing the fun things in it. Yeah. For sure. And the most recent level squish completely ruined my old twinks. Can't equip their legendaries anymore. Oh, really? That fucking sucks. I mean, if you have a legendary and it, you're just not able to equip it anymore due to level scaling, that, that seems like an oversight, right? They should adjust the levels. But I mean, level scaling in general is just super fucked right now, so... All we can hope is that they actually go back and do it. But I mean, as... As Goose Comics pointed out earlier in the stream, they did finally fix the uh, Missa Pandaria crafted gear item level scaling, so they're at least doing some stuff. 
steps in the right direction, but, you know, we're still a decent ways off. They've already flopped it? Yeah. Um, my man just did his best Guns N' Roses impressions. Yeah. Uh, how many more of these do I need? Plan Strider Scale Swoop Gizzard. And then I just need to kill a bunch more of those gnolls. Alright, so I need to kill plane striders and buzzards. I guess I'll just head back this way and start chipping away at the gnolls. What other quest do I have? Uh I need Prairie Wolf. Yeah, Prairie Wolf Paws and Plain Strider Talons. Alright. And I think the well over there, there's a quest that I have in that area. You missed TF2? Yeah, TF2 was fun. I played that a lot back in high school. Let me drink up. Overwatch was supposed to be the eSport from Blizzard. Yeah, they really did drop the ball with Overwatch League, too. It is kind of funny how much money they've sank into that just endless pit. And honestly, I will never forgive them for canceling Heroes of the Storm. I actually really liked Heroes of the Storm. It's a shame. I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the whole Heroes 2.0 rework was just kind of... Eh. It just it didn't feel like the same game to me after that change. And I feel like ever since they did that big overhaul, the game just kind of slowly went downhill. Like, the moment they added loot boxes, I kind of started tuning out Heroes of the Storm. And I played it very on and off. For, like, the time between Heroes 2.0 and, um, you know, it finally got cancelled. But then, it, it was just kind of never the same ever since those loot boxes got added. I, I was kind of already, like, one foot out of the door the moment that happened. Alright, I should be fine here, as long as no mobs spawn on top of me. Wait, that guy left part of the chest? Huh. It. That mob spun right over me. That is not good. I'm actually... Okay. I was, like, surprised that the mob was staying alive that long. I was like, am I in danger here? Uh, that's not good. The legendary scaling thing is a very weird specific situation. Uh, legendaries pre-Dragonflight got scaled down to item level 30, but if you got those same legendaries post-Dragonflight, they'd be item level 130. So anyone who had the older versions kind of got scammed. Um, so they went back and fixed the old ones, and then that broke it for Twinks. Ah. Okay, yeah. That definitely seems like a weird oversight. I guess if they have to fix one of the things, though, I think it's better that it's a universal item level. Even if it is unfortunate for Twinks. But, I mean, they could also just change the level requirements, though, to be more reasonable. Oh, shit. Wait, did that mob spawn right on top of me? I didn't see two gnolls stacked up. Uh, fuck it, I'm just running. I'm not risking it. What we need is a scumbag lawyer like Just Call Saul and Big Ass Class Action Lawsuit. Yeah. A Saul Goodman-esque lawsuit against Blizzard would definitely be cool. Uh, Heroes of the Storm was great, could have expanded on a bit on it a bit more, but yeah. No, Heroes as a foundation was amazing. They just, yeah, they didn't expand on it enough. But it could have been such a good game. Oh no! Oh, that's tragic. Is that recent? I don't think I saw that guy's body on my way out here, so I think he just died, like, a few minutes ago. Maybe I walked right past it and didn't notice. Poor bastard. Also, because of what they did with enchant level requirements now, you have some people that have Executioner on their Legacy rescaled Legendaries, even though the item level is too high for it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, I don't know uh, when you join the stream near. Enchants in general are completely fucked. Like, low level enchants, the item level scaling is broken for, like, most of them. Uh, I was discussing that a bit earlier. It's also really problematic, not just for, like, Twink items, but... The shoulder and leg enchants don't even work on heirlooms because of the way that the uh, heirlooms scale. You outscale the um, the item level required for the enchant before you can even put the thing on it. So unless you already have it preset on the heirloom, you're fucked. 
So yeah, leveling enchants definitely need some sort of fix. They are really inconsistent and really fucked up right now. I heard you talking about it. Yeah, it, it's it's really annoying. It was annoying even before Dragonflight. Yeah, so <laughs> in Shadowlands, yeah, to get around that, I had, I still have a level 33 hunter on, um, on I think like Malganus or something that I specifically kept around just to apply enchants to my heirlooms. And I still have it and I get, I'm keeping it there just on the off chance they fix it one day. But even on that hunter now, I can't use the enchants. So kind of sucks. Uh, and I'm just, oh, I missed some of your earlier message. I'm a time-walking weirdo that loves time-walking a bit too much. I No, I feel that. And I mean, I remember, like, obviously we did challenge modes, right? And that was one of the main appeals of challenge modes. It was having all, like, the gear. You would create, like, the perfect set, and it would scale down with you. That's what I liked about challenge modes, at least. Creating that, like, perfect set with, like, the double bonus armor gear and the double multi-strike gear and stuff like that. That was always really fun for me. So I completely understand liking time-walking stuff like that. I definitely agree that I wish they did more stuff with it. That would be really fun. I think people disliked Heroes of the Storm because gamers were like, oh, look at my play. I carried this game and HOTS didn't have so much of that. Yeah. But like, I agree that, you know, the whole people wanting to be the hero ADC or, or whatever in League of Legends and that not being a thing in, in Heroes was definitely a reason for people not liking it as much. But at the same time, I actually think, you know, there were there was more room for really good strategic play. Like, I loved um, some of the maps where I could, like, solo the objective. So, I obviously, I played tank, right? And most games, I have played tank. But I really liked playing um, tanks where I could, like, solo the big bosses on my own. And I would, like, kite them around. And while my team is, like, pushing one lane, I'm, like, sneaking up there trying to solo the boss. And then I would capture it and get, like, a big push for my team with, like, all the little... Uh, like mini boss things that spawn and that always felt really good and playing around the different mechanics of every map was always really fun i thought that just made each game feel more like unique and dynamic instead of league of legends where it's like every game is just summoner's rift over and over and over which i just i don't think is interesting i've never been a huge fan of league of legends but heroes i liked specifically because of the map mechanics and that there was actual strategy to it some of them were a little bit not awesome but the good map mechanics ended up being really, really, really fun. I don't get it. Why would they do that? Anyways, rip murky. Yeah. Let's see if I learned to hate Harlden. Just installed Hearthstone again for the first time in five years. Oh, I must have given a really good recommendation for Dollar on Heist then. Yeah, but I think you'll like it. Dollar on Heist. Now, admittedly, in fairness, fair warning, I have wanted to break my phone in half sometimes because there are certain bosses in dollar on heist that are just an absolute rng clusterfuck but i mean that is also just hearthstone in general so there's like there's a boss called desidra storm fury where her hero power is one mana summon a random totem and back when dollar on heist was current i i would imagine it was a pretty balanced boss because a lot of the most powerful totems were like the totem golem, like 3-4 or something like that. So you could get like a really good value totem, or you could just get like a generic 0-2 hero power totem. The problem is, in the years since Dollar on Heist releasing, they have released like 8-8 eight, eight totems, or like 5-5 five, five totems with really overpowered death rattles. Like all of these ridiculously overpowered totem tribe minions. So Desidra, as a boss, will either summon a 0-2 or an 8-8 eight, eight for one mana. And I have had games where she summons multiple 8-8s eight in a row, and I just fucking lose. And it is the worst feeling in the world. But sometimes she summons a bunch of 0-2s, and it's just like the freest boss ever. So there are a few bosses like that that are really, really, really annoying. But there's also a lot of bosses with really cool mechanics that I like. So, you know, every time I get to Sidrid, I just rage quit and don't play the game for a week. But then I come back later and do another run, and I'm having fun again. So it is what it is. You love that 3-4 totem? Yeah. Totem Shaman back in, um, uh, what was it? Grand Tournament, I think? That was really fun. I played a lot of Shaman back then. Uh, let's see. It was annoying. Oh, yeah, I read that already. Um, 
Your 60 to 70 guides quicker than dungeon queue, you think, for alts? Uh, depends. My 60 to 70 video guide, the latest video guide I have is still for campaign. But my 60 to 70 written guide, I do believe, yes, is faster than dungeons. Obviously, if you're queuing with like a full five-man pre-made group, you might have a faster time spam queuing dungeons. Uh, especially time walking, which I don't think is active this week, is usually faster with a full five-man pre-made. Oh, rip bozo. Um, uh, Moo Shaman. But, uh, what's it called? For, like, outside of time walking, and definitely if you're solo, I would say my written guide questing route is faster. And I will eventually make that into a video guide. Uh, that'll be, like, a week or two after 10.1.5. That's why you'll always prefer challenge modes over Mythic Plus. The playing field was much more even gear-wise. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, I, I like some things about Mythic Plus, but... Definitely prefer challenge modes. Which is why I would love to get Mop and Wad Classic back. That would be really fun. It was really fun doing time walking on your 150 base move speed blood DK, though. Damn. And yeah, that's turning, like, the most wheelchair of wheelchair specs into something that's just, like, extremely fast. That does sound fun. I'll drink up again. What do I still need? Uh... Uh, Plain Striders, Prairie Wolves, more Knolls, and then I need to go to the well and kill stuff there. And then all I need is I need more Buzzards for the Swoop Gizzard for Masrinache. Every league game is playing support and having an ADC troll you, a toxic mid laner that just AFKs and has zero map presence, or a top laner that has never even heard of a lane in their life. Yeah, I... The limited time I played League of Legends, it was not a great experience. It seems like a type of game that's really fun if you're playing with a coordinated team, and really bad if you're playing with randoms. And I don't really have too many friends who play League of Legends, so I would pretty much only ever be playing with randoms. Actually, well, my cousin played League of Legends back in the day, but he would never play with me because he was, like, much better. So he was, like, max level or whatever, and I was still at a low level or something. I don't really remember how League of Legends worked, and it has probably changed a lot since then. Uh, I've never played... I've never played Teamfight Tactics or any auto-battler. The only auto-battler I've played is Hearthstone Battlegrounds, and I did not enjoy it at all. Uh, I, I had a very miserable experience playing Hearthstone Battlegrounds, and it pissed off one of my friends because... Uh, he tried to introduce me to it, and I basically complained the entire time. I felt bad, but I was just not having fun at all. And I felt really bad because I could tell, like, he had been asking me to try it for a while, and he was really excited to, like, get me to finally play it. And then I just had such a miserable experience, like, four games in a row, and I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I'm not playing this anymore. I don't like it. Um, but, you know, at least I, I tried Battlegrounds, and... I, I just, I do not think I am an auto-battler type player. It is, it is just not my cup of tea. You notice I didn't speak about the jungler, don't even get me started. Yeah. Uh, stop playing League because I got bored after retiring. I don't know what SR is, but for ARAM is like random champions and get all challenges. Didn't play this year yet. Thank God. Good. Recovering League of Legends addicts. That's always good. Uh, I picked up, yeah, Ambercorn. So I need one more Ambercorn. And then I need the well stones. Problem with dungeons can be the other players. You had two dungeons today, wiped or ruined by tanks pulling the entire dungeon and wiping. Yeah. See, that is why I love tanking. There's nobody else to fuck up the pulls. Um, I realized we had Time Walking and Darkman Fair next week with the 50% buff. You might wait till Tuesday. Yeah, definitely. That is a, a solid time for leveling. I'm going to be doing my, my speed run in that sweet spot in between. But the thing is, if you want to really min-max it, I would say leveling with regular dungeons, not time-walking dungeons, is generally going to be better. But if you just want to, like, mindlessly spam time-walking dungeons, it's not terrible. That can work. <laughs> That's a good name. Muliet. Uh, rest in peace, Muliet. What's this? Delandos. Okay, that guy doesn't have a funny name. Muliet. That is good. Uh, in most dungeons, if you wipe even on the biggest pulls, it's generally due to the group not pulling their weight. Yeah, for sure. It's extremely easy to get super high base movement speed now because of the item level rework for time walking. Do you just, like, stack speed tertiary? 
Or do you need specific items like those, um... There's like that Legion Legendary that gives you like speed or something like that. I'd imagine it would require some sort of special stuff. Ooh, a practice sword. I can just use a scroll of fortitude on myself and... Uh, I'm gonna go back to town because my bags are like completely full. And I kind of want to start making money. I mean, hey, I'm not playing... You know what I could do? Oh, does it count? I guess it doesn't count as solo self-found if I only sell things in the auction house. Because I'm still making extra money than I would otherwise. But like, I don't know. I don't want to like, I don't want to buy things myself, but I want to sell things to other players to make money. Because like, that's the entire point, right? So. I think I'll do that. Ah, fuck it. Who cares? It's the PTR, right? ARAM is the random champion mode? Yeah. I think the few friends that I know who still play League of Legends, from what they've said, almost exclusively play the uh, random champion mode. I've heard them talking about it a few times. You purged yourself in a bad League addiction, now the only fun is once around when ARAM and Earth roll around. I've heard also things about Earth, but I have no idea what it is. I've just heard that term thrown around. The worst part of Battlegrounds is the fact that they monetize something that actually gives you an advantage. Yeah, I heard about that. A bunch of people in my guilds really are into Battlegrounds, and when that change happened, they were all talking about it, and basically talking about how, like, it mathematically over a long period of time does give you an advantage. Really, really shitty that Blizzard did that. Especially because I'm pretty sure they said that it was going to be free, and then they just went back on their word, because it's Blizzard. So, yeah. That, that definitely really sucks. Oh, there's a crate of food. Oh, there's multiple crates of food. Oh, free money. What is this? Shiny red apple? Okay, well, that's garbage. Um, Doesn't time walking give like 1.6 times XP for completion? So... Time walking per dungeon gives more experience. That's why, like I said, if you want to just mindlessly spam something, time walking is the way to go. The reason why you want to do uh, Dragonflight st uh, stuff is the quests. Because the experience that you gain by doing a Dragonflight dungeon plus the quest completion is more than a time walking dungeon. Significantly more, by like a decent amount. Mm. So if you really want to min-max, you just want to do quests, and then in between you want to do... Uh, regular Dragonflight dungeons and grab the quests for them. And that's like a nice bonus. Uh, I Generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend just like, if you're already questing, just keep doing questing. Time walking is like only really good if you just want to spam it. But um, like a mix of regular dungeons and um, and traditional questing is like pretty solid. Um... there anything oh i should filter out unavailable healing wave rank two does it auto upgrade it does not auto upgrade uh actually i probably should have oh it does auto upgrade okay i don't know why the tooltip said rank one when i hovered over it oh there's another quest all right eight trophy swoop quills sure uh let's see it's PTR, nobody's going to buy anything on PTR. I mean, hey, why not, right? You know, if you have the money, right? And, like, honestly, I would probably buy something. Fuck it. You know, if I see somebody selling, like, you know, a really good shield, like a green shield for, like, one silver, I'd buy it for one silver. Why not? You know? Obviously, I don't think somebody's going to buy the Practice Sword, but if anything, it's more worth it to buy things in Hardcore than in other game modes, even if it is the PTR. I mean, I don't know about other people, but, like, I I'm just playing this for the sake of playing it. Like, I'm not testing shit right now. Like, I have nothing to test for Classic Hardcore. I don't care if it's the PTR or live servers. To me, the experience is the same. I'm just playing it for the sake of it. So, um, I'm just treating this like I'm actually playing the game normally and obviously i'll have to redo it later on whenever classic hardcore comes out but who cares i mean the entire point of classic in general is like the um the journey 
rather than the destination, right? So just leveling up characters, if I have to do it again, that's the appeal of Classic in the first place. So, yeah. Um, where, where did I leave off? A lot of people talking about uh, ARAM and Earth. Uh, Earth is like zero cooldowns. Ah, so just like really overpowered, just like doing a lot of uh, crazy shit. I see. Uh, a lot of move speed increase items now give tertiary speed stat. You can gear a level 61 druid using Shadowlands crafted gear with move speed. Yeah, true. I mean, at level 61, obviously, you have the um, Shadowlands crafted gear. You can use that like tertiary ingredient from uh, Zareth Mortis that guarantees speed and increased mount speed in Shadowlands. So definitely at level 61, I know it's very, very, very easy to make a speed set. I'm just not sure about below that. Ultra rapid fire, super reduced cooldowns, and stats have multipliers like attack speed. Ah, I see. What do I still need? Knolls. Oh, this is, um, that's vultures, right? Trophy swoop. Trophy swoop quill. Ugh. And then I need one more amber corn. Yeah, so I need swoops. I need knolls. There's one amber corn over here, and then I need to kill the guys by the well to get the other stone. Man, it's close to eight hours. I forgot how long it takes to get to level 10 in Classic. It, it is actually quite a long process, huh? You didn't even know there were quests for Dragonflight Dungeons? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Some of them are easy to get, but a lot of them are, like, locked behind certain quest chains. So one of the best parts about the 10.1.5 changes is that you get the quests automatically. You don't need to unlock it. So that's actually going to make uh, Dragonflight Dungeons even better, because now, instead of only being able to get, like, four or five of the quests, you'll be able to get all of them automatically. Which is really nice, because one of the problems with Dragonflight Dungeons right now is you basically need to constantly queue for them. And if you get the one that you have a quest for, awesome. But if you get the one that you don't have a quest for, you basically just need to leave the group, because it's a time loss. And, uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. So now you don't need to worry about potentially queuing into a dungeon that you can't get the quest for and losing time. Um, you'll always get the quest. Now, the only speedrun thing is if you get a duplicate dungeon, then it kind of fucks you over. But, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, that makes sense. If you're not a tanker healer, maybe even just healer, you probably shouldn't even be too invested in doing dungeons. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I would say it's only worth it to spam dungeons as a tanker or healer. But even as a DPS, I think um, doing Dragonflight dungeons as a DPS is probably still worth your time. Just because the entire idea is that you're doing it in between quests regardless, right? So you have, um, like, you, you have your regular questing, you queue for the dungeon, and then whenever the queue pops, you're good to go. So the only difference is that as a tank sometimes, I will just stop and specifically not queue for dungeons for a little while and wait until I have, like, good downtime to queue for it. Uh, so I actually think it's perfectly fine to do them as a DPS just because you're supposed to be weaving it with quests. Oh, and you haven't said that, unless you're weaving questing. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, DPS dungeon leveling doesn't really work as good solo leveling. Um... Because there's so much DPS, yeah. I mean, the queues will take a while. Like, obviously, it's still going to be more efficient to do it as a tank, right? Because you still have more control over when you get a queue pop. But it's not so bad as a DPS because you want to have time in between regardless. It's worse for 10 to 25, specifically because the way that I do my route is you do spam dungeons. You spam dungeons... Uh, pretty much non-stop all the way up to 25, and then you do quests. They're not, like, interspersed in between. Can I buff these guys? No, I cannot buff them with Rockbiter Weapon. I tried. I tried to give him Rockbiter Weapon, but it doesn't work. Alas. Wonder how long the hardcore duel to the death will last? Like, how long it'll last, in, like, as a feature? I'm pretty sure they're keeping it, right? The only problem I have with Duel to the Death is, like, uh, or the only problem I can foresee with it is the thing that people have brought up with, like, cheesing it. But once again, as I said earlier, who gives a shit, you know? If somebody wants to cheese Duel to the Death, let them cheese Duel to the Death. It doesn't really matter. Um, and it, you're not, obviously, you're not forced to engage with it. There are regular duels, for the record. 
Um, so you don't need to do Duel to the Death in a classic hardcore. You do have the option to just duel normally. So, if you don't want to do it, you absolutely have no obligation to. Alright. I want that chest. <laughs> Round two. It looks like these two guys are leveling together. Minute... <laughs> Minute made. Alright. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to let that warrior take care of it. Resisted? Fuck. Oh, fuck. Shit, the mob is getting healed by the other one. Okay, this is sketchy. I don't like this. I do not like this at all. Okay, that guy's out of mana. So if I get into melee, I should be able to easily kill this. Sorry, it's going to take me a second to catch up on chat, because now I'm like, I'm in actual danger right now. If I'm not careful, I can very easily overpull and get myself killed here. Oh, nice. The warrior got that. See, now I'm... I, I don't want to make the same mistake as before. If I attack that last knoll guarding the chest, I just clear the path for these two guys to get it. Hmm. I already had one chest sniped out from under me. Oh, fuck. Okay, DPS race. If that warrior wants to, he can steal the chest right now. But I'm at least going to make it fair. If I can kill the Pale Mane Poacher before those guys can kill their one mob, you know what? Fair game. I win the chest. Come on. Yes! Alright, I didn't even cheat for that one. I won that chest fair and square. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. I kind of want to get out of here. I, I do not like being surrounded on all sides. This is, like, mega sketch. Uh, I'll help this warrior out. All right. Uh, I need more water. Uh, I don't want to be stuck out here with zero water. Uh, that's an upgrade, though. So I actually I got an upgrade from the chest. Nice. I can go back and restock. Do I need? I think I already have all the coyotes that I need. But I will. I'll kill this one just to be safe. Oh, I have 69 viewers right now? Oh, that's the perfect viewing number. Alright, nobody join. Or nobody leave. Perfect stream view count. Uh, I mean, best to just keep the mindset on questing and hope the queue pops now and then. God damn it, we went up to 71 viewers. The perfect view count has been ruined. Uh, I wanted to do a speed set, but I searched about it and gave up on the Wowhead article. Yeah, I, there's a few, I think, Wowhead guides on speed sets. Playable mole people when? I mean, hey, you never know. You could get a Niffin allied race, right? Uh, hello, Kerbal Citizen. Good to see you. Only thing I and WoW is missing from... Or the only thing I'm missing from vanilla is the feeling of playing in a huge world. Never liked the concept of new four zones and a brand new quest hub every expansion. Yeah, the thing that I think WoW still does poorly compared to every other expansion is they still don't know how to utilize their in-game world and like the existing zones i think guild wars 2 is the best example of a game that really knows how to utilize its older content guild wars 2 even the older expansions all of that stuff remains relevant and i mean obviously it's because guild wars 2 is horizontal progression right but you know that's a huge strength of that game all of its content is relevant and nothing gets old so that's, that's, like, really, really, really good. And World of Warcraft should start doing that more often. Uh, I think I want to hold on to this. Might as well. Uh, and I should learn cooking so I can start actually making some of these. There's the cook. Student has a good speed gear guide. Cool. Uh, oh, there's another food crate. These things keep popping up. 
Except when you're missing only one dungeon quest and the queues don't give you that dungeon, yeah. Well, I mean, it's still going to be somewhat RNG. Like, it doesn't give you perfect RNG for sure, but it's going to be way better than it was before. All right, cooking. Basic campfire requires, yeah, flint and tinder and simple wood. All right, charred wolf meat. What does my current food give? Oh, it's exactly the same as tough hunk of bread. And just leave a duplicate dungeon and take the L and desert, deserted diva words. Yeah, uh, that's usually what I do. Whenever I get a duplicate dungeon, I just leave. But still, right, like that sets you back 30 minutes because um, generally speaking, like my world record for uh, 60 to 70 is three hours, right? So at most, you get to eat like three deserter debuffs. Uh, Honestly, within the span of like a really fast run, two deserter debuffs, and then you're kind of locked out because you know you have to really be efficient with your time. So the deserter debuff can still really suck. Uh, one second, I got a oh near messaged. Uh, uh, near. I will. I will read that after the fact. Just um, I'll remember to check after the stream. Uh, there are regular duels in some places you can force somebody to die yeah I remember back in like early early classic when or not like classic re-release but like vanilla back when I had no idea what was going on I dueled somebody and in the middle of the duel they dropped a campfire at my feet and of course I was young I had no idea what was going on and then when the duel ended and I went or reached one health I took damage from the campfire and it killed me and I remember being so confused as to how somebody managed to actually kill me in a duel. And, uh, yeah. There are definitely, like, little tricks you can do to get around it. Alright, level 8. Nice. Winterhoof Cleansing Totem. Put it at, I guess that's the water well from... Yeah, that's the Winterhoof water well. Okay. Careful with taking chests. You don't want to start beef with the Taran. Oh my god. Alright. Ah, that was terrible. <laughs> what is what is this for? Water of the Sears. Oh God! Consume the water of the Sears in front of the tribal fire of Blood Oof. Village. Where's the tribal fire? Um, I'll have to figure that one out. Do emotes delete the entire message? Um, I have no idea. I also don't really know much about YouTube emotes. I haven't really messed around with them much. Wow, ice cold milk is so fucking expensive. Jesus. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with refreshing spring water for now. Uh, is there another barrel up here? I want to try to get more free water. Doesn't look like there are any. Oh, shit. Got to be careful about stepping into fires. I don't want to die like that. That has got to be the most embarrassing way to die. Stepping into like a campfire or something. Um, Next WoW expansion is Void Lord and will apparently revamp the old world. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I do think we'll probably get Void Lords or something. But I really doubt Blizzard does another, um, another like world revamp. I've been saying for a while that every race get a racial that ports you to your race's main city. Add some interesting incentives like discounts for your race. That would be cool. Yeah. Void expansion is being rumored. Yeah. Student is a gold farmer. Yeah. I've yeah I've seen some of Student's gold videos. I know he makes like other stuff. So I, I've heard about him before. Oh, this is the tribal fire. Okay, so I have to induce a vision. Don't get you wrong, I love quality of life. I always found it annoying, for example, how you were always demanded to have a Brutosaur through BFA and Shadow if you wanted the AH, but I realize now adding it to Val really killed all reasons to be an org. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you also had engineering, right? So, like, I, I really don't know a single person who wasn't um, engineering in, uh, 
in Shadowlands just because it let you get easy access to the auction house. I guess if you already had a Brutosaur, you probably didn't need to be. But, you know, engineering is always just a really nice profession to have. If we start killing Void Lords, it's Titan plus threat all over again. I mean, I don't know. I Personally, I don't really care what the story is, who the big bads are. As long as we have some good boss fights, that's all I care about. So as long as the Void Lord boss fights are fun, hey, I'll be happy. What's this person's name? Toressa. That's a that's a nice Taran name. It's not Muliet, but it's uh it's still good. Don't trust any sources that say the next expansion is going to be XX theme. Yeah, like I always say the Void Lord expansion. Whenever I'm talking about the next expansion, I'll always say Void Lord. Even in Shadowlands, I'm pretty sure I would say, oh yeah, whenever the Void Lord expansion comes out, when referring to what ended up being Dragonflight, right? But I haven't seen any actual confirmed things that it's going to be a Void Lord expansion. It's just pure speculation, right? Uh, you can do that campfire thing in retail today. I believe you can, yeah, create a campfire in retail. It's just now it doesn't um, doesn't use any reagents, but Classic does. So, What do I think is the slowest class to speedrun with? Probably Rogue. I would say, at this point, I used to say it was... Oh, <laughs> that guy spawned right on top of me. Scared the shit out of me. But I kind of need to still follow this mob. I don't want to lose it. Alright. I can still see it. I should be able to catch up. Um, but yeah, I used to say that it's either Rogue or Shadow Priest, but now that I finally tested Shadow Priest, it's definitely Rogue. Shadow Priest is actually, like, pretty fast now. <gasps> Yo! Masrinache? Oh no! Somebody else found it. Alright, well, I hope they managed to get it. But they're just running away from it. What are they doing? Are they trying... Oh, they're trying to kite it to Thunder Bluff? Hold on. I want to watch them fight this. Uh, I hope I can repeat this vision quest later. Yeah, they should be able to get this. If they just spam Entangling Roots, they, they got this. Strength and honor. You got this, buddy. I believe in you. Oh, yeah, it puts a poison on you. Yeah, he should. Yeah, oh, nice Tarn Racial. Clean. Also, he has a good name, Moo Moo. Yeah. Nice. Alright, let me see if I can catch up with that, uh, that stupid... Ghost wolf thingy. S Priest is pretty damn good, even in 10.1. Yeah. No, uh, Priest is definitely very, very, very good. I mean, Priest isn't changing at all in 10.1.5, right? I just did my testing on uh, the 10.1.5 uh, PTR because I have words. I wanted to test the general leveling changes, but the rest is the same. Um, all right, now I'm starting to get to areas with mobs that are level nine, so I'm worried. I want to say my memory of this is that the wolf takes me into that cave up there, so I'm just going to head over there, and hopefully that's where I'm supposed to be going. How long will it take to reach level 30? A long fucking time. <laughs> a very, very long time. Uh, yeah, it is, it is a process. So I, I said before, the stream will end when I hit level 10. And at this rate, I may end it a little bit before then, because, not gonna lie, I'm starting to get a little tired. But I'll at least continue trying to uh, to keep going. Choose my reward. Um, I'll choose the boots. I should probably put some stuff in my bank, though. So I'll head up to Thunder Bluff. I need to be careful, though, because... 
like, now I'm starting to think of all of, like, the dumb ways that I could die. And I don't want there to be, like, a clip of me falling off, like, the Thunder Bluff elevator and dying that way. Like, that would be super embarrassing. So now I'm, I'm like, mentally preparing myself. Oh, shit. Let me... Also would be good if I'm not walking through hostile mobs while zoned out. Um, but yeah, I'm, like, trying to mentally think of, like, okay... What are all of the ways that I could potentially catastrophically fuck up, and how do I avoid that so I don't end up in, like, an Asmongold highlight reel or something like that? So many die to elevators? Really? Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I just avoid Thunder Bluff. I don't know. I I've gotten, like, pretty good at, at the elevator timing over the years, but elevators are, are a fucking menace, man. I was so ready for the clip to be that. <laughs> I don't want a clip of me dying in a dumb way and then walking through mobs. Oh, look at that guy. Yeah. No, I, I am like, I am trying to read chat and, you know, stay interactive, but I am like on super high alert right now. I, I am definitely trying. I'm not like, you know, I, I'm not just kind of zoning out and walking through. I, I don't want to fuck up. Especially I made it this far. You know, I, I want to stay alive. And I've heard, like, level 14 is apparently where most people die, so I want to get past that on my first run, just to say that I did. Okay. Alright. No looking at chat. I carefully walk forward. I avoid the ledges. Alright, we're good. I, I was, like, reading chat while I went up the elevator, and then I kind of, like, told myself, wait, no, 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 no. I need to actually be focused, because if I fuck up here... <laughs> Alright. That's like some early barons, so that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and before someone makes a hardcore wow dumb ways to die. That would be awesome, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect for it. Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna throw all this stuff in my bags. Or my bank. Somebody's at level 12 already? That guy's at level 14. All right. Garrosh did nothing wrong. Well met. Um, I'll, I'll store all this stuff away in my bank. I will need it later. Maybe. Ancestors watch over you. Chatter like the voices in your head. Ignore us when you need to. Yeah, for sure. What is this? How may I aid you? When you is this like the Encourage War Effort stuff? Walk. I'm guessing. Hear me out. Wad best expansion with the best content. Evidence Swap Blaster. True. Oh man, I, I troll so many people in my guild with Swap Blaster. My raid leader is always getting mad at me for it. Uh, I love Swap Blaster. Rogue, for example. Get them, low as, get them as low as you can. Kidney, Fireplace, Sinister, and they should die. Jesus. Tarin selling ice cold milk. <laughs> yeah. Rip Aspect of the Fox. Yeah, man. I can't wait for Cataclassic so we finally get Aspect of the Fox back. That's gonna be sick. Wasn't Shadowlands the Void expansion? Nah, because, like, Void is a distinct thing. It's not the same as Death. What's on the Auction House? Oh, man. This guy already got a blue? Oh, there's people at level 22. Shit. Yeah. People are already selling level 20 greens and stuff. Uh, man, the fact that the most expensive item in the auction house is 5 gold. Ho oh, oh. ho. Uh, brings me back. Where is Nightwatch sword, Short Sword from? Is that like a world drop or does that drop off like a dungeon or a rare or something? I recognize the item. I don't remember where it's from though. Hardcore Mo WoW makes the fear of heights real. Yeah. Man, if only I could be a panda in Hardcore Classic. That would be the dream. What brings you here? Uh, oh. I show you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to check Thunder Bluff. Maybe there's quests here. I didn't even consider that. It's classic, so, you know, there's probably a lot of random shit around. The dollar on heist thing is from Rise of Shadows. Completely forgot that it was called that. You've done this before, even halfway through a run. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it, uh, it came out with Rise of Shadows and then Tombs of Terror was, what was, the, Saviors of Old Doom was the name of the expansion where they released Tombs of Terrors. Both of them are pretty good. 
your favorite swap blaster trick in Vizpot, run under the boss and then swap somebody into it. Or uh, a little bit easier version of that that I've done a lot of times, after the boss is reset, you stand right where the boss is about to respawn and then swap blaster someone into it. Much easier to pull off and uh, I've gotten a lot of people either killed or, you know, I've gotten them to start combat and then they're all pissed off and stuff. So yeah, that, that is a classic one. It's a world drop, mostly from mobs and the barons, I see. Meanwhile, in retail, a gray item pants is worth 20,000 gold, yeah. I wish this was a joke, but I saw it today. I mean, I believe that. If it's a rare uh, gray item transmog, I could definitely see it going for 20,000 gold. There's a lot of really expensive gray item transmogs. Because think of it this way, so many gray items, and there's also, this is the case for white items as well, there's a lot of really obscure white items that have unique appearances that have never, or that were like from original classic. And they haven't existed in the game since classic, but obviously nobody's going to hold on to some generic white item drop off a mob in Dunmoreau. So the odds of somebody still holding on to one of those unobtainable rare, like white or gray items these days is just astronomical. Even when Transmon came out, a lot of people probably cleared their bank and saw a bunch of those items and were like, yeah, fuck it, you know, it's not transmogable, so I'll sell it. So yeah, I can absolutely believe that it goes for 10,000. You remember buying your glorious leg plates and mop for 54k? Yeah. Oh, that's another thing that I've been stocking up on. All of the slut mugs, in addition to the rare unobtainable cataclysm stuff, anytime I see a glorious lofty... Uh, let me actually, I, I can open my list. Classic world drop items and yeah, my google doc what where's my list yeah so i have a list of any glorious items vanguard items lofty items jade items salt stone tyrant and emerald anything in those categories and there's probably a few slot mog sets that i'm forgetting that i'll add to it later on but those are the big ones those are like the really really big sellers when transmog comes out so yeah, anytime I find one of those for cheap, I snipe it off the age. It's not quite as easy to pull off because everyone's more aware when the boss has just been reset. True. Yeah, especially in my guild, we all know that somebody's going to attempt it every single time. See, the real danger with doing that, though, is it pisses off the raid leader, at least in my guild. Like, half the time, I know that I could kill somebody with a swap blaster, but it's like, I have to weigh the risk of, it's funny... But also, I get yelled at. Mm, is it worth it? And depending on the day, I, I will sometimes opt to just not do it and not take that risk. You paid for your full Glorious and full Vanguard? Yeah, nice. I'd imagine when Transmog first came out, that stuff probably cost a fortune. What do I need to get? I need... um. Trophy swoops. So I think I can go kill swoops out here. Yeah, I'm going to finish my quests down south before I worry about doing any other ones. You're very 50-50 on transmogging as a whole. What do you mean like 50-50 on transmogging? Uh, but... Except the chest, when you were putting the mog together in mop, you were lucky enough to get a glorious chest. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's like a huge drop then. Oh, love such a... Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good addition to the game. I just wish that some of the rare transmogs, I wish they would now add to the game. You know, we've had enough years of there being like really expensive, hard to obtain transmog items that are like nearly impossible to get. You know, it would be nice if they could actually make some of those easier to acquire. Obviously, player expression is awesome, but I also miss running in BG. Yeah, oh, uh, that's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I definitely am more in support of player expression in that regard compared to, like, the classic side of things. But I, I understand the, you know argument that you know it's good to see exactly what somebody has and you can already if you have good game knowledge know what they're wearing or it's just a cool thing to show off in major cities that's fair <laughs> it 
<laughs> yeah. Um, near. I remember when I saw the uh, the Wowhead post about them re-adding chromatic sword to the loot table, and I immediately thought back to what, what did you pay for it? Five million gold for your chromatic sword? Oh man. <laughs> I feel bad for you, but oh, that is that is brutal. Oh, three million gold. All right, close enough. Yeah. I mean, hey, it, it was probably a smart decision at the time. Odds are they weren't going to re-add it. They haven't re-added a lot of other stuff. But I guess there was just enough demand for Chromatic Sword that they did bring it back. They've done that to a lot of items that I have. Tens of million lost to it. Sheesh. Yeah, I I don't feel like investing in Rare trans Transmog anymore because of that. Like, at this point... If there's a transmog item that I actually need, I'm just going to wait for it to eventually be more accessible. Infinite transmog features, yet we can't get a single one that makes Mechanome look decent. <laughs> well, Mechanome is just kind of flawed from the start, so... Yeah, that is that is an unfortunate problem. I don't really think you can solve Mechanome transmog looks. They spit in my face too many times. Yeah, I feel that. Never forget when the price of all TCG items just dipped massively at the first announcement of TCG items being added. Yeah, it's, um... Oh, a Gnome Yada transmog? Oh, that sounds sick. Yeah, the the trading card game stuff is... I don't know. I, I've had a lot of discussions with my friends about, you know, the pros and cons of that. I think overall it's healthy for the game, but... I don't know. It does really suck because... I think it's it's a little bit different with the trading card game items. The problem that I have with that a little bit more is that they were initially promised as exclusive things. So it is it is a little bit shitty to basically say that they will never be obtainable in the game through other sources. And I get that like their contract expired with that company, uh, the trading card one. So I get that they are legally allowed to go back on that. But when a lot of people literally spent real money on getting these trading card packs because it was said that that would be the only way to get them, and now they're going back on that, that feels shitty. Like, an in-game item, you could argue, oh, it's whatever, it just gives more people access to it, it doesn't devalue it. But in the case of the trading card stuff, it's a little bit finicky just because it is like a collector's item, and like, the argument that I use when saying why I think there's a merit to it being kind of a shitty move is like, we do put real life value on collectors items like baseball cards well it's not something that i personally collect it is a big thing that a lot of people collect baseball cards so you know obviously there's the whole thing of you know there's like you can reprint a baseball card but collectors have like ways to verify if it's like an original or something like that you don't have that same integrity in wow which means that Blizzard can do this, and it ends up devaluing the other collector's items, which, I don't know. A lot of people, like, the, the common response that my friends would give whenever I would bring up that point, and, and mind you, I'm purely arguing from, like, a devil's advocate type of, like, standpoint. I don't really care either way. Uh, but most of my friends would respond to that with, like, you know, rip bozo, don't buy trading card stuff. But I don't know if we should necessarily be celebrating that other people lost money on... You know, investing in something that then Blizzard took away. At the very least, you know, I, like, the the only argument that I'm okay with is, you know, regardless of anything else, uh, people saying that they're happy that it is accessible to more players. And that's something I can agree with. You know, I'm just glad that people have access to mounts or transmog and stuff that they didn't have otherwise. But I've seen a lot of people coupling that with like a, yeah, fuck you, person who collected trading card stuff. You lost all your money. And I think that's just a shitty thing to do, right? I think you can still empathize with somebody who did expect this to be an actual like collectible thing and got fucked over. Because I don't have any trading cards or the tr loot cards anymore. But like back when I was in... Uh, when I was in, like, middle school, I got a, a model Drake out of one of my World of Warcraft trading card packs. And, like, I wasn't a collector, I was just some kid in middle school who pulled a, a really rare card. And I sold that for, like, I think it was, like, 75,000 gold at the time, which, to me, was, like, more gold than I had ever even seen. So, to middle school me, that was, like, the coolest thing ever. Uh, being able to, like, sell that for a ton of money. So, imagine if, like, 
I had gotten that really rare card, and then like a day later, Blizzard had basically said, fuck you, it's everyone can get it now, and suddenly my really expensive loot card was worth nothing, I would have felt really upset. And uh, so I, I can at least understand why people would be upset about that and empathize with it. Uh, what are my quests? Do I still need any of the gnolls? I need tanners and skinners. Which one are the tanners? These guys, okay. With the shaman, get the blue dragon scale set? Yeah, that's definitely a good one to collect. Evokers have some transmog problems, but I guess they're dragons, so not much can be done about it. I actually really like my evoker transmog. My evoker transmog is based off a Warhammer character, and it is actually, like, in my opinion, perfect. It looks so good. It's actually one of my favorite transmogs, even though I don't play my evoker a lot. Um, they should have made new HD models and given those out instead. I agree. Yeah, I think that would have been better. That would have been the perfect solution. The only problem, though, is like, and, and this is something that my friends were saying, is like, well, a lot of people like to fill their collection. And it's, I don't know, I've never been a, a collector in the sense that I like collecting things that look cool. If I think a mount looks cool, I will go and get that mount. If I think a transmog item looks cool, I will go and get that transmog. I have never been someone who likes to just collect items to see my collection get bigger and just be like, aha, I have so much money and so many rare things. Aren't you jealous of all of my rare things? Like that, that has never been an appeal to me. So when people tell me that they're glad they got the mount because it is another thing that they will have, even though they will never use it, it's like, okay, but like, wouldn't you have rather have had like a new cooler mount? Instead of just some generic old mount that just fills a spot in your collection. I would rather have something that I actually wanted to ride. Rather than just a generic plus one on my like character page. That you know means nothing to me in terms of how I actually play. But you know to each their own I suppose. Um, imagine if you bought stocks in a company and suddenly those stocks are being given away for watching a streamer for three hours. Yeah, exactly. I think, like, yeah, it it's... It definitely is a little bit tricky. But, yeah. I slightly disagree with the crypto comparison just because crypto is inherently a volatile investment, but that's, like, a little bit not the point. So I, I get what you're saying. Um... I'm not against people getting cool rare things. I'm just not okay with past items being devalued. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. I like how they did the new mage towers and didn't bring back the old weapons. Yeah, the mage towers are a great example of how to handle it. You know, give people new cool transmog sets to farm, uh, but keep the original things rare. I like that. People are thinking more and more that they deserve to be able to get everything. Yeah. There definitely is a lot of entitlement with collectors of like, I should just be able to get every single item in, item in the game. And I think you have to look at it like a lot of the people who collected all of those things actually put in a lot of work to earn that stuff. And then, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, define earn it. So a lot of people will say that, you know, the, tra the trading card game mounts don't count because nobody really earned it. All you did was pay money. And I don't, it still feels bad, right? You know, I would imagine it would feel bad if you, uh, oh, is this an upgrade? Yeah, that's an upgrade. Nice. Um, I would imagine it would still feel bad if you, like, bought packs and earned them out yourself, or I don't know. Like, I I can understand saying that it's dumb that people would pay, like, 15 million gold for just a plus one to their collection, but, yeah. I think it, it would feel worse if, like, for instance, with the Feldrake, people who always really wanted the Feldrake and then finally decided to pay 15 million gold to finally get it so they could actually use it, and then it gets given away for free, that would feel bad. So, I, I can completely understand that. Uh, mm. What are we watching? I am playing classic hardcore. And I'm trying to focus, because I want that chest. I'm trying to be careful. I, I want to read chat, but I also don't want to, like, zone out, look at chat, and then accidentally pull, like, five mobs and die. So... You did the new Mage Tower and Vengeance Demon Hunter and never got the Mog set? 
Wait, why didn't you get it? Was it like bugged or something? Oh shit. Okay. I'm fine, I should be fine. As long as no mobs spawn directly on top of me, but I have I have enough room here. As long as I stay close to this area. I'm just going to auto this guy down. Because I want to have my mana back. Okay. Oh, nice. I got a second Malachite. All right. The chest is open. Yeah, that's weird that it didn't give it to you the first time, then. Why collect mounts you will never use or show off? Like, you have a new mount? Exactly, yeah. I only actually try to collect mounts that... I really want to use. Like, the only mount that I've ever really farmed, and I still haven't gotten it, but now they did buff the drop rate, so I might try again. Oh. I was expecting to have to clear space in my bags, but I got it. Nice. Um, but yeah, Son of Galleon. I always really wanted to use Son of Galleon on my Pandaren Warrior, and I tried to farm it for a while, and then I gave up. But one of these days, I'll probably go around and get it, now that they made the drop rate lower. Or made the drop rate higher, rather. Uh, you sent several tickets and they did nothing about it? Yeah, that's... Unfortunately, customer support, that is, like, par for the course with the experience most people get. As sad as it is to say. I feel similar about all removed items, including TCG, but feel... But I feel strongly about items you had to put in-game effort into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even, like, items that drop off rares. I don't know. It's, uh... Still, it was still harder to farm a lot of those items back in the day than it is now. Uh... You thought this was a video? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it is a video. It's just, it's a live video. A live streamed one. So, kind of. Uh, how? I, I don't really want to go through there. I'm going to go out back this way. I'm putting myself in a really sketchy situation, because I could end up accidentally chain pulling a bunch of mobs, but I think I should be fine. Uh, you did the Dwarf Heritage quest to completion and never got the set. That's weird. I did that recently, and it worked fine. Uh, but, you know, yeah. This game is buggy. Yeah, these, why are 10 Pale Main tan Tanners required for this quest? Fucking hell. Um, I'm just going to go out here, and then wrap around. I don't really want to take any risks here. The reason you collect things is never uh, you never use is because you might want to use them in the future. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, if I... So, yeah, th that's a fair point. If you know something's going to go away, I understand that. Like, trying to farm something before it's removed forever in case you want to use it in the future, that I completely understand. What I don't understand is people trying to collect things that have already been removed that they will never use just because it boosts their collection. Right? That's what I don't understand. It's like, it's the same reason why right now I'm, re I'm collecting all of, like, the removed stuff in Cataclysm. Or, I probably will never use 90% of it. But on the off chance that, like, come Cataclassic, I want to make a really cool transmog set, and one of the items was from, like, OG Zulgrub and it's gone now, I want to make sure that I at least have all of it safe somewhere. But, for instance, if I know I'm not going to use an item in uh, for transmog, I'm never going to go out of my way to pay, like, 100,000 gold for it, just in case. I think that's the key difference. But some people would, just to, like, increase their collection. The I might want it in the future is the entire reason I try to collect so many things. Yeah. For sure. With all the characters you have level up, you should leave them at the boss spawn point to farm Son of Galleon. Yeah, but like... Uh, it, it It's definitely... I could farm them out if I wanted to. Like, I do have a ton of characters that I could use. It's just the effort. <laughs> um, It's not that I can't do it. It's just that right now, I, I don't feel like doing that. 
it just it would take too much time to just swap to every single one of them wait like five minutes to do it one of these days though when i have a bit more free time i'll try that all right that was a little bit ballsy um but i really just want to get this quest over with so i need one more so now i'm gonna Need to be careful, because I don't want to pull any coyotes. We're good. How much time do you think it takes to get one level in the 50 to 60 range? Oh, like, hours. Hours, hours. I mean, I've played, cat uh, like, Classic Era before. It took me, like... Surprisingly, if memory serves, it actually didn't take very long to get 58 to 60. The last few levels I did in the Plague Lands, and they were very, very, very fast. Uh, like, an hour per level, I think. Um, but Plague Lands questing is, like, extremely fast. I think I might have had, like, an hour and a half or, or something. The slowest levels to me were actually 40... It was, like, 45 to 55. Uh, that's when leveling really slowed down. But also, it's because quests at the higher levels tend to, like, kind of be spread out much more. So I remember I kind of ran out of quests at a certain point, and I could have, like, grinded quests that were, like, a little bit lower level, but what I instead decided to do back in, like, original classic launch is I grinded Furbolgs in Winter Spring for, like, the entire day. So I spent, like, an entire day, I think, getting from, like, 50 to 51. It must have been, like, eight hours for one level. But I did it entirely by just killing mobs. And I made a shit ton of gold, because I... There was, like, nobody else at that level. I mean, there, there were people at that level, but I was probably one of, like, the first... I was definitely, like, one of the first 100 people to hit max level on my server, which was Grobulus. Um, and I was up there, right, in terms of, like, the, the faster levelers. So, when I was farming mobs in Winter Spring, it was a dead zone. Nobody had gotten there, or at least the other people that were at that level were not present. So, I had uncontested chest and rare spawns. It was glorious i farmed so many like greens and blues and shit during that like day of just grinding shit oh it was amazing that was actually some of the most fun i had in wow classic while leveling just grinding furbolgs for eight hours listening to music and just going away like as warrior i like i had it down to a science i would just charge in kill a mob then uh whatchamacallit intercept to the next mob kill that one and i was just i was a fucking mob grinding machine for that entire level. It was really fun. You know, people say that Warrior is l slow for leveling in Classic, but, like, if you know what you're doing, you can kill things at a pretty quick pace. Um, a big issue with people's entitlement to everything is, uh... I, I missed a lot of messages, actually. Uh, a big issue with people's entitlement to everything is that they can't value the time other people put into getting things. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You're farming old transmog just in the slim case. Blizzard lied to everyone and lets classic characters transfer to retail. Yeah. I mean, low odds. Low odds, but... You know, I respect the dedication. Hey, if it does pan out, you can, uh... Be one of, like, the biggest collectors, then. Doing Dollar on Heist and getting Discover a Random Spell from another class with Death Knight being a thing now is kind of OP. Yeah! I've had some runs recently where I just get, like, a random, really strong Death Knight card, and it's really nice. That's one of the fun things about Dollar Run Heist that makes it fun. Like, the new expansions still add to it because you can still discover new stuff, specifically from, like, random generation, but also from the, uh, from the, the tavern. So, for instance, when the Castle Nathria expansion came out, and... Uh, Sire Denathrius got added. Sire Denathrius was, like, a really powerful 10-mana legendary, and I had... I think it was, like, a druid run where I got Sire Denathrius out of the tavern, and I built an entire deck around him, and it just carried so many games. And that's a card that's not even present in Dollar Run Heist, like, at least when it came out. So, that was, like, a fun, unique run. I've never gotten that build since, but it was a pretty cool, unique experience. Uh, that's definitely the one place... Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, 
Oh man, these mobs kind of fuck. Okay, I should be fine. Worst case scenario, I do have two healing potions. I'm just gonna scan. There's no other mobs nearby, so I should be safe. See, that was almost like a I'm reading chat, I fucked up type moment. Because I was, um... We're good, we're good. Inventory's full, whatever. I was reading chat and I didn't notice the swoop approaching. That's definitely the one place Twitch and, uh... Can't even hold a candle to YouTube as past broadcasts. Yeah, for sure. Because your um your old streams automatically become videos uh, the moment you're done with them. That is definitely a really, really nice part of uh, YouTube. I think also, uh, just saying now, I will probably end up stopping this at level 9. Because, well, I haven't died. And hopefully I don't jinx myself and die very shortly. Uh, and it we're close to 9 hours. And I, I don't want to risk it because the problem is I whenever a stream hits the nine hour mark, I want to stop it because if you don't know, uh, you cannot go past 10 hours on YouTube. It will delete the VOD. And obviously, I don't want the VOD to be deleted. So I am going to uh, to stop around the nine hour mark whenever I hit level nine. That way, I'm not like trying to uh, rush myself and get to level 10 as quickly as possible before I hit the 10 hour mark on stream. Because I don't want that pressure on myself. I don't want to like feel like I need to rush myself through hardcore so that I don't lose my stream VOD. That is not something that I'm going to be doing. So just for practical purposes, I will I will be stopping at level 9. But I mean, it's close enough to 10, right? I'm debating on playing this on my own. I'm actually, I, I'm enjoying this. It's been a hot minute since I played like vanilla. So this is actually kind of fun. I may, I'll, pr I'll probably do is because I started this character on stream, uh, I'll probably make a second character and play that in my own free time. Or I'll just not do it and play Wrath or something. Um, there's no Heritage Panda set? There is not. That would be cool though. I would love a Heritage Panda set. I should also go clear my bags because I'm full again. I kind of want to, I at least, yeah, I'll get the last trophy swoop quill. And did I finish? I'm still missing one Pale Mane Tanner. Okay, I'll get the last swoop quill and the Pale Mane Tanner, and then I will go back and clear my bags. People need to learn to use things they missed out on as motivation to not miss out in the future. That's how I treat it. Yeah. Uh, you got all 36 mage towers because you regret not getting every CM armor set. I Yeah, I completely agree. Because I missed out on a lot of stuff early on when I was younger and I didn't, you know, know how to play the game as well. And nowadays, whenever there is a limited time thing, I make sure to grind it out. Like, the Diablo Goblin event, I made sure I got that bag. Because I, I knew that even though I... Farming treasure goblins... Can I just say, I hope that Blizzard never brings that Treasure Goblin event back. That was the worst thing they've ever done for, like, a limited time crossover event. That Treasure Goblin shit was fucking miserable. It, it was so annoying to farm. So, I hated every second of it, but I farmed, like, 50 goblins until I finally got the bag. Because I knew that, like, a few months from now, I would have regretted it if I hadn't farmed it. So I did. And now I have a fancy bag, and I am happy about it. So, yeah. Do people do dungeons in hardcore? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, you can. The way that the hardcore restriction works, if you haven't read the... Um, ooh. Nice. Uh, toss that. The way it works on the official hardcore servers is there is a 24-hour cooldown on each dungeon. So, obviously, it's risky, right? Because dungeons are hard. But you can only do... Um, uh, you can only do the the same dungeon once every 24 hours. Oh, perfect. Pale Mane Tanner right at the edge of this area. Oh, and there's another chest over there. Okay, that chest is tempting, but also my bags are almost full, and I'm not going to go over there and... Yeah, I'm not going to risk it and clear through all of those knolls just to get another chest. And I'm out of here. Grob Mob, yeah. Yeah, I played on Grobulus all the way through uh, TBC Classic. In fact, if you go into... If you find some of my really old streams from, like, 2021, 2022, 
Uh, I actually streamed TBC Classic a bit when I was leveling up my Warrior to 70. And uh, I actually, I left Grobulus while I was streaming. Or I think I ended the stream and then basically said I was going to transfer at, after the stream. And that's what I did. Because Grobulus is, I'm actually impressed. It has managed to bounce back and it is now very balanced. But there was a period of time during TBC where it was very alliance slanted. And I was trying to do um, 60 to 70 questing on stream, and I got ganked like five times during the stream. It was fucking miserable. Uh, it's really hard to like, you know, when I'm trying to do this, right, you know, kind of pay attention to questing and generally speaking, you know, pay attention to what I'm doing while also interacting with chat and then just randomly having that entire thing disrupted because someone would drop out of the sky and two shot me. It was a very, very, very frustrating experience. So. I stayed on Grob through all of original classic, but the TBC thing forced me off the server. And then I transferred to Mancrick at that point, and I've been on Mancrick ever since. I played on, I actually played on Pagel briefly because I had an Alliance Druid and Pagel was like a big Alliance server. So I played there, but I have since moved over my Alliance Druid to, um, to Mancrick as well. And it is, it is now a Tarin, so it is no longer an Alliance Druid. Uh, now that we got Lightforged Warlocks, I think Blizz should let all classes be playable by all races. So I think they are going for that, but uh, they are they are trying to make it, like, lore-friendly. So I that is their long-term goal, but you can see whenever they add, like, a new race-class combo, they put, like, NPCs in there to explain why it's available. I mean, I, I think they should just, you know, pull the ripcord on it and just make it a thing. I agree. But they clearly are intending to do that long term they're just taking their sweet ass time with it but yeah, i i ultimately do think that's what they'll do i think i did like 58 or 48 to 53 just grinding satyrs and fellwood it was slow but you loved it yeah exactly yeah I, I was watching netflix sometimes i would just you know listen to music right when i was grinding in winter spring so i completely feel that i had a blast just mob grinding it's the kind of thing where, like, I don't know if I would want to do it again, if we're being honest, but as a, a one-time experience, you know, really getting to have that classic mob grinding experience, I liked it. Um, but if every single time I had to level a character, it was like that, I would not play it, which is why I never leveled an alt in classic. I did it the once and then never again. So. No tar and demon hunters. Oh, yeah. If they add new Demon Hunter races, that would definitely be a, a little bit interesting. I think, like, Nightborn Demon Hunters would be kind of accept ugh, acceptable, though. There kind of already are, like, borderline Nightborn Demon Hunter NPCs. They're not, like, Demon Hunters, but they're, like, Felon-fused stuff. So I don't think it would be that much of a stretch, but other races might be a bit tricky. Volpera doing Deep Breath would be a sight to see. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Flash pellet. Oh, that's a projectile. All right, yeah, I don't need that. Voltiran oh, evoker. Oh my god. Pandaren demon hunter would be sick, but yeah, that would be derpy as hell. If you go past ten hours, you need a gamer bucket, and no one wants that. Yeah. The only bad thing about it is the timing. Too often um, to play other games between it, but short enough. Yeah, what I agree. For as long as you played it, the most 50-50 PvP for server. Yeah, it is. It's very close right now. I remember looking at the server things and seeing... Um, I'm already level 9. That was actually faster than I thought. Uh, I thought it was going to take a little bit longer to, um, to get to level 9. Uh, I'll still stop here. <laughs> I didn't realize I had so many quests about to be turned in that was going to get me the last bit. Uh, I still don't want to put myself on a clock for level 10, so I'll throw myself in the inn. Um, I'll catch up on like the last few messages that I need to read in chat, and then I'll, I'll call it a stream. Oh, I should also learn first aid. That'll probably be important. You want a Volpera Druid slash Paladin? Volpera Paladin might be a stretch. Volpera Druid, though, I think Volpera Druid is like very reasonable. 
Um, but yeah, Grobulus was Grobulus is very balanced now, but it, it was like 70-30 back in uh, BC in favor of Alliance. And then what ended up happening, the thing that fixed it is Blizzard opened up transfers specifically from Horde to Grobulus, and that ended up kind of balancing it out again. How'd the mage leveling go? Mage leveling went well. I got sub four hours. It was like three hours, 53 minutes. And that was with like horrendous RNG on uh, dungeons. So easily could have been 20 minutes faster if I had gotten luckier. But overall, still sub four hours. It still ended up being a pretty solid run. Uh, so yeah, mage run went very well. Nightborn Void Elf DHs is about it, right? Yeah, even Void Elves might be a stretch because like, I guess we already have Lightforged Warlock, so that kind of brings Void Elf DHs into the picture, but yeah, it's still a bit of a stretch, right? Lightforged Panda would be an amazing combo. That would be something, for sure. Orc Paladin. Orc Paladin would be cool. I don't... I think they're never going to allow... Uh, yeah. What the hell? It, fucking YouTube's lacking again? Oh, it was only for a moment, it looks like. And now it's... Yeah, now it's fine. Um, Night Elf, yeah, Night Elf Paladin, I'm amazed we don't have Night Elf Paladin yet, because that one is literally in the lore. It's amazing that we don't have it already. Orcs could be priests, so Orc Paladin is next. Yeah, I, I definitely think Paladin could definitely go to a lot of different races, for sure. But yeah, Volpera Druid would be sick, for sure. Nelf Warlock. Wait, Nelfs can't be Warlocks? Huh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I'd imagine they'll add that at some point. They've been slowly adding every class to every race, right? Like they did monks recently. So they'll probably do warlocks eventually. Mechanomes should be destroyed and replaced with metal dwarves. I'd be down with that. Every class can be a warlock in 10.1.5. Wait, is that confirmed? Really? I must have missed that. I did not uh, see that. Goblin druids just build their forms. Yeah. Goblin druids just, like, enter a little mech suit instead of actually shape-shifting. That would be pretty funny. Yes, months ago. Oh, that's sick. Uh, I did not know about that. I knew about the warlock, like, demon changes and the customization things. I guess, logically, it makes sense, right, that along with the major pet customization overhaul, they're giving warlocks to all classes. That, that makes sense, right? Um, I must have missed that, but that's pretty cool. I did not know that. Goblin druids turn themselves into a tree and insta die. Yeah. Uh, I think they want to at least increase class race diversity, but I doubt they'll be getting all classes available to all races. I'm sure there'll still be some ex restrictions. Yeah. Uh, but I think a few can definitely be opened up a bit more. Like priest and paladin, I can definitely see being opened up. Um, maybe shaman. I don't know. But I think just from like a they would need to make additional models type of restriction... I don't really think you can give Druid to everybody just because it's Druid. You know, they would have to make custom transformation things. Uh, and same with, like, Demon Hunter, right? Undead can be Priest. Why Volpera can't be Paladins? Yeah, Volpera Paladin would be fucking sick. Uh, that, that would be very interesting. Ever since you started playing WoW in 2006 and having played Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3, you've wanted Undead Druids, uh, Undead Druids, Carrion Birds, Plague Bears and stuff. Aesthetically, that would be really sick, though. Yeah. Uh, I could see that. I, I agree with you that, like, lore-wise, it may not make the most sense, but aesthetically, it would be very, very, very cool. Next patch, Night Elf Warlock, yeah. Get some Printing Legion corruption going on. I do think, yeah, Red Draenei skin option it should probably exist. Leper Gnome skin option? That would be sick. It would still be terrible, but it would just be another different breed of terrible gnomes. All right, uh, I fully caught up with chat, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, got to level nine in hardcore, didn't die, so, you know, that's a plus. I was really worried that I was going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do hardcore, and then I'd die, like, you know, fucking 30 minutes into it, and it would just be a total fucking catastrophe, but I didn't die, so that's good. I might continue this on stream, and just a reminder, I am streaming again tomorrow, same start time, uh, 11 a.m., and I, uh... As said before, I will be doing a 60 to 70 run. I haven't decided what race class it'll be. I'll pick something out, um, but I'll be doing a 60 to 70 testing run just to see the changes. And then I'm probably going to do more classic hardcore. So that is the plan. 
Uh, we'll probably do the 60 to 70 run and then once again keep doing this until either I die or maybe we'll make like level 14 the goal for tomorrow or play it by ear. Maybe the run takes much longer than I think and I'll have to not play as much. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. Later.